don't think anyone did the three yesterday. No one got swim, board, and iron. Tough in those. Few things. people off. There's normally like one per year. Tough in those things. Sir Sports fans, and welcome back here to the gorgeous Sunshine Coast for this our 2024 Aussies, the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships. Kurt Hansen, joined here by Jenny Parry. And uh, Jenny, Super Sunday, very good morning. Uh, we started it yesterday with our youth championships, um, the best uh, age groupers in the nation, uh, 13s, 14s and 15s for the individual events. And we continue today with the team events. Yeah, I do love that we have individuals on Saturday. It was a massive day yesterday. Started at 8, finished at 4.30 with some very big finals. And we will have a bit of a chat about what we loved the most from that. I love that now the vibe changes. The pressure is still there, but today is the fun day. It's all about the teams. Nothing, nothing individual. And we are going to uh, do a few of the beach events today. I know a lot of people watching the uh, live stream yesterday were keen for us to cover that, and uh, we're doing our best to get there. But it's not just about Kurt and I up here today. Christy Munro is down on the beach, one of our local Iron Woman legends. Christy, how is it looking down there? Hello, Jan. Hello, Kurt. Yes, it's absolutely beautiful down here on the beach this morning. The wind has dropped a little bit from yesterday afternoon. The surf has also dropped a little bit. There's a really fun vibe on the beach with team events. So obviously, all of the individual events being run yesterday um, and all of our athletes, our youth athletes back this morning to back up and race for their club team. So a nice, exciting buzz on the beach and um, we're ready and raring to go for day two of the Aussie Youth. Nice, Christy. The surf was really up yesterday morning, wasn't it? Solid and quite heavy on that outer bank. But uh, what are the conditions like now? And feel like there's a little bit of a drop off. There definitely has been a drop in the surf conditions. Still one, one or two rogue set waves popping through every now and then, which will challenge our team events this morning, but um, a lot more consistent and maybe sort of a foot or so smaller. So um, still a little bit of exciting racing out there, but maybe a few less nerves on the beach, not having to contend with the sets that we had yesterday. So, Christy, thinking about there's going to be less nerves down there. There'll probably be a few tired bodies. I think we calculated yesterday some of the athletes doing up to 18 or 20 races. Do you think they're ready to back up for a, a big Super Sunday? I'm sure our youth athletes will just, just be running on excitement today. Um, certainly some tired bodies. I was down on the sand late yesterday afternoon and it was a big day of racing. Lots of swims and board paddles out and around the cans yesterday. So hopefully our athletes have had a big night of fueling and sleeping um, and back ready and raring to go. The tide is still um, coming in, so the races will get a bit longer. But um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully they've still got a little bit of energy left in the tank and um, whatever they don't have left... I'm sure they'll just be running on team spirit today. <laughs> running on team spirit, probably a little bit of sugar this morning. Now, Christy, big day of racing yesterday. To put you on the spot, any highlights that you remember? What really stood out to you yesterday during those finals or maybe the entire day? I, like, I loved watching some of those early heat rounds when the, when the surf was pumping yesterday morning. There was some definitely exciting board races on earlier in the day. Um, but, yes, it's hard to shy away from some of those finals that we saw later on in the afternoon. And, um, oh, gosh, it's hard to pick a favourite. Um, I'd probably have to be a little bit biased. Um, Riley McCartney from Alex won the under-14 iron, and I think that was his back-to-back -back win from the 13s. And there was a lot of emotion down on the beach watching that race. So, um, yes, that's my biased favourite race of the day yesterday. 
Oh, that's so good, Christy. Thank you so much. We're actually seeing some uh, great footage right now. This was uh, Jack, Jack Stewart. Stewart. Yeah. North Curl Curl winning that uh, Matthew Barclay Memorial Trophy, the under-15 Ironman champion. And great to see the North Curly Knights strike a big gold for the Gold Caps on day one of the youth championships. And in there with the uh, girls' Iron Woman as well. Yeah, big racing and the drone shots, they've really changed our sport over the past few years. Being able to see this level of, uh, I love the decision making, I love the tactics, I love people fighting for that inside line there. And this is where we got to celebrate as well. Ryan Spence from North Burley just had such an incredible day. And you can see how those conditions changed across the day. Our athletes, they're so resilient, they're so adaptive. And I love the smiles, yes. I love a finish on the tape. Oh, the green wave of North Burley with a great win as well. Ryan Spence there. And yeah, some some brilliant racing yesterday. Um, highlights for you from the from the beach. Well, we've uh, been going over our notes, and uh, something that I loved yesterday. I don't think we got it on camera, but the under fourteen board races were absolutely fantastic. Cooks Hill won the men's. Alana Dimick uh, from Redhead won the women's. And just seeing the emotion down there, I was trying to get a few interviews in, and we were just getting swamped by the teams as they came down to celebrate. So it was just a really wonderful afternoon and we can see just the footage there it was yeah will munro from cooks hill who took the win there but in that under 14 boys age group trig island absolute <laughs> superstars oliver brown he's a uh, character ollie brown isn't oh, he he's got his mustache that he's been growing for of, about 18 months and, and such a great photo i saw that one you know he's running out of the water he's got the claim on so oliver brown from trig got was first Billy Hawke's teammate got third. And then down at the beach arena, down at Mooloolaba, Trent Yates, uh, also from Trig, won the beach sprint. So as an age group, on fire. Yeah, totally on fire. Some um, more highlights from yesterday. Um, more irons as well. But, yeah, some, some great racing and great skills. Oh, look at this. Look at this body surfing from some of the younger surf sports stars coming Tyler down. Johnson. Tyler, yeah. superstar yesterday. Ah, oh, look at the jubilation as well. And why not? <laughs> no, First you... ever Aussies, under 13s, all that training paid off. And getting to uh, run up the beach here. It always looks a little different when they reverse the course, although they run it a little differently. But a shout out to our officials who really did an incredible job yesterday. A massive program in some rather challenging conditions. The fact that they were able to move the events around in the different arenas, make it happen to still get us off the beach by 4.30 after an incredible day of racing. Hats off to everyone, and they are also backing up today. But have a look at this. Oh, that Newport girl. I think we watched this three or four times yesterday afternoon. And it shows the power of the waves out there and the skill of our athletes. Yeah, it was that split decision, a roll or a pop. And unfortunately, the pop proved costly. But, well, one of the highlights of yesterday, wasn't it? Maruchidor in front of the home crowd getting the victory there in the in the iron and uh yeah the black swan has arrived on the yeah. sand it was really lovely to finish that uh that way yesterday the last race of our broadcast mary thompson taking a big win in the iron there she had an incredible state championships and just to see her finish strong yesterday afternoon she's going to be backing up like most of our athletes in those team events today and it's a little bit different yeah. to the state championships where it was the uh, straight age groups it's all about the composite teams today so 13s 14s 14s 15s we've got the entire program we've got we've got it in front of us right now and it looks a little overwhelming when you see how Does. many races are happening today. Add into that, ocean swims down at Malulabar. Yeah, we've got tie down there with those ocean swims going uh, all morning long, what, two kilometre mm -hmm. event and very popular. 1,600 what, competitors. How long have we been doing that for now? Well, yeah, it's been so implemented a few years ago. Time goes quick. <laughs> time Remember the first time they're like, we're, we're bringing the, um, the ocean swim and then now, it's, before you know it, it's 10 years has passed. And I think we've actually got... Um, I think it's 1,600 competitors overall and something else that's super exciting. We've got about 800 men and 800 women in there as well. So what was designed initially as a participation event turns into a championship event, turns into one of the events on the program. And I love, I think one of the highlights, if you were to ask the athletes what they love the most, they'd be saying the surf. They'd yeah. be saying these waves. That's what I need. Yeah, yeah this is yesterday. It really was, uh, it was on from the get-go yesterday and you just felt the vibe of those heats, especially in the morning. Look at these waves and... This is under 13s. This is the youngest age group here at the Aussies. Their first ever Australian Championships, and they put on an absolute show. Um, charging waves, just giving it everything they could to try and qualify. And 
just showcasing their skills. Absolutely. So we saw the nipper boards in action yesterday. That's what's on screen at the moment. Oh, he goes out the back there, one of the uh, tally crew there. No nipper boards today, though. It is only males. So a lot of those athletes in the younger age groups, they'll be out uh, competing on males for the first time, not only this season, but yeah, at their first the championship. <laughs> so good. Uh, oh, to be young again. But look at the crash down there. And mm. like, like you get an idea here on screen, but it was heavy yesterday morning. It was probably at the peak of its power. Um, you wouldn't have wanted it any bigger, but the kids did such an incredible job. And you can tell this is the future of surf sports in the country, and, and this is where it all begins. You get the skills here and, and going up in the 13s. Um, yeah, yep, definitely put on a show. Back. And I love that you can see like one, two, three waves. You know, everyone's in action. And for some of those finals yesterday afternoon, when the wave really stood up on those banks, we had, you know, 10, 12 athletes coming in for a sprint finish on some of those finals, which is just hectic. And you can see the athletes who are just reveling in these conditions. They were like, send me out again. I'll get another <laughs> set, you know. It was really wonderful to watch, and we always talk about our athletes being rescue ready as well. If mm. I was in trouble out there at the moment, any of these nippers could come and rescue me. But look at this fear. Me. Like, if you think fear, oh. like 12-year-old, 13-year-olds, just no fear, no hesitation, charging down. And, you know, that's a solid three-foot, four-foot sets, mm -hmm. crashing down on a pretty shallow bank. Look at this, like the impact exploding and... Um, the resilience of these youngsters as well. And she's still on it. And you then, yeah, recovering. And as it got difficult during the day, as those uh, banks and the holes really started to come into it, you can see the waves were so uneven and it was really difficult. But our athletes continue to make those really smart decisions. When do I get off? How do I run? What hand grabs the, uh, the strap there? And you can see... Everyone was just having a blast yesterday. It was such a great day. I am still on a high from individuals. The first day of nine days of the Australian Championships here at Maroochydore. It's incredible to watch. I think we take for granted um, being Australian and coming and watching this. And if, um, as we see some surf race action, uh, reverse course here, getting <laughs> coming around the cans, their first taste and these body surfing skills. But if you're from overseas and not, you know, living overseas now, but you're watching some of this footage, mm -hmm. blow your mind that these are 12 year old, 13 year old kids like that. I just have the have the skills and um, the ability to turn what can be quite dangerous and tricky surf and mm -hmm. and turn it into some fun and and manipulate it to their own advantage. It was it was pretty special. And thinking about that uh, international view, we actually had a few international competitors racing yesterday. We saw um, Omanu in the mix. That's the red cap with the uh, white star. And leading into the Masters and the Open Championships, we've got competitors from France, from Japan, from New Zealand, from the UK. Everybody wants to be part of such a special event. That is the Aussies. That is our national championship. So it's not just us. The whole world is here. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic to see the skills, the lifestyle. And... Oh, how good is that? We speak about the oh, crash down. Doesn't always go to plan, but the implementation as well of uh, the youth championships <laughs> coming to the Aussies now, yep. a bit like um, the ocean swim, you know, to finally get it installed. And I don't know if anyone thought at that time how big mm -hmm. it could be, and it is massive now. It's an, it's its own event. It, it could almost be standalone um, from the from the open competition and. I wouldn't be surprised in the future if it does stand alone from it, from it as well. Continues to build, continues to grow. And while it is about the Youth Championships uh, Saturday and Sunday, for that Ocean Swim, we're actually handing out the first open gold medals of the championship. So we're going to be keeping an eye on those results. We will bring them to you um, as they are available. And I think uh, what we'd love to do throughout today's commentary is bring you some of those results from r and &R, from Champion Lifesaver, because it's not just about what's happening on the beach down here at Maroochydore. We've been walking through Alex. The uh, first aid was in action yesterday as well so very much excited to share all of the incredible results from our amazing athletes also we've got the board riding up at Coolum. so if you're anywhere on the coast you really cannot avoid being part of the australian championships sunny coast it's pumping mm -hmm. and all like just the appetizer to look forward to <laughs> team's day today yes. there are athletes and it's in all sports though it's one thing to race for yourself individually but then for a team people just love to step mm -hmm. up and it's when an, an average competitor can become a superstar with that maybe a little bit of added pressure. You don't want to let your teammates mm -hmm. down, your best friends down, and 
it's you know it's it's memories that you can create for life if you can produce a hundred you know, percent an Australian title performance. Yeah, I was speaking to um, Joss Melbourne from North Curl Curl after one of her individual races yesterday, and she actually finished next to a teammate on the line. And we were saying, you know, what are your first impressions of Aussies? How are you Maybe. feeling? And she's like, I cannot wait for the team events tomorrow. And it just shows, you know, she's here racing Where for an individual go? race, but they were already thinking about today. They're already thinking about Super Sunday and racing with their team. So watch out for uh, Joss and the uh, North Curl Curl crew. They've had a fantastic day already. I'm pretty sure they're going to keep on building on that one today. It's going to be a huge day. It's going to be a huge program. But having a look at what is coming up first, we're pretty sure it is going to be the uh, board relay heats. Again, those composite age groups in the uh, green and the pink arena, we've got the 13-14s, and then in the orange and black and white arena, the 13-14 uh, events. And uh, if you didn't like doing an ocean swim for 2K, you could do a 2K beach run today, Kurt, if that's up your alley. Definitely not up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Artist of passes. Yeah, I'm allergic to land, more a, a water creature. But, uh, yeah, well, there's something for everyone here at the Aussies, and that's where it is. Age group, okay, sure, we've got youth um, yesterday and today. Then we go into Masters, mm -hmm. which, again, is something just getting bigger and bigger every year. Mm -hmm. And then the but Open Championships really? officially, obviously, starting on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, it's And from land to water to surfing to first aid, it's... It's all there you can for row you. a boat, but yeah, Buy very boats, excited. Of those 2K beach runs will be happening down at Malula Bar, so we will keep an eye on those results as well. I know there's a lot of lot of events, a lot of athletes who come to Aussies, they are specialists in these sorts of events, so excited to see. And as you say, there's something for everyone in life saving. There's a space for all of us to shine, which is quite exciting. So lots happening around the beach. It's uh, yeah, we'll take, happening. Oh. Why don't we get in the mood before uh, day two starts? Take a look at some more highlights from day one, please. Uh, our individual day here and the first day of the youth championships. So why don't we uh, check it out now? Okay, so just yeah, checking out some uh, highlights from yesterday. That's uh, Iron Woman final. Testing conditions. I think one of the best things about having the uh, live stream on the Facebook here is for some of our athletes who were racing yesterday, they get to go back and watch this the same way that we're watching it now, and they'll remember these pivotal uh, points in the race. <laughs> race it and then rush home, have your dinner, and then come back. And make sure you cue it up, your, Mum. Cue it up. I'm check on yourself, TV. Check yourself out on YouTube and see just. Uh, I was, I would say, uh, in a more mature way, maybe like take some critique and see where you can improve. But no, it's more just about screen time. Well, we got some incredible shots yesterday, and I mean, you and I were speaking about we reminisce about when we were racing. I think I have two or three photos of my racing days. One of them, I'm not sure if it's actually me in there, but <laughs> I mean, you won an Aussie belt title ten years ago. That was an incredible achievement. You shared the footage during the race. The fact that you have that to look back on and to keep that That's is true. something very special. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's great to have that vision and see how yeah see how unfit you've become over time but no it's great memories for these kids and um yeah like you said the drone uh for surf sports has just taken it to a whole other level mm -hmm. um and the ability to get shots like this um, is fantastic not just for the athletes but great coaching tool as well oh hugely um, and a, a big factor yesterday in these not just surf races but the swim leg of the iron was just the depth going out so. Actually, if I could jump in here, we'll see the Newport girls go down. And mm. I think one of the girls stays down a little longer. She just pops up uh, when the other competitor's already taken two or three strokes. And straight away, I remember that because I was thinking, that's a great example of stay down a little bit longer, hold your breath a bit longer. And again, less effort for a better outcome. It was just a really great case study. And again, you talk about those training and those coaching tools. This is what we can look back on. And even in the uh, lead up to the Australian Championships, the fact that we have live stream coverage and this sort of footage for both the, uh, the all the different state championships, you mm. can keep an eye on how things are going across the day. You can get you can see how all your uh, all your uh, competitors are going throughout the season, and it all culminates in this, the Aussie Championships. Yeah, I think with the weather, the stream, and it all comes in here. It's, the broadcasters were talking about six, eight hours of broadcasts. Mm. We don't expect you to sit there <laughs> all day long. And, You're and not? <laughs> Come on, I'm hurt. <laughs> but you can leave it on in the background or yeah, whatever. I mean, if, you, if there's a race that you're looking out for, you can, mm -hmm. you know, get in and, and watch it and, and keep doing your stuff. So it's, it works that way as well. And you know, come the afternoon, the big finals packages arrive and then you can sit down, make a cup of tea, settle in yep. and enjoy it. Or if not at home or throughout Australia or the world, 
over in the fan zone as well. The fan zone was pumping yesterday. Oh, it was huge, and I love they've got the big screens up there. And as I was walking out yesterday afternoon, they were doing all the medal presentations yes. down there as well. So I'd like to think that uh, all the sponsor tents were doing a roaring trade during that time as well. If you are down on the Sunshine Coast, if you are here as part of the Aussies, definitely make sure you go and check out uh, that festival area. Lots of sponsor activations, lots of food and drinks, and again, a lovely shady spot if you would just like to watch the live stream in a slightly more comfortable location. Through that. So, yeah, we saw this uh, replay from yesterday, this number 14 Iron Woman final, and we certainly Newport off to a fantastic oh, start. Usually. Yep. Um, you know, Lisa Durs, what won the surf race title individually yesterday for Newport. Um, Sophie Clues as well was, was right up there. But this race, it had a, a little bit of everything. With the lead change mm -hmm. so many times, and um, we'll see that as they, they enter the wave zone as well. Um, Jessica Conrad had a brilliant race there for, for Burley Heads. Um, but in these conditions, um, anything could happen and, and generally did happen. And um, there were a few factors that, uh, the first, the, the big takeaway, your race isn't over. It's mm -hmm. not over until it's over. And, and you saw that yesterday, that um, just when you thought they were out of it, a couple would get caught inside or just one. The surf was at critical points where a decision would cost you and unfortunately, you know, one decision to pop instead of roll here was the difference, could have been the difference between, um, you know, getting on the podium or, or completely missing. So, um, you know, it was, it was tough for these competitors yesterday, but um, definitely it was a commentator's dream. Yeah, when you get to see this sort of footage start to come through, and these were, these are the waves that really made the difference. It was a great day of racing and really tricky as well. Some of these waves, you look at the size of it and you're like, oh, they'll hold it the entire way through, but you don't understand where it gets deeper, where it gets shallower, where the waves or the sweep are starting to push mm -hmm. against you there as well. But it was the power. The power, I think, was underestimated yesterday. Yeah, good point. When the kids came back to the beach and were speaking to them, they're just like, it is, you want to go out there? Like it's, even from shore, it's probably 300 metres out to that back bank. 250, 300 metres, and so to see that it's, you can hear it pounding down quite hard, to get another 300 metres, and it's right on your head, mm -hmm. it is got, it's generating some serious power. So. Absolutely, and this is where Newport, the uh, the girls were looking so good in that 1-2 position and just such tough conditions all over. I actually spoke to uh, Jess Top Conrad's team yesterday afternoon. I think we made the joke yesterday. We were able to pick her because she wears this pale blue cap under her Burley Heads Mowbray right. Park cap, and they said yesterday, they're like, we can do that. We can just keep on wearing that. If you know where she is and you know she gets a bit of screen time, as she should, she is a quality athlete. Of course. It was, uh, it was really Really well, is that many of them from Burley Heads? We need. They're we so need, good. Yeah, we need Ty and his <laughs> and his encyclopedic knowledge of Absolutely. every Burley Heads competitor. And that's a really tough part about the Aussies every year because we bring in that new age group. There's a, a brand new crop of under yeah. 13 superstars that come through every Australian Championships, and you know we study up, we look at you know who's p performing throughout the season at the uh, state championships and all of the other series. But they come to Aussies, and we need to learn. Which of these amazing competitors is coming up the beach right now? So that is actually where we do need to rely on the support of people who are watching the uh, Facebook live stream with us. We do love reading the comments there. So we always love to know who are you cheering for? Where are you cheering from? Please correct us. And there was Tom Ray down on the beach. And Gosh, he, he big, was loving it. Well, he had a big day yesterday as well with his daughter Imogen winning the surf race. Mm -hmm. and very special. And it's hard. It's hard as a, as a dad and a commentator. And he's... He's so professional and mm -hmm. um, to you, you know, so impartial and, and, and sometimes it works against you a little bit as well. You, you probably don't say as much as you should when, um, when it's your a daughter or I, I was the same in commentating when um, my sister was swimming as well. Yeah. You probably say a little less than you should because you're conscious of that and he, he just handled that beautifully yesterday. I was so happy for him. He was, um, he was flying yesterday. He really was. And this is where we, you can tell uh, by the uh, the angle of the sun there. This was, uh, I think, the last race of the day, the 14 mm. Iron Final. And when we think about how many races these girls had done, the fatigue was high. But knowing that you're in your potentially one of your first Australian championships, you have the opportunity to win an Aussie gold medal. And we talk about how rare and how precious these things are. And this is where uh, the girls really started to uh, encounter those surf conditions. I'm so excited. Uh, as we uh, get ready for day two, for Super Sunday, for the team's day, this is one of the races that we get to rewatch because it was such a highlight. Spoiler, there's about there's some surfs about to come through. Spoiler <laughs> alert. set is about to arrive. So if you've just joined us here on the coverage, it is Super Sunday. We're just waiting for a start on team's day here. So we're just uh, showing a replay of the under-14 Ironwoman final from yesterday, one of the highlights of day one of our youth competition. And 
This is the second and final leg, and this board leg, and this is where it's about to get a little bit wild here on this back bank, and really does completely flip the script. It's, yeah, really uh, decision making comes. Oh, and, and the nerves are high here. You know you're you know in the in the last leg of your iron. Do you pop? Do you roll? You're absolutely exhausted. There's six or seven people around you. You've been building to this race all day. It's very prestigious, and the girls did such an incredible job. Oh, do you pop? Do you and roll? there it is, the pop, the back shoot. Oh, that was where she just, yeah. Really gone, so all the way, look, all the way down back. So, yes, definitely um, heartbreak there on Newport, but that is the way the surf was, and it was a conservative roll uh, from Conrad that put her in front for Burley, and then you saw on the pink board there, Mary Thompson on the chase and Sophie Blues there of Newport also. The girls just outs. making their way through past the red and yellow. It's going to get topsy-turvy when they go around the green and gold to start with and it's all reversed. I'm yeah. like, oh, the world isn't making sense right but now. Mary still has some work to do here. Oh, she did. In, in the pink board, so still trying to close that gap on Conrad who's obviously one of the best paddlers mm -hmm. of her age in the nation as well. And look at these sets going through the cans. Like, bad. Took out that green and white can, so the power was still pumping. Probably good that this was the last race of the day. We would have had to do a course reset because those cans were getting absolutely pummeled as the uh, set started to come through. Maruchidor, renowned for a little bit of chop, a, a little bit of a messy afternoon. So for Mary, a little bit of uh, local knowledge starts to pay off right about now. Yes, yeah, so it starts to come into the wave zone here. Show oh, this replay no. again. That pops, it was a beautiful pop, and I called she it on the so beach well. as well. I was, yeah, I thought the pop originally was beautiful, but just got caught up at the back. And look at that. First to about eight. And unfortunately, at this level, that's just one mistake like that. And it's just hard to come back. And here was the wave from behind. And Mary Thompson on her home beach, unfortunately, there. Conrad just on her stomach, just couldn't generate um, the board speed required to get down it. And again, another case of she didn't do anything wrong. No. She just wasn't in the best, best spot. And when you've got someone like Mary Thompson uh, in a better spot with some momentum, with the board speed, that made the difference. And we were a little nervous for Mary here. She managed to turn this little runner into something a little bit more because she knew that that wave behind probably had a little bit more power. The girls were chasing hard, but basically Mary paddles the entire way here, but, um, hits the beach yeah. at the right time. But now you're 14. Australian title, you hit the sand on your home beach of Maroochydore, you've won it, the crowd goes up, it's right in front of the surf club, the beach you grew up at where you trained as a nipper, mm -hmm. where you've done all your work, you train here every day, every afternoon, and to take this Australian title to start off day one for the Black Swans of Maroochydore, yeah. it was um, for mine the highlight of, um, of the opening day in Sort there, Conrad in second, and a very happy Sophie Clues in, in third place yeah. for Newport, but... Um, yeah, I know you're, uh, you know, you bleed Marucci door. <laughs> yeah, really... and I know it's hard to say, it's hard for you to talk about it. No, but... it's been a really great day, and I think this is a really nice time to recognise that for an event like Aussies, like it's an entire club effort, and it's also not just about Marucci door this weekend. Alexandra Headlands, they had the first aid in the Champo Lifesaver yesterday. We've got the boats further down. We've got the uh, Malula Bar cruise as well. But yeah, it's been, it takes a village. The entire Sunshine Coast is here, but. Uh, Back to live coverage, we're let's, on. Uh, let's day stop, two. We'll stop living in the past. <laughs> we are going to and have a look and I'm really keen to see we've been down on the beach earlier today we've seen that the surf has changed a little bit really keen to show uh, those shots just so we can uh, see what our athletes are, are dealing with today and again we speak about you know they do the huddle every single race uh, they get the briefings but more importantly they might get to have a chat to Christy Munro Hello, Jay. I'm down on the beach with Tom from Byron. Bit of a nervous wait to get started as we just set the course for the board relay. How how has your body pulled up after yesterday? Oh, it's a bit tired, but I reckon we'll go well today. So we're just going to have some fun and see how we go. And who have you got um, racing with you and your team today? i got Will Schmidt and Tommy Truett. They're both really good competitors, and I think we've got pretty good chances well, best of luck. I, um, we, we know Byron is um, very renowned for their board paddling, so high expectations, but have a lot of fun. Have you had a great um, carnival so far? Yeah, I have. It's been lots of fun. 
missed out on the last carnival of Perth, but that's all right. I got this carnival, so. And who would you say has been your biggest supporter to get you and your teammates here today? Oh, pretty much everyone, the whole club, all been helping out, all in support, everyone there. It is a huge club effort, and we see that just by the sheer volume of people on the beach um, to get all of our competitors in our clubs here. Well, I'll let you go and get focused on your race, but all the best and have a great time. Thank you. I do love seeing a Byron cap out Byron's and about. back, baby! Did they ever really go away? <laughs> no, it's good to see. And I think um, also really important to recognise it's a massive season and this is, you know, a few seasons in a row. Like, you know, not everyone gets to go to every single Aussies. Not everyone gets to go to every single uh, championship there. But this, you can tell that the, uh, the, the spirits are still high down there on the beach. This is where it gets exciting, excited to uh, grab a few caps. Yeah, North Wollongong, North Burley, Sorrento, Mermaid Beach. It's back. Obviously Byron that you just spoke to there. It's 13s, 14s. Board Relay qualifiers, settle in, sir, sports fans. Big youth team day coming your way. He said the two age groups, 13s and 14s and 14s and 15s. And we've got Board Relay, Cameron Relay, um, surf teams, and Board Rescue. And heats all the way through to finals this afternoon. Yeah, more gold medals on offer very, very soon. And... Uh I feel like I do need to correct something really quickly. I have been talking about yesterday was all about the individuals, but we did have the R&R &R in action for our youth competitors yesterday. And now seems to be the perfect time to uh, congratulate some of our new Australian champions. In the 13 to 14 R&R &R yesterday, it was the North Cronulla Axolotls. Who, uh, who took the big win there. So axolotls. The axolotls from North Cronulla. I thought North Cronulla were just charges, but there's, no, there's no. factions within the charges, the axolotls. <laughs> They've diversified. Okay. Um, and it was Brighton from South Australia who got second. Picnic Bay coming in for third on the podium. And I have to give a special shout out. The uh, Redcliffe team got fourth there as well, one of my favourites. But North Cronulla, Brighton, Picnic Bay and Redcliffe, that's one through four in the 13 to 14 R&R &R competition yesterday. Nice. There you go. Um, and again, it is all about those composite age groups in the uh, 14, 15 age group in the R&R. &R. South Melbourne took a big win there. So great to see the Swans. The Swans. South yeah. Melbourne in there. Brighton, again, another silver medal. And the North Cronulla Starfish, uh, they got a bronze medal there, which is wonderful to see. So congratulations, South Melbourne, taking out the uh, 14, 15 R&R &R yesterday. And then the uh, final event there, the 13 to 15 mixed five-person R&R, &R, South Melbourne Starfish. Fish, another big win there ahead of the North Cronulla Butterflies. I am here for these team names. So it was the Starfish from South Melbourne, the Butterflies from North Cronulla, and then the Kuji Turquoise team uh, took a bronze medal there. So congratulations to all of our R&R &R competitors, one of the most traditional events. And uh, again, you and I were having a little bit of a chat yesterday. R&R, &R, steeped in history, used to be the big event to win. And uh, you visit a few surf clubs around Australia, they've still got the big pennants up, they've still got the big photos because... Uh, Huge amount of prestige and uh, a wonderful event to win. Mm, North Cronulla, very proud club and trying to keep that tradition going. It looks like got some great depth there. Yeah, the axolotls doing an incredible job. So we can see that beautiful shot there. We're at Maroochydore Beach looking out towards Point Cartwright. Uh, if you kept on uh, trekking along the beach here, you'd hit Alexandra Headland's Malula Bar, and that's Point Cartwright off into the distance. So we're just getting ready for a start. You can see... Uh, it's a little bit delayed because we do have those ocean swims a little bit further down. But the 13-14 men's board race, a board relay, is going to be the first off here. So we've got Byron, North Burley, The Gong, Sorrento, Mermaid, Malulaba, Miami. Two from Glenelg and uh, North Burley Team B. Watch out for them. They had an incredible day yesterday. The A and B team in action here. So what a way to start. Bit of board relay action. A few nerves. Everyone's uh, just getting those uh, feet on the line there and... Uh, the hot pink togs, I've seen a few of them around this weekend. Yeah, it might, might be a second page of teams there as well. 17, uh, looks like we're in quarter final time, so I'm assuming eight teams, four quarters, eight through to two semis. Assuming so. Um, I know some of those cuts yesterday were uh, pretty brutal, especially with the conditions and the need to really uh, move through that program. I liked it. I, I loved like it. it. Top six. Yeah, six is, it, yeah. I know eight is great, but. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when the conditions are up, six is is what it is, and um, you know, know what you've got to do to qualify. It's also Aussies, right? Like, it is. This is yeah, the this pinnacle is the of what we're doing. So, uh, 
and you know, again, thinking of some of those incredible races that we saw yesterday, it was uh, definitely those teams that uh, had the skills. Everything was executed perfectly, right place, right time. Have an Aussie gold medal. Yeah, you forget as well that as for our youngest competitors, we've never raced against um, rivals from outside the oh, state. Oh, it's huge, yeah. And so you're meeting people for the first time, um, and you know, as we were saying before the broadcast as well, just catching up with friends here. Um, and Ruchidor that you've met uh, for the first time as a mm-hmm. 15 year old yes. at Aussies and um, yeah and those friendships that last a lifetime um, it's, it's great to see everyone every year it's, it's like your second family and you, you come back every year and I love and I just love I love the youth I love the next generation and of course the Opens are going to put on a show next week and and it'll be fantastic but <laughs> and talking to one of the boys from Womberal yesterday and asking him who Kai Hurst was and he had no idea who he was and it's it's very um, sobering as well to think how quickly mm-hmm. that it moves on Yep. and one of the, when you speak about one of the greatest of all time um, to ever do it in Kai and, and someone from his former club um, not knowing who he is it's a, a big wake up call to all of us that you know that next generation is, is coming through and nothing lasts forever. Uh, it does not. But for right here and right now, wonderful that we get to celebrate some incredible results uh, with our with our incredible athletes. And uh, again, that, those conditions have really changed. It's looking a lot, ca- I don't want to say calmer, a little bit glassier out mm. the back. And I want to say that the water quality has improved from yesterday as well. It's looking a lovely shade of blue out there. And this is where, I mean, if you were the event organisers right now, we have got like, this is the perfect weather. Mm, the last perfect. Aussies, very, very flat. It was tough racing. Shades of Perth last year as well. But to rock up, I mean, there is not a cloud in the sky down no, there today. The it's so perfect for Aussies. And I, yeah, for the, anyone yesterday, it was on yesterday morning. It was mm, so good. 100%. So, gun goes. Away we go. First of four quarters here in this 13 14 uh, Ford Relay. And looking until otherwise advised, I imagine eight. Top eight teams to go through to the semi-finals. So three paddlers in total. First of three legs underway, and nice start down that uh, southern end or left-hand side of screen. Looking, uh, pretty good, Sortel Mordialic. Sortel to a nice start. White quarter cap, so until just south of Coffs Harbour. And it's most well renowned, the home of the Hancock sisters. Yeah, actually, I was speaking to Courtney last night. We were just having a little bit of a, uh, you know, day one recap. She's uh, coaching some of the Talabadra nippers. And I said, I saw some Sawtell caps yesterday. She was so excited. And uh, we spoke about, you know, that black and white quartered cap. It always reminded us of, like, the racing stripes or the the checkered flag in racing. And she's like, I remember when I used to have black and white checkered togs to match (laughs) as well. And she's got so many fond memories of Sawtell. And to see the crew doing so well, she was really excited. I think we we started going through a few of the results there. So uh, wonderful to see Sawtell really rising as well and again we talk about the training videos that we could uh, create beautiful technique out the front there as well great technique Um, yeah when I came back into the country I was just in the (laughs) um, bookstore and I picked up Bonnie Hancock's book oh wonderful amazing amazing so I'm about halfway through it at the moment Um, but yeah just just incredible and uh, it's actually a film as well. It's uh, pre- premiering at the Gold Coast Film Festival soon. Uh, Didn't as well. know that. I think it's oh. uh, that's next weekend, actually. Oh, probably, uh, that's awesome. So uh, wonderful to see the uh, Hancock's still doing incredible things, still yeah, involved a... in life saving. Bonnie at Mermaid and Courtney at Tally. Of course, Bonnie, for those not knowing, um, paddling solo around Australia, and I'm at the bit where she's 500 kilometres oh. out to sea in the Great Australian Bight <laughs> and in the water, and oh my goodness, I don't like being. Over 500 metres out to sea, let alone 500 kilometres out to sea. No, it was uh, a pretty incredible story. And again, wonderful people in our movement doing incredible things. So, yes, highly recommended. And course, will be in commentary uh, when uh, later on? Yep, Wednesday through Sunday when we come back for the uh, Open Championship. So uh, we'll take a little break Monday, Tuesday. But Wednesday through Sunday, the uh, Facebook live stream will be in action. So some gorgeous shots there. Have a look at the colour of that water. And I'm really interested to see this is the first race of the day that we've been uh, that we've had here on the live stream. First race of the day for these boys as well. I'm really keen to see how strong the waves are, where these boys will start picking them up, and if they're able to hold them all the way down to the, through to the beach. Well, here we go. Oh, how good is this? Wave time. Sawtell, Wanda, 
It looks like North Burley, you lead three, but the two leaders here pushing hard on the stomach. Sawtell trying to get down it, but just Okay, so a, a lot bit. of water pushing back mm. out there. I thought they were on that for sure, but uh, clearly conditions are a little different down there today. We can say yeah. North Surprise Burley. Surprise it on their stomach to be in that wave zone, probably a little bit uh, more powerful if they could be on their knees, but yeah. lead three go now. Oh, Sawtell just pulls the nose up. Yep. Okay, that's a really good to say. Uh, I love these first few races to, for us to really uh, understand what the conditions are like, see how our athletes are responding to that. And it, uh, it, you always feel a little hard done by when you have to be the first race of the day because you haven't had the benefit of seeing other competitors out in the water. If you get to be even just the second race, you know where they ran, what decision paid off, what decision didn't, where the rip went. It's always the sweep. The, the sweep is a, it's yes. a tough one to judge. Um, and so you go after your warm-up, you have an idea. And yesterday it was changing all the time. And, oh, transition. He's on here. Sawtell. Sawtell got some speed. Looking good. Sawtell in front, North Burley. Green wave. And then we see the spot, Lots of depth. And then Wanda. Oh, one lost board there. And again, this is where our water safety crew doing an incredible job. You can see those uh, bright orange jerseys. Just keeping an eye on everyone, making sure that they're all safe out there. And uh, I think one of my uh, Loki highlights from yesterday was actually, uh, we were watching one of the races. I think it was uh, one of the junior boards, maybe the 13s. And there was a one of our uh, competitors, you know, got hit by a bit of a, a, a set was a little bit distressed she was still on her board she was fine but she was just taking a moment we saw it on screen within two seconds powercraft jet ski arrives keeps his distance just checks are you okay do you need assistance do you need and and she was just she just needed that reassurance and yes. to see the vigilance the attentiveness of those powercraft operators out there I mean, I couldn't have scripted it better to yeah. see that on the That's live screen. It just made me so proud and so reassured that we've got these incredible officials and, and water safety out there keeping our athletes safe. Yeah, nice. Well, Sorrento coming through, Western Australia. Expecting to see a lot of Sorrento in the uh, beach events over the next few days. Very much looking forward to that. And for the Opens as well, they've always got some very hot beach relays. So I love that you can pick their cap from anywhere as well. It seems to glow once we get to those twilight events as well. Wanda hits the front. So, coming through there. Oh, Noosa, sorry. Noosa. Um, the Nathan Smith still coaching there at Wanda? I did. I had a little chat to him yesterday. He's uh, he's coaching a few athletes. His girls are in the uh, 13 age group as well. They were actually... They what, were, what, 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 what? I know, I know. They're not small children. They're not babies anymore. They are wonderful athletes in their own right. And I was actually chatting to them because they were in that age group that was, that had to move arenas very quickly. Right. And the girls were a little nervous because they're saying, oh, we've come into the under 15 arena. It's so much longer. You know, I have to paddle so much further, and we're like, no, no, no. You know, you're actually in a better arena now. This is going to be great. But that Wanda crew, like those girls, they've got an incredible board relay. They had a great state championship. So very much. Thank you for the uh, slight little segue there. Looking forward to seeing that uh, junior Wanda board relay for the girls. I think they're in with a shot. Ah, I'll keep an eye on it. That's for sure. It's like uh, North Burley looking good now as well, and more former champs really taking the reins there. Obviously, Mike Murray. Mm -hmm. um, Big in, the, big in the coaching, saw him yesterday, and um, you know, Summer taking uh, taking out a board race oh, she win had yesterday in the under great, 13s. She had a great day yesterday, and it wasn't just about um, the board race, she actually got the double. When we were talking this morning, no one got the triple yesterday, none of our individual athletes, and again, it's such a tough ask, took out the swim, the board, and the iron. But Summer Murray, gee, she got close there, taking out the, uh, the, the uh, board and the iron in a really, really tough age group. Mm, yeah, it's, it just seems to be cast of thousands. It's almost like in this, uh, they're coming back in here, second leg, but a new rivalry brewing. I haven't really spoken about it that much, but Burley and North Burley in this junior age group just seems on the same stretch of beach. So much talent mm. and two big, big programs, two of the biggest programs, um, especially youth programs in surf sports. is a nice wave from behind here. Come on, go, 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 right, go. Wanda, late takeoff. Oh, Ops not to no. take it for North Burley. So. To be fair, He's in a great position at the moment. The team is doing well. But now you can see just off screen, he's going to have to go out a little bit so he doesn't have that That'll late takeoff. See if we can zoom out. And... Great decision from Wanda there, though. Took it, positioned well, yeah. knew there was a bit of risk involved, but was confident in his abilities. And I love that we got to capture that. And you're allowed to have a sneaky smile on your board down there going, yeah, I did pretty well then. That's very level head from North Burley That's... to let it go yep. for someone in this kind of age group. So, um, 
in a quarter final where they've got a very hand, like say, a very handy lead, probably eight throughs. Mm. No real reason to take a massive risk. But it builds your confidence as well, knowing that you're getting through, knowing that you're okay with these conditions, making the right decisions comes through to tag. And uh, obviously, third paddler from Wanda, still going to put the good effort in, but what a luxurious position to be in right now. He just needs to get through this break cleanly because you can see uh, North Burley still on the chase. No dramas for him. And again, smart decision. Yeah, Did like Cooper it? Cotter there from yep. uh, North Burley. Um, son of Jeremy Cotter. Yes. He's um, former Australian, well, definitely Australian junior Ironman champion back in the mm -hmm. day. He won a bronze in the Australian Open. Yep. Championships as well, and um, originally from the Queenscliff pub. He's been up on the Gold Coast for many years now. And Glengon coming through. Good to see Glenelg there. Yeah. So you saw Rebecca Creedy I yesterday did. doing a bit of I did. She work. was former two-time Australian Ironman champion. Yep. Um, Australian Dolphin swimmer as well, and um, yeah, doing some work down there in South Australia. Yeah, great to see her passing on her incredible knowledge, and I mean. She came, and I love her story in that she came to surf life saving probably a little later than a lot of uh, a lot of our athletes do. You know, she'd done the pool swimming thing, she'd excelled there, and then she come through. Winning one Aussie Iron Woman title is incredible. A lot of people go their entire careers like we've got top Iron Women who haven't got that to do it twice. Sweet Lord, that was impressive. And very close, very close to three when um, when Lani won was it here? And yeah, she wasn't far off then mm. as well. And. There's, well, there's now only two that have won three in history, obviously Carla and um, and Georgia. Uh, that's some pretty rare air, so she's right up there um, with some of the best iron women of all time. Yeah, we've uh, got some pretty special athletes and uh, wonderful to see them now taking on coaching roles. We spoke about Nathan Smith, we speak about Rebecca Creedy, Jeremy Cotter's down there, the Murrays. It's, uh, and every club has those stories as well, people who you know keep on giving back and it's wonderful to see. And I'm loving, to see, I'm loving seeing these swells. It's a little bit windy down there as well. I'm keen to see, uh, we'll have to get some uh, chats, some post-race interviews with some of our athletes just to understand what those uh, what the wind is like out the back there because you can see the uh, flags just moving in the breeze there as Sorrento heads out for the uh, third and final leg there. But, yeah, it's going to be a big day of racing. Yeah, so Wanda looking uh, quite comfy. Looking pretty good. And uh, I've just been going through some results, Kurt. If you'll give me 30 seconds, I'd love to share with you Please do. a little bit more about what has been happening uh, along the beach. So we spoke... Uh, Richie Dorn, not the only host of the championships over this week. Uh, at Alexandra Headlands, we've got the Surf Rescue competition in action. And one of our open events was contested yesterday, the Open Men's and Women's Champion Lifesaver. And uh, one of our favourites and a bit of a superstar in all aspects of lifesaving, Gemma Smith took out another uh, open. Again. Another one. Another one. Gemma Smith took the win. Mariah Jones, also many-time Australian representative for Surf Lifesaving from uh, THNC. She was second, only one quarter of a point ahead of third place there, um, which is very, very impressive. So Gemma, Mariah, and Ella, one, two, and three in the Open Champion Lifesaver. Brad Dewan from Alexandra Headlands took out the men's ahead of Corbin Zahn from Northcliffe. We'll see him in action. I think he'll be doing tubes, swims, belts, for Northcliffe uh, coming up and then uh, Jack Wells. <sighs> big racing, big day of racing all across the beach, but a huge congratulations to Gemma Smith and Brad Dewan, our lovely. Open Champion Lifesaver winners for the Australian Championships. Well, well done, Gemma. Just another, racks up another gold. Another gold. She's such a superstar. So excited to see uh, all the action happening down there. And while we are talking... Well, leaders wave looks like. Here we go. Chases Wanda, Maroubra big win. Before, but yeah, Wanda looking good. This is South Maroubra. I think they've still got another mm -hmm. little leg further. to go. Second paddle. Have a look up. Those run legs are tough. When that tide is out, Maruchido Beach is not where you want to be. I mean, we can see the uh, the length of the tide here, the distance of the tide. Yesterday morning when we started with those uh, board heats, there wasn't a lot of sand between the, uh, the flags and the tents. Everyone was really squished up there. But once that tide goes out, it is a tough run leg down here. Glenelg. Is that Glenelg or Avoca? No, Glenelg. Uh, second Glenelg team. Fantastic work. Oh, waves out the back. Yeah, That's what we want to see. But won't be far from our leaders, and there it is. Wanda crossing the line. Nice work, Take Wanda. out the first quarterfinal. 
Great start. Great way to start. Yeah, nice start. Pretty cruisy. North Burley there in second spot. Yep, the boys That's easily the, through. The depth of board paddling. North Burley through the years. Second to none. Keep coming. Sawtell. Qualify as well. One, two, and three. And we can see all the tents set up uh, on the beach. And I think that's a... Uh, we try and pick club caps. You try and pick club tents as well. It's uh, such a full beach yesterday. Uh, I know when we were walking up and down there, just so many people along the beach. And, and that's what we want to see. It is in Australian Championships. Day two. Yeah, there's the first four and two of North Burleys. So yep. you imagine board training done there. And done and <laughs> Imagine board training there in the afternoon. Oh, yeah, that'd be uh, Southport in fifth. High fives all around, fist bumps. Okay, look at the, uh, it's going to be a warm day <laughs> down there at Maruchido for all of our athletes. Again, big second day of competition. Please make sure you're keeping your fluids up, sunscreen on as well. And we spoke about the pink togs earlier, the pink jammers in action as well as uh, the crew comes up. I think that's uh, one of our Byron teams. Byron. We spoke to them just at the uh, start of the, of the day. They are through as well. Yep. Big day of racing. So we've got board relays to start with. Sorry, just grabbing the program. So it's board relays, surf teams, board rescue, finals this afternoon. And yes, we are going to head down to Malulaba to get some of the beach flag action as well. I'll quickly jump over and grab some uh, ocean swim results for you soon. But very much looking for those, uh, look, looking forward to the flags because we know when we head down to the beach arena at Malulaba, often you see a few different caps, which is what we love to see. And um, having a look at some of those results from yesterday in the under 13. Oh, let's let's talk about these waves before I talk about the uh, the sprint. Whoa! Oh, no. Coming down. Oh, nice He's car roll. He's held it. Bit of rodeo riding. Hang on to the strap. <laughs> hold on, champ. Hold on. See if you can recover. Oh, just so off the back. close. Oh, oh wow. The top. <laughs> That's the really top. impressive. Very impressive. Oh, gosh. Oh, i tell you what, we're loving watching this. Christy, you're down on the beach. How are you doing? Hello, Jen. Yes, I'm down here on the beach with the team from Wanda who have taken out that early heat in the board relay. I'll let you introduce yourself. I've got... Max. Rafe. And Riley. Riley, I believe you were our second paddler. You made a massive big move, put your team into front and into the lead and took a pretty big set. Was there any second thoughts on whether you should take that wave out the back? Uh, no, pretty much because I've made a mistake of not taking that wave before and it's just the regret and so I just knew I had to take it. Leave nothing out there, no, no chances left out there, got to take what, what comes your way. Have you guys been paddling together for a long time? Yeah, we've been paddling together for quite a while now, so we're pretty, getting pretty used to it. Grown up in, through the nippers together? Oh uh, yeah, been, been doing it for a while, these boys came in a bit later but still trained, raced together, so yeah, pretty good. And what advice would you have to any of the younger nippers who might be joining us on the live stream um, just to, you know, continue with your nippers and build your skills and, and maybe qualify through the rounds at an Aussies? Uh, mainly just try and have fun. I think that's the most important part. But also just keep, keep trying. If you don't make it through one race, you've still got more. So just keep trying and don't give up. Yeah, just as long as you're having fun, it's all the matters. Yeah, you just got to have a good friend group to do it with. I think that's a pretty clear message. Have a good time. Do it with your mates. It's all about making memories and having fun and, and growing your friendships. Well, best of luck for your semis and then hopefully through to the finals. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Rissy. And, yeah, well done there, Wanda. Pretty comfy. I'll take a look at this replay here. That's it. On the ra Rodeo. Rodeo <laughs> Drive. Oh. Uh, loose her heads here. And see the left... Off screen. Comes down here. Looks pretty comfy. Sorrento on the right. And then... Waiting. Waiting for this. <laughs> just... Clips on a the a little side. bit. Barrel roll. And then in for the ride. Hangs on to that back strap as long as he can. And still getting washed ashore. That's the main thing. Oh, and we've all uh, we've all done this. I'm sure you've done it in a surf race as well. I remember once at Karua, Aussie Surf Race Final, got clocked by a wave and I just remember being under the white water thinking at least I'm moving forward like at least I'm getting closer to the shore and sometimes you just have to go with the ocean it'll take you where you need to go but a great win for Wanda here they'll take a lot of confidence and as you said two North Burley crews 
in this early heat as well, they'll uh, definitely be featuring in the final later today. Yeah, they've got paddlers left, right and centre. Here we go. And you can, if you're wondering uh, about the athletes who are just waiting down there at the shore, what we do love about a board relay is that you do need to handle for your other competitors. You don't need to bring mum or dad or an age manager down there. All of the athletes have to handle for each other there. And you can see in the orange, that's the water safety crew just keeping an eye on everyone. But the boys, no dramas there this morning. So more races in action as you said, it's all about the teams today. So uh, in the female arena, we've got the green arena and the pink, and that means that they're running the uh, board relay heats across two arenas just for some efficiencies there. And then the men are racing in the orange and the black and white arena. So a lovely little way of bringing the black swans through. Mm, I think that could be uh, Mary, one of our uh, athletes who took out that big win in the iron yesterday yep. afternoon. She's back. She's back in business and very cruisy up the beach. <laughs> <laughs> the girl saying, come on, keep on going, <laughs> make your no, way through. No needed, none needed. Work's uh, been done. The work's been done, and again, uh, this is where it's really lovely to conserve that energy, come through, just uh, do enough here. I'd say this might be the third and final leg. And you can see again all those tents in the background. There I'm really hoping happening. it's the third leg. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want that to be a transition. If I was a teammate, I'd be like, come on, Mary, just a little <laughs> bit more. But this is where you'll see the pace start to pick up because uh, we're not quite sure how many that are coming through. That looks to be North Curl Curl, Sunshine Beach. Weren't Sunshine Beach great yesterday? I love that we can pick that cap from absolutely any anywhere, the red with the uh, black and gold stripes uh, down the middle. They had some incredible individual races yesterday, some great results. Yeah, Very much Jay, expecting... Saw Jay down there, oh, Jay lovely. Berg, and she's just... An absolute, like, just high energy, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and they've done a great job in their second season there now at Sunshine Beach, and they've got a lot of depth and a lot of talent, and they've bought in, that's the thing, you buy mm -hmm. into the system um, and the ethos, and the results will come, and it's, it seems to be proving that on day one, and already again here early on day two. Have a look at that shot of Murchidor Surf Club there. We've got the uh, big black swan in the background. And I think for a lot of our athletes who are in this central arena, it would be really great having the surf club uh, right there because all of our athletes, before they're uh, you know heading out into their race, they'd be picking a landmark back on the beach to because uh, you can't, off, can't always see the, the flags. There's a lot of tents that look the same on the beach. So you're looking for those really big... Uh, landmarks or, or milestones to uh, plot your way back to the beach. I think the surf club is uh, perfectly positioned for that one. I remember at uh, any time you're racing down Burley, you're looking for the big pine trees, you're picking the third one across or something like that to uh, to get there. But as we reminisce up here, Christy, how's things down on the beach? Hello, guys. I'm just working out um, exactly how many qualified through. I think we've had 10 teams come through. I'm down here with the team from Yamba. So that was a reasonably comfortable qualifying round this morning. Yeah, yeah. We're in the under 13s, and it's our first time on long board, so it's a pretty hard one. But I was getting quite used to it out there, and it was really good. It is a massive step, isn't it? You've been training all year on your nipper board, and then come Aussies, you jump up on the males to combine with your teammates. Um, yeah, how, how was it? How was the feeling? What's going through your mind when you're paddling out and around those cans? To be honest, I was really surprised with how well I did because I've never trained on one before, never touched one. So it's a pretty surprising thing to get out there and catch a wave in and all that. So it was good. And very encouraging for next season when you're up on these males. I guess you're going to um, come back and, and compete next summer? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's been a great experience and can't wait to do it again. Well, all the best for your next next round and for the rest of your team events today. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, Amber. Who's that? First time she's on that board. What a superstar. Uh, the Amber Club. Awesome to see. And, yeah, I, the nipper boards, especially for those older age groups, the last for 13s, it can be so, uh, so frustrating when you're too tall. You, know, just, like, you can be sinking it. it is, so even for them to have an opportunity today um, to get on those bigger boards if they're coming up into that 13, 14s age group is super fun. Yep, no nipper boards in action today. You will only see the males. And uh, as we heard from our Yamba team just now, it's a big move. But it's also super exciting, especially as you are starting to uh, sink your nipper board for, for some of us who are a little bit gangly in the uh, upper end of nippers. Getting on the male boards really felt like you were part of the big time. And here we are racing at the Australian Championships with those gorgeous shots along the beach there. We can see lots of arenas in action. And I love those shots there. It really shows that it's quite an uneven break 
uh, along the beach here. You can see the uh, darker areas are the deeper water. You can see the rips forming up. And uh, it was wonderful watching the athletes yesterday take advantage of those rips. So, you know, we always talk about if you're pleased for between the red and yellow flags, overall disclaimer. But that's not where we'd set the flags and we'd be saying avoid the rip, avoid the rip. But for the racing, get me in that rip. Take me out to yes. the red and yellow can. I want the free ride with the ocean. I love seeing the caps and I see Yammer and, and it's just thing mm-hmm. with people and I'm like, ah, oh, Elise Bennett. Um, yes. You know, it just, cl- it just clicks for you. Where, Jacob. Yeah, where, yeah, and obviously, yeah, with Jacob and, and Hugh Doherty Hugh. as well. And um, yeah, just li- you have that connection with the, with club and, and mm. people as well. And um, that's, that's quite a beautiful thing to see the next generation come through as we see um, boys lining up and... So, like, Met Calandra is the same. <laughs> Met Cal, proud to be Mets. Um, you know, with a, re, even Rebecca Creedy or Warilla, um, with Hayden White and um, obviously Ali Day. Way back when. Way back when. Ben Ali. Carberry. Yes, yeah. Then, uh, Hayden, they'll be Hayden at, White as yep, well. They'll be in action. Yeah, they will be. And thinking of Met Calandra, I know one of their beaches picked up a medal yesterday. Let me check that one. Yes, it was the under-14 boys beach sprint. We actually had uh, Trent Yates, one of our trig boys, took the win there. But Jacob Martin from Met Calandra got a silver medal yesterday. Rory Muldoney from South Maruba took the bronze there. That's the under-14 boys beach sprint. Trent, Jacob and Rory, one, two and three there. And... Uh, we were talking a little earlier as well for the under-13 boys sprint. A huge congratulations to Lane Brady from Serena. And as you corrected me, that's <laughs> just just south of Mackay there. But Lane Brady took out the Queensland Championships, took out the Australian, ship champ- the Australian Championship yesterday. That club will be so proud of him. If you don't know the Serena cap, it's yellow with the uh, navy blue ears, like the little half moons on the side there. So, Lane Brady, you're a superstar. You're an Australian champion. Congratulations. <laughs> no, it's um, yeah, incredible result coming down from south of Mackay as well. Um, they come from everywhere throughout Australia, and like you said, the world as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. South Maroubra, Warilla, and ready to go. So the jet ski there in action. Just still the surf. It definitely has dropped off a little from really yesterday. Has. Probably not a bad thing for team events though. And, but uh, still nice. Oh, stunning day. And they tell me there could be another. Another swirl on its way for later next week. That is what everyone is hoping for. So we need everyone to be manifesting that for <laughs> us. We need some good surf for the uh, the Aussies. But if you like a good mix of caps, just to complete the uh, boys' beach sprint results from yesterday in the under-15 arena there, Jamison Cox from Morty Alec took out a big Aussie win there. Jamison Cox from Morty Alec ahead of Jack Burfield from Grange and uh, Miller Searsat from Garagong. So Jamison, Jack and Miller, congratulations. Under-15 men's beach sprint. Big result there. So more board relay action. Bit of free, is that free net? I need to check my caps really quickly. That yellow Definitely cap. Definitely redhead straight to the front. Yes. And on the knee, so it's not Stuart McLaughlin. Oh, no, I think that was, is that Fingal Beach? They've got the, uh... please hold while we uh, grab liveheats.com because that is where you want to go for all of the draws and the results across the uh, youth, the masters and the senior championships, the surf rescues as well. Liveheats.com. Roman Vikings looks like as well off to a, a good start in the middle. I can see the boys just powering through that surf. There's some, uh, Definitely uh, a different uh, pace here for the first paddlers when they know they need to get their teams in a good position as they come through here. This is uh, the first, I think that's uh, Jackson Brennan actually from uh, the Corumbin Vikings there. He normally has the uh, the rash vest under his competition jerseys there. there. So we'll just grab and I'll look him up on Live Heats. That's what I do love. Live Heats has changed my life. but. You don't have to just search for the event. You can search for athlete. You can search for clubs, all those sorts of things. So strongly recommend if you want to get around that. Plenty yeah, happening at the front. Is Corumban just leading. Redhead, North Bondi. So coming back to Swansea in fourth spot. Qualify here in this uh, board relay. First, always pressure on a first paddler. So much pressure. Because I don't know, always had this saying that first paddlers are, are born, not made. You just know <laughs> the personality of a, of, a, of a first paddler. And it's, there's a little bit, it's a bit like a sprinter. There's a little bit of ego mm-hmm. there. You, you, you want to be 
fit on the front line. You rate yourself as one of the best board paddlers for your age um, in the nation. And you want to get your team off to a best possible start. So um, it's always great to see you'll know when the kids are young, who wants to paddle first is normally the kid that puts their hand up and <laughs> really wants to be a part. Because it is, you're putting your team on your shoulders. And if you're anything outside of being on that first wave, especially at that top level, mm -hmm. I give the kids a little bit of a break. But when you're in that open board relay final or ski relay final, you want to be on that lead wave. And anything outside of that is it, it's isn't tough. It, it, it is tough. And I can confirm that this is quarterfinal number one for the 14-15 men's board relay. And uh, I need to give a bit of a special shout out here. We've got a few of our international teams in action here. We've got a Papamoa Surf Life Saving Club from New Zealand. The B team was number one on the line there. That's Triton Dickens, Sean Leach and James Whitaker. Welcome Papamoa team B there. And then a little further along, Papamoa team A in the mix as well. That's Lachlan Cairns, Luke Gilbanks and Oliver Peppers. So welcome Papamoa. Wonderful to have you here. And if you want to pick their cap, that is a navy and yellow quartered cap all the way from Papamoa. There you go. It's, it's always interesting when one stands up like, I don't quite know that mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm. so, that was good to learn a new one. There's plenty from Amanu yesterday. Yeah, especially in their uh, women's. I you think. know what I always think of Amanu is I, there's this picture, and for those of the surf sports, um, I can't remember where I was. Well, it's always been ingrained in my mind, but Max Beatty, mm -hmm. when he used to race for yep. uh, Amanu, and he's, I think he's won a title or something, and he just comes, and he's absolutely just shredded, it's like full flex. Oh, he's shredded 24-7. But like he was crossing the line full shredded, and he's got the cap on, it's a great shot, fantastic yeah. shot. Yeah, no, big fan of Max. He's had an incredible season with Surfers Paradise. Very much looking forward to seeing him in action. And uh, I know I was listening to the live stream yesterday uh, just for a few bits and pieces. Uh, I think it was Ty and uh, there was someone else they were talking about, you know, Max and the Oroa Club and things like that. And something that I love about Max, if you want to follow him on, him on Instagram, he's actually got his Blackfin number in his Instagram bio. So the Blackfins are the New Zealand uh, National Life Saving Team. Yes. He's Blackfin number 59. And I think that really shows... Uh, the pride that is associated with making that New Zealand National Life Saving Team, being a black team, being part of something super special, especially when we consider that the World Championships will be held in Australia down on the Gold Coast a little later this year. So very much looking forward to welcoming more clubs, not from New Zealand, but from around the world, to our lovely beaches and our lovely pools for the World Championships. Well, board paddling, redhead, synonymous, and continuing it here with the next generation solid opening first leg to set this up. Super solid. And I love that they've still got the pace on Redhead. Some incredible individual results yesterday, especially in those board races as well. You know that they would love to uh, make a little bit of a statement here. Just let everyone know that they are they are here to race. And I think that could be the Redhead Team A in the mix of the 14-15 board relay. That's Rocco Air, William Griffiths and Charlie King. A fantastic start, a strong start for them but again quality field all round this is quarterfinals just having a look at the program yep four quarterfinals so we're thinking maybe top eight through to a semi to a final it's going to be a big one love it little Bondi looking good as well Grange we can just see there on screen gets their second paddler into the water trying to get into that top eight get into the next round just keep on moving through. And uh, just to make things really tricky with Papamoa, who have that navy and yellow quartered cap, we've also got Christie's Beach in the uh, mix in this race here, and they have a black and gold quartered cap. So uh, it's going to be tough for us to pick some of these ones here. So we've got Christie's Beach Team A, Christie's Beach Team B, Papamoa A and B as well. But some really tricky conditions out there as we take a quick little look at a replay. Redhead in action on screen at the moment. Yep, big wave coming and decisions had to be made. See there, look at the rating, gets the rating up. And then bang, probably rolled a little bit late, but still very well executed. Can I make those decisions early? But the thing that he took, he took his board speed into the wave and that's why he came out still on top a very handy lead. Still in a handy lead at the moment, so wonderful to see the Redhead crew uh, do a great job there and you can see they're just settling into those packs now, just getting a little bit of a wash ride and uh, if you wonder what we mean by wash riding, if we say jump on the wash, grab some feet, grab some hips, it's all about making it a little bit easier for you and a little bit harder for your, for your uh, fellow competitors. Yeah, there. drafting never goes astray. Especially We're okay with that in life saving. <laughs> Not in cycling, but you can. I'm okay serve. with it in life, really. <laughs> Wherever you can get a draft, take it. Um, 
Christie's Beach, yeah. Uh, well, we had world titles there. Not in my day. I haven't been to Christie's Beach. I think we might have done master. We might have oh, no masters way. at oh, how lovely. Christie's Beach when world titles were in um, Adelaide. Oh, there you go. In memory in Aquinelle. I don't know why we're at Christie's Beach, but yeah, it was cold too. Mm. From memory, but no it was kidding. great. It was great. What's the coldest place you've raced in? Oh, good question. Raced. That'd be up there. Yeah. That'd be up there. It was. Yeah, it was abnormally cold. Um, I thought you were going to say, what's the coldest place you've ever... No, no, no. But I was, like, I'd say <laughs> cold, but, like, I went for a swim in a glacier lake... Stop it. ...in Wyoming, um, and that uh, that was, um, yeah, that was cold. I think we're talking minus, minus something. Oh. But it was good. I do love yourself. I, I do love that we get to spend time together in commentary and I learn more about your <laughs> oh, life. Yeah, this is always exciting. Well, for those that didn't know, I am a, yeah, I am a weirdo. That's for sure. But you're our weirdo. That's okay. <laughs> no, it's great to be back. And um, I, I love coming back at the end of every summer. And just to, but one, just to keep in touch with everyone, especially for the youth champs as well, to see this next generation coming through. And, um, you know, one day this will be the pinnacle. These will be the superstars of our sport. And it has to start somewhere. They all mm-hmm. started. We all started somewhere. Absolutely. And we can all remember our first Aussies. Certainly, um, certainly you, you don't forget one back in the year. Oh, some great work there of our uh, competitors just trying to uh, hold on to these little runners as long as Way possible. Leaders wage. Redhead rewarded there, a big win. Nice and steady there on the back straps. Keep that nose up. Good work, Redhead. Yeah, I think they a, a good example there as well. Watch. Yeah, Not to go to your stomach too early. Um, stay on your knees for a little bit longer. Take the drop. Um, get out in front of it, then hit your stomach afterwards. You see uh, in some of these younger age groups, they go to their stomach a little bit too early, and sometimes one of two things can happen. Um, You can either lose that board speed and be kicked off the back of the wave totally, or if you come down the wave too quick and you get down too early, the wave can actually fall over the top of you. It puts more at risk, but these leaders, no worries. No worries at all for them. They're in a fantastic position here. This is what we want to see. This is quarterfinal number number one for our composite age group, the men's 14-15 board relay. Two legs down, one leg to go. And Redhead really in the driver's seat at the moment, going through for that final tag. And again, quick off the start, which is what we want to see, but feeling pretty comfortable. We're assuming that it is the top eight through. And uh, just a tricky depth there as well, trying to maintain that board speed. And the neighbours group. there in Swansea. Swansea. Hello, Swansea. That is uh, Kai Cook, Will Patterson and Hamish Ray, the A team for Swansea. And I think that is one of our uh, Papamoa crews right there. It could be the A or the B. Wonderful to see Papamoa in the mix. Yeah, they're up there. I'm assuming it's the A. Well, based on their position on the line, I want to say it's actually the B team. Well, they do swap them around as well. Yeah. Well, they oh, were number... board. oh, no, someone's having a big swim in. That's always a, a tough one. But we can see a few of the boys just signi- signalling to their uh, competitors in there on the beach. And I think if you're getting a bit wobbly, if you're up on the knees, oh, you've got room, champ, you're okay. You know, jump down on your on your stomach. That's when you can uh, get that little bit of extra stability, a little bit of extra balance. Oh, just off a tiny bit too early there in that deeper water. Yeah, range. Excellent, is it? Wow, really charging. Mm. Oh, no, too much speed on the turn. <laughs> too much of a good thing. Uh, and speaking of New Zealand as well, still New Zealand does ever won. The Australian Open Iron title. They've gone close. They've gone nice. close. And having a look at some of those results from the uh, Nutrigrain Iron Series, Olivia Corrin breaking through for her first win. I should say New Zealand's first win uh, in the Iron Is this round. the year? Well, I'll tell you what, Danielle McKenzie has gone close. Uh, I think she's actually over in South Africa at the moment for her kayaking, doing incredible things over there. She's gone close, that incredible finish between her and Naomi Scott at last year's Australian Championships. Naomi held on there. That was really, really tough race. One of the highlights of last Australian Championships. But every year we're getting closer and closer, you have to think. Oh, so late roll there. And that's a great example of decision-making. Won't have too big an effect on redhead out in front here at this level but when it comes to a final and you've got some rivals right next to you it does well to punch through that second one I guess the key takeaway from these youngsters whether it be board or swim you make a decision, make it early um, and you'll be a lot safer and 
better off for it. So, Rubra, second paddle up. Great board speed through there. Into the water. Okay. A lefty. I love oh, the uh, power to weight ratio. It's <laughs> always great. nice. It's doing great. It's almost like a feather on top of the board. Well, speaking of uh, power to weight ratio, uh, Raf Short from Maruchido took a, a win yesterday in the 13 boards uh, boys uh, swim, which was really wonderful to see. And as uh, to use one of Ty Dapper's saying, short in stature, great in heart. And uh, Raf, wonderful to see him on the podium with uh, Finn Bullman from Alex and Harrison uh, Air from Freshwater. That was a great race yes. yesterday, the 13 boys. And Fighters are back. So tell me about Raf. Uh, is Sam's cousin? Is that right? Yes. So Sam Short, obviously, uh, world champion, 400 freestyle, uh, the second fastest Australian all time. Mm -hmm. The dude, let's face it, he's right on the cusp of going sub 440, which is which no one's ever done. 340. Oh, sorry, 340. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll go I don't it. want to brag. I'll I've go. been under 3, 440. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go sub 440. Yeah, sorry, 340. Um, big, yeah, big, uh, big year coming up for him. Obviously, with Paris on the horizon. And again, a lot of our swimmers are doing incredible things. I know you and Christy were having a chat yesterday about being in, it being an Olympic year. You know, some of our life-saving events are being the breeding ground for uh, champions. And uh, one, a few of our athletes in action, Nick Sloman, already confirmed for Paris later this year. Yeah, 10 kilometre in that uh, open water. It's been a, it's been a decade-long journey for him to, to make this um, Olympic team. And so, so stoked for him and the effort that he's put in. And um, obviously up here at the Sunshine Coast and they're um, training out of Noosa and what now at the North Cliff Club mm -hmm. on the Gold Coast as well but five times trained um, sort of race champion and yeah. importantly five in a row five in a row yeah that's incredible and has only been equaled in the water by Guy Hurst and, and Clint Robinson and we discussed last night as uh, Redhead comes down this nice wave if he can win here at Maroochydore make it six straight he'll be the only water competitor in Australian surf life saving history to win six consecutive open titles. Mm. So, what a crazy stat! I know that would be. some incredible stories everywhere you go across the beach in uh, every age group, in every uh, division, in every uh, classification. There's incredible stories being written all of the time. And thinking about Nick, thinking about how great he is, he would be loving these conditions today. So, if we see more of this this time next week on Super Sunday for the Aussie Open Finals, he would be reveling in the Maruchidor conditions right now. Yeah, I, don't think he, I don't think he really knows what the conditions yeah, are. I was going to say he's good enough to win in everything. As long as, it's Let's long, face like, it. as, long as they're... And they are. Like, an Australian Open Final is a long race. Like, they really... They put the cans out mm -hmm. and those the four black and whites are a fair way. Second sometimes, bank at least. Yeah, but, some, but sometimes those four black and whites are a long way off the string as well, which upsets a sprinter like me. <laughs> There's but, nothing worse when you hit the red and yellow and you realise you've still got another 40 yeah, metres to swim out like, to sea. I feel like I spent half my surf sports life just trying to convince the officials to bring the swim cans in closer. We'll be like, come on, just let us go around the first all string. That, come all that, all that. Yeah, one of the two, one of the two. Please. Oh, good to but see you. Here we go, New Zealand. Papa Moa and uh, Christy Munro, our reporter down on the beach, has confirmed it is eight through. So the boys looking very comfortable at the moment, just waiting for live heats to update. This is the 14-15 board relay, and in a, in another arena, uh, quarterfinal number two is already completed. And a congratulations to our teams who will qualify through to the semi. That is Kuchin Team A, Avoca A, Ocean Grove A, Maruchidor A, Northcliff A, Burley Heads Mowbray Park, Mornington and Tugan. So top eight teams, all the A teams from their clubs, they are through. Semi-final top. They are in the semi-finals. And I tell you what, Christy, thanks for all the good intel. What's happening down on the beach? Hello, Jan. I'm down here with the Papamoa team and you are? Lucky you, Kins. Lucky, when have you arrived over? Well, firstly, welcome to our Youth Aussies Day 2. So exciting to have you here. How many have come over from your club and when did you arrive? Uh, we got most of our seniors came over. Uh, I arrived Wednesday, the rest came Thursday. And are you a specialist board paddler or have you been in all of the events this weekend? Uh, I've been in all of the events. Do you have a favourite board paddler, Iron Man, that you look up to? Uh, Joe Collins. Of course, Joe, yes, very well known, both in New Zealand and here in Australia. And what is it about Joe that, that you like or that you um, aspire to be like? He just trains very hard, uh, hard and um, gives it his best all the time. 
He does. He's a great ambassador for our sport. We love watching him race. Um, and all the best for the rest of the weekend. Is there anyone back home that you want to give a special shout out to? Uh, probably my uh, old coach, Jack Bullock. He's uh, helped me come up to the seniors coming up, age group, and uh, yeah. Well, amazing. Yes, thank you to all of the supporters who have helped get you here um, all the way from New Zealand. Enjoy the rest of the competition and good luck for your next rounds. Thank you. See ya. All right. Papamoa. Papamoa. I tell you what. Semi final. When we talk about, you know, who do you look up to, you can't go past Joe Bollins. I am such a fan. Well, is he the, is he the one? Is he the one to do it? He's definitely going to be a chance at his best, isn't he, for an mm -hmm. Australian Open Ironman title. And he said they've come close. He said D-Mac came close. And probably the men, I think um, Corey Hutchings came close back mm -hmm. in the day from memory, maybe a bronze medalist. Um, and, and wow. And something that could work in Joe's favour, he actually took out the Open Ironman at the Murphy Holmes Marucci Classic earlier in this season. So he knows this speech. He's got some good memories here. And uh, again, if I can give him a few little flowers. Before I do, though, if you're uh, posting on your socials, we'd love to be part of the conversation. Please keep us in the loop at hashtag Aussies2024. And the hub is on the uh, website as well. But hashtag Aussies2024. We want to know where you're going. We want to know who you're with. We want to know what you're eating and what you're seeing. And we also will be doing those daily conditions report across the entire Australian Championships. There's a lot to keep an eye on. It's uh, nine big days of competition. And I do love the, the creative that they've used, showing that all of our athletes are rescue ready. They've got the, this is uh, a young lady from Maroochydore. I've seen Alex. I've seen Malula Bar. Brendan Hall. Speaking of Paralympians as well, from Met Calandra, absolute superstar. Seeing him in a lot of the promotional materials as well. No, it's, I think it's good. It's in the modern era as well to just, to do something, to volunteer, to give something for nothing. And it's, I think it's something that can be lost a little bit these days. And everyone's in their own little world and so insular. And just to, to be able to have that ability to volunteer. And I think sometimes when you're young, um, you don't you don't have that compassion part of you is set there at, at, at the start so almost to be forced to volunteer to, to begin is is not such a bad thing and then you realize that you know one of the best the best things in life is is giving giving something for nothing and um and volunteering and, and being a clubby is you know it's a wonderful thing and then being able to come here and and have a race as well and make new friends and see how far you can push yourself is um you know, that's the other side of it. And I think in the water right now, we have the 14-15 female board relay. Three semifinals, tremifinals, if you will. So that is our North Burley Team A that was closest to us. And have a look at this team. Savannah Bush, Mika Look. Mika Locke and Ryan Spence. Ryan, of course, picking up a few big gold medals yesterday. Savannah, Mika and Ryan leading the way there in the 14-15 board relay. Three Tremi finals, so assuming they'll take six through for this one. So, again, it was eight for the boys qualifying, only six for the girls. So, no easy Tremis, no easy heats. Ah, for but final spot on the line. Finals on the line, top six ladies. And uh, returning to my previous conversation, Joe yes. Collins, if I can just uh, tell you some wonderful things tell about me, tell me him. Tell me more about him. So he, he won a big race. He won the Open Iron at the Murphy Holmes Marucci Classic earlier this season. And is, that, that, is that like the, used to be the Just Jeans? Used to be Just oh, Jeans. Used to be uh, summer, six, uh, summer 66, whatever it was. Uh, but yeah, we always used, from Emi Park, we used to travel down for Just Jeans, States and Aussies. They were our three okay, big, big races three. that we'd come down for. So Joe had a fantastic race. He'd sort of been without a win for a little while during the season and he broke through. It was a tough race. He had to grind and he got there. And he always gives a good, good interview, which I always appreciate. He uh, he always has a bit to say. He's got some really great opinions. But the way he spoke so respectfully about the race, which is the Robbie Thomason Memorial. So, again, one of yeah. our incredible competitors, Robbie Thomason, a former um, Australian champion. And he just spoke about... The Australian you know, junior Ironman Yeah, he, and, and Joe spoke so kindly about being part of something special. You know, he's always admired Marucci Door as a club. It's something special to be a part of. I think I fell a little bit in love with him that oh. day. Yeah, it was really wonderful. But again, great competitor. He's had an amazing season. Cannot wait to see what he puts together for a few big races later in this week. Well, if anyone can do it, he can do it. And just adds another another factor to that open Ironman final that we can talk about all day because there's so many stories and, and um, 
computations of, of how it's going to unfold and history will be made once again here in this one. Be comfy, surprises, big clubs at the front. There's some great teams. pretty comfy, but great on the chase, the North Burley, Sunshine Beach, Minor Beach, South Maroubra, group of four. We've also got Redhead in the mix here, Alex Team B, Scarborough, Sorrento is here, Mermaid, Wanda and Grange as well. So a few big teams in action and again the ladies racing across two arenas and um, this is where I love live heats as well, all the uh, athletes you might have seen during some of the interviews, they've got uh, a, a whole bunch of numbers down their arm and it basically yeah, what is that? let me tell you tell let me, me tell you what that it. is all about and i love that obviously the parents or the team manager they know that they need to send their athletes down to the line knowing what event they're in and more importantly what number they are for that race because it's a lot more um, self-marshalling now and it means that it's just so much more efficient um, as they come down to the line they know i'm in this race i'm in this position they get lined up they de get checked off and if you've noticed all of our athletes at the championships wearing a wristband as well that is connected to the live heat system and as they marshal and as they finish their races boop uh, you know the the phone comes out they get scanned in and the system uh, updates automatically so if you want to know what the results are as soon as they get scanned in that will be updated at liveheats.com so basically you know as soon as we know what the results are which is quite special very cool very cool the chase on here Maruchido looking comfy out in front yeah let me figure out who is in that one there on the zebra board yeah I do uh, what was your board colours back in the day? What sort of uh, designs were you putting green, together? Green, green and silver. And I always got very upset if anyone tried to copy me. <laughs> but, uh, this is a Kurt Hansen signature series, how exactly, dare you? Exactly, exactly. Everyone's got their, their thing. A lovely leader's wave here, Maruchido, Yumana Beach. Oh, what a way Sunshine to come through. Fantastic work for the ladies there. And you can see they readjust, they move back a little bit on the double up, which is about to be a triple up as well. Oh, you might no, 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 hold on. Just off the back and just lost contact, but in pretty shallow water. Oh, Shouldn't she's have done two a big great impacts. job. Maruchido, Sunshine Beach in one and two as they come up and around. So, uh... Having a look at the teams here, Marichidor, we've got Ava Williams, Ruby Tricky Williams, and Ruby Williams in the mix there. Let me grab a minor crew. So two Ruby Williams? Yeah, looks like it. She's got a busy day. And then uh, your minor team A, we've got Leilani Carpenter, Marley Hoyland, and Lily James, Sunshine Beach TV. Have a look at this. Neve Arthur, Claire Cameron, and Ava Gooderham. What a superstar team right there. The team from Sunshine, the red cap with the black and gold stripe. Whoa! Wahee! A little, speedy, bumper, speedy. a little bump around the flags there. There you Bit go. Bit of contact. Redhead, Kudjan, and North Burley. So Kudjan, that is the uh, far left-hand side of the screen, the white cap with the uh, pale blue star. And again, we need to keep explaining these caps because there's just so many of them. I know uh, we've all got, we all know a few of them. There you go, Alexandra Headlands, that special centenary cap. And they're wearing it for the next two seasons, I've been told. Oh, I thought it was just this one. No, there I think you go. they're in again for next year Embracing also. Embracing it embracing it further good stuff and uh actually harold and i were absolutely stumped yesterday we saw a cap that we could not pick Ooh. we were looking at the cap guide we were looking at the international cap guide. Shot it <laughs> well i'll see if i can do it because um and then from a very wonderful post yesterday afternoon we were able to pick it then so this is great for radio so i'm showing kurt a cap it is a red cap with four white stripes We'll take a look at these. Uh, this is your thinking time replays. while we watch a replay. <laughs> yeah, think about it. There you go. Sunshine, you minor, and Maruchido. So, Sunshine, top of the screen in the red cap, you minor, the black, the white, and the pale blue. Maruchido, closest to screen here. So, just keep your eye on you minor. Really tricky conditions here. The girls go down. The double up, the oh, triple up. Just see, just got a nose up, but then just that split second too late to get back. Down she actually off. did really well to hold on as long as she did. The first bit was good, and then yeah. here's a little bump. Oh, <laughs> hey, a little bump around the corner there. No love lost. North Philly and Redhead. Oh, can't wait for this final. <laughs> but Sunshine Beach. Sunshine Beach. Okay, so I quiz of the day: red cap, four white stripes. It's not on the club cap, club cap guide. Swinburne? No. Is it? Brighton. 
Brighton. Normally a full red cap, and uh, the reason that we found that out was because Brighton Surf Life Saving Club had something very special to celebrate yesterday, a gold medal and Australian championship to under-13 competitor Evie Cornish, winning the under-13 girls sprints at Mooloola yesterday afternoon. So Evie Cornish, what a superstar, Australian champion, and allowed us to identify and celebrate their special cap that they're wearing this year. So, all right. So, what's Brighton's? Brighton's just all red normally. Isn't all it? red, yeah. and that is where uh, John Baker ESM comes. Or John Baker, I think he's got a new personal model now. Uh, our president. Uh, yeah, I love Bakes. Good guy. We'll go back a long way. I want to know what Swanbourne is now. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what. If you want to learn some club caps, come to the Australian Championships, and more importantly, come down to the youth competition. You will see nearly every cap in action, along with a few of our international friends as well. Yeah, and this is the magic of. Of the youth, um, oh, there we go. It's one more Netherlands. It's just the one white stripe, mm-hmm. not four. Yeah, Port C in Victoria. That's got the two white stripes on the red background there. We saw quite a few uh, caps from uh, Blackhead yesterday. They've got the uh, black in there as well. Reckless Minchinichula, who we mentioned for the R and R. Their club uh, club cap looks a little bit like a Pokemon. It's red with the uh, black and looks white like over the ears. It's a little bit Deadpool. <laughs> choose your genre. Choose your uh, maturity rating, Pokemon or Deadpool. There, but Reckless doing some wonderful things. They uh, picked up a few big medals last year in the Australian Championships, and wonderful to see them back in action here. A lot, a lot closer to home. They're one of the uh, Sunshine Coast branch clubs as well, just uh, just up near Brisbane. And here on screen, Sunshine Beach, just um, just up the road. A club that and an area that just seems to be booming just mm-hmm. south of Noosa. Yep. Um, discussing yesterday, probably one of the hottest real estate spots, not just <laughs> in Australia but on the planet. All uh, yeah, when you win a lot of it's the first stop. Yep, we'll all, we'll all head up to Sunshine Beach and uh, apply for uh, some board paddling lessons because the ladies showing how it's done at the moment. They've got a really incredible group of uh, men and women, women coming through. Very much looking forward to seeing them uh, race in the Opens as well. Dylan Wilson, one of their superstars this year, very much looking forward to seeing what he uh, has coming up. And Pushing, oh, look at this, push, go, go, go. Down, 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 still going, still going. Oh, the double Just off up. the back, but might be able to take this uh, next one. And I think I'm really pleased we got this shot because it shows just how tricky the conditions are and how much our athletes are really going to have to work to uh, make the most of these. And she's done that absolutely beautifully. Yeah, nicely. The little double up will pay dividends. She'll come back home over the top of the one that she missed. That's right into the beach. Great skills here from Sunshine Beach. So, uh, Jaden Wesberg now in charge there and doing a great job. Josh Minogue was there coaching for five years <laughs> yeah, he and handed on to the Bergs that have been there now for, for two seasons and, and Electra Outram's there yeah, now at Sunshine Beach and things. just discuss that it helps for a club like Sunshine Beach to have a headline star when you've got a superstar like any franchise or, or team when you've got a big name star build it and the youth from coming from up, up through the nippers and they combine in the middle and all of a sudden you, you can really draw some big numbers and and become a you know a powerhouse. Absolutely, Electra has had such an incredible season. Watching her uh, requalify for the Nutrigrain Ironwoman series, uh, she had a, a few seasons out. She's rested, she's recuperated. She has come back stronger than ever. Seeing how fearlessly she races against the uh, Nutrigrain Ironwoman has been super special. It's been wonderful uh, watching her in Sunshine Beach on screen at the moment. But we're going to cross down to Chris or cross down to the beach. Hello, Jen. Yes, I'm down here with Shisha Harvey. She's one of our Alex Nippers. And Sirsha, your big sister's out there racing right now. How is she going? She's going pretty well. She's coming, I think she's coming around the can and coming in on a wave now. She is in the Killer B team here at Aussies. So she'll be fighting hard for one of those qualifying waves. I can see her coming down a comfortable wave there. What's the best thing? You're obviously too young to race at these youth Aussies, but what's the best thing about being down here for the last two days? The best thing about being down here is seeing the competitiveness and seeing those groups of people coming in on those waves and just running into the finish line and just seeing who comes first and second and third. And I can see you have been up to our Race 1 tent yesterday and met some of our famous Iron Men and Iron Women. Who's your idol? Well, I mean, you are. You're Kristen Monroe. Um, and then also Taylor Halliday and Cooper Williams. 
love that. Repping the Alex team. Sirsha, you are a fierce competitor and we are so excited to um, watch you as you progress through the Nipper ranks and on to youth Aussies. All the best for your training. What's one thing you could say to your fellow Nippers who are also wanting to make it this far? Uh, just keep training and you just have to love what you do and just have to keep going and pushing hard even if you feel like to stop. You just have to keep going because in that moment of time that could change a whole race or even a day. I love that. Really wise words from such a young racer. We can't wait to see you in the future. We'll get back to the race and cheer on Zoe and the Alex team. Thank you. Wow. What a superstar. And when to motivational uh, speaking courses I begin. want. I want to sign up. I, want, I need lessons from her. But uh, also a really great nudge there as well. I think we do have more Race 1 signings happening at 12 o'clock today, 12 o'clock on Sunday. And have a look at this lineup. We've got Finn Askew, George Miller, Zach Morris, Olivia Corrid and Joe Collins, our two Kiwi stars. And that looks to be uh, Lucy Derbyshire as well. So 12 o'clock, Festival Zone, Race 1 tent. Get up there, get some merch, get some signatures. Yo, great to have our stars of the sport. <laughs> oh, yeah, what a tell. What about those earrings as well? Mm. At the, uh, Love it. The Alex uh, earrings on. But... No, super star. But uh, that was a really great question that Christy, Ma Christy asked as well in terms of, and you just spoke about with Sunshine Beach, that you've got to... It's lovely when you get to like cheer for someone and you've got your idols and you've got those really special people that you look up to. When you were coming through, who was your person? Who, who, who were you looking at saying, that's what I want to be, that's what I'm striving towards? Oh, that's a, that's a very good question. Yeah. Look, um, I know Sean Davis, who um, is a uh, um, head coach there at um, North Kirkhill as well. And I remember in the gym um, at Fresh, we used to have this niche grain uh, picture and it was Sean's obviously a you know, phenomenal surf swimmer. And oh, we used to nickname him the gorilla because he's just so big. And there's this <laughs> shot of him coming out of the water and he is just huge. Him and Dean Peters, and he is just huge. And I just remember thinking, oh, I just want to be that big. <laughs> I want to be that guy. I just want to be a big, bad dude. And I think it was kind of cool because not from an, um, as much an iron background, but just as a, um, you know, a surf, a surf swimmer, surf race, um, belt race kind of style to see that they... They still had that bravado and they could still come to the beach and have a bit of aura about them. And yeah, so um, Shawnee Davis is, um, I've always looked up to him, lovely guy, and he's done such a great job at uh, the North Kelly Knights over the last few years with, with their success at, at this younger level. Yeah, just thinking of Jack taking out that Matt Barclay Memorial yesterday, fantastic mm. racing, but even better surf happening right now. Oh, have a look at this. Down. We had three on there. Who's going to be there at the end? Maruchi or Sunshine. They are safe. They are through. The girls take a quick look over. And we've lost the other one. Oh, oh no, board. she's lost her board. Yeah, race away. Tough race. Now, oh. tough swim as well. The inside Maritidor and Sunshine Beach are fine. Will this have implications? Well, it's top eight through. Christy has confirmed that for us down on the beach. So at the moment, it looks like Sunshine Beach and Maritidor, they are clear. They are safe here. And I do love that the girls are still putting on a little bit of a little bit of effort here as they come through, staying safe in those potholes. Big run up the beach, Maruchidor one, Sunshine two, and we just need to make sure uh, that competitor who did lose her board, hoping that she is still going to be fine out there and uh, hopefully doesn't get passed by too many board paddlers as she's swimming home. Oh, love it. But I think uh, yeah, fairly well spread out. <gasps> there you go, top six for board girls board relay. Christy says, ooh, six. top six. There's Marina Beach crossing. There. North Burley. Just having a little sneaky look around. Yeah. Checking what's happening. Not much doing. Kudjan. Okay, that is four. Okay, now it gets a little bit more serious now that we uh, are learning top six only through I wonder if one of our ladies who uh, lost their board earlier that could uh, have some serious repercussions not only on this race but the qualifications through to the final so that looks to be four girls across the line no five you're yeah, right five. your minor was in there as well five so this is going to be number six this is going to be a final qualifier for tremi final number one for the 14 15 female board relay so, yeah, six across the line Oh, here we go. Oh, was it no. That was it. Just couldn't hold it straight. Lost the board off screen, but these two did really well. 
Look how far back uh, Maruchidor is on her board. She is behind the back straps. That is great work. Sunshine, a little I mean, bit more. I see the board just scooting way here on its own. But... That's a big swim in. Yeah, I think they were. They got there. Oh, what a drop. Yeah. Just skimming the water. They look over. Oh, yeah. They probably saw their fellow competitor there. They want to keep it straight. Oh, no. Any angle that you're, you're coming in on when that wave breaks, it's just going to flip that board straight up and clip a rail. Saw there, so. And again, even though we're saying that maybe the surf isn't as big as yesterday, still really tricky conditions out there, and I can't wait to see when we uh, get to that finals package how it continues to change. But Christy, down on the beach, how's things? Thank you, Jen. I'm down on the beach with Frey from Kujen. You were the fifth qualifier through, unofficially, I believe, only taking six through. That must have had the heart rate going. Yeah, it was really tough because I was in second. My teammates got me second, and then I just nose dived on the way, so I had to body surf and swim all the way in. <sighs> yeah. We saw that you weren't the only one to get a little bit unstuck on that back bank. It's still really heavy. It's probably a bit deceiving from the beach, but how heavy is it out there? Yeah, it's pretty heavy. I got held under for a while, but I didn't necessarily notice that. I sort of got clipped by the um, top of the waves. Yeah. There's wind, there's side chop, there's a little bit of backwash. It's all happening out there. Your skills are fantastic. doesn't really matter what happened in this heat. You've qualified through to survive the next round. What are you going to do? How are you going to reset? And maybe what's the tactic going into the, ne the next round of the board relay? Um, maybe if I'm in a good spot like that, I don't need to take off on the massive ones because I probably didn't need to. I would have made it still, I think. So, yeah, just be a bit more smart. You've maybe got your bad luck out of the way, which is great to do that in these early rounds. I'll let you get back to your tent and have a drink and some food and a rest and reset for the next round. We can't wait to see you. Thank you. Oh, fantastic interview right there. And some really um, immediately showing that maturity of what will I do differently next time? What have I learnt from this experience? And uh, just loving seeing Kuchin getting through fifth position there. So confirming those results. There we go. Maruchido, Sunshine, New Minor, North Berlier, Kuchin, Wanda, unfortunately, Redhead and South Maroubra, they are out and um, they will not be progressing through to the final for the 14-15 board relay. I was looking forward to the North Berlier Redhead matchup again. <laughs> Around I'm sure the flags it'll be there. somewhere. But, uh, yeah, it's been a great uh, competition so far for Kujin. Phoenix Preston yesterday taking out the surf race. I'm sure so you can see the caps and I think straight away Scotty McCartney. Um, obviously, I was up there at Kujin and um, so much success. Um, Julio Sullivan as well, that's where she started mm -hmm. off. And uh, phenomenal club for board paddlers and was to see them pick up a win for a swim. Yep, fantastic work for Phoenix. So that is actually all of our Tremi finals for the 14-15 female board relay completed. So it's uh, the race that we just saw there, Maruchidor, Sunshine, New Minor, North Burley, Kujin and Wanda are through. From uh, heat number two, we had Cooks Hill, Burley Heads, Mowbray Park, Anglesey, Trigg, Dickey Beach and Alex in the mix. So great to see Anglesey and Trigg up there. And then for heat number three, it was Newport, North Cottesloe, Avoca, North Burley and Ocean Grove. So quite a few different states represented there. Looking forward to that final for the 14-15 female board relay. And we can see all up and down the beach here. Lots of events in action. It's all about the teams today. Board relays to start. We've also got uh, surf teams a little later today as well, which you and I enjoy. A Cameron relay and the board rescues. Yeah, it looks like maybe some 13, 14 semis coming to a close. Double check that. And those board relays. It's semi one in the orange arena. Just going to do a quick little weather check, see what the bomb says is happening for Maruchidor today. Yeah, top of uh, 27 or so. No rain over the next few days, but Wednesday when we come back for the Open Championships. A little bit of rain starting Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all the way through to that final day of racing. So there you go. Mostly sunny, light winds, maybe south southeast, 13k an hour wind. A little bit on the gust and maybe 60 or so percent humidity. That is the weather report brought to you by Jen Perry <laughs> and the Bureau of Meteorology. <laughs> so it looks like top eight trying to go through here. Pushing off that first semi of the 13s, 14s. Cooks look good, Trig, uh, Sunshine Beach. Pretty high tide up that way as well, just seeing that there's not a lot of distance, Alex. not a lot of sand between the tents, the athletes and the water. 
True. Sawtell looks like they've hooked a spot in the final. Mm-hmm. Wait, official yeah. results. Surfers Paradise in the mix. Don't see too many surfers caps in uh, in the junior racing, but we actually did see a Surfers Paradise uh, cap on the uh, podium yesterday for the under 13 boys. Ari Hamill took a silver medal behind Tyler Johnson, and uh, then it was Felix Fords of uh, Yamba. So Tyler, Ari, and Felix, fantastic work there. Have a look at this Sunshine Coast promo shot right there. Gorgeous. Where else would you rather be? I'm going to call it the Sunshine Coast for nothing. The sun is out, guns out, Super Sunday, and it is Teams Day here at the Aussie Youth Championships. Great to have you with us on the live stream, whether you're watching throughout Australia or the world. They're in the live zone as well. Taking a bit of a break from the beach. And uh, nice, nice, nice time to pause and say that the Aussies are supported by uh, the Queensland Government through Tourism and Events Queensland. I think Christy said yesterday, don't tell everyone, don't let the secret out. Manas, I am so sorry. Everyone knows already. But if you want to be uh, part of the action and discover your next Queensland event, jump onto queensland.com forward slash events. And uh, Sunny Coast as well, the Sunny Coast uh, Council. You can see their logo in the uh, bottom left of screen. Incredible supporters, part of our village that it, uh, that it does take to put on an incredible event like this. I think it's... Uh, 8,500 competitors over the next nine days will be here to be part of the Aussies and uh, the Sunny Coast definitely welcoming all competitors, spectators and busy visitors for the Aussies you can stay on and explore the pristine beaches or refresh, refresh and relax in the breathtaking Sunshine Coast hinterland. Discover the coast while you're here and visit uh, check out visitsunshinecoast.com Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Gorgeous day, and I actually uh, actually met some of our sponsors from Ampol yesterday. They're one of Surf Life Saving Australia's uh, major national partners. So welcome to the team from Ampol. And as we have a look at these gorgeous shots, we're going to head back down to Christy on the beach. All from Sawtell just qualified through in that board relay. Did enough really? Saved some energy for the final. How has your morning been so far? Uh, yeah, really good. We have a really good team down here. Uh, we qualified through. This has been our first event of the day. Yeah, we're feeling good. Very famous surf club, yours, with um, the Hancock family, and particularly Bonnie and Courtney, originating from the club of Sawtell. I'm sure you've got some amazing coaches and supporters helping helping you down there. Anyone you'd like to give a shout-out to? I'd like to give a shout-out to Greg Russell and Todd Adamson for coaching us through the season. They've been really great. They've been helping us out heaps. And what are some of your coaching involved? We're being joined here by some teammates. <laughs> what is your coaching um, and what have your sessions involved this year? Uh, we've been doing a wide re variety of things as beach running, board training, swim training, lots of running and swimming. Yeah. And we've got your Sawtell teammates. How great was that? Through to the final, guys. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Aussie's final. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, amazing. What's the goal for the final? Oh, win? Yeah. Yeah, get the yeah, goal. That's, that's always the goal to win. Yeah. Well, all the very best of luck. We'll be cheering you on. Go Sawtell! Yeah. Yeah. I love the confidence. Thanks, Christy. Thanks to the uh, boys from Sawtell. Love the gear. Final. Yeah, the gear looks good. It's the home of the Hancock sisters. At home of the, well, for those showing their age, the DeKal brothers. They were phenomenal paddlers, Trent and Joel. Trent was one of the best board paddlers uh, you'll ever see uh, back in the 90s, that's for sure. And start this year for the 14s, 15s board relay. Semi final Burley Kudja, North Burley, Tugan, Northcliffe, Warrnambool, La Boca Beach, Sunshine Beach. Just keep coming. We're in Barry Point in the mix as well. This could be a final, having a look at the clubs that we have in action and knowing how strong those clubs are in the 14, 15 age groups as well. We had the individual events yesterday, so we know how good these uh, crews are individually. And that's Archie uh, from Burley Heads at Mowbray Park, closest to us on screen at the moment. Had a little chat to him yesterday down on the line. He is always good uh, for a few little tips and insights. So Archie from Burley Heads Mowbray Park lining up. Paddler number one, a little bit of pressure on him for Burley Heads Mowbray Park. No pressure. They love it. They eat up the pressure, these first paddlers. Also in there, didn't get the second page, but North Bondi, Grange, Burley Heads, second team, Newport and Manly as the gun goes. And you put your best first. That's what you want. Best paddlers. 
lead from the front. And, well, they don't get much bigger or much better, that's for sure. And Kingston Low, what about that win what yesterday in the today? 15s board? It wasn't a win. Oh, back shooter there as well Archie. for Burley. So Archie with some work to do. He'll fire up. But for Low, uh, win start to finish. He looked the winner from the first 10 metres. It was over. Bang. He yeah. got aggressive and got after it and trying to get back to the front here now. But now, look at these sets. Why are they stopping? <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. why. That's solid. That's probably the set of the day. Look at them all gone. So wiped out. So all of a sudden, Archie's mistake. It was all part of the plan. Yeah, he planned that. Yeah, he that planned was, it. He uh, planned it. Nothing to see here. Wow, wait. We always get nervous when we're like, why are they stopping? What's oh, going on here? Oh, just sneaks over the top Crunchy. of that. So he's not the... Uh, under 15 Australian board champion for nothing. Straight back out in front again. For his Northwood club, Sunshine Beach. Right there as well. Wow, what a uh, dramatic start to the 14-15 uh, board relay. We're really Barrick Point tucking in beautifully there as well. And again, Kingston Low, he was great at the Queensland Championships. Had a few really, uh, really strong individual and team races. But to see him lift again for the Australian Championships, to see him just dominate yesterday really really special and now in action I'd be putting him first in my board relay any day of the week and oh Sunshine having a little sneaky look around oh, and oh no Lay down paddler, looks like there, so. that is uh, always a sad sight <laughs> just the board unaccompanied at the uh, at the water's edge there and uh, someone just having a little swim back oh he's got a nice little wave though he, he's making hard up for though it. in a team like so hard yeah, in a team brutal. event it's over now and um don't know how it worked. Like, do you go back out? Do they? Do the officials come and give you the tap? And be like, no. I don't, they used to have a rule. Is it North Bondi here? We'll go back out and have a go. I don't know if they have the rule about the lap rule. If you get laps, I then... think it's generally, uh, yeah, a lapping or a, some sort of time cap. And, yeah. and uh, actually, I have to say. Um, for the uh, Queensland Championships, we had a few of the athletes popping into the booth from the senior events to okay. come down cool. during the juniors. And uh, we had uh, Mitch Morris come in, and uh, obviously he's an incredible competitor in his, in his own right. And I was like, oh, I'm interested to see how he goes in commentary to give us some chat. He was an absolute superstar. And I think what I really appreciated about the chat so, chat so much, because we were watching a, a few of these really tough events where some of our athletes were getting lapped, and he was really open. And he's a superstar. He's like oh yeah, I've been like before, I've false started and we basically just talked yeah. about all of these mistakes we've made, all yes. of these not so wonderful things that we've had happy had happened to us in our races and just him showing a little bit of vulnerability emphasising with these athletes and saying, yeah, we've all been there, it's not great, but it happens and it's Ooh. okay and you learn from it and here we go, Kingston Low Sunshine push, Beach, push. trying to go, go, go not this time, just off the bat but yeah, we've all been lapped, Kurt it happens it happens. It's okay. You'll be all right, Chip. <laughs> I love the tap on the shoulder from, or, or standing on the line uh, waiting for your teammate to come and he gets laps and then you get the tap on the shoulder from the official. It's all like, over. Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that's really important to recognise. So nice. while we do celebrate, you know, incredible athletes like Kingston Lowe who are out in front at the moment doing incredible things, the Aussies in particular our junior competition, it's all about rocking up trying to get out of your heat, trying to make a semi-final, maybe get into a final, let alone get on the podium, and uh, recognising that things don't always go to plan, but uh, you're going to learn from it, you're going to build, you're going to uh, learn some resilience, because that is what surf is going to teach you. The ocean will humble you. Oh, and, oh Kingston, there you go, no. humbled a little bit there, off a bit early. Luke Lewis there for Sunshine Jeez, Beach. Louise. Wow, first paddlers. Transition. I told you. Yeah, it's the ego of a first paddler as well. They don't want to lose. They don't want to give up anything. It's only a semi-final. And they're treating it like it's a final. I love the speed around the transitions there. This is what we want to see. It's a Sunshine Beach in one, Northcliffe in two as they come through. Have a look at that board speed that they uh, can maintain from the run into these initial paddles. And uh, really keen to see if the, how consistent the surf is in this arena. We, this is where we saw the boys stop, wait, Pause, get ready for that set coming through. And, oh, the double oh, up immediately. Pop. That's tough. And that allows Northcliffe to take advantage of uh, that little unfortunate timing uh, position there. But we're with a Barrick point in the mix as well now in third position. But uh, Northcliffe determined uh, to uh, make the most of the situation. Yeah, it was such a fun. If we can, um, it'd be awesome to get that replay of that first leg. But uh, going out when they all stopped, but we couldn't see the wave <laughs> on screen, they're like... 
What is happening? We knew what was happening. There was a big wave coming. That was easily the biggest oh, wave of the day. So just. yeah, he's just and that's it. Gap now. Roll. So two rolls. So that's uh, just that one pop mistake, and then you get caught inside. And look at that gap now. Northcliffe opens it up quite nicely over Sunshine Beach and Warilla Barrack Point. And this is what we saw yesterday in those irons late yesterday afternoon. Tyler from Alex, he just snuck under a few of the race, uh, a few of these uh, big waves out the back and immediately 20 metres difference on the rest of the field. And uh, I think one of the benefits of having the uh, live stream here is that we immediately get to see, oh, the replay just up over. It was and, just uh, timing. It was hard. Yeah, a little double up. Gosh. Didn't really have time to get set and just got pushed back and then... And that was a beautiful textbook pop there on a, a bit of a smaller wave. But what cost then the Sunshine Coast competitor is now when that bigger wave comes out as another pop nicely executed. And it's only, what, two board length lead to Northcliffe, and that's all you needed just to get under this next wave. But Northcliffe really rewarded there. You can see how fast he is moving right now. He knows that there's a gap. Have a look at the uh, leg yeah, and, and arm see there's speed. a wave coming Woo! just over the top. So he makes it. Big gap now, second paddler. First of two semi finals here, 14s, 15s, male board relay championship of Australia. And Christy has confirmed eight through for this one. So uh, great to get that confirmation. She was listening when they were getting their briefings down there on the start line. And uh, the chase is on. Who wants to be a part ooh, of the eight? Top eight only going through. Woodson, uh, Warrnambool, North Burley, Burley. Everyone's in there. Now, we have spoken about Sortel a fair bit today already and uh, thinking about the athlete signings that are happening up in the festival zone. Breaking news, something very special to share. Uh, Courtney Hancock is actually going to be up in the Finns tent at 12.15 today. They're giving out a lot of Finns caps for the kids. So you may have been seen in, uh, may have seen all the uh, Finns swimwear advertised just for the Aussies uh, recently and Courtney, one of their ambassadors. 12.15 today, jump up there. I might see if I can get a signature as well, grab a free cap as well from Courtney Hancock, one of the uh, superstars of our sport at the Finns tent. Uh, I love Courts. Such um, you know, an incredible athlete, but awesome person as well. So. Yeah, great to have her in commentary a little later in the week. Yeah, Looking forward to spending some time. Too, you guys, Look, right. I can uh, live tweet it for you as well. I'll be watching. Just, yeah. I'll be watching, taking notes. <laughs> but how is this Northcliffe an incredible performance? We see the Northcliffe cap, the uh, white cap with the maroon star. This is the tough part of the race. Not a lot of water moving around, just a little bit. You have to make your own luck here, and there you go, rewarded. Hopefully this will turn into something for him. And right. what a shot there, the Westpac. Surf Rescue Helicopter in action at the moment. We've just passed an incredible 50-year sponsorship milestone wow. between Westpac and Get Surf Rescue in Australia. But have a look at that. Just the eye in the sky, keeping us safe. I love you can see they've got the uh, red and yellow cap on the top of the Cute. Westpac helicopter as well. But a shout-out to uh, not only those incredible pilots and rescue crew there, but Westpac over 50 years of sponsorship with Surf Life Saving Australia. There would not be too many uh, businesses in Australia putting their money where their mouth is in that way for such an incredible period of yeah, time. Yeah, what a partnership. And uh, he's hoping, no doubt, it'll continue for another 50 as the boys hit the beach. And again, the pace. Woof. No love loss between Sunshine Beach. Sunshine Beach. Nice fight back after uh, getting caught inside. Oh, <laughs> officials. Team manager. Team just, manager uh, cutting it fine getting a little excited there and uh, actually that's quite important you really do need to keep your head on a swivel when you're down on the beach True. especially when they are reversing some of those courses I got caught out yesterday uh, just trying to keep an eye on what was happening and uh, I love that this is the pace that we're seeing in a semi-final Northcliffe and Sunshine Beach really getting ready for the showdown that looks to be Jake Mail from uh, North Burley an incredible paddler there but uh, is that Warnable? Yeah no. Warnable. Yep. So still the action is out the front, one and two, eight through here. And we can see just as those waves roll across the arena, a little bit of luck on the start line where your uh, position is there really does uh, come into play. Well, Rilla Barrick Point determined to stay in this top eight next door to oh, Newport. Oh, my gosh. Almost a carbon copy of what we saw in that I second like leg. we've been here before. <laughs> Deja vu. Oh, no. A big roll and a roll with no speed. So... And get taken back. Wait a minute. Rilla, Rilla, Rilla. has entered the conversation. They have. So Burley Burley, yeah. no break back. Talk about getting speed coming into a wave. You need to generate speed. You can't just sit there 
and just roll and expect good things to happen because that water is pushing back. So late decision there, gets a back shoot. Late roll as well from Sunshine Banks. And here should have built up more speed and taken it in, but then almost no speed caught in dead water. And then it all goes and pushes back to the beach. And also really important, you've got to get that nose down when you're rolling as well and keep that board as close to your body as possible. I remember one coach to, uh, saying to us, you basically want to have your forehead on the board. You want to be that close in to uh, maintain the control as best you can. But wowee, we have a new leader now with Willa Barrett Point uh, just ahead of Northcliffe. Burley Heads Mowbray Park tucked in on the inside. And again, eight are going through, so our early leaders still do look safe. But the fact that we're seeing this sort of drama in a semi-final... Cannot wait for the big one this afternoon. Mm, the speed, the speed of this semi, especially at the front. They just have not let up. And uh, the exuberance of youth, Jenny. Loving it. Wonderful. Loving to, it. <laughs> to bring it. There's no, they're not just going to take the uh, the foot off the pedal. They are going for it. They're pretty tightly bunched so too. Kudrin here, so Kudrin is five. Second Burley Heads Mowbray Park is six. Second Sunshine Beach is seven. Warnable. Eight, nine, ten. <laughs> oh, they're all close to poker pieces. And a there, so. so we've got ten on screen Range. at the moment. So they're not, no, it's a second separating them. So this wave zone is going to be big. Manly there, trying to bring a miracle out and get in the top eight. Another Marilla team, Newport. Have a look how close they are. This is uh, a little different to some of the other races that we've seen, but we are now at semi-final. So. We, we know that the pace is on as we get that gorgeous shot in the very background there. You can see uh, Point Cartwright, the big water tower with the mural on there. I remember when they ran the big competition of painting that mural because it was such a, a landmark up the top there. But coming in a little closer, this is where it gets exciting. I tell you what, a very set exciting. starting to come through now for a few back markers could really change who's in that top eight because this is not the pack I was expecting oh, at this late stage of the race. Up. They're bunched up. So this is a lead group of six. And this way... Pick this one up, probably a little bit too full. And this is going to open the door for the backpackers. The closer that they get through, the closer they get into that deeper water with no wave. Here's a wave. And you think the lead six are going to be on this. They're waiting. No one wants a late takeoff. Burley Heads Mowbray Park, two in the mix here. The first Burley Head Mowbray Park might be. Nah, he's good. He's good. Keep that nose up, champ. Okay, so top six. They'll look pretty comfy as long as they can hold this wave. Oh, crash down. Love seeing the colours of the caps yeah, and the boards. Early heads, Northcliffe, Coogin, Warilla. Having a little chat. Burley. And that second Burley. So six through, two to come. Two to come. I think we might have a uh, run up the beach in action soon. Boys just leaning back, keeping the uh, the weight on the back of the board. They know oh, they're in the top sprinting. six. Oh, no, it eases up a little. Okay. He just wants I was going to say, they're not gonna, surely not going to sprint too hardcore. So these six are through. Burley, Warilla, Coogin, North Burley, Burley, North oh, Cliff, and here we go. On oh, the can, some, on oh, the on the flag. flag. So finish off here. Avoca, Avoca Sunshine. Avoca Beach, Sunshine Beach, and so Warnham, oh, Chugan, sorry, Chugan. so Chugan and Warnable to just miss, it looks like. What a finish. That is fantastic. The waves really coming into play in every single leg here. Now, we don't think these boys are going to qualify through, but I would be expecting these boys to be up and running because you never know. There might be a DQ ahead of you. Something may have gone wrong. Ah, you just don't want to be beaten. Yeah. You don't want to be beaten. I think uh, Grange may have... Uh... <laughs> I don't know what Grange was doing there. Oh, did he just go miss the miss one turning flag and came straight Maybe. for the finish? Maybe. Well, he wouldn't have qualified anyway. That, but um, I think he might have got a bit uh, excited and seen the finish sign and forgot about the first uh, orange flag. But let's see if he uh, we'll can get that. away with it. Yeah, we'll leave that with the officials. <laughs> And that's always a really tricky part of being in commentary here. We do get a bit of a bird's eye view at times. So uh, speaking of bird's eye view, though, have a look at that. Jet ski in the foreground, IRBs out the back as well. Have a look at that. Keeping all of our athletes safe. So much happening all the way along the beach. And uh, speaking of, Christy, how are you doing down on the beach? Jan, I'm down here with Lachlan, who hasn't got a lot of time. He's got, he's got his camera and heat also ready to roll. But Lachlan, you had us all a little bit nervous then on that last sprint up the beat. How are you feeling? Yeah, I kind of went a bit too tight around the corner and clipped my arm around it, so I fell off. But I got back on. It was 
It was a very confident get off the beach. I saw you do the um, sort of not so traditional stand up surf style run up the beach. Have you practiced that in training? Oh, no, I just saw one of my mates do it, so I tried it and it kind of worked, but it's all right. Well, it certainly worked today. You've got that eighth spot. You've got yourself and your team into the final. How does it feel, an Aussie final? Oh, it feels pretty good. It's been in the Aussies finals for the team, so it should be good. It'll be a hard race, so, yep, yeah, put it in 100%. It will be a really hard race. Um, I can see your teammates nervously waiting behind us here. So we will let you go. Get ready for the Cameron. All the best for that. And we can't wait to see you in the final. Thank you. Yeah, Sunshine Beach Eagles. A lot happening along the beach and a lot for the uh, team managers to be uh, logistically looking after as you go from arena to arena, board relay to uh, Cameron. And we can see the ladies making their way down now. We think this could be the uh, Cameron for the 13-14, so we'll keep an eye on it. And uh, Kurt, if, they have, if our uh, viewers today haven't seen a Cameron relay before, can you tell us a little bit more about that one? Oh, Otto? Like, yeah, some results there at first from that... Uh... Semi the 14s, 15s board relay. Burley Heads, Warilla, Coochin, North Burley, Burley, North Cliff, Avoca Beach, and just confirmation there, Sunshine Beach. Getting in the top eight, and just unlucky for Chugan and Warrnambool, just missing the final for that one. That is how it goes, though, unfortunately. But, yeah, Cameron Relay up next. A little bit like a Taplin, but for, but for the juniors. Yeah, just uh, a swim and a board. And, you know, and two runners. Yeah. Oh, a couple of runners too. Yeah, a bit of fun. I would. I never got asked to be a runner. <laughs> well, uh, for other people, they get to run <laughs> in a Cameron relay. But it's always nice when you get to uh, get to the end of your board or your swim and there's someone there waiting for you in the shallows. You do the tag. They are up and around with a fair bit of speed uh, from there. So we think this could be the 13-14 Cameron where are the, relay. Wait, wait. Where are the runners? <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are the runners in the open Taplin relay? I'm going to start a petition if you'd like to sign it. <laughs> That's what I needed. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. I needed. Oh, that would have been the best. So. Swimmers and ski paddlers in particular would oh. really love a runner in the uh, Taplin. But thinking of exciting things happening in all things Taplin, we've got a mixed Taplin at the ver for the very first time happening in the open competition uh, later in the program. What? So something a little special. We normally have uh, male only or female Taplins. We've got a mixed Taplin for the very first time uh, at the Open Championship, so something to look forward to later in the week. So six six person, three, three. Mm -hmm. And you can choose any. So they, they still do follow the iron orders. Just as we have a look at the uh, 13, 14 female Cameron start list, Sunshine Beach, Jan Jarka, Newport, Karawa, North Curl Curl, Redhead, Mentone, Umina, Warilla Barrack Point and Byron Bay. Lots of teams, lots of colours, lots of states represented there, which is uh, wonderful to see. And we'll uh, get a look at the girls soon. They're just getting their briefings down there on the beach, just confirming the course, the order, the uh, and I should say as well what uh, what direction they'll be heading around the course. It all looks to be fairly good today. The sweep not as uh, not as strong as yesterday. So uh, yes, that mixed taplin. So uh, they'll stick with the same order, whatever they draw for the Open Championship. Mm -hmm. But you can choose whether or not your male or female competitor goes first, which is super exciting, and the uh, tactics and the strategy really come into play. It's interesting. interesting. Trialled at both the uh, New South Wales and Queensland Championships, so we've uh, got to see how it works, and uh, honestly, one of the most exciting events to be down there on the beach for all the clubs get around, and everyone is down there. Um, at so one point, we had uh, Naomi Scott and Ben Carberry racing each other in the swim leg. It was so fantastic. Yeah, no, I like it. You get... Um the men first, or the women first, they get on the chase. Mm -hmm. the girls trying waves to hang on at the front, it. waves, yep. transitions. Um, and it actually came down wave. to a uh, sprint finish in oh, the really? uh, Queensland Championships. It was uh, Zach Morris and two of our ladies coming in, and uh, Zach Morris did have them on the sprint there. But the fact that it was that close after six legs in some pretty tricky surf conditions, it was you could not have scripted it better. Where in the program does it sit? Uh, I think it is a Saturday afternoon final. Okay. Would it, would it be the last event on Saturday as they get going here? It may be because we've got the... Oh, no, I think it's Sunday Arvo. No, because the Lifesaver Relay is Saturday. The uh, Taplins, I think it's midway through the program, and then we do the single gender Taplins to finish the day. So two Taplins in a day. Ooh, mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's a big program, but 
Also a big program for our under 13 and under 14 ladies. So we have Sunshine Beach, they were closest on the start line to us. That is their Team B, next to them Jan Juck from Victoria. I love the Jan Juck cap, uh, they've actually got Jan Juck written on there as well, makes it a little easier for us. But uh, North Curl Curl, very quickly up there, they've got an incredible team here. Evie Davis, uh, Aria Gervin, Jocelyn Melbourne and Kirillie Sims. So definitely a team to watch out for. They need to be, I think, in the top six if they want to be in the final. So three Trebby finals, top six through, That's I'm it. guessing. That's it? Just six? Just six. Not a lot of room in an Aussie, Aussie final. Just six. Gorgeous shot there as the girls make their way out. And you can see while they may have started in order on the... Uh, on the start line there, we can see a very early lead, some, some dominant swimming out the front. Yeah, the water really flowing out, flowing out deep as well, so if you can get deep under these waves, you can get a little extra push also, but North Kyoko had a great day yesterday, Joss from Melbourne winning the under 13 girls surf race, and, of course, and uh, a big iron victory as well from Jack Stewart. 15, so two big wins for the Knights. Two big wins there. So great to see them in action and just having a really great day down at Maruchita. It was wonderful having a few little chats with them. But wow, what a way to start your Cameron Relay with this sort of lead early in the swim. They'll take a lot of confidence here. And I love that she's still really pushing into this at the moment. And they're only just getting through the last of the white water right now. That is a massive, massive swim having a look at how far she still has to go to uh, line up that red and yellow can. It's, look at the expression on your face oh. right now. You're like, oh, that is a long swim. Too far, too you far. Looking good. Massive swim, massive lead. My goodness. And nails the red and yellow can yeah, right well on done. the money. So just phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal start from Newport. Uh, Lisa Durs, you think, a surf race champ winner from yesterday mm -hmm. um, was super unlucky in the iron as well that's a great race but that iron for the girls that is a big lead and even deceptive here on this angle on screen but you'll get a bigger understanding and uh, in the chase there that looks to be uh, I can see an Alex cap <laughs> that gives you an understanding of the lead yes wow Wowie. beautiful stroke yep she is doing that really really well she's going to hit this red and yellow can and because it is a Cameron relay the girls only need to go around that first set of cans so she's going to make a very sharp right hand turn there takes a little sneaky look back she could probably uh, ease off the pace a little bit here and I love that uh, a few of the ladies may have gone either a little bit off course potentially uh, looking in a different arena as they came through they are course correcting now though that looks to be maybe one of our Alexandra Headland's uh, crews in the mix there yeah, Newport uh, just claimed their 10th consecutive New South Wales yep. title. Yep, score. Ooh. A little bit yeah. on the can there. Right there. Red cliff. Red cliff. <laughs> Getting close. Red head. North Kirkville. North Kirkville. Kirkville. Another cap in the mix there. We're really Barrack right. Point. But yeah, Newport, North Kirkville, Byron, Sunshine. Is that our friends from Brighton? Hey, it is. Be. Hello, Brighton. You minor. Karawa. See uh, Guy Andrews there at Karawa now? I saw, saw him yeah. this morning. Um, so just to really show the differences Ooh, in our good. lifestyle, I was walking along drinking an iced coffee and he was going for a run. So, so <laughs> I was like, hi, Guy. Doesn't sound like <laughs> he GA was powering, work, working out. Powering past me. But wonderful to see the great work that uh, he is doing with the crew back in Newport. What a dominant start here. And uh, so great to see Brighton in the mix there. That is the uh, red cap with the four white stripes. Caught us out yesterday, but we know now. Oh, my gosh. I've dreamt about doing surf races like this. I've never executed them. <laughs> and I've won worlds. I couldn't do that. Wowee. No. That's impressive. You know, definitely a talent. Yes, it is, that's for sure. And what a beautiful way to set up her team, knowing that uh, top six will go through to the final. Man, I'd be feeling confident if I was this Newport team right now, especially with swim first, just to set mm. that up beautifully, knowing that it will get choppier this afternoon, knowing that the conditions will change a little bit. But uh, when you've got a weapon like this out in front for the, for the swim first, it's pretty exciting. 
and knowing that you don't have to do the run, oh, it's probably even better. You can even <laughs> swim even faster or harder. I don't know. Oh gosh, what a superstar! This is no really waves on the way see. in, but I don't think it's too big of a concern. Mama, as we just Here in we the go. wave zone, this is she's got to be on this one. Come on, just pushing back a little oh, bit. It's quite deep though. Yeah. That was uh, an unfair statement of me. And uh, just jumping on the socials at the moment, as we mentioned earlier, hashtag Aussies2024 is how you keep us in the conversation. A huge congratulations to the team from Met Caloundra, gold medalist in the 13-14 mixed beach relay yesterday. Hashtag proud to be Mets for sure. So, yeah, if you want to uh, keep us in the conversation, hashtag Aussies2024 and like the uh, Met Caloundra oh, under 13-14 mixed beach relay. Look at the skills, Super catches stars. a broken wave. Look at this, streamline, gets the scooter, absolute textbook body surfing here from Lisa Durst, and she has put on a swim leg clinic, tags her runner while still on the wave. What's doing? I can't wait for us to make this training video, just oh using incredible, Look, incredible vision. Give me the replay of that, because that is an absolute class act. You need some tips? <laughs> Oh, I don't know if I could do that. I don't think. <laughs> could not Gosh, have executed that uh, any better. That is really impressive. And uh, Newport in a beautiful, very comfortable position right now. At the same time, there's a bit of surf out there. We need to get the crew through. And Kurt, ask and you will receive. Yes, hardest thing to do in surf sports, catching a broken wave. So look at this. Gets one of your speed, gets the scooter in going, gets itself in front. Streamline. Uses that right hand out in front. And then the left hand on the scootering. Head up for a breath, back down, and then the piece de resistance is the tag while still on the wave. Done. Chef's kiss. Chef's, Chef's kiss. Executed that was incredible. Perfection. Oh, I'm so jealous. So, doesn't get much better than that. And Newport on the uh, on the board right now, really just taking a moment. And here we see Brighton start to come through. They're in a fantastic position. And as we said, top six will go through. Top six for this 13, 14, a female, Cameron. It's all new for 14 year old to execute those skills, like. Well, it's under 13 and under 14. So that's even even yeah. more impressive. So we Amazing. see uh, Sunshine Beach come through. Cara will make the tag as well, just behind Byron. So you can see the girls just heading a little bit further down to the south. So they're either heading towards a rip or they're negating maybe a little bit of a sweep out there, but no trouble at all for our incredible team from Newport. Just beautiful, beautiful stroke. Nice and long, nice and deep there as she heads out. And uh, I do love the uh, coloured ribbons in the hair as well. There is lots of uh, club spirit uh, out and about today at Maroochydore Beach. Yeah, it's great. Newport it's the powerhouse of New South Wales for a decade now. Time flies. Plenty of talent and Plenty of talent in the open ranks as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that's such an impressive uh, feat, as you said earlier, Newport taking out their 10th consecutive New South Wales Club Point Score Championship. Uh, pretty impressive. And seeing the depth that they have coming through here in the junior ranks as well, knowing that a lot of these athletes will progress into uh, seniors over the next few years. The uh, pipeline is strong. The uh, future looks very, very bright. Well, the, 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 the present looks bright, but the uh, future also for the team from Newport. Well, it's like any um, sporting club as well. You have to have one eye on, on the top tier that you've got at the moment, and then you've got to keep that next generation coming through, the development. Um, so you can that's the only way to stay on top. That's how you do it, and uh, Newport showing how it's done at the moment. Now, this top six is going to be quite tight. Just having a look back here, we can see Warilla, Yumina, Alex, Redhead, Brighton still in the mix Brighton. as well. We would love to see Brighton in that top six, one of the great little clubs from South Australia. There's no doubt in Newport, but the action is in that top six. Who will be joining them there? Set up by that incredible swim as well. Yes. Exactly where you'd want to be out in front. Nice and cruisy and a couple of swells. Yeah, and, and isn't that such a luxury? You get to wait, you get to stop. If I was Newport, I'd be uh, getting a nice little wave in. And here you go, the wave's some, really some swells, so Yes. Those, even those Masters competitors um, heading up this afternoon or um, already here, they'll be excited by this. This is what they want. A little bit of something. So, yeah, lovely leaders wave. Well-deserved Newport. So putting on. And a 
absolute Cameron Relay Clinic in this first semi-final of the girls' 13, 14 years. No dramas for them at all. And I love it. She's having a little smile as well because she knows how good it is that she gets to uh, come through for the <laughs> chain. <laughs> She always wanted to do the run leg herself. I was like, no, you got to turn. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fresh. I could, uh, Let's do it together. I'll go with you. But they do have to make that tag anywhere between the last can and the turning flag. So it's really up to the team. Oh, plenty of time. Yeah, plenty of time. I've seen some uh, pretty incredible scenes before. I could do that. I could do that last run leg. You reckon? Yeah. You yeah. Reckon? With okay. no one else around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't look at me. Don't look at me while I do it, but I could do it. Alrighty, here's where it gets interesting. This is what we want to see. Ah, oh, Warilla Barrick Point coming through as well. Mm. She's really made the most of uh, that board paddle there. So they are through, and that means that there's no sprint up the beach. And here we can see Redhead. Is that Redhead? Is it? Is it? Is it Tanam Sands? Sands? Have I just uh, completely missed that one? But second Warilla. Or same Warilla. Yeah, Warilla. No, it's definitely not Tanner. They're not in the... Uh, I'm checking the livehakes.com. Just waiting to see who comes around. So that is fantastic work. Warilla, safe. The uh, red, the white, and the grey quartered. You yeah. minor coming through. Oh, she just puts a bit of speed on. Whoop. Oh, no, Brighton. Go, go, go. We need you in the top six. Where's oh, your runner? Where's your runner? Send her out. Okay, you minor. Alex. So that's four. Is that four or five? Four. Four, it looks like. Red Definitely head. redhead. Oh, North no. North Curl Curl. Brighton. And Brighton. North Curl Curl. Who's oh, got the spinners. legs? Go, 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 the go, line. Go. This to qualify through to the final of the Aussies. Oh, Brighton gets it. Brighton. Oh, I think Brighton might have got it. Just over Ooh. North Curl Curl. We might have to get the replay of that. That was a crazy finish. D. Rama. <laughs> Brighton. Just when you thought. And they were both, they're both specialist sprinters as well. That was so fantastic. Unbelievable. And so, we'll wait and see here. I'm so excited. <laughs> this, is a, this has been a huge finish this morning. A spot on or in the final of this 13s, 14s. Oh, Email wow. Cameron up for grabs. Wow. Karua coming up. Top top 10 performance for them. And uh, this, is how, well, this is why it is so brutal having those top six finishes. This is why it's so exciting, though, for the teams who are down there on the beach. I cannot wait to have a chat with Christy over this one. But, wow, 13-14 female Cameron Relay. What a dramatic finish. I think she is. Uh, I think that's Brighton ahead of North oh, Curl Curl the on the line. We're going to the iPad. We're going sure. to the replay first. So oh, here. no. This so is so where we're... double up. They were in, and then the double up comes just... Doesn't oh, get back no. quick enough. Nose no. dive and then loses the board and has to kind of duck dive her way in. Now she recovered really, really quickly while she would have been yep. disappointed to uh, do open that. Open the gate for North Kilkill and then the fight back here for Brighton. Look at this to qualify to the strand final. North Kilkill looks back. Oh, on that angle, it looks like Brighton takes it. Oh. We'll wait for those official results. I love it. Okay, lifeheats.com is updating. Would you like to know who's in the final? I do. Oh, you Tell do. Tell me. All right, in Newport A, Warilla Barrick, Point Orange, you minor team A, Alex, Redhead, Brighton. Hey! hey! They made it. Wow. So, well, unlucky there for North Kilkill, but the Brighton paddler would just be ecstatic oh, as well. Relieved. Relieved. Relieved, that's the word. And knowing that they get to do it again in the final, they'll uh, take a moment, they'll pause, they'll recover, and then hopefully they also get to have a chat with Chrissy Munro. Thank you, Jen. I could not pass up an opportunity to have a chat with the Alex girls who have safely qualified through to the next semi final. That was a, 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 a nerve wracking finish. Thankfully, you weren't in that. We were just listening to the replay and we've left that one to the judges. But Lola, you set up the team for a fantastic swim leg. You were second in your surf race yesterday, equal first in your 2K swim this morning. How are your arms feeling? Oh, my shoulders are really sore. This race suit's not doing them any favours either. Those race suits are not comfy, but we will suffer through it. Nearly there for the two days of Aussies. Huge congratulations. Evie, I know you probably could have done the swim or the board leg, but you're the runner, queen runner today. Yeah, um, I just had to finish it off. Yeah. You get the glory crossing the tape. Hopefully you'll be up there in the final. And Sammy, swimmer, but runner today. Yeah, I'm running today, and I'm pretty happy. I'm just happy to be a part of it, especially since it's 14s. I think all of us 13s are stoked to be 
just just in this. I know you've all been together, slightly different age groups as we combine here at Aussies, but you've been together at Alex probably since five or six years old. Macy, you did an amazing board paddle out there. It's a lot of courage needed on that back bank. We still see those sets rolling through, but you got the job done. Yeah, it was pretty scary, but I was lucky to have Lola have a good start and my run is very fast, so it's good. And do we want to give a shout out to our coaches who have got us here? Um, yeah, Dave Box, our iron coach, um, all of our swim coaches, so all the water safeties and, um, as well. And our also, managers. and um, Nat, and Bernadette, and um, Craig, and Steve, and also the beach coach, Murdoch. I love that there was a few of the parents' names in there. Huge shout out to the parents. They've done a big job over these last two days. Well, I'll let you go get under the tent and get ready for the next round. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, fantastic work, Christy. And I'm loving the interviews that you're getting down there. This oh, is what we're here for. Dancing. Oh, yeah, we've got everything. Everything is down there today. So if you do see uh, Christy down there, please have a chat. But wowee, Newport, Warilla Barrick Point, your minor, Alex, Redhead and Brighton, all in the mix and all in the final. So, uh, Kurt, I'm loving the chats that we're getting. I think it normally takes maybe a day for everyone to warm into it. You had a few great chats down on the beach uh, yesterday but I feel like the athletes are getting more and more comfortable they're happy to have a chat they're thinking about what they might like to say they're seeing their friends on there and uh, I really do love that we get to have so many chats and really understand those stories under the tent that's the uh, the best part of all oh, I love the roving I love the I love the uh, getting the eighth place or the sixth place oh, the mates so just good. made it so just good. made it in you really get that that, that emotion and um, that thrill mm-hmm just making a final, especially for some of those smaller clubs. Like I said, for Brighton, that's huge for them to oh. make that final now. And it's such dramatic finish, and it's such dramatic style as well. Oh, they'll, I do hope they go back and watch the replay of that and uh, uh, a special special celebration with their uh, their runner this afternoon. And again, that's the beauty of the Cameron, really. You've got fresh legs twice as they come through, and I'm loving There's Cairns. Hello, Cairns. Cooks Hill in the mix, Sorrento coming through. This could be another Sortel in the mix. Wamberal. Wamberal, North Burley, looking very serious. Very serious. Wollongong. Tally, not so serious. Loving Tally, that as Trig. well. Trig. Hello, teams. What diversity you see in the caps and the club colours down here. I do loving it. And uh, swimmers getting a little nervous. Mr. Well. Swanson sorting them out, making sure they uh, know what they're doing. And they're they're, they're all in the jammers now, aren't they? The jammers are. Mm, it's a whole new world. The smugglers are a thing of the past. It's, yeah. it's jammers or nothing. Hopefully not. <laughs> there we go. We've got Glenn nailed in the mix. Yeah! Hey, Karawa. Hello, Karawa. You're a superstar. Thank you so much, champ. Great to see you. And then uh, one of our hosts for the championships, Alex, in the mix there as well. <laughs> Billy Heads Mowbray Park. <laughs> what a character. Sucking up down there on the line. There's always one. There's always one lunatic. Oh, if it's Billy Heads Mowbray Park, there'll be two or three. <laughs> and why is the lunatic always the smallest one? <laughs> here we go. Start list here for the under 13 and 14 men's Cameron Relay. Oh, it was Scarborough, not, not Burley Heads. Oh, of course. Yeah. They've got the same cap. Yeah. That was... Oh, my gosh. Belly Heads Mowbray Park. I apologise for the slight. It was all Scarborough. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic racing. And there we go. Scarborough, Alex Carrawa, TH and C, Glenelg, Wanda, North Burley in the mix. Wow, we 20... Oh, no, I was going to say it's not 23 teams in the mix, but all the way through to Trig on the end of the uh, crew there, the uh, Christmas tree colours there, the green, the red, and the white. And you can see the... Uh, Crew's just getting a little bit of uh, a little bit of a uh, they wash their boards, they check their goggles, they make sure everything's good. And the lady who knows everything down on the beach, Christy Munro, has confirmed six through for this one as well. So if you thought the uh, competition was tight in the uh, girls' race just earlier, wait till you see the 13 14 men's Cameron relay. And yeah, that was Scarborough. The team of Xavier Hedrick. Kale Tracy, Owen Wright, Austin Wyeth, what a crew there. That is the A team for Scarborough, so we're going to have to uh, make sure we don't get them mixed up with Burley Heads Mowbray Park. And 
and uh, this one here, all the way through to Sea Cliff as well. So yeah, semi-final is live, tremi-final, if you will, the top six through. Some nervous uh, athletes down on the line. They've seen how tight the competition is. They've uh, probably raced each other yesterday in the individual uh, competitions as well, and they are now ready to put it all together, a board paddler, a swimmer, and two runners for a Cameron Relay. Those and racing here, spots in this final up for grabs, 13s, 14s. And have a look at how relay. spread out they are as well. There's not a, not a, a clear decision on where the uh, best spot is. A few of the athletes running up, a few of them running down, a few stumbles on the line as well, I think I saw, but this is a really tricky depth to get through. The potholes, the unevenness of it all here, and they've seen uh, that incredible swim from Newport earlier today. Everyone is trying to emulate that. Everybody wants that for their first swimmer. I don't know how many people will be able to do it, though, when you see Scarborough closest to us on the bottom of the screen, and there's a solid 30, 40 metres across the field at the moment. Yeah, they're very spread out, and they're just trying to yeah, club off to a best possible start. And I don't know if we're going to get a lead like we saw set up in the, uh, in the girls' event for Newport. But great drone shots here. Just giving you an understanding of um, the power of the waves on that back bank and also the depth that these swimmers, if they don't go deep enough, they're going to get pushed back. And when you see two swimmers go under the wave at the same time, you can tell who didn't go deep and who did. There's no hiding. You can't escape it. Not when we've got you on the live stream. We're <laughs> no. going we're, we're gonna oh, to tell you we'll everyone about it. <laughs> and that's, these are the little things you learn as well. If you sit, you've got to look up and see, okay, it's a double up. I've got to stay under a few more seconds, wait for that second wave to come over. And we saw there um, that third place just didn't wait long enough and got clipped. So Womberall back into third spot now, but looking very comfy in front. Looks like uh, Cooks Hill and Trig Island eyeballing each other. I love a stroke for stroke. One breathing to the right and one breathing to the left. I do love the eyeballs. You always uh, like to size everyone up, see where you're at. And uh, again, we can see a little pack starting to form up, but still a lot of our athletes choosing to uh, make their own way, to stay in their own clear water. It looks to be a uh, trig in the lead at the moment. And uh, after those incredible results that we saw yesterday for the uh, boys, for the yeah. 14s, it was Oliver Brown in one and Billy Hawks in three. Jacob Chalmers. Going to shave down lead. for the team events, Ollie Brown? I don't know. <laughs> I'm torn. I'm torn. I, take... I want I want the speed of the streamline, <laughs> but I also I don't want to change what is a winning. No, maybe you're a right. Winning combo you're already. Right. It's working. If you're winning with the moustache, you may as well keep it. And I think he said he has been working on it for quite a while yeah, he, as he well. Has, you yeah. don't want to throw that good work away no. if it's going to take you another six months to get there. But whatever they are doing, it is working. Oliver Brown, what a win yesterday. Billy Haynes, his club mate in three and again i keep wanting shouting out trent yates from twig trig won the sprint as well what a superstar yeah just swept down a little bit off that red and yellow just uh coming back to it now trig in front takes a little look under the arm and again Jim mentioned very spread out looking good and as we get those uh, shots back down towards the uh, beach at Maruchidor, I've just seen a, uh, a social media post from Alexandra Headland Surf Life Saving Club. The Open Champion Patrol competition is underway. They've just started the uh, beach events down there at Alex. So action everywhere. And uh, one of our competitors, a little off course there, needs to uh, make a little bit of a left-hand uh, turn there. That could be the crew from North Burley just leading out just a little bit over to the side there. Whoa! Wrong way, Chance. Yeah, Wrong where are you way. Going? Shortcut. Wrong way. Yeah, that's all right. Whoop. <laughs> oh, no. Got it there, so it's Maruchi red, yellow, door. not... Maruchi door. you've gone to the red can, yeah, not the... Yeah, red and yellow, not red. red. And yellow. That's okay. We always... We talk about, you know, we've got some resilient competitors out there. The Black Swans, best of the bunch as well. Just coming around. Arches his body. Joins Sawtell. Got the inside run. Got the inside run on Sawtell. So, you know, making the most of the situation, absolutely. But it also shows that while... While we can see everything from where we are, what you see at water level gets often very, very different, and it's still tough competition out there. You're also racing at nationals. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot on That's the true. line right now. Count, counting cans. Counting Sometimes cans. Sometimes you can't, if you can't make out the colours, just get the count right. No worries for the leaders. Not see, at all. There, it's spread. About to hit the wave zone, Trig Island. Looking good. Womble right there. Cooks Hill in third spot. So 
six through to the final. Mm -hmm. Only six. It's going to be tight. And again, as we saw, it came down to a sprint finish in that earlier ladies race. And Trig Island. Is it, is it Womberall? Yep. yep. Sorry, I keep getting distracted. Oh, on the back stroke as well. Three. Oh. Doing a few little sneaky look around. They know they're in a good position, but they really want to hand over with a nice little lead there to the uh, runner and then the board paddler. A little lump coming through. I don't think it's going to be enough because it's still in the... Oh, oh it's enough. Oh, Jen Parry, eat your words. Trig Island is good enough. And where is he? Where is he? out in front. <laughs> I think we missed him, but I think he might have held it. but didn't seem to get spat out the back. Wave oh. here for second place. Cooks Hill, Wombrel Lake take off. Looks like they've both held that as well, so nice skills. Oh, they're both still on it. Yes, of course. And, and there's Trig. Trig and... <laughs> they're now back into that deep water and they're all bunched up. Back in the pack as well. <laughs> Once again. I think they all took those waves as far as they could, so some great body surfing skills. And these 13s, 14s. Swim leg. First semi, male camera, Womberall. To emerge in front and makes the tag. And that is Womberall Team A in the mix here. So we've got Ashton Bone, Kai Birch, Eli Lang and Billy McCarthy. Fantastic individually combining to do something even and better. So have a look at this. He's having a oh, little smiles. giggle. He knows he's in a good position. Keep on going, champ. Every but step counts. Or Womberall, the original home of the Hearst Brothers. Mm -hmm. Kind day. Back in the day. Back in the day. Oof, have a look at the speed. Look at those legs go. Gorgeous shots across Marichidor Beach. Here we go. Oh, looks Burnley up in the mix now as well. They have really started to uh, move through there as Cooks Hill makes their way out. So that is the top four. Top four in the water, top four on the boards. Only six can go through. A tough little double up there just in a really good position there on his board, keeping that rating up. He knows he's in a great spot. He knows that a uh, Australian final is in reach if he can get through here, if the uh, waves are on his side as well. Yeah, he's definitely a uh, very animated board paddle. I'd like to see him maybe a little bit further forward. There we go. One, two, three in screen at the moment. And here we go. This is exciting. The chase is on. Alexandra Headland's Wanda. Sorrento still in the mix there as well. So one, two, three, four. Okay, here we go. So that is North Burley, I think, on the top of screen. The boys sit, they wait, they pop. One, two, three, four. No dramas at all. But uh, Womberall has been uh, caught by these other crews as we come through. Oh, my gosh, I loved this. Yeah, so here's the body surfing skills from Trig Island out in front. And just went missing there for a moment <laughs> in the white water. <laughs> It's so tough when there's so much white water to keep an eye on them all. Even but, the camera oh. and then here's the, here's the second wave oh, that's good. for the chases and the body surfing of Wombrel really he emerges from the white water. Well, the cameraman. Trying to find all of the athletes out there. Are. It's so tough. So there you go. One, two, three, four. North Burley just uh, opting to stay over to the far right-hand side. I think that is our team from Scarborough rather than Burley Heads Mowbray Park as they come through. This is the 13-14 men's Cameron Relay. It's going to be tight. Who's going to be in this final top six? Yeah, Scarborough in there. And um, great to see them making the journey across. Caro as well on their last paddler now. But Cooks Hill takes up the running in front. And these lead three look pretty comfy. Cooks Hill, Treat and North Burley. Interesting that uh, Treat staying up on his knees as well just uh backing himself ah uh, here we go he will go oh, go down now a little bit of uh, a rest a little bit of balance as they come through and uh one two three looking good at the moment but oh i'm keen to see who's in four five six yeah, i think Bombrel's still in fourth trying to hang on really impressed with the work of north burley coming into the fold they did some great work early in that board race, really uh, great skills through the white water, and that's paying off right now, looking very comfortable heading into uh, this final stage. Remembering they do get to tag their runner once they hit the shore. Oh, what a luxury. I know. We're so jealous. <laughs> no, it should be, um, yeah, should be pretty comfy, these first three, but the next three, we saw in the girls' race, came down to a sprint finish to qualify at that Australian final. And waves are coming. Dial them up, kids. 
since as well. We came to Maroochydore. It was so flat the last time uh, the club hosted the Australian Championships. It was flat last year in Perth and now a little bit of a wave on for our juniors. Is there enough in this one for them to uh, turn it into something special? Trig Island and oh, Cook. drop. Now a bit of impact. Nah, they're good. They're good. Looking very comfortable. Another double Ooh. up potentially in order as they come over. Great skills, and then come over the top of this, and he constantly distributing oh, no. weight, and you just saw that Cooks Hill comes off, they both counter come off. It's tricky. Oh, no. It is tricky in that double up, because you're distributing weight at one minute, you need some speed, you've got to have that weight forward, the next minute is too much, you've got to pull back, and uh, Trig comes out there. So impressive, Trig end, Island. But... Great skills in the surf, both the swimmers and the board paddlers. Quick across the, across the sand now as well as they are tagged that fourth and final competitor, the glory leg. There. Well, they've set their intentions, haven't they? I love and, it. Um, I love it. They've had some big wins in open competition, some big upset wins in open competition, mm -hmm. and a couple in that open um, ski relay championships mm -hmm. as well. And Trig, they're that kind of club that they can step up when yep. it matters most and cause some big upsets against... Uh, some much uh, bigger name East Coast clubs, Absolutely. especially in these uh, relay competitions. So, And Trig uh, Island, home of Jake Smith, our current competitor of the year for uh, Australia. Took a big win there. Okay, Alex. That looks to be Ty. Is that Tyler? No. Similar that's... build. Look at the speed. I'm oh, loving yeah. the uh, technique. I think Look we've got some speed. specialist beaches uh, yeah, headed down this way as well. You can definitely tell the difference. So there's four. Right, four. Now, where's Wombrel? Back here. Oh, look at the yard uh, nerves. Oh, there, there he is. There he is. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Or oh, I think our final qualifier is going to come from maybe one of these three teams on screen right now. That looks to be the second North Burley team. Second North Burley. It's either Avoca or Glenelg uh, just off screen off the bottom there. And this is where it gets tricky. And this is where the boys, you'll see, they'll start to reposition because they need to know where they hit that uh, runner. And the runner doesn't want to come out too deep. Oh gosh, there's actually four in the mix here. Oh, go, 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 go. In Glenelg. Oh, Maruchidor out Maruchidor. the back as well. Sorrento there as well. Oh, look at them all. Five to make it. Looks like North Gong. It's going to get it. Wow, what a dramatic finish. This is why we love the composite age groups as well. They're coming through now. We're just uh, seeing livepeaks.com. Uh, Oh, gosh, what a finish. And those board paddlers gave it absolutely everything. So oh. wonderful to see that sprint finish as well. And there we go. We've I don't know, the, was that uh, for sixth or seventh? Oh, the seventh, so the six, so Wombrel, so we missed Wander in there. So Wombrel just sneak in. Fantastic work. Trig, Cooks Hill, North Burley, Alex, Wander and Wombrel. They are your first qualifiers there in the 13-14 men's Cameron Relay. What a replay. Keep your eye on Cooks Hill. He did nearly everything yeah, so right. So weight distribution here. So they come back, do a really good job, and then this double up comes. This is nasty. So now you've got to get forward, but not too far forward. And just didn't get his knees quite parallel, and then goes, his nose goes, goes, under. goes under the trig board. And then that actually clipped trig and stopped his momentum as well, accidentally. A little bit messy, but... but... Good recovery. Great recovery. They're still in, and I can tell you that uh, Tremi final number two and three have been completed Ooh, as well. Who off else camera. to look out for? Alrighty, Manly, Burley mm, Heads, Mowbray boss. Park, Quidgen, Alexandra Headland, Southport, and North Stein. Stain, yep. Oh, stain, my apologies. <laughs> stain, 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 stain. Heat number three, we've got the locals, Maruchidor, Sunshine, Swansea, Wanda, Sawtell, and Mermaid ah. coming into the mix as well. So Maruchidor, Manly, Trig. Ooh, tantalising final from the Cameron coming up later this afternoon. And we can see the crew down there Looks on like the beach. Harold's Harold. on, the, on the changeover. Sun's out, gun's out, Harold's out. <laughs> That's what we want to see. And we can see uh, on screen as well just how many caps there are. But Harold, welcome to the commentary team. Yeah, thank you, guys. Good to be here. So uh, awareness is something that's really important as a runner. Billy had no idea where you guys are sitting. Came in first in that, and then you've been... The specialist runner today? Yeah. Easiest leg you've done all day? Oh, uh, I'm not a beachy myself, but, geez, that's hard work. I'll give it to the beachies. they got to run across that soft sand. Not easy, not easy, but, yeah, good fun. You're talking it up. Now, you weren't aware you are in the top six. That top six gets you through to the final. Uh, talk us through your team. Boys are behind you. Talk us through who, you, who we've got today and expectations. You've been an elite Ironman swimmer and board paddler. 
the bigger boards are out there on the bigger boards and Ashton swimming? Uh, yeah, so Ashton has been swimming for this leg. He's been doing it all year. We've decided to switch the order around. Eli's paddling, Eli Lang. Kai, second runner, and I, oh, first runner. And I finished us off in second runner. Nice. So, 13s, 14s, Cameron final coming up. Uh, any expectations the team's going to stay exactly the same? or? Uh, yeah, we'll keep it like this. Good results, good finish, I reckon. This is the strat. Nice. And I'm going to try something, Kurt. Do you know who Kai Hurst is? I do now. <laughs> I do know Kai Hurst. There we go. Kids are learning. All right. Back to you guys in the studio. Fantastic work. Thank you so much, Harold, and congratulations to the team from Wamberal. They've done some study overnight. They know what's happening. Kurt is very proud right now and uh, safe in the knowledge that all of this strong surf sports history is being passed on. And uh, a little bit of change up here on the desk. It's been a big morning already. We've seen Harold jump in down on the beach. A huge thanks to Christy for her work this morning. She'll be out roving on the beach elsewhere. And fresh from the ocean swim, Ty, welcome back. Yeah, big thanks, Jen. I'm a little bit tired. I've uh, got about I think, nine two-kilometre ocean swims down there commentating. What a cracky morning down Mullabana. A big shout-out to Surf Life Saving and, um, and Surf Sports. And Graham Ford, OIM, as, as well, created this back in two, 2016. And um, we'll talk about the ocean swim in a moment. Down the 13 and 14 male Cameron's result this year in um, Trig Island. Uh, great club over there on the guidance of Mozzie as well. Cooksville A team in second, third place there. Look out for them. And, uh, North Burley, Team A, they are up and about yesterday. And... Um, Shout out to Mike Murray's daughter, Summer Murray, took out the surf race and out the iron, you know, the 13 females as well. But um, the ocean swim this morning was beautiful conditions here. Pretty much iconic, Malula Bar for an ocean swim. Two kilometres, we started with the youth, 13s, 14s and 15s. And um, it was a great performance. Uh, young Bauma there from Wanda took out the girls, uh, first girl in. Great performance under the guidance of um, Nathan Smith there at Wanda. And the local boy, Stanley Jarrett, had no luck here yesterday for the Black Swans, but... Almost had no luck down there either this morning. I'd say, well, oh, he did well, but good on you to Stanley Jarrett. And, and then the big boys and girls come out to play, and um, I tell you what, they shine. And Nick Sloan, congratulations. I think took out his fifth ocean swim in a time of 23 minutes 24 for the 2K swim. Just had 16 seconds of Bailey Armstrong and Tom Raymond. Good story. They all three trained together under JR up here. Just got back from Arizona under a, um, an attitude training camp over there as well. Obviously, Sloman's a part of the Olympic team for Paris. Had a good chat with him this morning. And he said, that's the focus now, doing up to 75 uh, to 80 kilometres a week Jeez. in terms of swimming. I said, I don't, I don't swim that far, Jen. So, but um, that was great. And uh, to Fenella gibbs Bill as well, congratulations. The Noosa Club took out the females. Young Daisy Quinn, we've been following her journey. What a great young girl. Under 17 years of age. Finished second overall, but um, picked up that of the age group win as well. So under 14, 13, 14 combined Cameron coming up here, Jen, and uh, what a start list we've got. Yeah, 14, 15 men's Cameron. We've got North Curl Curl, uh, Burley Heads, Noosa, Maruchidor, Maloolaba, Alex. Have a look at that, Maruchidor, Maloolaba, Alex, our three hosts for the uh, championships. Clifton Beach, great to see them in the mix. Met Cal, Maruchidor, and Ocean Grove, Team A. Mornington, Tugan, Dickey Beach, Carlton Park, Northcliff and North Burley Bay. Now, Mornington, we saw quite a bit of them yesterday on the live stream. That is a uh, bright green cap with a single white stripe. They were everywhere yesterday. They're now in the 14-15 men's cap run. Well, Cameron. we got two good stories here. Mornington, I just got the bus back, the shuttle bus, and sat next to the Mornington. No uh, the young boy won the under-17 under Victorian board race, and he's pumped up later on this week as well. We spoke about the green cap with the white stripe. Mm -hmm. He's uh, made his journey over as well from another club down there. And then um, also that of Colton Park in Tasmania. Uh, the amount of ocean swimmers they had, I think they've got like uh, 70 odd ocean swimmers that have come up, um, which is, was phenomenal effort all the way from Tasmania. And it's uh, great to see uh, Dan Tazzy. They do it tough conditions wise, but great to see. But look at this under 14 boys. What's going through their minds? Well, I love Team Event Sunday. Mm -hmm. you know, I love listening to your commentary of Kurt and yourself there as well. Because the individual racing has been put put aside. Saturday's done, your bank your results were there. The good, not so good are in between, but now it's about team events. And you're in there with your mates. There's they're Stanley Jared, they are the white cap, with his goggles in his hand, took out the 2K open water swim this morning. He would love this. Home Beach, Richardor, you're with your mates, opportunity to come out and really rip in. Absolutely. He's nice and warm from that uh, ocean swim. A few of our athletes would have made the uh, quick trek back, maybe on the bus with you from uh, Malulaba. But also, it's a really long swim as well. We saw uh, Newport. Oh my gosh, I have to show you the footage later. It's such an incredible swim. And uh, I think Stan will really love these conditions out here. Just having a look at how many we've got through. It is only uh, three Tremies. So, uh, judging on uh, how the officials have been. Uh, 
Dane Raywood on Dane the Dane Raywood. Oh, okay. the, big, the man, the moment. The boy behind him actually got third in the iron yesterday, Aaron McQuaid. Great mm -hmm. story, under 15 boys. He, um, he's from a truck and field background. In the last couple of years, I coached him for a couple of years through the junior ranks and just goes about his business and great to see it. And every club tells a story. The boys lining up here, we can see um, he spoke about North Curl Curl. You know, Stuart took out the under 15 Ironman title yesterday in the guidance of uh, the big, uh, the Davis family. So, Shawnee Davis, Burley there, Newsom, Richard, a lot of Sunshine Coast clubs. So, they're up and about at swim, in the run, in the board, in the run, but it's, uh, it's a great event, the Cameron. It's a great event. You can see we've got the drone in the background there giving us these absolutely glorious shots and a really fast start here. Our swimmers know how important it is for them to get away cleanly, get through that break, and really set up their board paddlers and their runners, I should say because there's only the top six going through. We've had some very dramatic finishes across all of these races where they're only taking the top six, but that's what it takes to make an Australian final. And uh, as expected, Stan Jarrett out there at the moment. It looks like we've got two Maruchidor clubs in the mix here and two of them in the uh, top three or so at the moment. See another good start there from Ocean Grove. See about third. They had a great mm -hmm. day yesterday as well, the Victorian club under uh, the guidance of uh, Sonia and the, and the crew down there. And a big shout out to those on, on li um, live stream. Mm -hmm. Big hello. I just had a quick look and saw some familiar names there. So give us a <laughs> shout out. Jump on the comments. Who you're supporting? Where are you at? We had uh, Brazil yesterday, mm -hmm. France as well, all around the world. So jump on the live stream. Give us a shout out. And great to have you with us here at the Aussie Titles 2024. It's day two of 10 days, Jen and um, what about day one? What a cracking day it was yesterday. So good. Uh, it's been wonderful just uh, seeing some of the replays, reminiscing about those incredible individual results that we saw on camera and off camera. We've spoken about the sprints. We've spoken about the champion lifesaver, the open patrol comp is in action a little further along the beach. You've had the beat, the uh, ocean swim this morning. There is so much happening. And uh, just having a look at that team from Ocean Grove, if you are cheering for them, that is Noah Chapel, Tobias Hallam, Michael Sheridan and Ryan Tolley. That is the A team from Ocean Grove. Grove, really, really looking to uh, put in an early, early good start here to be in the top six to make it through to the final. Yeah, well, it's, um, it's interesting too because it's the 14 and 15 age group. So mm -hmm. generally speaking, in um, a state level, they race in there per age. This one here, they can uh, join the ages together, 14, 15. Now, your 14 age groups is your juncture point. So they get an opportunity to either race up or race down, but they mm -hmm. can't race in both. So some clubs need to make big decisions at the moment. You know, they pay their strengths by taking a 14 up or they bring a 13 up to 14 in that department as well. But it's the Black Swans, the home beach. And uh, what a great young man, Steely Jarrett, out in front. He absolutely dominated, put the hammer down about the 1,200 metre mark on the 2K Ocean Swim. Look at that swell coming in, these great shots as well, Jen. Yeah. Cracking, cracking day. So good to see, you know, athletes. Uh, I guess the benefit of being uh, on Super Sunday now, they've had a day in these conditions, even though it is a little bit different to yesterday and loving the work here. Early heads Mowbray Park, we think that could be uh, Dane Raywood just based on how they were lined up a little earlier. And just uh, when he goes back to watch this, I just want to give him a little bit of a shout out. He uh, stayed under nice and deep through some of that white water, and you can see him. He went all the way to the bottom because he uh, catapulted off the bottom as, as well, just in the uh, earlier scenes from here. So Dane Raywood, Raywood, great surf skills, and now in a great position, uh, probably in that top three with uh, two Maruchidor teams. It's great, isn't it? And a big shout out to all the athletes yesterday. Like we commented, the majority of those races. But what a day for these athletes! I mean, thirteen times Stanley Jarrett the final. I counted last night. I think thirteen times he went round the cans, and they're not short courses either because they've got to be out behind the back bank. And then you've got the energy of the swells coming in. You see the boys going around the cans. I love these drain shots. So such gives a great aspect of racing as well. North Curl Curl go around with Adam Northcliffe as well. But um, big day of racing. They would have refilled last night, hydrated mm -hmm. well as well. And now here we are back into what they do best. And uh, what a great exhibition of, uh, of swimming here by Stanley Jarrett. Yeah, he's got that really strong stroke as he comes through and uh, he knows what he needs to do. He had a, a big day of racing, as did all of these boys yesterday. As we see, Stan out in front, that chase pack very, very congested. And then the, uh, the second pack just forming up now. I can see Matt Calandra just around there. So top six are through. The boys will start to uh, sort themselves out, find some clean water as they turn around that final green and gold can and uh you're having a little look at the uh, facebook yeah, live stream it. at the moment who have I, we got joining us today i, I love engaging and um go the tassie competitors from sam yes. hess thanks sam for joining us and joey ford all the way from wa they say they do it best in the west i spent a bit of time over there only months ago and love how they go about their surf sports business as well but um stanley jared here we go so we've got three tri semis we call them six mm -hmm. going through the other thing too is sometimes they can get stuck can't they some heats and, and um 
you know, you look up sometimes, you go, oh, you know what, this is not a bad heat for me. Other times, you look and go, wow, hang on, we've got some, some of the top teams that could be in the final. And unfortunately, there's more than six, a couple will miss out. Yeah, there's no easy heats, there's no easy semis, and no easy tremies either. But have a look at this. We've got competitors spread all across the ocean. Wave coming, wave building at the back, Jen. Oh, Stevie Joe, could I tell you what? He walked under a few ladders and saw some black cats yesterday with surf. But what about this from Jared? That's an armchair ride, door straight out the top. He's a great young body surfer usually as well. Watch him oh, the shootout here down the bottom on his Woo! home beach. That is class, pure class. We spoke about Kai Hurst. He would be super impressed with Stanley Jarrett. Oh, great work there for the uh, drone to be picking him up. The camera on the beach as well. You can see Stan. Oh, a little butterfly. Straight the butterfly. In there Why as well? not? Let's go a bit of medley. Where's the backstroke, breaststroke? We, we might try and pick up a replay of that a little bit later on because. I love this, and they're thrills for free, and it's an opportunity to transfer your swim speed, and that opens. Up with the boys like, get I'm around here. Well I'm done. Here. I'm here. Stanley Jarrett, what a performance on his home beach. He could not find a wave in the ocean yesterday, and I really felt for it. I messaged the family last night and said he put himself in all the right places. But uh, let's go to the beach now with Harold with an update. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Watching that come through, your guys caught it. Broke on his head. Somehow, I was able to get out in front of it. Nice, easy changeover. These guys are home and hose at the moment. And again, on that closing bank, it was just, I don't know how he's able to maintain that. So again, the best of the best, and that's why he's there. Alex looking good there. Daylight in third, and it looks like we've got North, uh, yeah, North Curly making their way out. So we're taking top six through. Panic station's probably starting to set in for the rest of the boys coming through that white water zone. Yeah, great job, Harold. Look at the body surfing here. This is brilliant. Brilliant body surfing. We'll wait for the butterfly stroke to that kick in as so well. Good. And it just <laughs> opens up. It's an end, but the thing is about putting yourself in the right positions. Now, yesterday you did exactly the same, but unfortunately had to swim across that back bank. But that's surf, and Mum said that, and Dad said that as well, uh, Nat and Kirk. So you know what? That's surf. You get your ups, you get your downs. And all I say here, at the end of the day, when you stop racing and retire, it all evens out. So well done to that, for Stanley Jarrett. There's Richard all heading out as well. And um, what about Harold? I know the guns are out down there, mate, but you might want to put a little cup on the top of that head as well, a bit of sunscreen, mate. I'll tell you what, what a physique. You ain't get a body like that picking apples, I tell you. Yeah, if you want to know what's on offer at the Aussies merch tent, uh, I do love that we're uh, each rocking a slightly different shirt. So uh, I saw Courtney doing a uh, conditions update earlier today. She's got the uh, sleeveless top on. Uh, I'll, I'll be rocking the long sleeves later if you want to know what the uh, sun, sun safe options are as well. But great to see Harold down there mixing it with everyone, rocking the Aussies merch as well and uh, getting the guns out. And that's Richard Dorian one and a shout out also to the Festival Zone. Um, I know they watch the live stream there. Big shout out to her there. And... Uh, Enjoy it. What a great setup. All the vans, all the manufacturers there as well, the food, the drinks, and live stream in a big way. Uh, look out for Jack Patel, I've been told. you put the turbos on. And thanks, Anthony, and um, Sue Ellen Jackson as well. Go to the Vic Club. It's great to have us there on live stream as well. So this is um, this is semi final number one of three. So it's a tri semi. We have had semi final number, we have had semi final number three held in the other arena. Um, and Jack Patel just had a shout out as well. And um, he finished second in the board at the state championship. Oh, no, at Aussies. Wales. No, yesterday. Oh, yesterday. My, my mistake. Yes, that's right. From Kingston Low. Great little finish, that one, too. What a performance that was from uh, Jack Patel with Archie Harrison there. And look at the boys just knocking the pace off here now to go through and qualify there, Jen. And I think that's now Alexander Headlands in second position. So Marucci Doro in one, Alex in two, two neighbouring clubs here on the Sunshine Coast. But the real drama, the real action is going to be in that chase pack that is just coming up on the first red and yellow can. Only six teams to qualify through. So one it's, and two look it, good. They, they look, look good. Fine. Look at Jack Patel. Right? He's absolutely just cruising. And uh, it's a big opportunity. Now we'll turn around and work the ocean a little bit. It's a position you want to be. I'll tell you what. If I was into uh, having a board of a, a sports bet on this, you have a look at mm -hmm. have a look at these top two. Stanley Jarrett, uh, the way he's swimming into that, but Patel as well, outstanding yeah, form. Great way to set it up and have a look at this gorgeous drone shot, uh, really showcasing the best that the Sunshine Coast has to offer. We can see the entire field there, which is just wonderful. Harold, you're down on the beach. What's happening? Uh, down here with Ashton, just uh, did his first run. He is a beachy, but he said, don't talk about my results yesterday. So what did you have for breakfast today to get you ready for today's events? Um, I just had some eggs on toast. Do you want to talk about your result yesterday or not? Uh, well, not, I didn't do that well. I had a bad start. But still loving it and having fun, right? Yeah, it's good. Uh, uh, okay. Great job, <laughs> And uh, well done, Jack Patel coming in. Richard all there in that lead wave. Looks composed. Only great board party. Yes, they come in a sprint finish on a 15 board race. Mm -hmm. And uh, great effort, but he's joined by neighbouring clubs, Alexander Headland as well. Another great day yesterday as well, and 
two powerhouse clubs in this age group under 15 males, and I expect to see them right up in the pointy end come the finals later on today. And here are the boys. Oh, you can tell uh, who's brought the uh, beach sprinters out for the uh, transitions here. Marucci Dora in one, Alex in two. Have a look at the speed. I wish I could. Run, I wish I could run like oh, that. We all do. We really all do. <laughs> Quick shout out to Liv Lowe from uh, Summerton and any South Australian teams. Thanks for joining us as well here on live stream. We've got almost right around Australia mm-hmm. with now. Uh, those are live streaming. This is this is the pressure cooker. Is this there, the there's King Salome. So King Salome back left hand side of the North Cup won the board race yesterday. So let's pick up the numbers they come through. Remember six to qualify. I think Ocean Grove could be in that four as well. Is that it? One, two, three, four. We had I think three already finished. Was that they come through? Was that three already in? I thought it might have been two, but we'll grab this as they come through. And look at they all come together. And this is really tough because they need to tag a runner here. So, oh, no, no you're there's right. three. One spot to drop. Here we go. Four does not go. Five does not go into four. Up and running. I would say North Burley looking comfortable. Billy Hedge, Bay, Bay Park need to go. Ocean Grove and Burley in danger for my liking. Here's the turn. Here's the dash. Here's the splash. Ocean Grove on the inside. Burley on the outside. Ocean Grove on the inside. I'd probably say Ocean Grove to qualify. Mm. Burley has Bay, Bay Park. Looks to be eliminated. They look to be eliminated in position seven, with six being the magic number. And I think our uh, second Ruchido team, unfortunately, are not going to progress. What a tight final there. Tagging there. The sprinter is away. Have a look at the speed across the beach. Oh, you can tell by that good hand position. Wow. That's a beachy right there. I love that. Swanee will be proud of that one. Absolutely. I love the smile as well. Look at that. <laughs> uh, from sockets to pockets. And uh, great job, young man, from Ruchido. Sockets to pockets. I sock it down the pocket. That's the hands. A hot tip from uh, the mighty Vikings of our Robo there. You go. I'll give you a plug. And here's the boys coming through as well. Great to see. So tremendous effort. Six is the magic number. I think uh, Billy is Mowbray Bay Park. And I tell you what, that's unfortunate because they are a very quality team. Mm. You look at Raywood. You know, Aaron McQuaid, who got third yesterday in the under-15 Ironman race. But it just shows the quality. And a huge shout-out to the 13s, 14s, and 15. Their individual racing yesterday, the quality of racing... Uh, I had numerous people talk about just how the quality's improved so much. Let's go to the beach, talk about the quality. Let's get amongst it with Harold. So unfortunate for Burley Heads, but fortunate here for Ocean Grove, Victoria. Here with Ryan, made it through to the final. Talk to us about your club and your three teammates that got you through today. Yeah, they're awesome. Um, everyone did well. And yeah, Ocean Grove's a great club. We uh, always have each other's backs and yeah, we're just a good team. And swell wise, something you used to compared to this and I'm assuming the water's a lot warmer than down there. Yeah, it's pretty cold in Ocean Grove, but um we get about the same swell, not as dumpy, but yeah, I like it up here, it's a good beach. Nice finals coming up this afternoon. Any expectations? Uh no not really, but be great to do well. But yeah. All the best. Thanks, Ryan from Ocean Grove getting through to the final later on this afternoon. Yo yeah, great job Harold, great job to Ocean Grove and Ryan. Um, great club down there Ocean Grove. Um, obviously Harriet Brown started the journey there and um, obviously trained. Sonia does a lot of work down there as well. They'll qualify through the final and a great time for that for the Victorian club. A little change over the commentary box up here. Done a great job this morning, Jenny Parry. Big thanks to Jen and uh, Christy Munro's in the house. Big welcome. Thank you, Ty. Yeah, I've been um, down on the beach. It has been a lot of fun this morning. The team events, um, obviously a bit of a different vibe to the individual events. Just so much team spirit and huge smiling faces as um, we see our teams progress through to the semis and to the finals. A few hard luck stories as we just saw happen in that um, male Cameron relay. We've got the results up on screen for semi-final number one. Richard will qualify. We spoke about Alex. North Billy went through North Pearl Curl. North Fifth, Kingston Arlo. Australian board chairman from yesterday, brought them home. And Ocean Grove stuck in there, just unfortunate for Burley, Richard or Noosa. Clifton Beach as well. But um, I managed to get down, I got back from the ocean room, dropped down the beach as well. But it's, it's a different feel from yesterday, isn't it? Yesterday, individual racing, a lot more nerves individually. The first day of Aussies now, it looks like everyone's just settled a little bit. More of a good t- team vibe having as well. And talk about great locations. What about this from the drone shots here, the beautiful Sunshine Coast? A big thanks to Sunshine Coast Council as well great opportunity to come around and, and the Aussies you know, you've, you've travelled around in many Australian championships right around Australia, represented Australia as well, as well, many world championships as well but it's one of the best places in the world isn't Sunshine Coast? It's a special spot we're looking at some of the um, looking at the shots which is just uh, north of our competition arena as we see like the river mouth into the Marucci River so um, a beautiful part of the coast. Yeah once again any uh, post doing hashtag Aussies2000 
and 24. And um, a big shout out with the Dudley Conditions Report coming up. Just to remind us the no smoking zone for those who are visiting here at the beach here. Such a good, healthy sport. And there you have the Aussies up here for Sunshine Coast. Rolls for 10 days, the 13th of April, right through to that for the 21st of you as well. But look at this, what a spectacular drone shot. Heading south along that from um, Richardall, and I see at the back there, your host club there of Alexander Headland as well. We well, start as a little nipper. What age was it? Six or seven? Or? Yes. Oh, look, I can't really remember. I'll say six. Too but far I, back. I, I, it's I too far it. back. I didn't really hit the water a lot, though, I think, until I was sort of under 11s, under 12. So I, I tell my nippers I didn't really touch a board in those foamy years. So um, well, it's I did, never really I did, too I, late I did hear on the seven sand modelling, you were very good. I, I was, yeah. Could build a good sand castle. Spent a lot of time on the beach in those under sevens. Yeah, um, great. But it's just, there's a sport for it. There's a, an event for everyone in our... Um, our program and we've seen a lot of the, the beach sprints, uh, the flags which we'll have a little bit later on this afternoon the flags finals coming up and um, I reckon we might have some surf teams lining up this looks like to me the 13-14 female surf teams, now once again interesting 13 year olds come up and join the 14s they can either go 13s to 14s or 14s to 15s but they can only race in one division as well and um, We've had plenty of action this morning, but for those on live stream, do not go anywhere because we'll be back after a quick commercial break with plenty more action. Sunshine Coast. You'll find sunshine makes the sea sparkle. The skies pastel. You'll find the sun shines from above and from within, making life linger. Moments longer. Hearts beat fast. And time moves slow. Come find your sunshine moment for real. A uh, big welcome back to this Aussies 2024. And uh, we have a shout out here on live stream to John Spindles. Mount Monganui in West Australia, I should say New Zealand, Mount Monganui, my bad. But a uh, big welcome. The start is coming up. It's under 13, 14 female surf teams. And uh, four swimmers, it's not about position one, it's about position four. They'll tally up their points, lowest points overall for the teams and looking to qualify for that for the finals. The smiles and the dials. And uh, so great to see the clubs lining up. Looks like Seacliff, South Australia there. Yumina, great little black white cap there as well. Lime Noosa, you know, the Crooksville got Wander in the mix there as well. Plenty of clubs lining up here as well. The girls, look at the smiles on the faces. And this is what it's all about. And a big shout out to West Bay Nippers as well. Loving the team racing. Great job. And great to have you guys on live stream with us as well. And we're lining up here for the 13-14. So it's all about qualifying through to that with the finals. But plenty of nerves because you've got the 13-year-olds here as well, Chrissy. First time ever at an Aussie Champs. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of mixed emotions as we pan across the start line there. Some smiles and waves and some a little bit more serious and, and nervous. Um, obviously all club mates, but as you mentioned, combining the two age groups with the under-13s and the under-14s. So if you're an under-13 and you're racing up, it's... Um, you know, it's a nerve-wracking at the best of times, but your first Aussie titles um, and, and racing with the older girls it adds a little bit more of an element of, of pressure and hopefully excitement for them as well. But seeing a lot of that mixed emotion on the faces there, and I'm hoping that they're just all excited to be here. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? So this is heat number three coming up, and uh, we can see... I love the, the difference in clubs. You've got Redhead from the Hunter Brand Super, yeah, New South Wales, Alexander Headland, and the, Headland, the Black the Cup, the Seacliff. What a great club that is, too. Great little caravan park situated next door to that as well. And uh, Richard Orr, your minor, and Lucy Cook, we spoke about. Wanda, they're up and about. The old uh, City Branch team there, Wanda. Great history in surf sports racing as well. And Byron Bay, the tri colours of Byron Bay. Very, uh, sometimes easily confused with that as North Wollongong as well. But uh, this is great. And a uh, big welcome, it's Christy Munro with Tide Out here in the conference stream. A big shout out to all those on live stream. We'll roll through all the afternoons. To so give you a bit of a rundown, we've had the board relay heats. We've gone through that of the uh, Cameron relay heats. We're now doing the surf team heats. From that, they'll roll into board rescue heats and then we'll roll into pre master finals package, which we're probably looking for about 1 o'clock or 1.30 on what's this afternoon. Depends how long the board rescue heats take. And uh, a massive afternoon of team finals. Very similar yesterday. What a great day yesterday. 
Oh, it was fantastic, wasn't it? I was um, down there doing some interviews on the beach this morning with obviously our team events that we're rolling through this morning and um, some of our athletes still on a huge high from their individual, whether it was just making it out of a heat or getting onto a podium. Everyone has their own success, success stories and a lot were coming back from a little bit of disappointment. Um, I heard you mention earlier some of the hard luck that Stanley Jarrett had in the surf and um, I think all of our athletes have just come back refreshed, ready to... Um, you know, get that bad luck out of the way and see what's on offer today. So it's a brand new day, a brand new set of finals that we'll have later on this afternoon and some will be wanting to continue that form and some will be looking for a little bit of redemption. And uh, Chrissy, obviously you spent, you know, top of the tree as well in performance individually, but team events, there, there's something special, aren't they, when you race? And uh, I know I've had an opportunity in, um, you know, when I was Aussie Gold Tupman, but that event, you know, a number of individual stuff going through age group and that too, but team events just mean so much. And particularly, I think a swim team often, you know, it is it is a bit lonely when you're out there racing for yourself and you're in, as an individual. And it's a really nice feeling swimming out around the cans and you're battling the arms and the legs that are being thrown around. And you see another club cap and you think, oh, there's my teammates, so they're up there with me. And it's it is really special. It just lifts you that little bit more. Yeah, it's a confidence ball to get rolling. The other thing too is there's actually a lot of tactics in this race. And you know, being a coach myself, I look into it quite quite uh, quite deep as well because I look at the surf conditions, I look at where your stronger swimmers are to whether you position them on the line. If there's a bank, if you've got shorter uh, swimmers to, to taller swimmers as well. So there's so much characteristics. Um, those that like to fight in a pack, those that don't like to fight in a pack, you position them in one in four. You know, the, the bookends of the team as well. So um, I'm sure the coaches will work on our strategies to get, because at the end of the day it comes down to number crunch and get minimal numbers to go through the final and then potentially get on the podium. Yes, so true. I guess if you've got a, a swimmer who's a slightly better runner, and if they do have to run up, you'll put them at the furthest run leg, and, and probably the strongest swimmer will be maybe in the worst position on the start line. As you mentioned, they could maybe battle through a hole or battle through the pack, and you might put your weaker of your four swimmers um, in the more favourable position, just because the aim of the game is to get your four swimmers across the line as high up as possible. So it's not just about um, making it best for your, for your top swimmer, but thinking about the combination of the... Four team members that you've got lining up. You see the tide rolling in as well, but um, plenty of waves on off. I'm actually um, surprised with the bit. I knew the swell was going to drop a little bit over the last um, couple of days, but probably it hasn't dropped as much as they forecast. So there's a great little swell up there, but very, very challenging, in particular for the 13s. Now, the 13s are going to step up on the mouths as well. They haven't raced on mouths all year. Uh, they are racing is combined with 14s as well, but surf teams coming up. What a great spectacle. It's um, pretty much your home stretch as well, isn't it? It is, yes. You can see Alex just in the far well, the top of the screen there, the Bay of Alexandra Headlands, which is where they'll be hosting some of the boat races later on in the Aussies program. But never been in a boat? I have never been never been in a boat. No, no, probably probably can safely say I won't probably venture. <laughs> <laughs> we might head down the beach with our guns, Harold, down there. What's the update? Uh, Charlotte Barsley with me from Redhead. She wanted to be interviewed. Team of four. What is the line? What are we taking out there today? Because the cans have just been moved and the waves are pumping at the moment. Uh, just a lot of strategies, you know, making sure I've watched the surf correct and stuff like that before the race, warming up my shoulders and stuff. Yeah. Sick. Get into it. Let's go. Lots of strategies. Uh, talk about strategies. If you're in position one, most northern end, Chris, what, what strategy would, would you uh, look to apply? I'd probably, depending on where they've, we've just heard that they've had a bit of a course reset. So depending on where that first red and yellow can is, would really make the decision on where I would enter the water. We can see um, a bit of a mixed decision here. The redhead team that we just saw interviewed have gone straight in. I was going to say, so Harold, Harold has pumped her right up because what about the start of redhead, bottom right hand of the screen at the moment, has uh, shot out of a gun and absolutely exploded. Uh, obviously tall in stature as well, but the way she attacked that star, for all the young boys and girls out there watching on live stream, that is a great exhibition. The other, thing, the other interesting, that's her bottom of screen at the moment. The other interesting thing is it looks like a little bit of shallow water sort of top of screen at the moment where the young redhead's now in a hole. So it's a bit of a mixed bag we get here at um, Richardor in terms of bank, hole, bank, hole, but also back bank come into play as well. Yeah, we can see our competitors just to the top of the screen there, up and dolphin diving, where the competitors on the bottom of the screen, as you mentioned, they're tired, swimming through that deeper water. But um, what we can see when the conditions, what, what they are close into shore, is often different on that second bank. So it can be a little bit of a 50-50 
toss of the coin as to what you do. Do you want the favourable favorable conditions close in or do you want to make it work for you as you head out closer to the Cairns? We could still see a little bit of water movement with that sweep, sweeping to the north. There's that pullout we can see. That looks like Cook's Hill now going to four and um, the little rip pockets that just pop up. And if you're in that spot, it makes a huge advantage as well. You see the energy pushing in and uh, pretty much resistance, isn't it, each wave. And I uh, look at that 10, 11 second period of swell which means that's between each wave is about that amount of time. When you see the energy pushing up, it's very hard, isn't it, to swim against that? Yeah, you really want to spend the least amount of time possible in that washing machine water, as we call it, that white water, that fluffy water, where it's really hard to get that traction um, out to sea, pulling forward while you're fighting against the force of the ocean, pushing you back in towards the shore. We can see a little bit of white water at the top of that, sorry, uh, blue water at the top of that screen. So I think our athletes have nearly negotiated the break I saw a Byron Bay Cup, there it is, top left hand side, they are the tri-colours, love the tri-colours, been a rooster supporter, probably helps that as well, but Byron Bay's off to a good start as well, I think we saw Cooks Hill off to a very good start at the front, there we go, top of screen, and uh, the benefit of being out in front, nice clean water now, and, and good little height, probably lifts the head just a little bit in terms of viewing, trying to pick up the cans, and it happens a bit in front, doesn't it, when you're in front you get, hang on, am I going the right way? Where are the cans? You know, sometimes you try and spot an IRB, but they're not always situated right with the first can as well. Have you ever swum off course? Look, I have. I have at an Aussie's. I yes, actually. Yes, so cost you. Yes, I was disqualified. The surf was so big this particular year. I swam past the swim cans, and I was out near the board cans, and went around the board cans thinking, well, at least these are some cans. Um, <laughs> got myself back into the beach, and yes, got the notification that I had been DQ'd. So really important to make sure you navigate the course correctly, which our competitors on screen are doing beautifully at the moment. Yeah, Cooks do around in one, Alex in two, and then go to the Byron Bay. This is great. Now, what I also love, another one from Cooksville. That's two from Cooksville. Remember, we're banking four swimmers. Your top four swimmers. Redhead go around now. Alex up there in the mix as well. That's two for Alex. There's Seacliff for South Australia. There's another one for Redhead. Two black swans come through from Richardor. Three for Cooksville. Wanda Wanda in the mix now. Another one. There's your minor now in the mix as well. Noosa comes around. Oh, the Argy Bargy on cam one. A little bit of UFC for the ladies as they come round, and they know that every position counts. It really does. Pretty hard to um, pick who might be leading at this stage. We can see a lot of those caps really spread out, so I didn't see a definite, distinct top four. Um, it's a really hard one to count, even when you think you might see who the, who the four are, who have crossed the line. We do need to wait for the judges to allocate all of those points, but um, it's a pretty clear th uh, lead three in these swim teams at the moment. Alex may be just doing a little bit of work to move up onto the feet of our... Look, look at that view. Isn't it great? It's a very similar to a peloton. I'm just being, I mentioned that in the ocean swim this morning. Just strung out right across the string there as well, and um, it is a great spectacle. Nine, and we've got nine and a nine cans lined up there at the moment, maybe ten at the back there, but um, Cooksville at the moment, good little team, Georgia Munro, uh, Pimenta there, Gabriel Pimenta, Ben Eswell there as well, and Lucy Weber. So they're just stamping their authority, but love the move now of Alex on the outside, and um, being the home club for yourself as well, great, a very proud tradition in surf sports, we've got Mayfield, Issel, we spoke about Sam Issel yesterday, Davis in there as well, and Brace Girdle, but um, Alexander Headland right hand side, swell building, Swell building. I don't think they'll get this one. You see, it's just drawing out. Very similar to what we saw yesterday, wasn't it? As that tide started to make it smooth. Legs come in. Maybe two. Maybe two. Here we go. Well, body surfing is on. A lead two. It looks like at least one has held it. Our early wow. leaders of Cooks Hill. I can't see if Alex are still. In that is that phenomenal white body water. surfing by Cooks Hill. Still has not taken a breath. I can see like she's kicking in a bucket. The hills are coming up as well. What an exhibition. Oh, the this goggles are out of snows as well. Oh, this is great. This is a great exhibition of body surfing. Three breaths. There we go. The goggles are out of the snows. Could be Munro. And uh, what about that? That is impressive. She doesn't look phased at all, does she? Um, and that's a way easier way than swimming your way all the way into the beach. So fantastic job there from our lead Cooks Hill competitor, getting some early points for her swim team, or, or lack of points, I should say. It's the accumulation of points, um, and you want to have the least amount of points as possible to qualify through to the next round. And a fairly spread out race in this um, heat three. I know when we get to the finals of a swim team, we'll see a lot more bunch Ooh, around yeah. the cans. And uh, Cooksville, so they'll bank one point. For those not privy to surf teams, one point will be for Cooksville. Coming up now, there's the Alex Seals. Can we drop back into three or four? So it's a numerical order. So points rate of one, two, three, four. 
And that looks like a great performance coming through. Just trying to pick that cup. Could be another Cook still, is it? Trying to see on that if there's a blue. It is. Look at that. One, two. One, maximum two. points so far. Three points in total. Looking very comfortable to qualify through. Alexandra Headlands making their way up across the line, getting some minimal points for her team as well. So banking points, good job for Alex. Good strong swim. You see the parents in the background jumping up and down. Oh, I love surf sports. Love the Aussies. Another two. There we go. Two in for Alex now. Through uh, two in for Redhead. Oh, a finish of you, Minor. Super strong finish. All very important points here. Every position counts. It's going to be a difficult one for us to bring you who our um, finalists are or semi finalists are took, for this. Took the words right out of my mouth. Every position counts in. Uh, Wait till we see the finals. The fireworks are live up the sprint finish as well. Shoulders getting in front. But there you go, Alex, they got all four in. I would say they're comfortable to qualify for the final a bit later on today. And now, plenty of officials did a great job yesterday as well, didn't they, the officials? Yeah, we have a lot of volunteers helping us down here. Also, we see our army of white officials, and you can see just dotted on our shoreline there, our army of orange volunteers as well. That's our water safety, making sure all of our competitors are safe in and out of the water. So team, team Tangerine. Team <laughs> oh, Tangerine. What a big calendar them. out. Here we go, replay coming up. And uh, watch the legs come in from, from Cooks Hill. There they are. Legs come in, just drives the body. Probably the downfall a bit of Alex is, to me, she was a little bit too straight line, mm -hmm. hands on top of each other. I like hands slightly apart a little bit just to balance the body. At she least now, until you've taken that, that drop of that white water, I think you sort of arch your back like a bit of a bridge and, yeah. um, and sort of splay your hands and your arms separate it a little bit and then you can lock into that streamline once you've taken the drop of that white water. But um, that'll be a learning experience um, for that competitor. And, certainly want to milk those waves as much as you can because um, that's going to be the difference at the end of the day come yeah, the finals. skills pay the bills, as we say. And uh, great job, ladies. I reckon three teams will qualify through. There's three tri-semis. We'll be nine to finals. But uh, let's get out with Harold with our winners. Uh, winners at the moment. We've got to wait for a couple more to come through. But we're here with all the Gs. So uh, Gabs and G Georgia, Georgie, double Gs. Tough conditions out there. You were the only one to stick that wave from the back all the way to shore. That was amazing. Talk us through it. Um, thank you. I saw it was coming, so I just put my head down and tried not to die and just not, try not to breathe, to hold it. And have you found the conditions similar to yesterday or a little bit more dumpy? Uh, pretty similar to yesterday, although it's a bit different, a bit more, um, a bit less dumpy today than yesterday, yeah. Uh, Cooksville squad really strong at the moment, so you've got, I guess you've got the girls in the 15s. Uh, Lexi pushing you guys at training all the time. Tell us about how amazing it is to have such a cool squad of chicks at Cooksville. Yeah, it's really great. Everyone's really close, so we all work together and try and like challenge each other, which helps a lot in training. And is there an Instagram page we should follow for your club? Yes, go follow Cooks of Cooks. It's terrible, don't do it. Great job. Love the smiles and the dials as well. Well done. Probably looking for three teams to qualify. They'll crunch the numbers now as you see that of uh, it's like the 13 and 14 boys starting to get organised now for their surf teams coming up. And this event does not go ahead without the great support of sponsors. TEQ, Sunny Coast we spoke about as well, the council, VRP with the Powercraft and Fins. And if you're around the area of Richardor at 12.15 today, jump in the Fins tent in that of the festival zone because Courtney Hancock, the legend, Courtney Hancock, what a great human she is as well. She's part of the commentary team next weekend as well and uh, coaching this weekend. But head over to another Finns tent for those in the festival zone at the moment in approximately one hour and uh, maybe about 45 minutes. You can go and get your autograph and meet Courtney Hancock, one of the greats of surf sports. Absolutely. We've seen the 13 and 14 female surf teams. Heat's just come to a conclusion and we've got the start list on screen at the moment for the 13 and 14 male surf teams. We're looking at heat three on screen. Three heats of four, so four heats um, of our surf teams. We'd imagine probably three teams again going through to a final. We've got um, see the team from North Burley, Sorrento, Maruchidor, Point Leo, Alexandra Headland, Trig Island, Cairns, Manly, Burley Head, Mobe Park and Maruchidor. Yeah, plenty of colour. All the colours of the rainbow again lining up and, uh, and this is good. Love this. 13, 14 male surf teams. 41 teams in total, so they want to try and get that down to about 10 teams. And um, this is great, I love this. Lighting up, you spoke about Fremantle, great to see Frio in this mix as well. Coogee were Coogee and Coogee, so two similar spelled 
names, but different on uh, one on the east and west coast. This is uh, represented on the east coast this time, Coogee, under the guidance of Cameron Habler. And I think uh, Sister Lee might do a bit of work there too. Sunshine, they've been up and about in this younger age group. Jade Berg does a lot of coaching there with the Nippers as well. And little Millie May picked up a third yesterday in the board. So well done to the Berg family. Wanda, a team we spoke about the strength of Wanda. Mermaid Beach, they're up and about on the goddess of Bonnie Hancock and uh, the Duff Band, Stewie Duffy, doing a great job with their nippers as well, 13s and 14s. North Stain. Now, this is the club cap we got confused with the centenary of the Alex yesterday with the yellow and black, North Stain. And uh, my apologies, I might be linked onto the, uh, the wrong heat. So no, that's I all do right. apologise, but we've got to trigger this one, Point Leo, which is uh, great to see from Victoria as well. Trigger Islands Love Cube Cairns. Isn't it great to see? The other uh, Cairns Cup there as well. Richard, we spoke about Sorrento underneath Boothie. That's the, the high-vis green we can see second in from the right-hand side. So a couple of West Australia teams lining up. The Cairns Cup there up uh, northern Queensland as well. But a uh, great array of club cups right around Australia. Yes, um, as you mentioned there, the Marucci Door team we could see closest to screen. Um, we've actually got Raphael Short racing up in this under 13, under 14 male surf teams. He took out the under 13 surf race yesterday, so he'll be combining with Ari Gregg, Henry Mulligan and Archie Ray for the Maruchidor A team. So I imagine um, they'll be a, a, a good shot at making it through these early heats. I want to see, I might get um, see Parrot or um, Jen down and can pick up how many teams go through, because having four heats if they were to take three, then that'll put 12 teams, would be 48, which would potentially be too many for a final. So they may they may have to go through a semi-final. So I might get to uh, see if the team can check on that down the beach and uh, come through these drone shots. I love the silhouettes you see from the early morning sunrise as well, the athletes lined up ready to go. They are beautiful shots, and I, lo I just love watching the way that the different athletes prepare. Some will have a chat to the um, athlete to their right or left. Others will just be focused looking at their... Um, path out to sea and, and others um, you know, might be looking around for that last little bit of instruction from coach, manager, parent perhaps. Yeah, you can see the crowd starting to build obviously the finals we get on the way and a little bit of wind starting to kick in as well. We see the feather banners just starting to, to make their movement from that southeast wind. Those shots out to sea though I think are a great um, perspective to see just how long these courses are and while we're um, sometimes following them closely in that swim out through the white water it's, um, it's impressive just how quickly they do get from beach to out to the cans. It's, it's not a short distance, but they do make it look a lot shorter just by the speed that they negotiate through the break and underneath those those waves and banks. And we spoke about the resistance of the waves as well. It's quite challenging. I think the board raced yesterday around five, six minutes mm -hmm. on the mounds, which is a, a very lengthy and going around the cans 12, 13 times as well. So this is the 13, heat through the 13, 14 surf teams. So just be giving a thumbs up. A big uh, hello to all those on live stream. Thank you for joining us, whether it's on Facebook or that of YouTube as well. Give us a shout out. Who are you supporting? Who are you going for? And uh, tell us a good story. Keep it clean. You can tell us a good story in comments about uh, the Aussies coming up. A little bit of background information as well. We love hearing the new stuff as well. And Dion Williams, loving the live stream from New Zealand. Great to have you there with us, uh, Dion. And also Talia Howe. Let's go Diggies. Diggies Beach. And... Uh, they're doing really well, really well in um, the youth and also in other 17s and 9s. Look out for them stepping up later on the week as well. Alana Hampton, yeah, Brighton, love the red and white tie. I think it's their 80th year, 80th year, Brighton. They have specific togs in the ocean swim this morning of the red and white stripes. Best tog of water gave them out this morning. So well done to Brighton. Great little uh, South Australian club tucked down there as well. So. A so many of, good stories here. A lot of anniversaries for a lot of our clubs, whether it be the 70, 80, 90, or you know, 100 year, 100 year anniversaries for our clubs. This is definitely an, a long term tradition. It is 100 years of surf life savings. Great, and uh, Alex, you can see five on the right hand side, celebrating with a different cap as well. Um, decision time. We see some here on the right. That's the southern end of the beach, and uh, they saw something they liked down there. And it was quite a little hole that we saw earlier. I think it did work well in the women's race, and I'd imagine these athletes will have watched the race. Um, play out before them and just probably thought yep I'm going to take that um, left hand down I'm going to risk 
a little bit more speed off the start and run and hopefully get into that little run out like you said they're just little pockets of run out little sort of um, flash rips I suppose popping up here and there and they can be a little bit hard to spot but um, you probably more feel them than see them when you know you're in the right spot when you feel yourself being dragged out towards the cans. I love these views as well gives you great context of uh, what's up in the ocean at the moment you see left hand side They'll go down. Now the secret is they probably went down a little bit too late. You want to get down without that wave hitting your heels as you go down. You see the sky blue cap. There might be a man. See the sort of manly's in there as well. There could be a manly cap that I see pop up there. That's the sky blue. So went down nice and he tried to come up and a little bit of breaststroke. He can't afford. You've got to maintain that body speed as best you can. That's trick in the green, red and white. We can see they'll go down now. And the secret is you want to go down before getting hit in the heels. My hot tip is to stay down as long as you can because the energy of this swell is quite strong. The longer you can work that ocean, a little bit of a pull out from down underneath uh, those sets yesterday as well. But all of a sudden, look at this. Two the sky blue cup of man. You go back to some of the great surf swimmers. I cannot go past that of uh, Craig Riddington in the late 80s and, uh, and the 90s. Give my age up a little bit there. But taking out the surf race, Billiards Bay Bay Park in 1989 in which was an unbelievable swim. Took about 15 minutes to get round the cans. The sweep was that bad. And uh, Rido, congratulations. Uh, True Waterman. And now we've got some great boys. Could be the Chalmers boys there. Of, um, we do. We've got Jacob team Chalmers. Event. I think they won every team event at the New South Wales State Championships, that of uh, the Manly. And what's the makeup of their team there? So we've got Jacob Chalmers, Thomas McMurty, um, Austin Nicholson, and Henry Whitehead is the Manly Team A that is surf team, so a bit of a combination with our 13s and 14 competitors, but you can see the two sky blue cats at the top of our screen. Look at their lead, they've taken probably 10 to 15 metres on the rest of our field, so um, an incredibly strong team, as we would expect from um, the Manly Team A. Well, what I also love to see with the surf team for the surf race is, is go back to the surf race of yesterday, and, and a huge congratulations to Oliver Brown, who took out from Trig. He took out the surf race yesterday in the under-14s. Uh, he'll be swimming here as well. He's in this here as well. Jacob Chalmers got second. So from we've got our Australian champion from yesterday. He also took out the 2K open water swim this morning as well, Oliver Brown. Got a little bit of a moustache for 14 year old. Looks impressive. And uh, he is a phenomenal swimmer. And uh, not only did he win yesterday for Trig, but Billy Hawks, if I remember right, got third yesterday uh, for Trig as well. They train under Andrew Mazel, Mozzie. I know they do the surf stuff with him. They obviously do their pool work with their pool coach. But um, it's a one-two punch at the moment for Man Life Saving Club. And um, look at this. It's where you want to be, is at the front end with your buddy. Yeah, it's nice to be matching that with your teammate. And, uh, setting the pace out in front, I think it might have been that cap over Oliver Brown from Trig Island, perhaps sitting in second. So um, knowing it's just a heat, he's got to get his team through, but perhaps just saving a little bit of energy, as you mentioned. He's done the 2K swim earlier today and, and a huge program yesterday. So it's a little bit of a balancing act. Oh, I saw a bit of, <laughs> a bit of argy-bargy elbow work around a little bit of East Coast versus West Coast as well, was uh, maybe Richie doing that of Trig. And I love that. And I uh, hope you guys on live stream are enjoying it as well. And a big shout out to uh, Megan Nay, who has joined us. Oh, I mean. Olympia, yeah, little Moo Moo. Uh, absolute legend. And um, I know the Nay family. And the video go back to 1980. Her dad was in the Open Australian Island Web final against Grant Kenny, right down to the, uh, the last two legs. And right there, the last leg as well. And uh, Way's building now. Look at this. Oh, well, body surfing champs for the boy from Manly. Has a little bit of a look across. See his teammates. And let's go. Game on. Tuttle pops up for uh, up for green here for these boys. Yeah, great position for the Manly team, eh? Getting minimal points across the line there. And um, we've spoken a lot about over the weekend of um, our surf stars who then went, went on to become Olympians. And Megan Nay is another one of, of our Olympians that um, very, very uh, fondly part of our surf family. I'm trying to think. We've seen the state team a couple of years younger than you. I remember the state team many years ago having you guys yeah. in. Yeah. Moo Moo was in there as She's well. She's been across, yeah, state teams, Aussie teams. Yeah, doing a wonderful job. Here we go, Manly 1-2, comfortable. It's all about the numbers crunch too, and uh, they'll be comfortable to go through and qualify through. And We spoke about the variety of clubs and colours, and a shout-out to Christie's Beach Surf Ice Saving Club, celebrating 70 years. And uh, three generation of clubbies on the beach today. Granddad, life governor, the treasurer, the master's competitors, Grandkids, also youth competitors. So, big shout out to that of Christie's Beach Surf Ice Serving Club. Seven, Cop seven, Rucci, seven. Look look Burley swimming all over the top of each other here at the moment. Look at this. Burley right hand side, Maricidor as well. 
There's Trig. It looks like Oliver coming in now. And uh, well done to the Trig boys. We're trying to get a numbers update at the moment. Barely another, that might be three from Manly across the line there. Maruchidor competitor coming up as well to get uh, the first across the line there for the Maruchidor swimmers. Yeah, that's, that's good. So we're trying to crush the numbers. Here we go. That's Looks the like rest another of the Maruchidor Maruchidor team. Three. One or two. Another from Burley as well. Positions in uh, is that little Raphael short. It I is. Look at the surf race yesterday under thirteens. Look at the size difference. And uh, Rafa, more body surfing coming through. Here we go. Body surfing at its best. It is a team event. It is the surf teams. Yes, absolutely. They're leaving no room for each other there on the on the wave. They're sprinting up across the line. They know the points are on offer. So. That might be the last of our Manly competitors getting across the line there. We can see North Burley, another Burley heads, and Alex competitor coming across too. So very hard to judge without top having five, the score. Top five teams going through. So um, number-wise, I look comfortable. I'd say that a Manly treat look good as well. Richie Dore. There's, oh, there's the last two for tricks. So top five teams will, will make that. Looks like they will be going through to semi-finals. Top five, Chris. Might pick up some replays of the the action, the body surfing coming down here. Look at this. Man, life saving club. You love this. It's a good feeling, isn't it? It is. Had a little look across there just to make sure. Yep, we're both down it. Both teammates. So that's a really nice feeling just to know that you're pulling away from the rest of the field with the that with the the length that you can hold on to that white water and both competitors just doing an absolute almost coming together there but doing a beautiful display of body surfing what i loved about yesterday the athletes turned up was plenty of nerves you could you really feel the uh, the emotion the nerves on the beach yesterday morning but also the excitement of the waves turning up and you know with your years of experience of racing even racing masters now turning up and and knowing there's a wave on it's just that builds a bit of excitement doesn't it, as an athlete yeah, it's probably that change from nervous energy to excitement because while you've got the waves to worry about, you've got less time to worry about your other competitors, you know, your, how, you're, how yourself is feeling throughout the race. You're just really looking at that next wave that's coming ahead. So it's, it's a really nice positive shift of focus when you're battling out there through the conditions. It takes a little bit that, of that edge off if it was just flat surf racing and then I think that nervous energy is much more heightened over maybe the pain that you're going to feel in a flat water as, a, as opposed to the excitement of the surf. Yeah, it's going to step in, and I, I love it as well because I had an excuse that if things didn't work out. Oh, they jagged on me. They jagged on me. Had bad luck. Didn't break where I was. But you know what? That's surf. That's what we love. And that's what we turn up every day. It's the elements of the surf, and um, it is our Aussies 2024. A little replay here from the back marker straight over the top. Oh, this is genius move. Look at this. One, two, three, two. Burley boys right next to each other. One's pushed one off the wave. Two Richie Hall boys on top Might of each other. Might be a North Burley, I think, as well. Oh, North Burley there as well, is it? Or is it? North Burley it and the Richie Dor. Little Shorty might be one of the uh, North Burley boys as well. Oh, this is great. Right over each other. I think we might have Harold down on the beach. So we're down here. Interesting thing. So surf teams are so important. We, the count comes through. We've got the four lines at the moment. Uh, but it's not, I guess it's hectic now as we get to the back end. Mike McGrath doing a great job here, ensuring that all the athletes are in their perfect line. Stewie's here as well, great job. Last of the competitors coming through, uh, but we've got one more competitor to go. George, can we just grab you for a second, please come through. So this is George Alexiou, a legend of South Maroubra. Uh, talks about the importance of ensuring that when we've got an event like this, that the kids are in the right order so that we can get that calculation right at the end. Well, it's difficult because there's, if you, you know, it's all about the placing, so... For example, in this particular heat, Manly, I think, placed four people in the top 20. So they're obviously going to place very high. Without doing any counts, they're obviously going to... They've, they've pretty much won this race in this calculation, I'd say. Um, but live heats does all the calculating these days. So, to be honest, the old manual system's gone out the gate. But, you know, it's all good fun and the kids work hard to do what they do. Kids are working hard, so we're taking five through to this one. So the kids going to have three swims in the surf teams. Uh, does that go into the, I guess, consideration when we get to Aussie titles about how much work these kids are getting put through? Oh, absolutely. Of course they do. They work in, they, they train in squads, they work in teams. That's what it's all about. So, And they love competing as a group, which is what the team's event's all about. So, All good. Thanks, brother. Love your work. George Alexia, South Maroubra. Not normal Maroubra, South Maroubra. Yeah, well done.
Well done, George. Well done, Harold. And um, she's got the young girl from South Maruba finished second yesterday under 15 female surf race. And we spoke about Sam O'Brien, you know, back in the histories and, and so many great competitors back then. I think the McKeans were back there as well, South Maruba. One was uh, my coach in uh, Wollongong many, many years ago, Big Ronnie. But um, great to see as well. So that's, uh, we spoke about team events and the love of team events. And a quick shout out to West Bay Nippers. Now, we spoke with them a little bit earlier. They're actually a surf club in Taiwan. And it's a big hello on live stream. It's their second official season. And the head coach from the South African Junior Surf Ski Total back in 1996, now passing on the passion experience. So thanks for the update on live stream. Great to have you here. Share the love right around the world. There we are in Taiwan. It's great that we can bring this sport across the world, across the states, but also across the world. We're just looking at some beautiful shots there of the river mouth a little bit north of the Maruchidor Beach. I think we're just getting ready um, for the heats now of the under 14, under 15 female surf team heats. So we're uh, getting through the heats of these surf teams. And we, um, while we're setting up the course, we might take a short break and um, be back for all the action shortly. Here on the Sunshine Coast, you'll find sunshine makes the sea sparkle, the skies pastel. You'll find the sun shines from above and from within, making laughs linger, moments longer, hearts beat fast, and time moves slow. Come find your sunshine moment, for real. We're back now as we just wait for the course to be set and um, all of the placings to be um, recorded just from our previous heats there. It takes a little bit longer as we just heard when we're recording the uh, results from our surf teams. So we'll make sure our officials are getting all of those um, athletes scanned in so we can um, calculate who has qualified through to the semi-finals. It takes a little bit longer than just uh, first across the line. And that's that's a big program for the 13s and 14 boys as well because now they've got to back up and do a semi-final. Uh, on, on top of the um, on top of the you know all the other events of Cameron's and things like that as well. There's a lot of events they've got to do. So, you know, in terms of the program coming up, we we'll have a rundown here. Just a reminder: these Aussies, if you are putting a post up, don't forget the hashtag Aussies2024. And a big thanks, Sunshine Coast Council, great supporters. I tell you what, they put the sunshine out. What a start to Aussies, and it is a no smoking zone for those down here as well. And for those in the festival zone, a big hello. And at the end of the day, this is surf sports, but surf life saving is all about vigilance and service, about protecting our beaches. And surf sports is uh, pretty much a pathway of just training our athletes to patrol our beaches the best way possible as well. And a uh, great, great history, John Baker, ESM, President of Surf Life Saving Australia. A great man, a great human as well from South Australia. Heavily involved with helicopters, had a good chat with him this morning. Uh, he loves the Aussies, and he just spoke about the great job they do right around our country in terms of patrolling our beaches as well. And uh, Graham Ford, obviously him involved in life saving, uh, world life saving now, past Australian president as well, OAM, was there as well. And um, it was just great to see the health lining up there this morning for the ocean swim. I think the youngest competitor was around 12 years of age and the oldest around 77 years of age. So it was uh, special. But lining up now, it looks like Richard or Cap, there could be Regan Copsley, I think, there from uh, the Black Sons. Richard or narrowly beaten in the 2K open water swim this morning. And the 14-year-olds have a decision. Do they race up as 15s or do they stay in their own age group and maybe have some 13s come up with them? So different clubs will bank different ways where they go up. And it all depends on the, the depth and strength and uh, play to the strengths of their their athletes as well. But I expect this to be a semi-final um, coming up. And then this will go, there's probably more boys in that 13, 14 age group than we have here with the 14s, 15s. Yeah, you're exactly right. This is actually um, heat three or maybe semi-final three, only only three for the under 14 and under 15 female surf. So we would expect this probably to go through to a final. Um, you mentioned a big program there. They're often away for the start. A big program there for some of our swimmers who are needing to do heats, semis and a final for our surf teams, but hopefully for our female athletes straight through to a final. Yeah, great job as the under 14, 15 females hit the water. An update from that with the 13, 14s, Heat 3. The top five teams to qualify, Manly A, 20 points. So all four swimmers calculating 20 points total. And they had a first, a second, a fifth and a twelfth. So a huge congratulations. Marichidor, they'll come in second, they'll qualify through. Billy Esmeralda Bay Park. 
My young boy gets another swim. Good boy. Uh, fourth was up North Burley. Eh? Well done, North Burley. And fifth, Trig. Scrape in. So well done to that of Trig, North Burley, Burley, Richardor, and Manly. Semi final for them coming up. Quality but, uh, swimmers amongst those fields. Oh, that's right. We got the, in that race we just saw earlier, now we've got the 14, 15 girls here, but in that 13, 14 race, you had the under 14 winner, Oliver from Trig. And also Raphael Short from Ritual, the one under 13. So I love how the younger champions take on the older statesmen. You can see that um, top end of your screen or that uh, southern end of the beach working a little bit better with the with the run out there. And I think a lot more of these athletes choosing to run down that way. You can see a lot of the North Burley caps um, out in front. We've got a team from Anglesey, Mermaid Beach, Blackhead, North Burley, West Beach, Alexandra Headlands, North Burley and Maroochydore. Yeah, this might be the more North Burley B team. That's, uh, that's coming through. I know the North Burley A team is very, very strong. In actual fact, semi final number two was Burley Heads Road Bay Park, 24 points, 27 points, North Burley A. Um, I expect them to be brave showing. And also, another team to look out for is Sunshine Beach. Very, very good swimmers, and that and Richard or Probably they're the big four I'd probably look at in terms of um, surf team. So out they go now. It's Richard or There we go. He's talking about the Black Swans. Come to the four. That is the North Burley B team. And uh, making their presence felt as well. North Bondi, we can see there as well. Great to see the colours. And Blackhead, some uh, really good board colours from that. The Blackhead, look out for some brave showing of the Blackhead cap as they come into the craft. Uh, let's look at the uh, New South Wales Board Relay Championship. Great little story. I think it's near Foster there in New South Wales. But um, great to see Blackhead up and about as well. You can see our swimmers having to actually swim a fair way back to our red and yellow can. So they ran um, down to the southern end of the beach, probably to get that rip, maybe that run out. But it has some um, has meant that they've had to swim a little bit further as they've swum back. And we can see the swimmers actually heading out to that second string of swim cans. I think for our 13s and 14s, they just did the front row of yeah, 40, 50 and age group of um, cans. But our, our 14s and 15s are now swimming out around that second set of swim cans. So a slightly longer swim for this age group. We're just looking at this set, our lead group just sneaking under there. It's so. relief, isn't it? That's a relief <laughs> as you get through one of those. We saw that yesterday with the boards in, uh, I think it was the younger age group. And our great visuals once again. Talk about visuals. Look at this rig of copsy goes around there in one. We'll pick up North Burley, North Burley. Looks like an angle scene there as well. The argy bargy of the first can. Yes, a couple of North board. Bondi caps in there and Alex in the mix, Angle C, we see Mermaid. It's it's not the spot you want to be, sort of that four or five competitors back where um, you just know it's going to be a little bit of a fight around the cans. Yeah, that clean water is so critical, especially when we get to the final stage. And um, this is a great performance here. Look at this from uh, the Black Swans on your home beach, one, two and three at the moment. Very, very strong team. And I'll run through this team here of... Um, Bob Richie Ball as well. One of the favourites going to this event later on today. So Regan Copsey, she a uh, great swimmer, finished second this morning, only narrowly to Charlotte Bauer from our Wanda and it took over water. Ruby Twiggy Williams in there as well. Poppy Menz and uh, Indy Bland. One of the favourites going into about potentially the final here. So we'll probably look at three teams qualifying through. Um, so there's there, only three Marucci door swimmers spread out across our screen at the moment. So um, fairly dominant performance and you can see the gap there just to the chase pack that our three Marucci wow. teams have, have put on. So certainly I think you're on the money there with maybe a potential favourite for our finals coming up. Yeah, Marucci door looking very, very good and uh, I'm surprised how spread out they are but that actually shows the strength of the swimmers up in front as well. And we're talking, you know, Australian class swimmers here. And um, what we say, maybe that'd be Ruby Twiggy Williams. Looks like one of the younger girls coming through. Oh, they're swimming back out. They've spotted something out the back. Look at this. They're swimming Two five, gone ten, One's 15 gone minutes forward. back to the waves. Will they pick it up? Here they go, straight over the top. I don't, know I don't think they it. got it. I think a leader. Maybe one Maruchido, I think, who, part, who swam backwards is still on. I think this is one of our competitors who made that split-second decision to swim this back out gold. to sea. I would love to see a replay of this come up as well. And the other thing, too, is... They both decided the same thing at the same time. A little bit of an they? unorthodox body surfing technique of the lead swimmer. Could be coming from a swimming background. Was already in the streamlined position as the wave collected from behind. But um, what a swim. The opportunity to swim back out 10 to 15 minutes probably Ruby Twiggy Williams on this might be standing it's a phenomenal board paddler 
Fantastic as well. surf skills. There you go. So There's Ruby Twiggy Williams. Great young girl from that. Great body surfing as well. But the opportunity to, uh, and that's awareness, isn't it? To uh, stop, prop, swim a good five, ten minutes back out to sea. Didn't hesitate, just made that decision on instant, and it worked out to be the right decision there for Ruby oh, Williams. Angle seeing too, well done, Angle seeing. Uh, we see it all, don't we? We're trying to get a replay of that, swimming back out to the wave. Alex now coming here at three. So all of a sudden, that wave's probably throwing a little bit of a spanner in the works for our top play skaters at the moment. I think Richard Orr, very, very strong in this age group. Yeah, that was Grace McCartney we saw coming across the line there from Alex, the older sister of Riley McCartney. He had a good day yesterday, great competitor as well, and another Alex coming through. There's Alex, probably going to bank close their top four competitors yeah. coming through at the moment. Hoping that we'll um, be able to bring these results through to you shortly. A little bit of a change in our leaders with that wave coming through, so um, I think Maruchido will still be fairly safe, but we'll have to wait to see um, how they come across and, and confirm exactly how many teams we're taking through from this uh, semi-final, or three, three semi-finals. Yeah, Mermaid coming as well. But try and, let's check out this replay coming up. Look at them swimming back out. You don't see that very often, do you? But great awareness from the Black Swans. The left-hand side, Ruby Twig Williams gets probably the benefit of reading cops. He got, probably cops one straight on the head. That's an unorthodox body surfing from the leader. Straight in a streamlined position, probably a little bit too early. What would you do in that position? Do you sort of try to launch you yourself got, up? Yeah, I think you've got to try and get body speed and then just for the wave hits you I find it's the hardest thing to do in surf last time you pick up broken wave but increase the legs with a bit of a wider gait to try and get a bit of lift in your body as well super hard but look at this from Ruby Twiggy Williams home beach as well armchair ride well done, great Ruby. example of just that head down and breath hold which is so hard to do at the end of what was quite a long swim her lungs would have been burning but um, just determined here we can see a close up shot of of our Maruchido competitor, she probably knew she was going to get swamped by that white water, and even with the best technique, they're so hard to pick up from that position. Very difficult. Probably the better for that. It does wash you a little bit back towards the shore, which is um, which is grace as well. So, big shout those are live streaming those in the festival zone, whether on Facebook, whether on YouTube. We're in the festival zone watching this. It is the Aussies 2024. It is day two of ten. So much excitement. Doesn't take me much to get excited. I guess I watch the two flies on the wall, let alone surf sports. Love it. Absolutely love surf sports. We are and being spoilt with the waves that are coming through here, adding to the entertainment of this fantastic Aussies youth racing. But it's something too, isn't it, Christy? It's the, it's the pinnacle, is it? It's the holy grail of the surf season. You line up, you know, some, some would go back and start training, you know, back in sort of May, June, some start a little bit later as well. Knowing this is it, it's the big dance, it's the big stage, it's the end goal, it's important to set goals and have a purpose in life. And this is it. And they have their carnivals, you know, check-in points throughout the season. They know where they're going, they go back to work and they're training, you know, swim board, iron, beach sprints, beach flags, taking away knowing they want to be prominent. And it's not only the athletes, but also the role of coaches, parents, mornings, afternoons, clubs as well that invest a lot in kids. But what I love about it is the health of surf sports. And you look at our young ladies here and the young men going around the beach this weekend. Hold your head very high. Whereas first, second, last, it does not matter. You're a part of surf sports and a part of surf life saving. And a uh, big congratulations. Yeah, we talk about the difficulty with some of our athletes and the number of times they go around the cans, but it is just a show of strength and numbers of how many competitors we have lining up here. And it is such an exciting weekend. You mentioned it's the culmination of the whole season and some of them might have had some ups and some downs and battled some injuries and some illnesses, but everyone's got themselves to Aussies and it's the excitement of seeing what you can achieve with your summer of hard work, but also that little bit of excitement. I've got some sleep in maybe coming up for a couple of months. Yes. <laughs> My wife's the same. She's more excited. She said, yes, next week we get sleep-ins. <laughs> she, she actually goes, we get sleep-ins for six weeks. Yeah, it's not that long, is it? So enjoy it while it lasts to our parents and our competitors. And the other thing, too, is um, in terms of the sports, you know, back in our day growing up, you used to have summer sports being served, winter sports being, you know, football, your netball, et cetera, et cetera. Now have a lot of them overlap. You know, they're trying to maximise the time. And I know in the AFL world and rugby league world, netball world, have already started training, you know, for another six weeks. So... It's an opportunity to prime himself for the Aussies, but also balance. But look at these drone shots. Huh? And a big welcome. This is the Sunshine Coast, whether in Taiwan or in South Africa, you're in New Zealand. This is the guy, the Sunshine Coast. That's a Gold Coast. This is the Sunshine Coast. We will be Aussies the Gold Coast next year as well. I think beach to be confirmed, but um, it's beautiful. In the sun's out. Harold's got the guns out. And uh, well done, ladies. This is um, three semi finals we have. We're looking at three teams going through the final, and they'll line up.
Get up out of it. Was a big, um, a beautiful display that you said there of the um, the shots there of Maroochydore Beach, probably a kilometre or so of tents, and that wasn't even the whole stretch of it. And talk about the Sunshine Beach. What about this? Smiles on the dials. Great destination. Obviously, you live here. What a, what a place you call home. I like to travel and visit here myself. And, and um, shots of Malulabar Beach there, and the, and the harbour that we can see. So. Um, that's the shots in from the Malulabar River, Point Cartwright there to the left, and the, the Bay of Malulabar Beach there to the right, and just it's a beautiful part of the world, that stretch of Kiwana Beach in the background, and it's a real just, um, I suppose, a playground if you're into your water sports and, and your water activities. What I love, you've got uh, obviously the ocean on your front doorstep, and then uh, you've got the hinterland, the, the grassy land out the back as well, and you can have the Glasshouse Mountains and all the beautiful spots there, so everything again, plenty of culture as well here another sunshine uh, coast with the traditional owners and a big shout out to them as well doing a wonderful job in the history of this great area so looking for a destination jump on in jump up to the sunshine coast beautiful spot and uh, you've lived here your whole life i have and we are the land of the cubby cubby gubby gubby people here so very proud very well representatives then. for our sunshine coast region that you're seeing on our screen and um yeah, I'm very biased, but what a beautiful place to visit or to live. If you look at the background, you can see a little rise there. We just saw Coolum there as well, and uh, I had your kids when I climbed there probably about eight or two years ago, I think it was. <laughs> they flew past me, but uh, great visuals, and a big thanks once again to that, the Sunshine Coast Council. Great supporters of surf life saving and that of surf sports. And, uh, but the man with his toes in the sand, Harold, what's the update down the beach? Uh, surf teams are now done, but I thought I'd grab Genevieve, so... Uh, usually we would think officials are cranky old men or ladies that are really polite. Uh, but we've got Genevieve, talk us through your officials journey and I guess how much fun you have in doing it. Um, I started last year, I think my first carnival was a South Coast branch and I have just fell in love with it. I had so much fun at States with the under 15. <laughs> um, and I grew up at the beach like I've I think one of my first carnivals, I was probably six months old at North Aussies with mum and dad, dad's chewy hog bin, so yeah. And surf life saving is all about pathways, you don't necessarily need to be the best competitor, but to find, I guess, your fit and have fun on the beach, so important. Oh yeah, just finding your fit on the beach is the best way, like you don't always have to be the best competitor on the beach, but if you can find a pathway that will lead you somewhere, then follow it. There you have it. If Genevieve can do it, you can do it at home. Unbelievable. Any words of wisdom to those sitting at home thinking they should official or why they should official? Uh, it's just fun to be down on the beach as an official. Like You can watch all the boys and girls compete, get through the finals, see, their, see how happy they are to get to the finals and just enjoying their weekend. It's as simple as that, guys. Thanks, G. Back to you guys at the studio. Yeah, thanks, Harold. And I can tell you what, you have picked an absolute champion in Genevieve and uh, what a great young girl she is and uh, part of Billy Mowbray Park and they don't nominate her for official of the year she's phenomenal and I know the families have been invested and uh, obviously Lou being mum and Shui Hogman who's head of surf sports in Queensland as well and gave them a bit of a shout out too she might get a little bonus lunch I think Yes, and I can um, assure you she's a favourite amongst the competitors, particularly the nippers and the youth competitors. Does such a wonderful job um, and really has their respect and their attention, which is not an easy thing to do. Yeah, but a shout out to uh, obviously Genevieve's in the younger generation, but also to those who've been here for many, many years, to all the officials. And, and I want to have a shout out to Western Australia because being over there only months ago, going to one of their carnivals and a bit of commentary work over there as well, they have a program over there that. that um, basically pulls in their juniors to be officials. So you've got 14 year olds as part of being under 14s, will be starting races, uh, will be marshalling the kids as well. It's a great initiative and uh, they know and a shout our out to Western Australia. Yep, um, shout out to Western Australia. It's a bit of a leadership program they run over there as well. So Western Australia, and we saw the power craft set up here as well, but um, for all the other states, I'm sure they might have similar programs, but if not, have a chat with WA, work with them, work together. It's a great program that they have over there in the west. Some of our boats on screen earlier, they'll be um, taking to the beach a little bit later in the week um, just to the south at Alexandra Headlands, so they'll be the host of, um, of our boat races um, that will carry on following our youth championships. I was going to say, give us a wave, the jet ski crew, look at this, the power craft, and uh, without the great support of BRP, the official power craft partners of Surf Life Saving Australia as well, 
Uh, this is great, isn't it? As we're lining up now, and uh, the Bodies, I'll tell you what, if this swell stays around and picks up a little bit, thrills and spills. And, uh, they don't need much, do they? No, better be and Alex to put that on display as well. And uh, they do a wonderful job, Alexander Headland. And obviously, all bars got the beach and the beach sprints. The beach flags are on today. So the beach sprints were yesterday and realised the beach flags. I saw they had the tractor out there this morning just flattening the, uh, the sand out. And there will be updates later on today with the beach flags and the highlights package coming up. So uh, we are separated in terms of uh, commentary with that of water events here on this live stream page. But I know heading into the next week as well, there'll be a separate live stream page for that of the Bodies as well. So stay tuned there. There's the VIP section getting set up for the finals package coming up very shortly. And a big shout out to those on live stream. Uh, big thanks to that. I can see we've got uh, Sally Hunt joining us. I think I'll have a Sally. Casey Andrews there. My mother's online too. I better behave myself. Julie D. Mama D. Love you and hope you enjoyed the live stream as well. But uh, there you go. Julie. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. We've got one she, fan at I least. I think she likes this in your voice, not <laughs> mine. There you go. Look at these visuals. And if you look at the top of the screen, there's the dongles. That's where we are. The little dongles there. And the van there is where all the magic happens. The production team. And uh, I took a little video earlier just showing what happens behind the scenes. But what a view. Look at this. Spectacular views of Richie Dore. And uh, much rivalry between Alex and Richie Dore growing up as a, an Alex. I think a bit of a friendly rivalry, really. We, we share the same stretch of beach. So, um, you know, we're not too far separated. Our two great clubs and um, a, little, a lot of collaboration. And, um, you know, the coaches are often chat to each other and... Um, so a, a nice bit of a friendly rivalry on the Sunshine Coast. I think you get that with all clubs right around, right Australia and even internationally as well. You know, you have, um, you have your rivalries. I know being a Burley boy, you get your North Burley. But at the end of the day, so many great, great, great mates and great stories. Even the kids you see lining up. And here they are here lining up. and see the Noosa boys down the bottom getting around. Looks like they've just finished off that, um, that water arena of another 13, 14 age group of surf teams. So... We'll probably be rolling into potentially semi-finals of surf teams coming up, and then board rescues, and then it's finals time. Yeah, exciting to get through those early heats for our surf teams. And um, in terms of you know the friendships that you mentioned that are made, when our nippers aren't training and our lifesavers aren't, aren't honing their skills for race day, they're often out in the water surfing, and they're doing that with their mates from all sorts of clubs. And I'd love to be doing this right now. Isn't this magnificent? That of the jet ski action coming into play as well. And they've been doing a fantastic job keeping an eye on all of our competitors, making sure everyone gets around the courses safely. So um, picking up any stray boards that might be lost on that back bank, but generally our competitors doing a fantastic job of navigating the course that is set in front of them. I will say it's semi-final time for the... Uh, looks like trying to come in now and try and pick up the age groups of uh, familiar faces if we can. Could be the 13, 14 age group semi-final of the surf teams looking to line up at the moment. And uh, two semi-finals coming up. And I'll probably say this is semi-final number one. Number one coming up at the moment. What's some great teams we got here? What about this? We've got Wanda in the mix here as well. There they are. Wanda, Swansea, Belmont in there as well. Southport from Queensland, Marichidor, North Burley B, Diggy Beach in the mix as well. And uh, the commentator's nightmare, this one. The Swansea Belmont and Diggy Beach, very, very similar caps with the green, the yellow, and the white. And uh, coming through, they just go reverse order with their white and their, uh, their yellow. Diggy Beach has the white from the outside in. And Swansea Belmont with the yellow, it's the white. So there you have Diggy Beach. There he is. Diggy Beach there lined up. Small in stature, huge in heart, along with a young boy there from North Burley. Try and pick up the young boy from uh, could be Hugo Weber there lined up. And look at these 13 boys. A lot of 13 boys stepping up here in the 14 age group as well. And it's a big, big years of development as well. And you can see some early developers of boys and those still yet to develop. But um, what they gain an advantage in height maybe this year, you know, the others will catch up next year. And uh, it's all about growth and development, isn't it? Yes, and we'll um, let our officials get the course set. We might take a short break back for the start of this semi-final number one. The sky's pastel. You'll find the sun shines from above and from within, making laughs linger, moments longer, hearts beat fast, and time moves slow. 
come find your sunshine moment. For real. All right, where else would you rather be, the Sunshine Coast? And uh, just a reminder, if you're putting a post up, don't forget to uh, hashtag Aussies2024. Jump on there, have a look at the photos coming up. What a great job to all the uh, the photo crew are doing as well. Saw Harvey there, he's been around for years. Hard things. Just a reminder, if you're on the beach, there's uh, no smoking event. That's what we love about the health of the Aussies 2024. And this is Surf Sports with Vigilance of Service. Safety never takes a holiday. And uh, great job to all our patrolling members right around our beautiful country, but also around the world in World Life Saving. And talk about World Chairman Tips coming up in August on the Gold Coast. Another special time for um, Australia to host the World Chairman Tips. You can see here under 13, under 14, male surf teams start list for semi final number one. Going through the teams there, as you mentioned earlier, Ty, we've got Wanda, North Stain, North Burley, Wanda. Swansea Belmont, Southport, Maroochydore, North Burley and Vicky Beach. So down to the semi-finals. I spot in the finals on the line. So we'd expect a little bit more um, grouping of the pack out and around those cans and a little bit more urgency amongst our teams. With those waves coming through, we can see they're in the hands of the starter now. Well, the intensity lifts a little bit, doesn't it? All of a sudden now we come four is the magic number to get through. So super quality fields starting to take place. Some going left, some going centre. Some like in that hole, but also at the back, you can see a little bit of movement of that water where that wind's starting to pick up as well. So very, very interesting. I like the middle section for my like at the moment. Just looks like we see a few more little pockets of windows of opportunity. It looks like that of the Alex cap off to a good start and wander down the bottom. Yeah, North Stain, I think it is also a similar cap with the Alex cap at the moment, but we've got the North Stain A team of Cody Burrows, Thomas Crofton, uh, Rory Penny and Felix Stevens. So they're also in that yellow and black corded cap yeah, good little battle you see, uh, especially on the 13 boys, probably smaller in stature, a lot of them trying to work really hard. I know the, uh, the North Burley, I think it might be their B team, a lot of 13 competitors doing a great job here as well. Uh, they get a bit in height compared to the bigger boys, the 14s. Three of those wander caps down the bottom of the screen, they all start staggered, our teams on the start line, but it's interesting that they've all found each other to swim almost side by side. The team of Wanda A, Max Christensen, Reef Lewis, Darcy, Tiesel and Riley um, McKeel. Now, Wanda after a very good start before boys from Wanda decided to work together. Look at this. One, two, three, four punch from the Wanda boys. Now, this is tactics in a surf team's event. They're off to a great start. Center of screen going down the bottom. He's small in stature, huge in heart. Raphael Short, the young boy, took out the 13 surf race yesterday. Now he's mixing with the 14 boys. But the top end of the screen as well, off to another good start as well. Yeah, you can see top is Wanda and bottom of the screen is also Wanda. So their top four swimmers certainly out within our lead pack at the moment. I think we can see Maruchidor. We've got two Wanda yeah, teams. Yeah, there's, there's, there's plenty of Wanda cups out there. And there's two teams in particular. So this is great. So uh, eight swimmers in total here of that for the Wanda Cup. But uh, very strong. Very good story. Great club too, the Wonder Club. You can see the boys here working to get a one, two, three. Um, and the guidance of Nathan Smith. They talk about great humans. He's a PE teacher as well down there in the Sydney branch and past Australian Ironman champion, heavily invested, but giving back to Sir Sports like a lot of athletes do, along with mums and dads as well. So very strong performance. See top end of screen as well. Richard or potentially starting to really open up. The big question is, where are the cans? Yeah, I can see a couple of Maruchidor competitors in the centre of the screen. They'll be all coming from different pathways out through that break, but everyone just eyeing that one at turning can. We haven't seen any of our competitors really take much of a change of direction. So we've got sort of a, a, a pack to the top of the screen, the middle of the screen, and then a lone swimmer down to the bottom of our screen here. So all, all selecting a slightly different pathway, but confident that they've got the best shot onto the line. We can see Maruchidor now probably extending their lead just heading up towards that red and yellow, turning it now in that nice green water. I'm very, very impressed with his swimming technique. Actually, he's a really good trim of the water. And uh, we talk about downhill swimming. looks very, very composed. There we go, congestion. It's UFC. We're at the fried eggs of Southport. There they are, the fried eggs of Southport. They've arrived in numbers around the first can as well. Swansea Belmont, Diggy Beach, Diggy Beach, Swansea Belmont. Where do you go there? Another wander back to North Burley as well. And wander. Now gets around that last can. So two teams of Wanda for the big move for my liking. Look out for the fried eggs in mid-pack of Southport. They look strong. Look at that pack. Oh, it's probably gold. about eight wide across the middle of that pack there. And arms and legs, you're just trying to get your arm into some water. But 
high chances that you're actually putting your arm in top of a leg or a body of your competitor beside you. So certainly want to be out in front with our Maruchidor competitor. That might be that of Archie Ray, perhaps, um, leading the field for the Maruchidor A-team. We've got Ari Gregg, Henry Mulligan, and, as you mentioned, Raphael Short um, joining He Ari looks good, Ray. doesn't he? He looks like tall in stature, but a bit loathing arms as well, but very composed. Uh, you know, obviously, he comes from a, a pool swimming background, good little drive in the legs as well, but... He's in that nice, clean water. That's a position where you want to be. It's about setting yourself up well to get first opportunity of the waves coming in. He's got a fantastic uh, looping, long stroke there, making the most out of every single stroke and pulling away almost as he does so. You can see getting a nice little gap on the field, uh, probably heading a little bit further south than some of his competitors. Waves building. Allowing waves for that building. I don't know if he'll be in the waves zone enough. He's going to give himself every opportunity. A good little swell building out the back. He may be still a little bit further out to where the waves will come through. This is the one we're talking about. This is the pack, the chase pack or the wander crew um, coming through. But I just don't think it'll hold up. There could be another one, two or three back. He's starting to load a little bit. You can see now all the pace is down. And I think he's breathing to his left-hand side. So we can't see the chase pack. Now with North Burley, along with Wanda, 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 Wanda. Where do you go there? Look at that. Three, four, the best there from Wanda coming through along with North Burley. Here's the lift. No. Yeah, he might be in a slightly better position, but you're right there. The cha he's doing a little bit of backstroke. The chase pack has really caught up. They're working hard as a group of three, and their um, stroke rate is a lot, lot higher than our early leader. He's spotted them now and actually angling a little bit over towards the rest of the pack as he looks to pick up this small wave. Wander one, wander on, wander on. I think he's going to get the benefit yes. of this. Oh. oh, no, he's fallen off as well. Now, remember, it's crunch time. We're looking at four teams. Best four results from your four swimmers coming in. Wanda stops and props. All of a sudden, over up the opportunity at the back for the back markers to come through, and it all becomes a number game. Yes, Maruchidor back on. I think Wanda will join here. Maybe not as fast. So Maruchidor coming back and regaining that lead, just milking that small wave. I think Wanda knew he was in a little bit of dead water, and um, I think thought for a split second about sitting backwards back out to sea, but um, he was sort of in a spot of, um, oh, he's picked up that broken wave beautifully there our competitor from Wanda we can see Raph Little Raph short up. here he is on his feet and he's a champion body surfer he gives, he <laughs> gives a point. smile on his face now Harold you need to interview Raph when he comes around great story he took out the under 13 Australian surf race totally yesterday I think he was fourth in the iron as well he's a uh, little roddy crossing there for North Billy as well he's small in stature huge in heart has one of the best smiles on the beach as well and uh, you talk about the Black Swans of Richard, or you talk about many great families here, but one in particular, the Short family. Yes, he's picked up away from probably mid-pack or, or towards the top end of that chasing pack, Raph. So, and um, once he's on a wave, he will generally hold it to the beach, which is what we saw him do to take out the under-13 surf race final yesterday. So um, a cheeky little grin there, um, and, and I guess a positive step towards getting his Maruchidor team a spot in the final. You can see two competitors from Dickey Beach coming across the line there. Here's North the fried eggs of Southport coming through, which is great. North Another Stain, Wanda. Wanda. Southport competitors all fighting for those um, very important points as they each sprint across the line. I think we'll have our confusion. North Stain, that's the North Stain Cup, very similar to the Alex Cup, the Yellow Bucks. So well done to North Stain. I ask, here we go, waves building at the moment. And have a look at the work here. He just drives in the work of Wanda down the bottom. But he just got caught up here. Just needed a little bit more legs to push him out of the top of that little froth ball. And just couldn't get there. All of a sudden, a little Raphael short out of screen picks up an absolute bolter. I think this must be the one that no, Raf is in there, but I'm not quite sure which one. He was he was near the front of that surf race, so um, put himself in the best position to catch those waves. Maybe a little bit of local knowledge of knowing where the banks are here at Maruchido Beach. We've got an interview with Harold down on the beach. Here, one or two in the uh, surf teams event. Beautiful way from the middle of the pack there. Guys are pretty impressed, but I guess training here all the time. Talk us through the amount of work that's gone through to make you the awesome legend you are. Great day yesterday and back at it up today. Um, yeah, honestly, all of our, honest, like, we put in the work. Our coaches help us through, through all of it. You know, we, we kind of know these beaches, train here all the time, no matter what surf. True. All right. Now, Raph, let's go into a little bit deeper. So, obviously, the surf club's just down there. What different areas of the beach do you actually train on? Well, all the time, different places, depending on the surf. I don't know. Wherever's best. Where's the best waves for carving? Oh, 
different all the time. The beauty of it. Now, all boys in the top four lines so are making your way through to the final. Have you got one more race in you? For sure, yep. Let's go, the Black Swans, is that it? Yeah. I just thought it for my arms, that's all. Harold, if you don't mind, can you ask the boys, who would win a body surfing comp between these two boys? Who would win if it come down to a, a world body surfing comp? All right, so World Championships of body surfing, who wins out of you two? Oh, I reckon. All right. <laughs> so, Raph said Archie, and Archie said it's pretty close, so he's being humble. So, Archie's the greatest body surfer in the history of the world. What? Yeah, no, you just... <laughs> I love it. Well done, Harold. Well done, the Black Swan boys. You know, what about that four in the first line? They'll be one of the favourites in the final coming up very shortly. Semi-final two, this could be. Great to see the sportsmanship between um, our clubs there, just congratulating each, each other as they um, maybe get the results that they've made it through to the final. Semi-final two coming up now, Alexander Headland. Uh, I think we've already had one looks for this year. They've already had semi-final number two. By the looks of the number crunch that have uh, that have come through, they've already had semi-final number two. This now goes to the... Uh, the 14 under 15. Yeah, it could be 14, 15 semi-final. We'll just get an update of where we are at the moment for those on live stream. I believe this could be that for the 14, 15... Surf Team semi-final, Swansea Belmont, that's it, semi-final number one. Swansea Belmont, Crumman Vikings, Burley Heads, Mobay Park, North Cottesloe, Burley Heads, Mentone, Newport, Alexander Headlands, Met Caloundra, great to see, and North Fifth. Oh, what a spectacular drone shot. Beautiful pictures. We go from the uh, the run speed to the waves, the porpoise to the swim, negotiating the break, and uh, give a bit of an insight. For those who have never done a surf race before there, Chrissy. How challenging is it to put all those elements together in a surf race? Well, you really want to get off the start line well, as we can see our lead competitors um, getting those early porpoises and, and swim. And you want to probably avoid being in that backpack where we see some of our competitors there now, because not only do you um, get a bit held up sometimes by the feet of the competitor in front of you, you don't necessarily get to pick your own line. So you can see our front swimmers are sort of having a bit of a look ahead every third or fourth stroke because they're wanting to make sure they're on target, they're on course, whereas when you're in the back of that pack, you um, can't know it, um, navigate your race or dictate the race as well as you can out in front. If you're not a fast runner, then you really just yes. got to use your um, swimming speed and potentially maybe look to go to one of the edges to get round the pack because getting through the pack's a hard way to go. Yeah, then negotiate the surf break like we see at the moment. And um, just going back, this is the 14-15 semi-final, but going back to semi-final one of the 13s and 14s, but Richie Dawn tallied 18 points. So Raphael Short was interviewed one, Archie Ray got two, that's three points, Henry got six, and Ari Craig there, ninth. What about that? I'd love to uh, replicate that for a final. Yeah, we heard Raph say, absolutely, he's got one more race in him, or probably more than one, so he'll be fired up for a final, and um, he's had a taste of a gold medal already, so I'm sure he'll be looking for more. We can see now the field starting to yeah, spread out, like Burley Heads. Yeah, Burley Heads, Mowbray Park, uh, it's a one-two punch here from the boys in the A-team, and uh, it's a good A-team too. Archie Harrison, Aaron McQuaid. I say that could be potentially Aaron leading the way out. Picked up third yesterday in the Ironman Championship. Great story. Comes from a, a track and field background I mentioned earlier. Had the privilege of coaching him as a as a nip about three, four years ago. Never been on a board. Then turned up on a nipper board and there he is picking up a, a bronze medal yesterday on the guidance of uh, Johnny Andrews doing the great work there in Burley Youth. So Burley, one, two, big move now. Looks like that of uh, Alex making their presence felt. I expect that to be maybe Nicky Carter. Yeah, I was thinking Nicky Carter. He's got his teammates there, Archie Mayfield, Walter Nichols and Ryan Notley. A good team there from um, Alex Team A. And I'll talk about that on our... Uh, we talk about Richardson family there too. A little Lola Richardson took out the, the, ocean, uh, the 2K open water swim this morning. And yes. the 13th. Very, spoke very well. One of the best interviews on the beach this morning. So well done, Lola. I did get to sneak in a little interview after one of her Cameron heats. I said, how are your arms feeling? She got a silver medal in the surf race yesterday, backed up with an equal first, I believe, in the 2K swim this morning. And she did confirm her shoulders were hurting. <laughs> yes. And uh, what well adds and uh, shout out to Ella as well as coming back from a shoulder injury. So where are we going now? So it's Burley heads up there in the mix. We spoke about Alex making their move and presence felt. There's two teams for Burley. We have out at the moment. I'm just trying to pick these back marker swimmers. I'm not sure why they are so far back. These back marker swimmers, whether they swim off course or caught on the bank, but there's a big difference from our head to toe at the moment in terms of our leaders to our back markers. Unusual to see in a semi-final. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Um, 
you'd imagine perhaps some of them have some off course to be that far back behind our lead group as we zone in now on our um, lead swim as it looks like the team from Burley heads still with a slight lead ahead of um, I think that's a team there of North Cottesloe the white cap that we can see Alexandra Headlands and even a, a cap from um, Northcliffe seems to be doing quite well there. Yeah, I'd say that's um, potentially Nikki Carter tucked in too for Alex. That'll be Aaron McQuaid there. I can see Zach Moyer tucked in there for Burley as well. That could be Eddie Davis from uh, Eddie Davis from uh, trying to figure out that if it's North Cot coming through as well. It looks like that is Eddie. He took out big swell building at the back. Big swell building at the back. Look at this set. What out the swim cans coming at the moment. Oh. This is going to be an absolute cracker. They might be almost too this far is in good. our This is interesting. This, you can see this just is about very to interesting. That break Look at this building. Look. They stop. They prop. They turn around as well. We could have three, six, maybe nine on this. World body serving championships. All of a sudden holds up a little bit. Down they come. Three from Burley, I think. Alexandra Headland, North Cot are on as well. I expect Zach Moy has some great body surfing skills. Nikki Carter as well. There we go. It looks like the one-two punch of the boys we spoke about at the moment. Coming through. Oh, sunshine. No, it's definitely a burly cup. I thought it's all a bit of red, the glare, but I'll say that's Zach Moyer. He did not have the day he wanted yesterday, young Zach Moyer, but uh, great body surfing skills. Has a little stop and prop around as well. I don't think that might, that doesn't look like Nick actually coming through, but here they come now, Aaron McQuaid there. North Cottesloe as well. Five yes, or six on a few of our back markers pulled down that set, so we can see two competitors there from North Burley, Alex. Uh, we've got North Cot and North Cliff. They'll be our top five as they cross the line. And it could be Eddie crossing the line, and you can see uh, coming through, good swim as well from that, from the North Cliff Club. I think that might have been Archie Mayfield come there through there from the Alex team. Mm. So he might have just got down that wave ahead of some Christian of them. Christian across the line. He's the B team, Kingston Low. Took out the board race yesterday. So that's Noah Lynch and Ki Kingston Low in for the the North Cliff team. Ray Wood now comes in as well. That could be Nick Carter there. Great swim from Matt Caloundra. Big smile on the dial as well as he crossed the line. We've got a couple of A and B teams here. So once again, they're not necessarily A swimmers are coming first. I know some of those Bs want to prove a point, but look at the crowd building as well. Finals are just around the corner. Yeah, as you mentioned, two teams there from Burley Heads. So um, we won't know yet who are our top four that have come across the line until they've scanned their wristbands and, and collated the points. Matt Caloundra coming across there. So um, that looks like our lead pack with, um, as you mentioned, here we go, wave time. Look at the back. This is the wave starting to build, and I love this. This is what surf sports. Watch them stop, and it's an awareness, an awareness under fatigue, which is uh, another they element. They it now. Backstroking. Let's have a look what we got. Two, four, six, eight, probably ten at the back. Won't get out of the top. Legs come in, right in the center. Comes down, has it with a bow peak as well, Zach Moyer. And it was Alex and that of Burley. And Eddie Davis, you see, just trying to hang in there. Still the left-hand side, just can't get there. But this is the work now. And you're talking about some of the greats of surf swimming. Kai Hurst, as an example, the ability to milk that last little bit. And he'll stop a prop with the second wave that comes through. And, and Davis did well to pick this up broken. The white cap, you can see, top of screen, left-hand side. You see Moy in no man's land at the moment, skating and trying to find some land. But well done, the other 14, 15 boys. Great exhibition of body surfing. Some of our teammates just getting across the line now. All important points. However, um, only probably the top four teams, we believe. Yeah, I think four go through, eight final, eight falls of 32, and uh, they'll, they'll wrap them up for eight teams for the final. Crowd really starting to build now in the arenas. Finals only a matter of, uh, I'll probably say an hour. We're going to look at probably an hour and a half. We're through the board rescue, quarterfinals, the semifinals, and then it'll be straight into finals package. Oh, how good is Aussie? It's only day two. Stop it. I know. We could do it all month long, couldn't we? Just absolutely love the atmosphere and um, getting all of our clubs together. We do we do it a lot, but we could do it more often as well. We can see that um, high tide mark probably just starting to turn now, so still very lengthy races, but we'll expect those to probably shorten up as we move towards our final package a little bit later on this afternoon. A few more heats and semi-finals to get through um, with our 
finals package coming up where we'll have our board rescues, surf teams, board relays and Camerons. But for now, I think we have Harold down on the beach for an interview. Yeah, we do. And we've got James. I'm going to call you Jimmy because it sounds heaps more cool and I'm trying to be young and hip. From Mentone, surf teams, how was that swim out there? Oh, yeah, all right. Yeah. Was it clean? Oh, yeah. Clean enough. <laughs> yeah. All right, talk us through, through your squad at Mentone. What is your favourite thing about the maroon, white and black hat? Oh, it's lots of people. More than my old club, so yeah, got a team, good team. Teams are fun, teams are important. Uh, Shedra yesterday, how did you go? Any highlights? Oh, uh, yeah, all right, did all right. Oh, I had an all right swim and an all right iron, so yeah. What's all right? What does that mean? Oh, I didn't make any heats, but it was all right. That's it, building. All right, and is this your first Aussies? How many have you been to? First Aussies. Yeah, nice. And what are you enjoying the most about it? It's pretty insane how many people are here, right? Yeah, the, yeah, the wave's good. So, yeah, it's good. So, everything's good. It's all good. Any other uh, one-syllable words you want to say live on TV? No. You just did, and he didn't know it. <laughs> Great job, Harold. Great job, Mentone as well. Great club. So, they're up and about, Mentone. They've had a, a shout-out to the Surf Sports crew down there doing a wonderful job in the bay down there in uh, Victoria, as we see a lovely speculum. Look at all that, uh, the club caps lined up. And the umbrellas, tell me about the umbrellas. What's happening under the umbrellas there? That looks like it's the board rescue marshalling area. So that looks like a lot of our competitors who are just shading themselves. They've got that advice from their coaches and team managers. And as we've mentioned, there have been a big one and a half days of competition so far. And Conserving energy is so important as we head towards those finals. And the sun, unfortunately, we love it. We love a sunny day at the beach, but it is a big zapper of those energies. So our competitors, they're just doing the right thing, getting under some shade and, and conserving that energy. We see the conditions, and you spoke about this just only a matter of minutes ago, about the drop-in tide now. So you'll see the drop-in tide. We'll probably expect to see more waves break out towards the back, but also if that bank will now start coming into play. And you see a little rip, rip pocket there, a little dark water just half up the beach there. I'll probably do some uh, competitors may look to use that. This will make things very interesting in board rescue because make an opportunity, depending on your position, some may be in the bank, some may be in the hole, the, the hole may help them on the way out, maybe disadvantage coming back in, vice versa for the bank as well. So, so much at stake, so much to play for here in the board rescue coming up. Uh, I love the board rescue, it's a great team event. Oh, I see there's three parts. You've got the, the importance of the swim leg first, swim, board leg, but it's the ability to come home as a team, the ability to get that board trimming, rating and timing to uh, to come to, the, to that of victory. And a uh, big shout out, obviously it's Aussie's days too, to TEQ, to the Sunshine Coast, BRP, Powercraft Suppliers, to Finn Swimwear, and Courtney Hancock is doing a signing in the festival zone as we speak, the UNC Courts and the team there, to Kellogg's, Nutrigrain, Fuel the Effort, uh, to TFH Hire, and all the great support where you can see the barriers there. Uh, to Ampole, DHL, to Isuzu, Westpac, Lifestyle Event Merchandise. This event does not go ahead without the great efforts of Surf Life Saving Australia and the event crew and Surf Sports crew doing a wonderful job. At Aussies 2024, how many Aussies you've been to, Christy? Oh, that's one I also have not added up. <laughs> quite a few, quite a few. Um, very, very, uh, I guess a huge amount if you consider all the ones I've been as a spectator as well as a competitor. Um, yeah, I don't know if I could necessarily pick a Give favorite. Give me some memorable Aussies. ones. You've got a couple of memorable Aussies you've been to. Um, I've been about 30 plus years of Aussies myself, and uh, I love it. What I love about it is just the colour that comes together. Every club, and every club tells a story, and every athlete in the club tells a story as well. And, um, Opportunities to catch up with friends you haven't seen. You know, I read a lot of Swansea Belmont boys yesterday to, uh, you know, I haven't seen for years. And just love that. Just treasure time. It could be only five minutes or ten minutes or it could be, you know, catch up for dinner or some beers or whatever. But uh, it's just precious times and uh, great friendships as well. Yeah, my first ever Aussies was at Corowa and I, I spent many a years at Aussies there. So lots of fond memories. And my last Aussies was actually over um, in WA at Scarborough Beach. So some great memories there of my last ever Aussies, but um, probably little pockets of highlights from, from many of them all throughout. Um, and also, also I was um, fortunate to race here at the Aussies at Maroochydore the last time they came around. So um, it's always nice when you've got one that's close to home. I think you talk about some of the great memories of Aussie as well. You know, you go back to 1980 when Grant Kenny won the junior double here right on this beach. Uh, you know, Australian championships back in 1964. He's uh, 1966 actually. His dad won the first time as well. 
And then you go down to North Kira, when Trevor Handy and his son TJ took out the board rescue. The open board rescue as a father and son combination. And then you look at the efforts of all the females that come through the ranks, and you've raced many of them in that open ranks as well. Who was your toughest competitor back then in the, you know, the, the 90s and early 2000s? In the board rescue, you mean? No, oh, just in Iron. Iron race. Oh, he was your toughest gosh. competitor. Knowing at Aussies, you knew they were going to be game on. I mean, you could just really never, ever out, out count out Carla Gilbert. No matter where she was in the field, she was always hunting you down. Carla was always a, a, a really tough and amazing competitor. Um, also, Kerry Thomas from yes. um, Chidor was um, probably one of the greats and um, you know, a, huge, a huge idol of mine as I was growing up. So, um, yeah, definitely a big fan of, of Kerry. And she's still really involved in, in coaching. Um, you know, as is Carla, so it's, it's really nice to see some of those legends of our sport still so heavily involved. It's great to see you. Kerry Thomas, I actually was in a different state, I was New South Wales, she was Queensland coming through, and you saw about Carla as well, and, and coaching, she um, jumps in with us on a, on a weekly basis on a Wednesday morning, and she's giving back, and done a, done a wonderful job in our Ocean Swim group as well, so um, she'll be here probably listening, she's probably down at the Cooley Swim Classic, actually on the Gold Coast at the moment, but doing a wonderful job down there, and a uh, great family as well. And uh, Carla Gilbert's daughter actually um, is in the boats. She's uh, in the boats. Uh, my brother sweeps the team for the Crumman Vikings. They're a young crew, very young crew, racing under 19 females, but um, doing exceptionally well, the mighty, the mighty Viking crew. So talk about the Mighty Vikings, 23 crews they have at Aussies Racing, at, at, um, Alex, this, this week coming up. Phenomenal in terms of boat fraternity, but... Um, Boat Cruise, one team event, but look at this, the board rescues are rolling out, and I uh, love this event. Looks like uh, potentially the 13, 14 girls lining up for the board rescue, and there it is, start this coming up, and uh, we'll get an update of numbers to go through, to qualify through, could be a little bit cutthroat due to time constraints, but Swansea, Belmont, Rilla Barrack Point, Burley Heads, City of Perth, North Bondi, Cushion Headland, Burley Heads again, the Victorian Club of Janjuk, love the Club of Janjuk, Wanda and Redhead from the Hunter Branch of uh, New South Wales as well. Super quality teams lining up, but uh, yeah, what do we got there in terms of teams? We've got four, eight, nine teams, I think, potentially going in. Maybe only four may go through. We'll get an update, but um, it's a tight race. Been a little bit of luck, don't you, Board Rescue? Yes, and we're just seeing now also the start list there for Heat 3. I believe we'll be running maybe these Board Rescues across two different arenas. We've got eight heats of the under-13, under-14 female board rescue. So a really, really popular event and a little bit of a time-consuming one to get through. So um, I would expect we may open up across two arenas as we work our way through these heats to quarter semis and down to the finals. Um, it's a very, very popular team medal to win. You mentioned there um, that very famous race of Trevor Hendy and his son, TJ Hendy, winning gold. I never got a um, gold in the opens, but lots of fond memories of the age group racing in Board Rescue. Well, I managed to sneak one a few years ago, and it's uh, super special. Love the event, but uh, talk about Board Rescue. Let's go down to Sam with Harold. Uh, so we're on the sand, but we're here with, what does it actually say? Safety and emergency. It's the Sam's man. So Mick Wosley here. A uh, couple of holds up. Can we talk through your role and what's transpired this morning? Yeah, so my role uh, at the Carnival is basically safety for the area that we're in. So today I'm looking after blue and white and pink. Basically what we're doing is we're running risk assessments in the morning to ensure that the conditions are, are safe for racing and to ensure that the competitors have a, a good and, and fun day, I suppose, is probably the best way to describe it. Um, we're always monitoring and uh, having a look throughout the day, but, yeah, just making sure that we... Our job is pretty much here to make sure the Carnival goes ahead, but safely. Uh, yesterday was pretty hectic out there. Um, how often were your meetings and what were the discussions like with the rest of the crew? Yeah, so it's an interesting one because we've got clubs from all around Australia. We've got clubs that are used to these conditions and we've got like South Australia, Tassie, WA, we don't get a lot of surf. So our risk assessments are pretty much a number that we're looking at the, the kids that are out there and they're racing. We obviously have a brief at 6 o'clock in the morning, then we do another one at 11 and update throughout the day depending on what's going on. So much work. Unsung heroes. Love your work, Mick. Enjoy your rest of the walk. Up and down the beach, you. you're a legend. So you told me. Thank you, mate. Yeah, great job. And safety never takes a holiday. And uh, do a great job. And, and uh, we're just having a discussion, sort of off uh, off mic about the conditions. And yesterday, great job. Just the way they managed it yesterday, I thought was really good. In particular, from Friday when the surf was bigger. And um, I think the nail hit the nail on the head talking about it's not about you know you look at your lowest low common denominator. So those clubs that don't have the opportunity to get in much surf and just to give them opportunity. They've travelled far, committed far as well. 
But a big shout out to all the safety crew, whether the person on the beach and uh, doing regular risk assessments as well. But um, it's great to see you as well. Yeah, and I think we've been really fortunate with the conditions that we've seen at Maroochydore Beach. We've had um, definitely a fair bit of size happening, but we've been lucky to have some clean and glassy conditions, which I think um, has made it a lot easier for our safety teams and our um, water safety on the beach and also for our athletes just to navigate those lulls that are in between those heavier sets coming through and slightly kinder conditions um, on offer today and it was so impressive just to see what our particularly our under 13 age group were able to manage in some of that really tough surf yesterday yeah they did a phenomenal job the 13s along with um 14s and 15s and a big shout out thanks for joining us on live so we'll hold up the board rescues board rescues are about to get underway and a big shout out to our uh, jet oski there from uh, Fremantle in western australia we've got another update from uh, harold on the beach so we're about three minutes or so away, but just want to talk through the conditions. So yesterday afternoon, we saw that wind pick up pretty much bang on at 12.30, which is what it is now. But last few races, which what we saw here, the right-hand side, a lot of the coaches were asking the kids to head right, head right to get out through that bank. But the waves are getting a little bit too heavy through there. And we saw the race, one of the races back here, the club from uh, South Australia went straight out and they ended up catching that the right-hand edge of that left rip and popped right out of the can. So... Interested to see what transpires here, and the hard, hard thing's also going to be that these ladies haven't actually seen this area at all for a board rescue, so heat number three, but the first ones to take a look at it. It's going to be tough, it's going to be a gamble, but that is board rescue. Let's go. Yeah, love board rescue. So many elements will come out to play as well. We have a swim with the board, the combination of coming home as well. And uh, thanks for joining us on live stream for those who are here, and also the Festival Zone. We're on Facebook, you're on that of YouTube, or Festival Zone. A big shout out to our uh, one of Newcastle's greats, Matty Kent, the legend, the man himself. And uh, girls lining up and uh, board rescue. Feudal nerves here, but uh, feudal waves as well. The, the opportunity to come over, we might see some of our thrills and spills. Yeah, and we probably won't see, as we've seen in maybe some of our surf teams, some of the athletes really changing direction because you're allocated a colour can that you have to zoom out to. So um, you don't really necessarily have the luxury of um, changing alleys and changing positions. Swimmers probably more so than the board paddlers. Um, but no matter where you kind of run down the beach, you have to come back to your allotted um, swim and rescue can so a little bit of luck in terms of what alley you draw in board rescue and um, it's, an, it's a beautiful beach for competition but Maruchidor can throw up different elements sort of from 5 metres down to the beach to the next 10 metres to the next 10 metres so a lot of tactics coming into play here for our teams Right, left hand side, let's go, Seacliff South Australia, great club down in South Australia Talabudja and the guide is a Courtney Hancock in position 2, that's our second from the right hand side on screen, Avoca from the Central Coast, Blackhead there as well. Great to see Glenelg all the way from South Australia. Manly A team, Brighton, South Australia as well. Sort of neighbouring clubs to Glenelg as well. Trig Island from West Australia. Pacific Team A, and this is a great story. They picked up silver medal in the Queensland Championships. I think they have like 12 or 13 competitors at the state championships, and now North Burley A. So quality field coming up. And I think you mentioned we've got approximately eight heats. We'll get an update of how many go through. Uh, but here we go. Potentially, I might say four. Four eights, it might take us down. Well, three eights will be cutthroat. Very much cutthroat. They may go to um, three eights, given 24. It could then go into that of um, eight tri semis, taking three each. Who knows? But uh, just get up in the pointy in one, two, or three. Seacliff, South Australia. There you go, the black cap. Talabudra. Good little team there from Tally in position two as well. That'll be the combination there of Arsiana Picton and Lily Towell. Just waiting for our officials to give the go ahead that the course have been correctly set and all of our, because um, we do need some judging boats out at the Cairns for board rescues. Yes. That's very important in terms of the timing of the swimmers getting there and the, and the rescuers leaving. So we've got to make sure we've got our judging boats in position as well. Judging boats and judging officials. If you look behind a swimmer and board pallet, you'll see an official there. So for those not privy to board rescue, they'll be watching as the swimmer heads out, making sure one the swimmer is going to the right can. Look at that moustache. <laughs> that is probably one of the greatest moustaches of, of an Aussies I've ever seen from the young girl from Talabadra. That could be the young girl with a bit of a yawn there as well. That could be young Lila, I think it is there, of our tower wheel from our Talabadra. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> I love it. A it's great, bit of isn't fun it? There. Feels a bit of team culture as well. Well done, Talabadra. 
I'm not sure that was Courtney Hancock's guidance, <laughs> but uh, I never saw her sort of race with a, a big moustache on Might throw well. your opposition off a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> so the, the officials you see lined up, tucked in behind, I'll watch them go. More importantly, to make sure the board pellet does not go too early. So I'll keep a very close eye on the cans. And I hope they don't need to go to spec savers because it's a long way to look out for those cans as well. So away we go. This is it. And uh, you can see a good start. Tell about your left-hand side. But uh, front and centre at the moment, very good start. Yes, fairly even start we can see there from our teams spread right across the field. You can see our top team there of the um, North Burley Team A. Just dolphin diving out on that shallow bank, probably getting the best of the start um, at the top of the screen there. We can see um, Lily Mo Moana and um, Amani uh, Le Leonardi from the North Burley Club. So um, they're off to a flyer start. You can see she's already well and truly into her swimming stroke. Yeah, Amani Leonardi, I, I expect to be the swimmer there. And Lily Moana, great story. I think she picked up silver medal in the beach sprint um yesterday but she's a phenomenal afl player she's a part of the gold coast suns junior academy made the queensland team last year for afl as well um her mum was uh her mum was a, a nipper that went through in the state teams as well as a young girl for the crom and vikings as well jane burton was the name back in the day there and now married to moana so maiden now i should say to a, a married name moana so great story but i say that's a leonardi at the moment north burley and they pride themselves very well in terms of our board rescue the north burley club yeah, she's doing a fantastic job for her team at the moment, just negotiating the last of these big breakers. Or oh, she takes a big breath underneath that one, hopefully going down nice and deep. There she is, popping up now, back into her swim stroke. But she's probably got maybe a 20 or so metre lead. We can't quite see the rest of the field out of shot at the moment, but she's just about in that green water. Yeah, interesting. We spoke about uh, Lily Moana, didn't do the board leg in a moment. It was second yesterday in the beach sprint, and uh, congratulations. But also, she's a phenomenal beach flagger. Now, I know they're happening down at Bulool Bar at the moment, and all of a sudden, has she banked to come and do a team event with a club mate to sacrifice potentially of, of that the flag? So very interesting as yeah, well. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see whether she's just done the mad dash and she might get back. But um, look at her closing in on that black and white can they have drawn there, the, the team from North Burley Team A. So a few more strokes, and she'll be up and over and or just having to start, trying, to <laughs> trying to get her balance. But she's done well. Her um, board paddler has... Uh, wasted no time in spotting spotting her so um i want to be lily swimming actually but i just want to pick the girls up in the picture there as well and this is it that's a great pacific great effort to get up and about from pacific now for those who do and don't know pacific club is situated on the gold coast so just tuck down from burley once you are in talabudra uh, heading south over talabudra bridge and then go to talabudra surf over the pacific before you hit palm beach so great effort Next one coming out, there's another one. That might be Brighton, South Australia. We can see the team from Manly have signaled to their rescuer. No evokers out there as well. So Pacific still with the hand up. Here's the question. How long do you keep your hand up for? I like to keep it up because you can spot back to see until you've seen your board paddler actually yep. leave the mark. So until I've actually, with my own eyes, seen my board paddler take off from the beach, I would try and leave my hand up. A, a little bit of a... Um, an early mistake some of our competitors make is dropping it too soon and um, the board paddler's just not quite sure whether to leave or not. I think the other the other big mistake board rescue competitors make is grabbing the rope and not the can. Um, they need to go straight to the top of the can and straight to the can. I know some of the younger age groups have uh, been told they've got to swim around the back of the can then climb up. No, straight to the can, straight to the top as we saw in exhibition then. And you can see at the moment, good little start here for Pacific. They're up and about. And that's Manly, bottom of screen as well. So Manly, the sky blue cap, Pacific there as well, sit and pop, and that's the windows of opportunity, we talk about the deeper water, but here we go at the moment, it is all about the North Burley at the moment, out the back, they'll come around with a pick up, from one they become two, it's about getting trim on the board here as well, and they'll start to make their way back to the beach. We spoke about our judges who are out to sea, and they're just making sure that our teams have combined on their board before they cross back over the line of their swim can. So a really great demonstration from our North Burley team as they're just almost into that wave zone. What a huge lead. We can see the team of Pacific now just coming in to negotiate their pickup. Everyone yeah, so three going through. And we spoke about this. Three, actually, it was 24. They'll go then to... Um, Three semi-finals, I assume, with only three going through as well. So three is the magic number. Very cutthroat in terms of, I think we might have eight or nine teams in this one with only three going through. That is really cutthroat. You can see the urgency of our teams now. Oh, not there. 
Almost, and um, a lot of different techniques coming. We saw the board paddler of North Burley scooting to the front of the board and the swimmer jumping on the back, with Pacific choosing to do the opposite, the swimmer scooting up the Oh, let's check the, the numbers, board. right, picking up out the back. They're probably, they need a little bit of luck in the ocean. They've got to get back around that white can as well at the moment. I'd probably say North Blue looking comfortable. There they are there. They have to cross the line with both in contact with the board. They'll go through comfortable. Well done. MB Pride of North Burley, they're the Queensland Youth Champions as well, back-to-back-to-back -back 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 champions. Here we go, Man Life Saving Club position two, securing that of semi-final Pacific. I'll probably say that's it, that's a big three there. Yeah, it looks like that might be them looking across. I think we've just got a wave of two teams there with Manly and Pacific, so they were probably the strongest um, throughout that race. So no great upsets in this heat three of the under-13, under-14 female board rescue smiles on the face of our team from Pacific as they come across knowing they've survived through to another round. I mean, Blackheader, we saw that lost uh, their competitor coming in as well. So they lost their swimmer somehow. We see Glenelg down the bottom, but I think our big three are always in, already in. There you go. Man, life saving club. The other thing too is every Pacific, because you do have disqualifications in terms of um, events in surf carnivals, board rescue is one that does pop up the odd DQ. Yeah, there is a very technical event and lots of um, different rules for our competitors to negotiate. So you never want to assume you're out and um, always want to fight for that extra position across the line. Anything can really happen in surf sports. You can see our team there from Brighton, South Australia, just looking for her swimmer or her board paddler. They've just um, come apart on the way back in and one of the, the rules is you do need That's to cross it. the line with both competitors um, in contact with the board. And now the other thing I love about board rescue, it typifies obviously surf life saving. So you're on patrol, well the first modes of transport you had out there of equipment would be that of a board rescue. Uh, obviously the IRB would be the most powerful in terms of um, getting out there for speed as well. But um, board rescue it typifies, you know, originally it started back to, and we'll see that next week with the, the belt race. You know, it was put the reel down and, and swimming out to that of being brought back in with the belt. And uh, obviously board rescue, you see the girls, I found my partner. There you go, well done girls. From Brighton, South Australia, so many good stories inside every club. And uh, Brighton, a beautiful part of the world down there as well in South Australia. And well done, the girls. That's uh, heat number three, I think it was, it was. Of, uh, of eight heats coming through. We will um, wait for the next heat. As we mentioned, we're probably spread across a couple of arenas, so we may not see all eight heats. I think we're going to be jumping down to heat six, um, with the other heats being um, run just in the areas to the left and to the right, which is um, fantastic getting through the program. Board Rescue can be a lengthy one, particularly when you've got eight heats contested. Come on, Seacliff. I want to see Wave of the Day. Seacliff, come on, give me Wave of the Day, girls. They're waiting, we need, we they're need waiting to get on something. and get a bit of trim going, a bit of board speed going. We're on, we're off. We're saying stay on, stay on. Oh, there's sets building. Coming. Big sets building. Hold on for your life, ladies. Here we go. Oh, thrills for free. We've lost one. But the swimmer stays on. She's looking to go. She's laughing going, where's my partner? I think she where's moved my... too far back. <laughs> oh, this is genius. The goggles come off. We pull up a big marlin. We look for our partner. Well done, ladies from Seacliff. Take a bow. There was a little bit of negotiation. How do we attack this, this And to be honest... I spent some time in uh, Seacliff traveling Australia eight months ago. You don't get a lot of swell. And a huge congratulations to the girls. I know Blair does a lot of coaching there as well. And uh, this is great. Good evening, girls. And what I love about this, they're having a crack. They had a good time. They had a good laugh at each other. And I'll talk about this. I'll go back and uh, I'm sure we'll get the most views of this from the girls as well because this is what Surf Sports is all about. Take a bow, a bow girl, the girls from Seacliff. Let's go to the beach now with Harold. All right, down here with Amani and Lily. The comfortable leaders, the winners of the board rescue heat. We're going to try and get through this interview without laughing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the girls are ecstatic. Uh, solid swim lead, good alley, or are you guys just that fast? Ah, uh, it was good. We got out straight away. Nice. Uh, you did pretty well at Slate, I hear. Yeah, we didn't make the final, but we were like stitched up on the end. <laughs> stitched up. What, what does that actually mean? Uh, <laughs> we got the bad end, and it was, we missed the bank. And that is the beauty of board rescue. It is a lottery, so you're through one round, into the semis, one more to go. Uh, did you feel like you were paddling comfortably together coming in because it looked pretty good? Yeah, it was pretty good because we've been doing it for a while, like a few years. But, yeah. Anything else you'd like to say? Uh, no. <laughs> sure? Yeah. 
Harold, I've got a question for the girls. Harold, can you ask Lily Moana, is she doing the flags today? Obviously got second in the beach sprint yesterday. Uh, second, oh, second in the beach sprint yesterday. It's the other That's one, Lily, good. the other one. Yeah, sorry, second in the beach sprint yesterday. Are you doing the flags today? No. Because? Because I chose to do teams. Yeah, hear that? Teams over individual. That's what we're all about on Teams Day. So uh, I reckon you would have done teams. pretty well, but that's awesome, mate. Doing it for the cap, doing it for the club, doing it for you, mate. Let's go. Thank you. Do you want to give us one flag start whilst we're on camera just for the show? No, that's too much effort. Don't worry, guys. We're on. Great job, Harold, and great job, girls, coming through as well. And uh, good to see you. She's a very talented AFL player, Lily Moana. An absolute weapon. And uh, I love that the kids that can transfer from beach to also water. You know, there's going to be a time we're going to make a decision one day. There's the mums getting around them as well. And uh, it's got a little replay here. Here we go. Pacific coming in, though, position uh, second, I think, coming in. It was North Burley that finished first. What on the Pacific girls? Uh, I think it was Pacific, uh, North Burley, Pacific and Manly to qualify through. But the highlight for me was the Seacliff girls. I love that. And they yeah, get in there and had a good crack. We weren't sure what they were negotiating. We couldn't see it here, but we here can see go. it now. That here swell they... building. They're just thinking. <laughs> what do we do? What do we do? Yeah, hold on. I think the one in the back pushed her on and said, <laughs> enjoy the ride. They're thrills for free. Look at the smile on the face. The excitement. Oh, I love this. Well done, ladies. Look at the one in the back as well. Where's she gone? Where is she? The goggles come up. She pulls up a big mile and she falls off the board. And uh, well done, ladies. Great job. That, was, that looked like a lot of fun. And, um, you know, as we mentioned, we heard there from our North Burley competitor, people would pick a team event any day over an individual event. There's um, a lot more fun and excitement. Can and we put them through the next round? So, oh, I'd Can love to see them again. Put them through the next round. That is it. But I'll be t talking about that. Uh, you know, they won't be back at school tomorrow for show and tell, but maybe uh, Monday week. So well done. Here we go. Another qualifying round. Three is the magic number coming through. This could be uh, maybe five. Could be... Uh, Heat number five of the 13, 14 girls, board rescue coming up. We'll try and pick up some caps as they make their way out at the moment. Might even be that of heat uh, six. We've got a team here from Maruccio. I can see Swansea yeah. Belmont out in front. North um, Bondi. North Bondi cup as well, maybe. I'll probably say that's heat six. You can pick up a Carroll cup down the bottom of the screen there. It's heat six coming up at the moment, and all the action's in the centre. You've got um, Caro right down the bottom. We've got a Noosa Cup, Marichidor, Corumban B, the Killer Bees, Terrigal. Look out for that from the Blue Cup of Terrigal as well. North Bondi in the mix. City of Perth from Western Australia. Grange all the way from South Australia. And Swansea Belmont A as well at the moment. And you probably say Swansea Belmont right hand side after a good start as well. I think Swansea are our early leaders. It might be um, Luca Burge there, who we've um, seen a little bit throughout our program. She's combining with um, Blair Turkington. Yeah, great start from uh, Swansea Belmont. Good history in the club of Swansea Belmont. I know they've hosted the Australian Championships a couple of times as well. One of the great ones in the 90s. One of the great memories I've had with Graham Burge of Swansea Belmont winning the open board. There's a little reef break right at the back. And he found a bit of swell in the ocean and uh, come through to victory on his home beach. One of the great memories of an Aussie, Aussie title there at Swansea Bell. The other great memories, all the Swansea crew shaved their heads for that Aussie title. So that's a commitment. They I do, have, but look I at Swansea heard up of that about. one. It was a very famous event. Um, we can see there also the white cap with the red and black of City of Perth also doing a really strong swim. They'll just uh, go their separate ways, our lead swimmers, as they head towards their aligned cans. It looks like uh, City of Perth might be heading towards that white and black. And we see Swansea there with the green and gold can. Signals now to her board paddler who has spotted her and is off to rescue her swimmer. Yeah, you see the, uh, the can. I love this because they're on the yellow and green can match their cap and City of Perth as well on the white can. That's Scott McCaffrey and Leah Van Dan. And Bella, geez, I hope I pronounced that well. But they had a good crack at it anyway. But City of Perth, great club over there in Western Australia. And uh, they're off a good start. So three's a magic number. There's the North Bondi cap up and over. And the swimmer gets a little bit of an opportunity, a little bit of a rest now, don't they? Yes, it's um, probably a nicer position to be. The board paddler obviously out to pick up their rescuer and doesn't... Oh, get crunch time! Wow, the big 360. Sorry about cutting in there, but uh, what about that? The sit and the pop. And what you need to do in that situation, one opportunity to roll, but the ability to drive your board forward, you've got to really drive that board forward to get the momentum. Just sat and pop the lid up with the board, and all of a sudden, 
I think the power of that wave took our competitor by surprise. She did a, fa a much better display popping that second wave. I just don't think she expected the force. We're going to take another here we go here. look at it here. We'll, we'll um, see as she... Oh, little prop. This is it here. No board speed at the moment. Right in the corner of the wave as well. And as you spoke about, the power, the impact. And it was shallow too. You could sort of see her almost um, standing up to um, readjust off that earlier wave. So... She's standing on yeah, the bottom no. there, so a really shallow bank and a, and a very dumping wave. Normally I say there's four good reasons not to lose your ball, there are four handles. I've actually got six handles on this board. It's actually a, a, a true board, rescue board, with the six handles. See the back handles right at the back of the board as well. So um, some clubs opt for that, some go for your standard, some paddle a normal standard board, some paddle a lighter board than what they normally paddle. But City of Perth, the big movers here, um, three's a big, big magic number in that of the 13-14 board rescue females. City of Perth on screen. The Swansea Belmont paddler doing a great job to recover really fast. We can see her there still paddling out in second position. So still safe to qualify through at this stage as we watch the City of Perth team do their pickup. Nice and fast and clean. So she's um, now on the beach side of those cans. Yeah, Swan great club. Great club in Western Australia. Right near tucked in there. In, uh, in that, you know, right in the city as well. So, round they go, North Bondi making their move. So, looking with Swansea Belmont and the city of Perth, they'll go around in that of one and two. Big question where's three? Is it the North Bondi? Can't be can see lined up at the moment. Waves, no, won't get there. Terrigal now, the big move of Terrigal from the central coast of New South Wales. This is it, three spots up for play. City it's all about. Perth looking for waves. The team from Swansea looking like they're combining a little bit better at this stage. We can see the team from Grange there also on screen making their way back. We can see that the team from Swansea, they've taken back the lead. So our team from Swansea combining... They hold on here, Swansea. They get a little double up. Watch this double up come over. We'll just give it a little bit more energy to the shore break as well. But well done to Swansea Belmont. There you go. And I've got uh, Lily Moana's mum on live stream. So Jane, big shout out to you as well. She gave up the flags to do team events and uh, you must be very proud watching your daughter go around and congratulations yesterday. But at the moment, it's Swansea Belmont in one with all things being fair. They'll secure their position for that of they a quarter fire. Very strong, even out. with that um, mishap. That was just a b wrong place, wrong time. I think is that the team there from Maruchi? Oh, wow. They came from the clouds just ahead of Terrigal. Ooh. Could be Karawa. All of a sudden... And this is what happens, is the ability to come home together as a team. I know we had sitting up there was that of uh, City of Perth and North Bondi, but the Karawa Club, there they are, just leaving the screen at the moment, under the guidance of Guy Andrews, GA, the legend, past train Ironman champion as well, and he loves giving back. He says, I get more joy in watching the young boys and girls race. He says, it's more exha exhausting as well, watching all the races, but... Uh, there's a Grange girls cross the line. We get an update. We believe the top three to go through. Listen to the replay here. City of Perth. Nose goes under. Board goes out the back door. And unfortunately, I believe that's cost them a spot in the semi-final of the Aussie champs. It has. We didn't see that the first time around. We were, we were riding the wave there with the Swansea girls. And so City of Perth, um, unlucky. They're making their way back to the beach, but they aren't able to cross the line without their board. So... We'll wait for those official results, but it looked like it might have been Maruchidor and the team from Terrigal taking out the three qualifying positions. Drama of plenty in the board rescue. That's why we love it. And you've got to be switched on. And it's the ability, we spoke about this earlier, it's the ability to come home together as a team, especially in these conditions. And uh, my hot tip, number one, it's all about board trim. You've got a good trim on your board, being nice and horizontal in the ocean. Number two, you've got to get in time, work with your partner. Number three, it's all about rating, because rating is board speed. And number four, probably the most important, which a lot of these young athletes don't do, you need to talk to each other. If the pace is too quick, say, no, slow it down. If they're going to, so the communication between two is probably what doesn't happen enough, but that's the difference between getting through a round, getting to the final, and winning medals. Yeah, and there's usually one competitor who might be keeping an eye on the swells that are coming and be giving the commands for moving forward, moving back. Um, and so plenty of drama in that heat six of the female board rescue, but I believe we've got Harold on the beach. You do. We're on the beach. Uh, we've got Blair and Luca. Comfortable. This lane again, two from two. Swam well. Heavy board, though, going out. A little bit of issue. Yeah. 
<laughs> very tough when it's that heavy and I copped all them waves. Did you hear that yelling in the background? Yeah, I did. Did you actually? Yeah. Bertie, please. All right. Uh, and a great swim from you at the start. Uh, tell us about how much water is actually moving underneath that white water because it still looks a little bit heavy as we get to that high tide. Yeah, it's quite heavy. When you go under the waves, you've really got to grab under the sand tight, otherwise you're just going to get washed away with it. Perfect. So secured a spot in the semi-final. Anyone you want to give a shout-out to in the Hunter region? Oh, our coaches that help us get here. Okay, give us their names in alphabetical order. Um, <laughs> um, my board coach, Tim Foran and Gab Johns, and then my iron coach, Craig Coates. Coatesy, same people? Um, no, my swim coach, Scott Anderson, and my board coach, Josh Blair. Josh Blair, what a legend. Uh, now, quick question. Uh, breakfast, what did you guys eat this morning? Uh, four wheat bix I had some cornflakes and a waffle for a bit of sugar. Nice. And have you eaten and hydrated enough today? Yeah. Actually? Yeah. <laughs> hey, there you go. The perfect athletes. Send it back to you in the studio, guys. Yeah, great interview and uh, some great names mentioned there as well. Another shout out to the coaches uh, giving back as well. You spoke about Josh Lee, one of the great Ironmen going around and giving back. And uh, I know he's young boys coming from the younger age groups as well. He's the wave at the back. And Timmy Ford, great little shout out and coach here as well. And, and Gab there. So well done. But look at this. It's a bit of we spoke about that board spin and pick up a wave. And I love the little double up behind because just had that vision. The girls could pick it up and say, listen, we've got another one coming. Be prepared for that little bit of impact. The great performance of the Swansea girls. Yes, and we just saw the City of Perth almost in line to catch that wave with the Swansea. They'd almost had a spot in that next round and um, unfortunate little nosedive there. And as you mentioned, so many important elements. And I think one so crucial is just to really reset quickly after those mistakes. We saw Swansea didn't have the perfect race, but just was able to reset so quickly after that um, that mishap on the board. So. Um, we are now setting up for the under 13, under 14 male board rescue and What about races. this? 100 teams. 100 teams, 10 heats. Unbelievable. And that just shows the help of surf sports racing uh, with under 13 year olds. And, and a big thanks to all the families and clubs as well, voting with your feet to come along. Now, you look at the numbers, we've got over 8,000 competitors now, only 2,000 of them are from Queensland. There's 6,000 there that aren't there as well. We'll um, take a short break as we set the course for our under 13 and th uh, 14 male board rescues. Be back with you shortly. Here on the Sunshine Coast, you'll find sunshine makes the sea sparkle. The skies pastel. You'll find the sun shines from above and from within, making laughs linger, moments longer, hearts beat fast and time moves slow. Come find your sunshine moment, for real. And just remind, if you're putting up some great posts, don't forget to hashtag that Aussies2024. And um, great, great conditions update from Harold just recently. And uh, this is a healthy environment, no smoking zone around that. On the Sunshine Coast, vigilance and service is what surf life saving is all about. And a big shout out to all those, even those patrolling our beaches this weekend, keeping the beaches safe. Remember, the red and yellow flags are the safest place to swim on the other coastline around Australia. So we're lining up now for the 13 and 14 boys board rescue. 10 Pete's coming up to play. Uh, probably number wise, where do we go? Let's have a look here. Glenelg, Lawn, Palm Beach, Queensland. Frio, great to see Frio. A great support of live stream for Frio as well. Talabudra. Sunshine Beach, Wamboral, Mornington, South Barubra, and Brighton, South Australia. Look at that, a array of clubs from right around a beautiful country. We talked about how special it is to win a board rescue medal, and when you're going into it against 100 other teams, it really puts the emphasis on just how special it is to um, even be in the final or potentially on the podium. So um, you'll see our competitors celebrating a bit later on in the program, those who win, and so much goes into it, not just getting through round by round, but um, to put everything together and come out on top in a final is something pretty special. Yeah, lining up the boys and plenty of excitement as well. So we get a crunch, a number crunch of how many go through. I love the lawn cap, the black and white of lawn. And away we go. Swim, swim leg, board leg, teamwork coming home. Yes, I can't quite pick the um, cap there of our competitor at Palm Beach. I think it is getting off to a really fantastic start. So um, they'll be ones to watch early on. 
we saw the team from Swansea, which were at the southern end of the beach, probably getting the best run out. So we'll keep an eye on um, our teams just navigating. You can see a little pack of three forming at the top of our screen. So they've probably watched that that might be one of the better areas to um, to join in. You can see a uh, maybe a Wonder Club at Cap. Oh, that's the Cap of Palm Beach, just doing a great job on the bottom of the screen. It's great, isn't it? You spoke about that. There's also Maruba, South Maruba Cup in there, very similar to Palm Beach, Talabudra, Sunshine Beach, Wombrel. And um, look at that, you've got West Australia, South Australia, Victoria in there as well, Queensland, New South Wales. This is brilliant. And now uh, look at the top end. We talk about that tide dropping and, and that hole will come into play. And the top end of the screen, this is a big advantage for these lead swimmers. Now, the advantage they get going out will also be for their board paddle as well. But coming in, they can't afford to come back into that rip, that rip pull out. So they need to make their way back to the bank. And I'm sure the coach will be probably giving some insight into that as well. Um, and you see the swimmers down here doing a good job working across the bank as well. But it's all the top end, all the action at the moment. As the boys make their way, a little bit of breaststroke underneath the way. I don't like seeing that. I like to see really attack that, that swim stroke to maintain their body speed and try and get to the bottom of the ocean as best they can. Plenty of action at the moment. But it looks like uh, potentially they're trying to get that cap. Is that Mornington? And it's the Mornington Cup of Victoria. Great efforts. The uh, the green with the white stripe. And uh, got some nice little trunks there too coming through. The bit of the blue and the pink as well. We've got the legs coming in as well. There's a good little swim here for the boy from uh, Mornington. Mornington. We've got the team of Ethan Gately and Darcy Sutton combining for Mornington at Team A. So they've got a nice handy lead um, heading out towards their oh, swim. And that's a heavy wave on the bank. In the top wave, you'll allow the breaststroke under. And close <laughs> to the can, so that'll be really interesting if one of those can come through for the board paddlers on the way home. Signaling Sigl now, just as he rises over that swell, timing that well, you want to sort of put your arm up just as you have a swell pop underneath you. And that's the advantage the right-hand side we spoke about. So uh, obviously Mornington went off one. Now we've got that of uh, Wombrel going off. Some good swimmers in that 13 age group. Remember 13 and 14 combined. South Maroubra, off to a good start as well. Brighton, South Australia, this may be their presence felt out the back. That's the red and the white caps we'll see pick up shortly. There's the one brawl. Roy gets a little bit rest down. Bottom of the screen at the moment. Palm Beach from Queensland. And now uh, a lot of the boys attack this. They're going to remember some under 13 boys for the first time competing on that of a, a mal as well. So skill sets would be... At a premium for them, but I love the big move of Sunshine, the big loathing ladder boy for Sunshine in the centre. He's uh, making great work in this board league at the moment, isn't he? He really has, yeah. They were up there in the swim leg, but probably touched the can in maybe third or fourth position. Um, he's making his way through the field now, the team there of Sunshine, um, Jake Bohr and Zach Hefferin. Hefferin. Top um, three through. This top is three. brutal. This is brutal in terms of number of teams. So. Let's have a quick look at the teams. I think we've got uh, potentially 10 teams, three going through. Well, they do need to cut it somewhere, don't they? To be on. So yeah, I think, and, and shout out as well to the officials. Obviously, they did, they did the manager and the team managers mean that they will need to have some really tight threshold cuts due to get through to the program. So it is an awareness for everyone. All of a sudden, roll time for Sunshine. Looks to get back on here as well. Spoke about those waves picking up as that tide is heading out and as that bank gets a little bit shallower, we can see that happening with those waves really standing up and probably only another 20 metres to paddle till he pick up his swimmer. He's having a look around to see, yep, you're in front. So um, in a good position there, the Sunshine Beach team um, just about to navigate, still see those waves breaking. So waves are on offer. You really want to get round and get the first pick of that wave. You don't want to be too far in, in that break zone trying to catch one of these um, or trying to pick up a late takeoff uh, on a board rescue. Here we go, Sunshine Beach turn one. Three going through, 10 heats, that takes us to 30. And now they'll probably roll into three 10 semis, taking three each, so 30%. 30% will make, 40%, 70% cut. Palm Beach trying to get the work going. It's all about timing and board speed, boys. Looking good at the moment. Good paddle from their board, paddle going out. Nice thick board as well. Sunshine stuck in no man's land at the moment. Palm Beach definitely looking stronger of the two teams. You can see here they're just pulling in front of this wave. So really great work from the team of Palm Beach just getting themselves out of that danger zone. Sunshine also on a wave. So that looks like our top two qualifiers are down those waves safely. I wouldn't imagine they'd have much trouble from there. 
Three's the magic number. Let's go, Sunshine. Old Bank number one go through the semi final. Little body surfing schools with partner as he jumps off. Just very casual up the beach here, which you can be for your heat. They've done a fantastic job. There's the team from Palm Beach. So pulling up alongside our team from Sunshine. One more spot on offer for the qualifying round. Where do we go? Mornington, can they do it? A little bit too far back from my line. You see the nose sticking up, the little gap between the top of the, the board and that of the ocean. You want that to be, I talk about downhill paddling. You want to visualise like you're down there. Uphill paddling at the moment. They need some board speed. Point the back's yelled out. Here we go, Ron. Speed on. They look to move back together. Need to move forward first of all. That's what we talk about. That, that pushing up who didn't allow them to get that speed down the way first. That's what that's the only thing I love about the live stream. They can go back. Visual feedback is the best form of feedback for these young athletes. And they'll watch this and go, you know what? We don't want to make that mistake again. You can see the shot there, just how far back they are on, on their oh! board. This is big. Sorry, Christy. What club Wombrel? <laughs> Upside down, smiles on the... Oh, here we go again, Morning, Mornington gone as well. This race is absolutely not over. It's we got have it all. Got one more spot up for grabs for qualifying. Move forward, champion. Please move forward. Keep moving forward. Mornington, Womberall, I'm not quite sure who's got the better line in at the moment. Is it Tullabudra now Tully making their Street. move in the mix? Here we go, Mornington. Womberall backs in the mix as well. We still don't have our third qualifier for the semi-final. Boys, you know what's at stake here. It's an Aussie semi-final. One spot remaining. Up we go. South Maroubra's going out. They're going to bail. They're bailed out the back. Boards are plenty. Oh, look at this. Looks like they're doing back out to sea. So it's had everything. We will have to wait for the judges' call on that. I think it might have been Wombaru might have just snuck in there. This is gold. <laughs> They've decided to body surf in as opposed to board rescue in. But, um, yeah, if you get stuck in that wrong place at the wrong time, it's a heavy break. That's the team of Tally doing a great job coming across. I think they've finished in fifth position. I don't know what the urgency was here. The urgency from... Uh from that of Wombrel, to me, needed more urgency. It's a position to qualify in three and coming in as well. There's uh, Brighton getting picked up. Great job. To our surf craft coming through now. I don't know if we can pick up a replay that set, but they picked up on it. Looks like Torquay. Is that Torquay coming through as well? Another good effort. It might be Frio, sorry. It could be Frio coming through. Very similar to Torquay Capita. Oh, what about this? The joy rides <laughs> for Brighton. We talk about board rescue. This is one of the best board rescue finishes. I've seen the history of surf sports. Look at this one from the boys. That'll be a story to tell their mates when they get home. Meanwhile, Glenelg's coming in, and they look over the, the you yeah, know, just down the road, not far, that a Brighton from that of Glenelg as well. They look across, hang on, there's the drone. <laughs> oh, well done, boys. Great Fantastic. awareness to pick up the drone as well. <laughs> Finish off. There's more excitement on the back than there is at the front, but well done. That's a, what about that race? Had everything. Uh, and as you mentioned, some of these competitors have only been on these longer boards for a matter of maybe weeks or months. They've finished off their nipper season on their nipper boards and picking up the skills of these big boards and um, combining that with the skill of a board rescue. There's a lot involved and they've done a fantastic job. I'd love to have a chat with the boys and find out how big was that set. <laughs> It'll go from three to four foot today to six to eight foot by next Friday. And the lawn boys, look at them ripping in the lawn boys. It's never, never over. Lord of Victoria, one of the greatest peer to pub ocean swim events. If you're in Australia and you love ocean swimming, sells out in a matter of uh, matter of hours, the Lord Peer to Pub. Phenomenal event and a uh, big shout out to the club that runs that event down there. It's a great event. Finishing their race off hard. So you can see a little bit of communication from our back paddler, maybe just suggesting there's a wave coming. Here they are now, the team from Lawn picking up a beautiful wave. So congratulations to the boys. And I think we've got Harold down on the beach. on the beach at the moment. I asked them if they knew you were in third. Ashton from Wombi said yes. And then what did you say, mate? I was getting smashed by sets. I couldn't think. We saw you go out. You've got the whiteboard behind you. No popping handle at the front. So being three foot five, trying to get that left hand forward to hold onto that front handle, pretty much impossible, right? Yeah, th that's not fun. I still can't think straight because of that. Oh. Can you change the order maybe and you swim and then uh, Ashton, um, Ashton paddle? Oh, I reckon it's good like this. So just, we really need a pop handle. Yeah. That's right. There might be other boards out there. Now, huge, huge sets coming in. 
you were so close to having a nose off, but the big weight at the back was enough to get it down. Yeah, definitely. I was, um, I was trying my best just to weigh it down. Uh, you two would have done a lot of board rescues on the smaller boards. How much more difficult is it to do it in big surf on this wave, or in this type of wave? I reckon it's a lot better because we have more room, and on the small boards it was just easier to fall off and heaps more control over it, except for that. You feel the same? No, not really. <laughs> I reckon you nose dive more, it's harder con to control, and it's harder to pop, especially without a pop handle. Yeah. All right, so the boys are half beefing in there. Uh, and last question, do you both know who Kai Hurst is? Yes. Yes. Okay, there's a story behind that, but you'll find out later. Thank you, guys. Wombrill making it through to the semi-finals of the 13-14 Board Rescue. Yeah, well done, Wombrill. And uh, coming up now, it looks like Heat 8 of the Board Rescue and uh, 10 Heat 3 going through. Third will go through, but let's have the replay. Uh, it was a Heat that had absolutely everything in terms of Board Rescue. Look at this wave going out the back. They the boys back from South this side. Time to eject, boys. Time to eject. I love this. Look at this. One board flying. Brighton board, red and white as well flying. Watch this. There it is. I score that probably about a 7.8. That was impressive. I'm not quite sure how they got the board turned around in time to paddle back out to sea and whether they would have just been better maybe getting another wait, 10 wait metres in. Wait for the in. jet ski ride. Wait <laughs> for the jet ski ride. The things you do to get a free jet ski ride. The South River boys go, you know what? We're going to body surf our way in. And uh, here we go. It's all about sunshine. They did well, didn't they? They finished probably a couple of minutes earlier than everyone else. They looked but, uh, very comfortable, so I would expect them to be progressing through the next couple of rounds and, and potentially be a good shot in the final. They um, had a good combination in terms of the, the way they were trimming that board and getting it moving. Yeah, well, ten teams went in, three, came, uh, three teams came out to go through the semi-final, but Heat, number eight, is now on the line, ready to rock and roll. And uh, Matt Lounge will be the far left-hand side. We can just see them, the board pallet there with the blue, the white and red stripes through the middle. Then we got North Stain, very similar. Alex Cup, yellow and black quarter cap. Kuchin Headland A, look out for them. Noosa Heads A, wow. Look at all the A teams in this one. And only three teams will go through. This to me looks like a very stacked heat coming up. Shelley Beach, Team A. North Cronulla in the mix there as well, Team A. THC, Team A. Alexander Headland, Team A. Point Leo, Team A. And Service Paradise of SP Love. And if I have a little surf at Paradise team, it's William O'Connor and Lewis Van Drunen. And most boys decide to go south. They see something down that they like in terms of the swim league. Yeah, we saw the, the um, competitor there from Matt Caloundra on screen. He's choosing to run a little bit down to the south. Probably a smart option. Um, we've seen that work so well throughout the day. Yes, we've got a very, very hot heat here. Um, as you've just pointed out to me, we've got the Alex teammate of Riley McCartney and Tyler Johnson. They've had some fantastic um, results throughout the season individually. It'd be interesting to see how they combine on a team event. Yeah, combining as a team event, but also combining as a 13 year old with a 14 year old. So Tyler Johnson, absolute superstar yesterday, took out the iron uh, in uh, a phenomenal performance. And also took out that of the board race, I think, as well, all in the day. I think he won two or three big events yesterday individually. And, and running up there with Ryan McCartney, he's been in uh, great form as well. So we'll pick them up at, uh, could be the big, tall, strapping lad of Shelley Beach. Now, I saw a boy lined up. He looked about six foot five. Lined up. There he is there. He's a big, strapping lad. Shelley Beach in uh, New South Wales there. And uh, the way for him, a little bit of high plays advantage to get down to the ocean as well. So... He's on the bank, but it's top of screen at the moment. We would expect to see that with Alexander Headland making their way out to the can as well. So we'll pick him up as they go. Great to see the uh, the cup of Point Leo there, the orange cup of Point Leo. There it is as well. And uh, Tyler Johnson, far right hand side, being a 13 year old, he's just starting to go to work now. You can see the energy. That's Johnson, top of screen. Look at the cadence. He's a little bit smaller in stature to the, to the surface of the sunshine boy, but uh, big swells rolling in. Yeah, probably not getting down quite early enough, Tyler, but um, yeah, you can just see getting pushed a little bit further back um, than our, our lead competitor there from Surface Paradise. Probably doing the best of um, that wave zone now, so he's just about to hit that green water, so looks like Surface Paradise in one. We'll pan across to see that um, team a little bit further to the north, I think, in second place. What about Shelley Club on the far left as well? Another good move as well being made by uh, that of North Cronulla of Cooper and Haggett. So it's a little 
that orthodox sort of swimming style there, is it? But he's, uh, he's definitely getting through the water, boy, from surface, also known as SP Love. He will lead out. And then we come down to the bottom of screen. I'm probably trying to pick up that cap from a distance at the moment. We knew Shelley was off. Could be the North Cronulla Cup we spoke about making its uh, men's up. So here we go. Service Paradise. Him won. The big arm goes up. Cronulla. North Cronulla, I should say. Up, up. North Cronulla in two. Point Leo in three. Then we go over to that. Of, uh, well, he will be the big movers, especially coming home of that. And Alexander Headland A. Young Tyler Johnson there will hand over now to Riley McCartney for the board lead coming out. But um, three's the magic number, but plenty of waves on offer. Yeah, that's our top four, um, as we mentioned, hitting the water and um, only three to qualify through. So um, a lot of urgency, as you can see, our board paddlers attacking that water. We've, um, we've got Surface Paradise on screen at the moment. Just losing his lead a little bit there. Yeah, there's so much at stake, isn't there, when you look at the moment, what's going in? See Service Paradise. I like the deeper water at the top end of the screen here. You see Service Paradise, nice technique too. That's what we talk about downhill paddling. Young boy from uh, Service Paradise. I assume he trains on the guide as Zane Hamill. Probably turns up the training, you know, rubbing shoulders to Ali Day. He's got yeah. the urgency on there now. Used to be Courtney Hancock, and now yeah, Lucy Darvish here probably leading the way there as well. But this is, a, this is great for them at the moment, making their way out. Might have even been the team from North Cronulla, I think, perhaps in second. We've got two of those um, yellow and quartered caps. I think that was the team of uh, North Stain that we just had on screen. But we're back with our leaders at the moment, the team from Surface Paradise. Surface Paradise Team A. Well, three's the magic number for those on live stream with us. Top three we go through. There are 10 heats. It's a 13, 14 age group joined together. And uh, here they'll go with the pickup. So it's all about entry and exit. The biggest mistake I find a lot of these young athletes make is they pick up the nose pointing, not back to see. There's the example there. Then they have to turn the craft around. Now, I'm giving a hot tip away here, but if you can pick up with that nose facing back to the beach, it's so much quicker to get on your board and get that board moving. Get a few uh, early board lengths in. Here's the team from Surface Paradise looking to pick up a nice little run home. Beautifully done. Great job, boys. Really good job. Armchair right. Dubs go up as well. You're through the semi final. Look at this. And the claim. I haven't seen a heat claim for a long, long time. There we go. McCartney and Tyler Johnson coming through. So two summer caps coming through of North Stain and that of Alex. That's the Alex Cup coming through as well. And he's still claiming. <laughs> he's still claiming the boys. It's like it's a final. It's only a heat with a semi final to come at the moment. That's Tyler Johnson. What about the outbreak day he had yesterday? Swag yes. and as we go home, pick up some more. Hope Come back with a lot of confidence. Um, so he'll be happy that. I team... love in his interview. I said, "What are you going to do? How do you celebrate?" You know what he said? "I'll go and have a meal at Alex Surf." Oh. <laughs> what about that for the young man? Very good runner as well. Very good distance runner. Might have run run the uh, one and two k this morning North as well. North Cronulla, I think they have come. Oh, tight. Is that North Stain at the top end? Point Leo coming through. North Stain looked strong at their pickup, so it might have been a um, bit of a close finish there between North Stain and North Cronulla for that third position. You can see News Ahead's just coming up now, just out of those qualifying positions. Yeah, well, there you go. Point Leo, and I say we're potentially at heat eight coming up soon. There are ten heats going through. Point Leo doing a great job. They um, were up in the mix early on. Met yeah, this is our heat eight, heat eight or ten coming up. So we will get to the sports of pointing and we'll have from the heats uh, for those on live stream. It is a big day of racing. So give an update. We have the, the final heats of board rescue coming up in the semi final of board rescues, and then we are straight into the final package board rescue finals, surf team finals, board relay finals, and camera relay finals over two main arenas. So we might have the opportunity to jump from one to the other. To, uh, to give you the best in live stream. So uh, plenty happening at the moment. Let's have a little replay coming through. Right hand side, Service Paradise, left hand side, the split screen. Armchair rides, and uh, I love the left hand side of Alex, the 13 year old with that of a 14 year old as well. But the celebration on the right hand side, look at Service, two claims. As the drone shadow comes in, we saw two claims. Wait for another one. Wait for it. Here it comes out of the top of this. Wait for another claim here. There it is again. Claim number three. Claim number four from Service Paradise. Well, we said it was a hot heat, so I'm sure there's a lot of relief um, feeling amongst the teams there just to make sure 
a qualification through. They're through. They're safely through to the next round. Our top two teams, anyway. We'll wait for the official results of the third placing, but I believe we might have Jen down on the beach. Paradise boys, tough heat. Yeah. How are we feeling? I love the claim at the end as well. That one meant a lot. Yeah, um, you know, just trying our best and, yeah, trying to get through the heats to hopefully move on to the finals. Now you set that up beautifully in the swim. How are you finding the conditions out there? Um, yeah, they're kind of big, yeah, dumpy, so just have to really make sure to get through them and, yeah, hopefully do good. Now, Louie, how are you rating your, your chances? We've still got a few rounds to go, but Surface Paradise are looking really strong. Yeah, um, I'm hoping we make it to the finals and hope we do good like we did in this round throughout the semis as well. Alrighty, boys, I love the celebrations on the way home. Can I get a bit of a claim? Can I get a bit, a bit of a flex down the camera here before we send you off? Come on. Yeah, number one. Thank you, crew. Well, great job, Jill. I think that's claim number seven for the Service Paradise boys. And well done. It's a great club. Great club. And one of the busiest strips of the Gold Coast as well, Service Paradise. And um, well done, boys. And through the semi final, we see the boys lined up there waiting for the results coming through. Unofficial, obviously. We do occasionally have DQs. There's the Service boys coming back. And they're getting scanned on their live heats. A shout out to the great work of the officials as well. And that of the live heats. Is it great to. You know, I know for us as commentators, it makes our job a lot easier as well, but it's been a great initiative, hasn't it, that of the live heats band? It is, and it helps um, all of our spectators, whether you're on the beach or whether you're watching from home, you can follow along. If you're not able to join the live stream, you can watch the live results um, with live heats. What about these uh, spectacular views as well from the Sunshine Coast? It's been a great two days, great weekend. I managed to come up on Wednesday myself, and uh, I tell you what, you know, to put on a a show and event the Sunshine Coast and a uh, big thanks to the Sunshine Coast Council and all the sponsors that are involved in making this event happen so there you have it that looks like the results coming up and the big three going through was that of Service Paradise the two light caps of Alexander Headland and that of North Stain they'll now qualify through for that for the semi-final but uh, big congratulations to all the other clubs involved as well yeah, it was a hotly contested heat, that one. Heat 8 of, of 10, 10 heats, so um, a huge achievement. And it's 10 heats of 10, 100 teams. A huge wow. achievement to make it through that very, very tight um, elimination of only three qualifying to the next round of the under-13, under-14 male board rescue. And I think it's all going to sort of, the intensity is about to build. I can just feel the vibe is about to lift because we're going from our final of our little heats coming up in a moment. So then a couple of two semi-finals of each age group, and then all of a sudden it's showtime, the final package. But talk about showtime, what about this? As the drone heads south over that of the tents here at Aussies 2024, the beautiful beach of the Black Swans and Marichidor. And they've definitely put on a wave. And you've got to love an Aussie championships with a bit of swell, because um, obviously last year, what a great host club as well, Scarborough in West Australia. As we're lining up now for, it looks like to be potentially the final heat the other 13 and 14. We've had it all, haven't we? Thrills and spills. And now uh, Voco at North Wollongong, the, the uh, Tri-Colours, one of my old clubs actually going through university, North Gong. And a shout out to Chris Clayton, I know he's watching this, ex-president of the mighty club of North Wollongong. Sereno WA, look out for the high beach, green. Diggy Beach, Manly B, the lakes. Great to see Morty Alec. What a great club that is as well down in Victoria. Billy S. Road Bay Park, Cooks Hill and Redhead lining up. It is heat number nine. 13-year-olds joining with that of 14-year-olds as well. And so many great clubs. Boca, Central Coast, New South Wales, North Gong. And uh, I used to swim this morning saw an old North Gong member, Darren Turner, phenomenal swimmer, picked up a place, I think, in the over 50s this morning. He's lost no height. He's about six foot eight. He's a monster and a uh, great swimmer as well. Mark Norris, another, another North Gong boy swimming this morning. Sorrento. We'll go for the green cap here, the fluoro green, and the great guidance of our Boothie over there in West Australia. Doing a wonderful job in coaching there with uh, his team of Sereno. Diggy Beach, another green cap, nearly Team B, the Lakes. We'll see the Lakes uh, line up as well. Some great history. Morty Alec there, Burley Hes Mowbray Park, Cooks Hill, Redhead, Redhead Team A. Look out for them and the guidance of Cozzy and the team there at Redhead, the Hunter Branch. 
of New South Wales. Uh, I love the colours, but uh, how excited are these 13 year old boys and girls be after this weekend? Yeah, I can, I can still feel their energy and we can see that coming through our screen. Just um, so much excitement and um, a lot of our athletes um, are travelling away from their home clubs, their home states to be here at Maroochydore. So the excitement of being on a trip away plus um, for some of our under-13s competing at their very first Aussies, combining with some of their older club teammates, which is also a bit of a buzz when you're a 13-year-old getting to race against um, the 14 or with the 14-year-olds. So, um, yeah, I think there'll be lots of fun stories coming out of this it weekend. Is, it is. And uh, the other thing, too, it's all the hype. You know, as a, as a young boy, and probably you're similar, too, as a young girl growing up, you, know, you hear so much about the Aussies and the stories, and you hear from your older brothers and sisters, if you have them, or your parents, or you know, the kids you train with that have been a few years old, they've been. And it's, it's honestly, it's like Christmas. It is absolutely Christmas in April. And you the opportunity and the whole time, and you get a couple of days off school if it doesn't match the school holidays, you want a few more days off after. And uh, it's an opportunity to go away, you see new places, the whole culture. Yes, you have the racing, but it's the friendships and the good times. That's what makes Aussies. There is a big hype and a big build up, and it might be just that, you know, that Aussies team shirt that you've seen your older brother or sister or your club mates have. And, um, you always get, get a couple of sizes larger, yeah. so you wear it for a few more years. <laughs> Yes, that Aussie team uniform, and it doesn't have to be much, but it's very, very special to our athletes, and they do look forward to this one all throughout their NIPA um, program, and it's a big thing to be at your first Aussies. Actually, it's a big thing to be at any Aussies, no matter where you are um, throughout the the eight-day program that we're going to be bringing um, you here from Maroochydore Beach. You know what else it is? It's the rash shirt. <laughs> the rash shirt. The amount of kids will turn up to school tomorrow wearing the high vis rash shirt. If they haven't got the rash shirt on, they'll have the rash shirt tan. Guaranteed they'll Maybe wear that the, for a week. The live heat wristband. Live heat wristband. Ah, oh, this is great. Now, we could talk all day about the Aussies, but someone's down the beach with their toes in the sand. Jen, give us an update. What's happening? 14 board rescue would you believe that we've already had nine heats completed down here they've got a few more yet to go which just shows the uh, strength and the speed of this age group so changing age groups changing venues we are now down in the uh, orange arena conditions pretty tough but our competitors loving being part of something and already thinking my Aussies could nearly be over oh no please don't stop Aussies keep it going I reckon make it a long a long uh, week or a long weekend event for these youths and away we go this looks like heat number nine coming up 13 and 14, so remember three is the magic number. Left hand side, the high is green, that's Sorrento. I oh, feel very good start. See the team there from Boca teams, Beach yeah. as well, doing well. But um, Sorrento, our early leaders, maybe a team from Manly there also doing well in the sky, blue cap. And this is interesting, I know we've got a number of teams here uh, lining up as well. So Sorrento there, you can see yeah, Manly making their move. You spoke about a Boca in there. There's a tri colours of North Wollongong. In the mix there as well. Ten great teams lining up here. We spoke about the lakes in there as well. Cooksville, Redhead, Top End. So this is advantage. So we've got the bank down the bottom here. They are a young boy there for Serena. You can see that's their A team as well from Serena. He looks like a big frame boy, but he gets down nice and early. He looks to work the bottom. There he comes. But the Top End, even though they're getting a few waves now, they may get in that green water a little bit earlier. Oh, they're going to go deep. Big swell starting to build as well. But Serena off to a very good start. He is fairly evenly matched. It looks like the leads are from the two um, opposite ends of our field at the moment. We've got Sorrento on screen with us at the moment. And at the other end, it might be the team from Redhead also doing really well, or perhaps even the team from Burley. We'll um, wait to pick up our teams at the top of the screen that you can see now. Manly making a bit of a move in the middle of your screen, just sneaking under that set. I think all of our teams have just almost snuck under that. Some of our back markers still caught in that white water, but majority of the field out in the green water now. Yeah, two uh, do distinct packs, don't we? have the, sort of the northern pack and the southern pack as they make around. This is the northern pack at the moment. And uh, Serena, remember, it's three legs to this, your swim leg, your board leg, and then the ability to come home. And that's what making and breaking all the teams. And uh, point of difference in terms of finishing the top three or missing out. Ten teams go in, three teams will qualify for the semi-final. Now the swimmers start to come with the four. They really start to go to work, don't they, once they make that green water. Yeah, you can see the team from Avoca at the bottom of the screen making a little bit of a late surge. Um, also there we see sneaking under that wave the team of North Wollongong. See Manly in the middle of there too. It's like the sky blue cup of Manly. And then right at the top end, 
And uh, I'll probably say you've got a couple of teams up there. They'll be probably Redhead, Far End as well, Bilders, Murray Bay Park, B team. The two 13 year olds that actually won the State Board Rescue as 13 year olds now stepping up as a 14 division. But Sorrento, for my liking, still in front and Manly making some movement. It's quite a lengthy swim leg, isn't it? You know, it is, and they may have adjusted these cans. We saw not so long ago the, the um, cans were set just behind that break, but it's a fairly long distance out there as we're on board here with Sorrento reaching the, their marker. Manly Beach, not too far away, and that's the cap there, I believe, of. Um, I was going to say Dicky, but I think it might actually be Avoca Beach. Yeah, that's Avoca. There you go. Vintage, probably down to the northern end. So Avoca and Manly now hit the cans as well. Now remember, three is the magic number to qualify for semi-finals. All teams are in. Now it's the luck of the waves coming out towards the bank. And how many will they get hit by? Will they use the hole? We'll still probably one swimmer still making their way back out the can at the moment as well. You can see the um, competitor there from Sorrento probably sitting about five metres behind his can. Is that what you would suggest to your paddlers, giving them enough room for that board, as you mentioned, to paddle, paddle around and head straight back into the beach? Yeah, I'd probably say two things. One, the ability to get behind the can, but also move towards the can to the south. So with the southeast wind, uh, have an urgency to, when you slow up to get your partner on, or draw you back to the can. So you want to probably go about a third of the way across to the next can. So here we go. Look at this. This is a great race. Two, four, six, eight, nine teams. When a mover at the top of the screen there, you can see we've probably had a lead change. So we'll try and pick up that club for you at the top of our screen. It's just gone past our early leaders of Sorrento. Yeah, this is a great little battle, isn't it? You've got 13 year olds with a 14 year olds. Well, oh, waves building. Waves building. Big opportunity here for some of the younger boys to try and sit and pop up and over these swirls. More waves starting to build as well. I said it's redhead top of the screen, had a very good start. There it is on the far right hand side. There it is, the redhead cat. Now starting to make their presence felt. Ten go in. Three will come out for a semi-final. We see Evoca hanging tough. Manly making their move up on the inside as well. And potentially Swansea Belmont, is it? Of our ball. A Diggy Beach, I should say, a ball in Stanford as well. This is great. Look at this. Top end. Redhead Hunter Branch in one. Redhead, it might even be also the blue cap there of Morty Alec coming yeah, up. Yeah, great close. club, Morty Alec. Some great board covers. I know the girls last year in the under 17 female board relay picked up second. That's the Holt girls with uh, young Mia Cook. And around they go. It's a team from Dickey Beach. We can see them making the pick, pick up, up along with Manly, just struggling to get on the board. They're probably in fourth position. So this is going to be a tight qualifier. And is this enough for our lead pack to pull down this way? Maybe wave? not. Maybe not Diggy Beach Manly, swell building behind as well. They look over their shoulder. All about uh, board speed at the moment. Diggy Beach really starting to motor. Top end, redhead now. Here we go, redhead right, top end, swell building. Manly trying to push over. Manly's on. Manly is definitely on. They may book a spot for the semi final. Now, decision time. Where is two and three? Where's four, five, and six at the moment? Manly life saving cup. Oh, the smiles on the dials for the boys. Bit of relief. They know they're through the semi-finals and all things staying fair. Where are we here, Christy? Yeah, that Second, looked like third, that fourth, was a race fifth. in five. The only team to pull down that way from almost the cans is the team from Manly Team B, Thomas McMarty and Austin Nicholson. So amazing effort there from our team of Manly. They've um, done that beautifully, got themselves out of trouble. I think it's going to be maybe a close finish. We'll have to... Um, Wait to see if there was a second wave to pick up. Yeah, the what is happening? The killer bees. Well done. Take four. a bow, man. Life saving club in one. Where do we go for two and three? We may pan out and have a look because there will be waves coming. There will be waves on offer. You see the officials. There we go. I see potentially a Cooks Hill. Oh, upside down. Trying to pick the, the cup lakes. up. Is it? That's the lakes. I'd say that's the lakes. Avoca. Avoca may sneak in there. Redhead fighting as well. Top end. Oh, judges, hands on heads, you can see from the crowd as well. That's Avoca, the lakes. Redhead Dickies, I'm not too sure who got um, the top three qualifying there. I oh. say Redhead may have snuck in, lost his swimmer, had to set up a proper weight, but had composure. Lakes coming through, North Gong, the tri colours of North Gong. Difficult to pick up from this angle there was our early leaders of Sorrento coming through now. That that's the swell, isn't it? The luck of the swell we saw with the teams coming in. That's heat nine of ten. 
Under 13, 14, board rescue, 10 heats of 10. Probably one of the closest teams. heats we've um, it's watched. Been good. Yeah. It was really anyone's race right until that wave zone. And uh, with live stream, stay with us. There's plenty of finals package coming up very, very shortly. A couple of semi finals of board rescue. Then we're rolling straight into that board rescue finals, surf team finals, board relay finals, and wrapping up. We see Cameron Relay very similar to the Tapland. We'll see Sunday afternoon, one of the great team events we'll see next Sunday afternoon, wrapping up a phenomenal Aussies, but in team events it is the Cameron. We can see uh, bottom of the screen, it looks like the 14, 15 males at the moment going through their qualifying rounds of board rescue as well. And that tide really starting to drop out now. Yes, and um, hence maybe the um, readjustment of the cans for these board rescues just to allow for that drop in tide. So um, still a long race for our competitors. Oh, Ooh, as I say this, that, wave the cans. they have not readjusted the cans in this arena as wave yet. Wait, this next one, look at this next one. All of a sudden the cans have been drawn in. The cans have been drawn inside the break. Drama are plenty here in the, uh, I'd say this could be heat number 10. Wow, look at those cans. <laughs> this is gold. What do you do as you the swimmer? It wouldn't be an Aussies without the drama. I can see 10, 10 of team officials running down to the liaison officer as we speak. Look at the bow in the cans. You want to be on blue and white. You, do? you want to be on blue and white. All the yellow. Competitors making a bit of a tough call there. They waited for that the smile. Set. The smile of the cans. <laughs> waited for that set to pass through and fortunately this is good. it has passed through in time in just in time for that pickup but a little bit unfortunate if you're on one of those ends and you've got to paddle a little bit further out to sea so um i'm sure we'll have a break in the program following this race as that set has just yes they might need to um maybe even rerun potentially this race the um that set just breaking the anchorage of our cans yeah, trying to pick up the, the teams. Oh, look at this. There we go. Waves on the cans. Boards flying, spilling everywhere. Wow. Drama of plenty. Oh, the Noosa boys look silly like, what is going on? Hands in the air. He's going, stay cool. Let's go to the line and we'll find out. Look at him looking up at the, the team officials. What's going on? I may, maybe call a null and void event. I believe the officials may have stepped in here at the moment. We've got one standing up at the cans here. It looks like Cooks Hill standing up at the cans under the rope. Yes, I would say they will probably re rerun that race. No one probably saw that happening just um, with the change of the tide and that set standing up right on the swim cans. Great footage. Quickly get on, boys. There's sets coming out the back as well. It turned into a little bit of board rescue limbo for the boys. But let's get back to the... Uh, you get, let's get on the other side of these cans. They see the set coming. Get over the top, boys. They're starting to scamper the boys from Cooks Hill. Wow. And it does it does happen. A drop of tide, obviously the waves break in shallow water as well. Very unfortunate for the last uh, heat coming through as well, but I'm sure the officials will assess this situation. Plenty of good drama and stories for the boys to tell. I think uh, potentially a rerun may be up for the keep here, but we'll leave that one with the judges. Drama are plenty in the board rescue. We said that, didn't we? We said board rescue brings drama. It does, and I think, um, yeah, there'll be some interesting stories amongst the teams of that. <laughs> the just boys. be like, can you believe that? <laughs> this is good. You may get another run. I think I think the Cairns might even beat the boys back to the beach so they don't hurry up. <laughs> yes, and you can just see just how quickly they moved in. See, the IRBs now picking up. That's what happens. Little, little white boy for those, not privy to those of Cairns. I'll pick up the end white boy can, pull the anchor up, and then uh, look to pull from one line and then realign the other. It is hard work. A lot of resistance. You see the cans now. There's the flow getting dragged back out by the IRB. Great job, the IRB crews. Dragging back out and resetting the cans. It does happen, but uh, that's why they're so efficient, the IRB crews in action. And a big thanks to all the clubs supporting in their, uh, their time slots of IRBs throughout the whole journey of the Aussies 2024 as well. Yes. Just adds a bit of time to the day as well. We're now 147. Well done to our. Um, we might try and get an update with Jen down cruise. the beach. Yeah, we might try and see Jen down the beach for an update if it's possible. If you're there with us, Jen, to potentially try and get an update of what's happening down there with the beach with this water arena. There's a 
cans now go taken back out as well. Look at this, a bit of sideways board rescue. Doing oh, a great drama job. of plenty. So board rescues will finish up with semi-finals in a moment, then straight into finals package. Kurt Hansen, we call them live up here in the commentator's booth. But look at this, here we go. That's the finish of uh, this race we saw earlier. Looks like out of North Coslow, probably Eddie Davis there. Up and over the boys from North Cot. Oh, that's the Lakes boys. So you see a little, a little yellow and maroon lightning bolt on top of the screen there as well. Sorrento come in for the party as well. And said a big hello. But this is the action. Diggy Beach and that of Manny. Love the board speed. The board speed of Manny pulling over the top. Diggy needs more board speed to my liking. And didn't have it. Did not have it. And look at this, the boys. For the Man Life Saving Club. An armchair ride. Talking about an armchair ride. Welcome back. A big thanks to uh, Christy Munro. Big welcome back to that of live stream. Kurt Hansen, mate. Action of plenty. But it's all about to live it up. Uh, Ty, great to be back in the booth. And what a finish we've got to our youth championships for 2024. Doesn't get much better than what we just saw with the string of cans. Just when you think you've seen everything in surf sports. No, no, no. And, yeah, you think they'd definitely get a rerun in that one, but definitely some great uh, war stories for the boys to tell. It's great. We've had many good story, uh, many good highlights for the new championships. It's been a great, hasn't it? Yeah, day and a half thus far, and two event finals coming up, and the can's still yet to be set. We're still uh, head to toe at the moment, but here they go. They're whipping around, reset the cans. We've just come up to the beach as well, mate. What's the vibe like down there? It's buzzing. It's great. And it's all on the surf. The surf, and I, I know it's hard. I don't know if the pitchers can get across... Uh, one, the trickiness of it, and two, the power of that back bank. Um, as the tide drops as well, getting a little bit more consistency on the back bank. And if you can get caught under one, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to rattle you, that's for sure. And it's been a, a big, fun highlight of those border rescues coming in, trying to hang on. Speaking of, some more uh, border rescue qualifiers. Yeah, it looks like this is the 14, 15 age group. They're a little bit behind that of the 13, 14 age group, so they'll punch through there. I'd say potentially could be heats or semi-finals coming up. It definitely looks like that the 14, 15 age group. Swimmers are going to make their way out to that, towards the back hands. We've got two main arenas, I think, set up down there at the moment, or maybe three, and uh, we'll come back to two for the finals package. But trying to get through these board rescues so we get to the final package. But um, it's all about survival, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, the, the cuts have been pretty tough. I've um, seen cuts in the, in the 14s, or 13s, 14s, sorry, of three, and in the uh, 14s, 15s for the girls of, of four. Uh, this is the Australian Championship. I, I, I'd say one thing that's on your side for this board rescue. These are the longest board rescues you'll ever see. And you take a look how far those cans are out. These are solid swims. And these uh, 14, 15-year-olds, you're going to earn it because it's a long... Generally, you you, um, you know you think uh, a board rescue swim is pretty short, sharp, fast. This is quite long. We're talking maybe 250. Um, add in the sweep a little bit as well and conditions. Maybe 300-metre swim. Um, to get out there, so yeah, it's a long way for them. And then you put the swell in, like you spoke about, the swell that's pushing that energy. It's a surge, there's a bit of resistance for these swimmers, and it's, it's not a straight swim, there's a lot of hard work, but also skill sets need to come on display. Yeah, the, well, I think one of the most underestimated skills we've not talked about in surf sports is, is that of getting under the waves um, in, in these swim legs, and pencil drops just won't cut it out there. You've got to go with purpose, you've got to go deep, um, if you can get to the bottom, great, especially on those big ones. And you can tell this, br this beautiful angle on the drone here. You can see, look at this line across. Three, four teams here as these waves come through. You can see far top of screen. Um, looking pretty to, solid on the way out. Yeah, just trying to pick up the heat we're looking at. It could be heat seven on the 14s and 15s, but I thought I might have seen a black cap in there. Of uh, potentially a burly cap going through. But I like the top end. That little hole, little pockets of opportunity. Mm. Uh, you speak about as well. Uh, obviously, your skill set across the bank, but if you pick up that a little bit of a pocket window, it could be uh, North Curl Curl is it making their way out. And Sim Richard all there in Rilla Barrack Point. That might be, give us a bit of guidance. It could be the 13s and 14s. Uh, looking at this as well. So we'll try it. It is the 13s and 14s. It's the 13s and 14s we have here at the moment. And uh, North Curl Curl. Look out for the North Curl Curl girls. I think Davis might be in there in mixed. Uh, phenomenal young girl coming up. And, um, Melbourne potentially as well. Great. Yeah, Melbourne's great phenomenal swimmer. swimmer. Great and, swimmer. And yeah, I spoke to Sean Davis uh, earlier today, and they were pumped by their performances yesterday. A couple of big wins for them. 
and they just want to keep that momentum going and going about the right way here. Spots up for grabs in that final. Yeah. So that's yeah, semi four. semi final number one here, Hanso, and our semi final number one of three, North Curl Curl. We've got North Bill in there, really Barrack Point. We saw the Orange. And what a great club that is as well. Sunshine Beach, great day yesterday. Phenomenal Queensland State Championships as well. But it's the pointy end of things now. Three going through yeah, and uh, Remy's, so super cutthroat. Cutthroat's good. But look at his nails, this uh, red and yellow first can. It's going to be a big lead to the Knights from North Kilkel. Yeah, it's a three-piece to my board rescue. The swim set comes into play first, now over the board. You've done your part as a swimmer. You've nailed your start. You've executed through the break. You've hit your can online. Opportunity for a little rest for the swimmer. Now over the board, cut up and coming home. Teamwork, how critical. So critical. It's all uh, the the group from uh, Ocean Grove before they weren't first to the cans and the board paddle was well wasn't first there either but together they combined and came from like fourth to first and that's where all those great board rescue teams they're good individually but they're brilliant when they combine it's as they say teamwork makes the dream work it sure does they a bit of spice of the swelling there as well that's not a Millie Mae Berg I think she I picked up third yesterday on a nipper board now stepping up on a mow obviously uh, the daughter of the great Jade Berg and Wesberg as well, but um, it's good to see. It's an opportunity for the 13th to step up, but for a lot of them, it's first opportunity on a mall as well in competition. Uh, you know, if your surname's Berg here, they can ride big boards, little boards, surfboards. <laughs> no boards. <laughs> Water women, they, <laughs> they can do anything. And, you know, born and bred in the surf. Phenomenal surfers in their own rights as well um, at an age group level, and yeah, it's great to see them here. Um, and I love that. I love the coaching as well. It's not about coaching the craft. It's about coaching being good. Good people, but good watermen and uh, men and women as well. But North Curl, we saw off to a great start as well. Now, we've got to remember, three is the magic number. And going into this, we have nine in this semi-final. Now, 33 and a third percent will qualify. 66 two-thirds won't. That's a big cut. But uh, it's the Aussie champs, and you've got to be there in the mix as well. So let's pick them up as they go out. We saw North Curl go off to a good start as well. Look for the move now of North Burley. The white with the two green stripes had a good uh, quarterfinal win as well. I expect that to uh, the North Burley team of Lily Moana and Amani Leonardi. Lily Moana, great story. Third in the beach sprint, uh, second in the beach sprint yesterday. An AFL superstar and now has given up the beach flag, a potential medal <laughs> to be in a board rescue. How good well, is that? Very rare, very rare to see it at this at this level to split um, beach and water. And so definitely a, a special talent. And, but uh, this is tight. Three is tight. And I'll tell you, Lily Marta's mummies, Jane Burton, used to race with the Karumba. And there you go. What about that for a bit of history? Sunshine, turning one. This is it. This is the make or break for my liking of board rescue. The opportunity to get this board up and get the board humming. Downhill paddling, timing, rating. It's all about board spin at the moment, but it's advantage Sunshine Beach. Yeah, where's North Curl Curl? As we get the pan out and see North Burley looks like there alongside them. Waves building. Waves put in the back, got to lift, got to lift, girls. You need that board speed to get down. And this is crunch time. Look at the double up here at the moment. North Burley looking over. The dinner plates of the eyes come forward. Strap yourself in. Love the work of North Burley. Danger, oh, danger. Oh, Burley down. And oh, looks like sunshine's off as well. So advantage North Burley through. But now pressure on North Curl Curl. And certainly Sunshine Beach. And it's opened it up. So now it's Maruchidor. My apologies, well, so Maruchidor. Maruchidor's come through. It was the one with the green, didn't we? So that's uh, Maruchidor coming through. Edmondson. We'll probably say Edmondson and Oversell. <laughs> Abby and Oversell, phenomenal board pal on the home beach. Bit of local knowledge. <laughs> and a little bit of luck, but they, they create their own luck. Well done. And they'll come through and qualify. Oh, tight. Oh, tight there. Sunshine Beach fights back as well. This I'll is unbelievable. What's going on here? Three is Blackhead, the magic... was it? Blackhead come from nowhere down the southern end. Three is the magic number, and we'll pick them up as they come through at the moment. We'll try and pick them up. Three teams will go through. Where did Blackhead come from? Unbelievable. We know they've got phenomenal board pullers. They took out the board That's relay crazy. New South Wales State Championships. We know they love their craft. It's an ex-Newport competitor now coaching there for the last couple of years as well. Number three, who will pick up that lucky third position? We did see that of North Burley in the mix. Unfortunately, it could be eliminated. But Maritidor, the Black Swans on the home beach, they've secured their spot. Sunshine, we believe. Blackhead in the mix as well. That would be my pick and for North Curl Curl, unfortunately, first and then out the back door. And when you're only taking three and it's just so cutthroat, 
any major mistake is just going to be magnified. You just can't come back from those mistakes at this level. Wow. And uh, Richard Ord is the Aussies 2024. Big thanks to Sunshine Coast Council. Doing a great job here on the Sunshine Coast as well. But Richard Orr, it throws up everything, doesn't it? Well, I think that's what's made the, the weekend so big. We rocked up uh, yesterday morning and it was on from the get-go. The surf was epic and it's just continued across. And we'll get a replay here of this semi-final. The wave came and down Richard Orr in the middle there. Saw Sunshine Beach just skew it. And then to the left-hand side, North Curl Curl down off the back. And that's costing it in there. Bit of Rodeo work from Sunshine Beach. Couldn't hang on. And it was all Maruchidor in the middle. It was Sunshine lost their, uh, their paddle on the back. So she had to pull up a big mail and pull up stumps to try and regroup. But uh, this is great exhibition of board rescue. Wave catching from the Black Swans. Abby Novosel, great young girl, represented the Queensland State team. Went away to that as an under-14 year old. And uh, with her partner as well. So obviously it's the 13, 14 age group joined together. They're on the top age as well. And uh, well done, girls. And they're oh, playing. Yeah. Where did they come from? And sunshine. sunshine. Second sunshine. They were around a screen, so it must have been the, the what the sunshine A's were looking at, but it might have been the B's, the killer B's. It was the killer B's. So position, did we look at that? Position eight and nine. Crazy the southern end, finish. outer screen, blackhead from the clouds. And the killer bees of Sunshine, I believe, have knocked off the A-team of Sunshine as well. But it's these conditions in this weekend. It's not over. The race isn't over. And here we go. Okay. Another semi coming up. Very shortly. Board rescue. Yeah, Coogee, New South Wales, Newport coming up. Pacific, great story, Pacific. Newport team A, Redhead, Woolgooga. Coogee and Headland, they've been up and about. We spoke about them yesterday. The great guy, that's at Scotty McCartney and the older age groups as well. So and, Tremie uh, 3. Good. Tremie 3 with 3 going through. It's tough, isn't it? You want to make a final. You're so close to a final. You go in, there's 9. It can be a bit... You, know, you get overawed by it a little bit as well. You look across, you do a number count. Oh, yeah, I reckon I'll beat them. And, three's and tough. They're this, good. 3's really hard for the cut, like I said, from 8. And you do, all it means is when it's more cutthroat, you just can't afford to make mistakes. Not at all. Could you? New South Wales, top end of screen. But also, you can't afford to not take the take the waves. You have to. There's no second. There's no second guessing. There's no tomorrow. You have, if it's there, you've got to charge it. Yeah, you got to win it to win the biscuit. I'd say you got to risk it to win the biscuit. And away we go. Coogee top end right next to them. Newport Newport team B, very strong. Pacific team A. Now Pacific or Gates Store. I think they got silver medal, state championships. Only a couple about twelve competitors here in the Aussie champs in total. Then we go into that. Newport Team A. This is to me will be the team to look out for. The Team A there of Newport lining up super strong. We look at the, the depth in Newport. Away we go. Swim leg coming up. Some deciding going right. Some going left. What do you like? Right sort of favoured a little bit in terms of going out. But you don't know what's coming in as well. No. I, in these conditions, I just like backing yourself. And it's the best way to counteract the sweep is speed. Fast. Be fast. And if you're one of the fastest swimmers, you've got some confidence, you've got some ego, and you know that you can really cut it quick across this inshore gutter, it's not going to have too big an impact. If you faff around, you get caught, you, you don't really put the pedal down, you're going to pay the price and you could end up at Noosa. Yeah, you cannot agree more. The ability to get on these waves with aggression, you've got to have that good breakout speed. That energy coming across, if you come up easy or take a breaststroke before, if you're losing your body speed, you lose metres. And a uh, big move left-hand side there at the moment. Could you off to a good start? Obviously, two Newport clubs, and you look at the Newport clubs you got here as well. And you mentioned the names of the Newport clubs in this mix as well. Sophie Clues and, and Lisa Dirtz, two outstanding young uh, under-14s coming through the ranks. You talk about you know the Clues family, heavily entrenched in life-saving in New South Wales. Then the A-team, Sadie Maggs, younger sister of Connor Maggs, mm. and Matilda Young. Once again, under-14 dominance throughout the whole Summer Surf Series this year with these girls as well. But uh, let's not go away from Evie Waller, younger girl of Lana Waller, 90 Waller as well. And Alana Dimmick there for the Redhead Club. That's their team A as well. And uh, Will Gulga. Wouldn't it be great to see Will Gulga there? Just north of Coffs Harbour. Up and about. Great to see. Um, of course, the original home of um, the Cole Moffat as well back in the day. It's so funny when you see the clubs and you associate someone yeah. that you know with them. I, I love it. Coogee, left-hand side. Big move. Courtney Codd there with Catherine Jordan off to a great start. Cooch stamping a good stamp of authority here in semi-final number three. Yeah, great to see Coogee in action. 
We'll mention Kuji. What did he come up with? Give me a name. Oh, Hablas. Hablas. Exactly. Hablas, Lee Habla. And Cameron obviously coaching. I think these girls as we Dan speak. Hablas, yep. And uh, away they go. So Kuji off a good start. But remember, we've got two distinct groups. This is the northern group at the moment. There's the pack of four. We'll pan out and have a look at the southern group as well. They are now starting to make their their way through the green look water as well. Look how out they are. Uh, unbelievable. This just goes to see, one, how tough this swim leg is in this board rescue, and two, how long it is. It's long. And it's the pockets of opportunity. Now, good little run out here for uh, that Akuchi we saw come out. He's obviously nailed this can. Absolutely nailed it. Shortest course is the quickest course. So where we go, red and yellow, up and over. Flag goes, or hand goes up. Swell building as well. And this is the bank. Look at the carnage of the bank back here. Mm. And we've got some phenomenal swimmers in this age group. Probably some of the best swimmers well, in this age Dirtz group. Well, you've been shredding it up all weekend long. The, uh, she won the Australian surf race title yesterday. And, yep, so there. It's, it just goes to show the right alley, the right confidence, the right ability. And that is a massive lead for Cookie. And the can, the, uh, the waves almost break on the cans as well. So all of a sudden we now change over from the swim school set to that now. The board public and that's uh, Kuji clear in one. Very, very tight. But remember, it's a game of survival. It's a semi-final. It doesn't matter if you come one, two, or three. You've got to be there to make that of the final. I went around the back of the can. That was interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting. But it looks like Newport second and uh, and third at the moment. Get into the can. And then Redhead in there as well. I expect a big move from Redhead in the board here. Great uh, craft club in terms of red hair on the Hunter branch as well. That's literally down the, the bottom end now. And look out for that. They're the killer bees of Alex as well from just up the road. Sam Issel, great day. Amber Curry as well. Two younger girls of that Alex Cup coming through. Will Gulga now hits their target. Goodson Headland just stuck out a little bit at the moment, getting through that at the break. Hands are up. All bar one at the moment. Board paddlers now come to the fore. Yeah, so you think here, Kuji with a big, big lead, top of screen. And not just the lead, but... As Ty mentioned as well, they've got the water moving out Look there. Look at that. Look at the water. It is like an absolute freeway up that northern end. And it's as if Moses has parted the ocean and they are just one-way traffic out the back and everything going the way of Kuji at the moment. Yeah, I think what's critical now is the ability to when they pick up not to paddle back into that rip. You know, mm. stay nice and clear. I've looked ahead a little bit further south. And waves always break in the shallowest part of the ocean. You see the sets building out the back now. I would not be surprised they move a little bit to the south. You see these waves starting to build. Uh, all of a sudden, this good throw. I'll tell you what, two, three, and four need a motor because mm. big swells are building. Oof. Oh, here, so look at this. Newport, two Newport teams have to tackle this. Oh, it's a good roll, but they're going to get caught inside. A nice pop as well, but now back. Oh, out the back. Take, take it. it. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. Oh, Drama. Sits up. Oh, up. Drama. No, they've held it, but they've lost the swimmer. The Drama. swimmer's gone. You've got to come back, surely. No, drama are plenty. I think they're far enough in front. Swim. But she needs back. a swim. You've got to come back for her. Help I'll her swim. Out. Start Help swimming. You are far enough Help in front. Don't go all the way in. Come Team, back. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> you can't win a board rescue without your forward rescue partner. Oh, we talk about the whole eight seconds. They lasted about two. We'll get a replay of that. Talk about the Rodeo. She, went <laughs> up and she was actually <laughs> sitting on her board. It was unbelievable. The whole eight seconds. We're only going to replay the moment. They are still leading this race. Where is the board paddle? Make it easy for the swimmer, but they're also in the hole. This is the danger. Here we go, paddling back out. To me, they've still done it up. Look at the oh drama at goodness. the back on the cans. The whole rodeo, the whole eight seconds. Oh. She's up. Locks in. Stewart's a lock. There we go. Oh, it's a bull ride for the ages for Kuji. And the board paddle loves it. Oh, where's where my swimmer? And that's interesting. The front paddler, the front paddler has departed exit stage left. And it's the back paddle going, oh, my God. Drama are plenty. They are back on. Uh, Newport. Newport coming to four. Can they do enough? Could she in a little bit of dead water we spoke about? At the moment, Newport coming home with an absolute freight train. Oh, That'll that be clues. Great. That'll be clues there coming through at the moment. Lisa Durst. Yeah, I think both Newport teams should be safe. You think Kuji is a fair game? Oh, hang on, wave coming Pacific, as well. Pacific no, is in. Kuji could be gone. Me. It could be a, a blackhead come through here for an upset of sunshine. Where did they come from? I That's told unbelievable. you. They got second at stage two. They must be phenomenal together. Oh, look at this! So All redhead. of a sudden, redhead. Oh, what a finish! Wow, drama are plenty. Kuji gone. Second Newport gone. It is times like these you do not want to be Cameron Habler. <laughs> oh, absolute coach they killer. They had that absolutely sewn up. They didn't have a choice. They had to charge it. And unfortunately, 
They just lost the golden rule. Don't oh. lose control of the craft. For good reasons not to lose your craft. And they had the handles, and uh, it was a tough one. It was tough. It was an absolute tough one. And uh, we'll get an update very shortly. But unofficial, it looks like that of Newport in one. Potentially that sneaking up Pacific. And right down the bottom of screen. Redhead for mine. Redhead. I can't believe, where did Pacific come from? That was phenomenal paddling to come back. Drama of plenty. Let's look at this again. These are, that is a big wave in the context solid, of this. Solid four foot On the back. Up. Up, knowing oh. not to nosedive. Did a really good release. Improvi- it was great improvising, but you just had to grab a strap. You had to lock yourself in. Yeah. Even the ability to go down nosedive, at least you're coming up and popping up with your craft. Very, very easy to say what to do, but... Under the intensity of this race and the ability to react to conditions as well. Wow. Drama, drama <laughs> are plenty. We'll leave that with the judges. We'll have an update very, very shortly. I'm going to exit down the beach and welcome that of Jenny Parry. So good. Well, and good hands. And maybe was... finals coming up. Best of luck. Strap yourself in a live stream. Some phenomenal racing coming up. Oh, that's the drama we've got to look forward to. It's going to be an epic finals package coming your way shortly. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. Thanks, Ty Dowker. Of course, hope you're enjoying the stream throughout Australia and the world, or also there in the fan zone out the back here at Maroochydore. Now, second and final day of the Australian Youth Surf Life Saving Championships from the Sunshine Coast. It's been full of drama. It's like next semi coming up here. 14s, 15s, board rescue. Yeah, 13s, 14s. Good, Jenny. How are you? Welcome. Plenty of uh, welcome to uh, Crazy Town. A little earlier when the uh, cans were being washed in, there's people everywhere. Everyone's nervous about these top three cuts as well. And uh, just seeing these last few races that you've been calling here with Ty, what a way to finish Aussies for the uh, youth, the team events. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, pretty rough. You're going through liveheats.com, which is moving oh, crowd. And the confirmation there as well. Tell me, tell me, tell me, Newport, tell me. Newport, Redhead, and Pacific all through. Oh, Pacific, how? <laughs> just incredible. You cannot underestimate in Border Rescue the teamwork, the power to get it. If you are just like lightning together, you could make up so much ground. And if you lose um, that coordination uh, with your Border Rescue partner, you're literally either going sitting still or going backwards. And you can just yeah make some big inroads and Pacific and Redhead, both incredible come from behind performances to book themselves a spot in that uh, 13s, 14s, Border Rescue final coming up a little later on this afternoon. Absolutely. We know we have some incredible individual athletes uh, and we saw them showcased yesterday. But you can't just take one good board paddler, pop them with one good swimmer and expect a magical board rescue. It's all about that combination. And I'm so excited that the uh, the competitors really feel like they're lifting coming into the uh, Sunday afternoon of Aussies. They know that the finals aren't too far away and uh, they know that they're running out of time to really make their mark on Aussies. So excited for the finals this afternoon and really nervous for the girls who are down here on the line. They've been there for a little while. Yes, they have been standing there for a bit now. This is the first semi of three in the 14s, 15s. And our board rescue. Take a look at the teams there. Cooks Hill, Corumba, North Burley, Trevor Headland, Wanda, Manly, Ocean Grove. Been looking red hot. Wanda and Trig Island consistent. Trig have been, they've had a great journey here. In the West. There's your uh, teams for that so first semi on the screen now. Yeah, here we go. Cooks Hill, Corumba, North Burley, Alex, Wanda, Manly, Ocean Grove, Wanda Team A in the mix as well, and Trig Island all the way from WA. So lots of caps, lots of states, lots of quality competitors down there. And we are coming on to uh, one and a half big days of competition, and we are, we've are we still got a few big ones to go. I hope our athletes are looking after themselves and each other down there on the beach because 
the big few days of competition, the excitement, the nerves of racing at a national championships as well. It's a lot to take in. Ah, they're fine. They're loving it. <laughs> Look at you. You know no, what they're no, loving? Jim. They're loving the waves. It's wave time. It's yes. time. It's this is not the pool championships. This is the surf championships, and the surf has arrived here. And for those watching online or those coming later in the week, it's on. Lick your lips, dial it up, because come next weekend, it's going to be big, and you want to be in those big finals because anything. And everything will happen. And we really, really have seen that across the day. Anything and everything as the girls are wait. And you mentioned then we are racing. This is day two of nine. I just saw the current Australian board champion, Tex Dixon, having a little warm-up uh, down there. He's got that really distinctive craft. So it was great to see him getting down here early, practising his starts and just getting used to these uh, these conditions because, as we've seen, we're turning it on today. Um, I, I spent a little bit of time just up at the club earlier and all of the um, original workforce. They just can't stop talking about how exciting it is that the conditions are looking good the weather is great and the athletes are bringing their best as well certainly excited oh, a few little last minute conferences down there on the line just yes. confirming the course where are we going and uh, I've got the uh, little bomb weather report down there as well and I have been down there can confirm she's warm down there it's nice the breeze kind of cools it a little bit so it might be 25 probably feels maybe a little bit cooler than that maybe uh, 22 23 but um yeah, the surf, just gorgeous. Two to four foot, that back break we saw there causing some chaos and some decision making as these girls just called off the line for the moment. Just to get um, our course sorted. And you can see that uh, east southeasterly wind. And nice breeze, nothing too hardcore. And our second and final day of our youth competition. Yeah, we can see uh, the course. Look, oh, there's uh, Jimmy Walker down there on the beach as well, having a little uh, look around the course as we uh, take a little break as everything gets uh, caught up. And just to have a little bit of a change of pace, recognising a few of the other amazing events that are happening along the beach. Tell us. Just having a look at a wonderful Instagram post from Dickey Beach Surf Lifesaving Club, our first gold medal at Aussies. Huge congratulations Woo! to Grace and Samantha taking out the open first aid competition. So Dickey Beach... First aid champions, congratulations, Grace and Samantha. What, what an achievement! Oh, well done, Dickie Beach, the little club that everyone loves. Everyone is it everyone's them. like on the sunshine? Is it everyone's second club? Pretty much, yeah, close enough to close enough to that. But um, again, every club is special, and I think um, as you wander along the beach, and we've got that gorgeous shot there of just how many tents there are. There are so many amazing stories under each and every one of those. So. Uh, getting exciting there's a lot happening uh and i actually did see a little bit of the first day yesterday i wanted past alex and uh they were doing the scenario of um you know you, you arrive on the scene and you have to uh, figure out what you do and the people that they had being the actors being the people who were injured i was actually a little concerned when i first walked up because they're like ow ow my leg and i was like oh no something's happening and then i realized it was just an open first aid which like scenario and um obviously if you're with dicky beach incredibly safe hands <laughs> Yeah, well, that's, there you go. That's what it's all about. If you're going to get into trouble, get in trouble yes, at Dickie I'd Beach. Like Dickie Beach, please. <laughs> they're the Australian champions. And um, something else that I do want to make sure that we uh, mention here today and something that I'm sure you'll be excited about as well. Ooh. I was reading earlier in the season. Please hold on. I scroll for this one. We've had a few more um, inductees to the Hall of Fame okay. in the last few months. And one of those uh, wonderful people is Michael White from one of our host clubs, Alexandra Hedlund. He has won the Open Men's uh, Champion Lifesaver about 50 times now. Okay. So he retired when he went out on top. But also the Alexandra Hedlund uh, patrol team was inducted into the Hall of Fame following their incredible run through their competition days. So to see not only that they had done such incredible, had such incredible achievements, but to see that recognised with a Hall of Fame inclusion is just incredible. So our congratulations there to Michael White, Bradley Dewan, Kate Thornton, Bridget Seymour, David Brown and Scott Sinclair. Hall of Fame, congratulations. Hall of Famers, not easy to get into. Oof, but once you're there, you're in it for life. So there you True. go, Whitey, you're a superstar. Alex, you're a superstar as well. So I um, highly recommend swimming at Alexander Headlands. Please in between the flags, but otherwise you're in very safe hands. I think you're in safe hands. <laughs> Down that way. In uh, most parts of the country, especially oh, with this 100%. next generation, seeing what they can produce here over uh, the weekend so far. Finals not too far away. We've got a couple of semis uh, to wrap up for the Border Rescue. Mm -hmm. And then party time. 
party time and also we've got a uh, crew heading down to Malulabar at the moment. We're going to capture some beach flags as well. We know that there are a lot of people who are watching the live stream asking for the beach sprints, asking for the beach flags. We are determined to get as many races as possible. So uh, I think Harold's just trying to catch a lift down to Malulabar at the moment. Ooh, wearing some beach flags on screen. Yeah, oh, yes, fantastic. Oh, team, you're too good to me. I just thought, you know, I'll just start mentioning it. And here we have the beautiful segue in. We can see we've got the uh, the cameras down there, someone nice and close. Yeah, well. Oh, Luke. Up. Hey, Luke, how you doing? Um, but I love that the uh, beaches get to own Malula Bar. They've got their sprints, they've got their flags. They did the 2K beach run earlier as well. This is their spot. That's something really special for them to be a part of. Yeah, it's nice as we uh, come back here to Maroochydore, but just getting the setup down there at Malula Bar for the flags. As uh, Jenny said, I might bring you those once they kick off. And so just on hold here at the moment, the semifinals for the Board Rescue. So let's have a look at this program. Let's just check where we're at because I know it has been moving around a lot. We've got the uh, semi-finals for the board rescues, as you mentioned, coming up. And then we will be into the finals package in the Wardle Arena. And here we go. The ladies are back. So we go board rescue, surf teams, board relay and camera. That's how the finals will run down here in the Wardle Arenas. And we'll have the, the men's and the women's arenas there, but they'll consolidate down to the two of them. And then flags happening up at the little bar. So it's all happening. But ah, the girls, they're ready to go. Showtime in the uh, first of three semis, tremies, 14s, 15s, female board rescue championship. So we'll take you through those teams once again. Alrighty, so from the top of the screen, and the uh, girl who's running down a little bit, Cooks Hill Team A next door to Corumban, that is the green and white corded cap. North Burley Team B, Alex, Wanda, Manly, Ocean Grove, Wanda, and Trig Island is on the far right hand side of your screen. Screen, think of that as Christmas tree colours. We've got the white, the red, and the green there, but uh, really tricky conditions there. You can see some deeper water in the middle of the field, which is uh, allowing the ladies there to have a beautiful run out, not getting held up by, the, by that white water, which they are on the northern end. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I'd rather be. We, it's tough to pick, Which isn't alley? It? Because uh, we saw Coogee in that last race. They were in alley number one, mm -hmm. red and yellow, and they flew out. Just nailed it. Didn't didn't deviate north four south, and nailed that can perfectly. But I said before, the biggest, um, the best way to try and negotiate that sweep is with swim speed and just getting through that inshore gutter as quick as possible. You can tell this is a semi-final now. The speed has gone up another level, and it is quick out there right now. North Burley looking very good in the middle, right alongside them. Alexandra Headland and Wanda as well. And the girls have also been watching the races that have come before. They know how cutthroat it is just to be in that top three. They know how tough it is. They know, especially for these swimmers, they need to put their board paddlers in the best possible position because they know also that once, once they do hit though that can, it's so important to keep your hand up and high for as long as possible because when you're down on beach level, it's actually really tough sometimes to pick up when your swimmer has reached the can. So the girls need to uh, give their best shot right now. Yep. Don't drop it too early. When in doubt, another 10 seconds. Yeah, just give a wave. Just keep <laughs> waving. Yeah, I think it's favouring still. I think it's favouring the northern end. So that left-hand side, so these angles here, but the water's so pushing out so much. And once we get a bit of a square up here as they approach the cans... I'm actually really impressed. I was watching some of the girls on the far right-hand side of the screen just go under some white water earlier. I think that's uh, Ocean Grove, Wanda, and Oh, Trig. lost the way out there as well, Cooks yeah. Hill. So went to the, uh, went the, the next way. area's can, and oh, still she's still, still going. Oh, oh no. she's just seen it now. So costly there for Cooks Hill. Said so cutthroat, just three going through to a final. Those kind of mistakes are really hard to come back from. Oh, she's course corrected now. It looks like she's got a good little. There's the red and yellow you're after. Oh. That wasn't the can you were looking for. No. So that can be hard. Oh, the girls. Now, and, and the good thing is she hasn't panicked. You can see she's got a really good kick on at the moment. She's getting that stroke rate up. And the girls. Oh, they've got some work to do. But that's the team of Lily Egan and Alexis Sutherland. Individually, those girls are really, really impressive. I'm confident that they can come through here mm, and do something Good fight back special. here. Really impressive fight back from Cooksey after going to the wrong can. And now North Burley uh, at the moment still looking in the box seat. And... Just in front, big chase as well. Wanda Manley there. Ocean Grove as well. So it's going to be tight. Wow, big fight back. Cooks Hill might even get to the can almost first, but maybe North Burley just a... North Burley. North Burley oh, just second. There. Cooks Hill second. Oof. Great fight back after heading the wrong way. 
And then out wide on the yellow camels. Like Wanda there as well. Manly. Yeah, so that North Burley, that's actually the B team there. Ali Cameron and Zara Farrington, again, two quality athletes that we saw achieve some really great results at the state championships earlier and now combining in the board rescue here. And great to see Yellow Can still got her hand up in the uh, in the air. That is what we want to see. Good on you. And it can be really tough out there, especially if there's a sweep, if the mm. water's moving around. It's really hard to stay on there. But if you can lock in, it just takes all doubt out of, it, out of the equation. You cannot get pinged for anything. If you get upset if you got to the can first and then but your board paddle you didn't get to the can in just the top waiting, three and you're waiting. just like, what took you so long? I know. <laughs> you can't really see if they got caught inside. Oh. Um, can be frustrating sometimes as a swimmer. Yeah, but that's all part of being in a team and we've all thought, oh my gosh. Like when you're doing a tube rescue and you're towing somebody and you're thinking, I can't believe they are not even kicking back there. And you, you get to the reach and you realise that they're absolutely exhausted and they have been helping you as much as possible, but... When you're in that race, you're like, I can't believe that I am the only one doing all the work <laughs> carrying this team. <laughs> but there's no I in team. <laughs> uh, great start out great out to, out wide as well, and gee, Manly's come through here in the middle also. Where is North Burley? Where is Cooks Hill? Where are our top three? So that's uh, Jessica Oakhill and Sophie Stacker are the Manly Team A crew. That is the Sky Blue Cap. Oh, She's done a are. great job just to get around the white water. But how is that? Cooks Hill and North Burley currently in the driver's seat here. Cooks Hill, I want to say, probably the advantage so far. Yeah, Cooks Hill obviously getting a little bit mistracked on the way out with the swim. They've recovered sublimely to retake the lead and extend the lead. They're on together and in front. So they head for home, a spot in this final up for grabs for the top three from this first semi. 14s, 15s, female board rescue. I do love a good recovery story. I do love it when you can see some of our younger athletes really saying, no, 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 I know what I'm doing. I'm okay. We're going to get there and now combining well, potentially oh, lighting up a wave. Go girls. Oh, down it. And a nice one as well. Don't call it a comeback. Cook's Hill. I've been here for years. <laughs> well, they're going to be in a final, that's for sure. They've booked a spot. And if they can reproduce that, then that so they're going to be perfect. right up there. <laughs> Go, girls. Look at this. Beautiful synchronization. And they're going to get it again. Oh, this is class. Now, Kurt, you've done some board rescues in your time. Uh, at the state championships for Queensland, we were talking about uh, appointing a team captain when you're in a board rescue in terms of who makes the calls, who says, move forward, move back, get off now. What was your experience back in the day? Uh, Mine was all, well, I always swam, so generally mm -hmm. back in our day, the swimmer would go on the front, mm -hmm. um, and it was always whoever's on the back. Ah, okay, good got to the know. Call, got the call to up, back, forward, need more, need less, unless it was a massive, massive drama. Yeah. You, you were happy with the uh, vice captaincy yeah, of that board rescue. It saved that, uh, yeah, as uh, North Burley picks up this one, ensure um, there uh, is a time there as well where I, I enjoyed more, especially if um, my paddle was smaller than I was. Mm -hmm that we'd swap and the, put the paddler on the front. I'd like to have the lighter, um, the lighter paddler on the front. Fantastic work there. I'll tell you what, back, so. Cooks Hill, I am so impressed. And they will take a lot of confidence from that race, knowing that they've got a little bit of time to play with in that swim. They'll take that into the final. But this is where it gets third exciting. Spot, third, third spot, third spot still up for grabs. Oh, oh no, it's not one down. Can they recover? Don't think so. Not so when it's this time. down here. Oh, come on, girls, keep on going. And this is where you see Wanda the girls. Wanda trying to push through. Alex as well. <laughs> Taking a look across. Alrighty. There were four. There were now three. Corrupted There's off two. The back. Oh, and I think Alex have the better line in. Uh, I think they should get oh, over this one. But up. Wanda. And they're both in with a chance. Not sure how many we've got back so far. Sprint coming here. Have to be in control of the board, both of them, as they cross the line. So Alex, maybe he'll just get there over Wanda. Only taking three. And it is often tough for us to tell with mm. that angle from up here. It's called a parallax error. Just uh, dropping that into conversation. Like the, uh, tell the me more about the angle parallax. On here. The parallax error. So, yes, if you're not uh, lined up perfectly from point A to point B, looking at it on an angle, 
You uh, don't get that true view of it here, but Duvray, oh no, as another team goes off, do very much trust that our officials down there on the line. They've had to make some really tough calls today. There have been some sprint finishes. I know they have gone to the iPad a few times as well as they come through, but fantastic work by the girls considering that they were down there on the line for a little while. There was a nervous wait just to get to the start of the race there, and we're just waiting for liveheats.com to yeah, update. The result. Definitely Crooks Hill and North Burley. Yeah, big one-two there. And we'll be joined by one more. I'll let you know who it is as soon as we know, and we'll get out our last tremie into the water very shortly. Yeah, action all over the beach at the moment, and these cans are uh, they're pretty long, and unfortunately for a few of our paddlers, it looks like a, a bit of a swim home. We'll have to see if that was uh, for board rescue, where we've actually got two people uh, per board swimming back. Yes, they've both gone <laughs> past the... Uh... I would have taken the other board to get to the other board. Oh, is that allowed? Oh, Probably I don't not. Know I don't think, no, love don't it think when you're you allowed do that. to take someone else's craft. I don't want to say that you can't, but we'd probably frown upon yeah, it yeah, yeah. a little bit. Uh, that looks to be uh, Ocean Grove on the far right-hand side of the screen there. The girls are... Uh, tell you what, it's tough conditions out here. They've really done well. Oh, perfectly. Yeah, That's a way to finish off a wander, is it? I think Chelsea Hanks and Georgie McIntyre... Oh, no, you're right. That is Wanda. That's Sienna Mead and Jane Seedle. So Sienna and Jane... Oh, just pulls recovery. the nose up for a tree. So nice little finish there. They're going to have a sprint together. I think they've been through enough. Yeah. It's all right. Nicely finished off from Trig. Yeah, that's uh, Alicia Beebe and Macy Boybert. So congratulations, uh, Alicia and Macy from Trig Island. Unfortunately, not progressing through, but the official's doing a great job moving things along here. The next crew is lining up already, and I think that looks to be, I can see a sunshine beach cap yeah, in two here. two sunshine. So A's and B's. Third Tremie. Take it through. Avoca Beach, South Maroubra, Maroochydore, North Bondi, Blackhead, Brilliant in that last round. Coogeon and then Sunshine Beach A and B. And then on the end, Newport B. One goes. They hit the water. And it's all about staying on your feet as long as possible. We can see the girls just moving through that deeper water, desperately trying to stay up, keep that running speed going. But both of the Sunshine Beach competitors, a great start on the uh, far right-hand side of the uh, field there. That Newport strong as ever. That is the B team. That is in this second tremi. Abigail Capel and Sarah Song, the girls doing a great job. A strong start, but as we have seen from the previous race, a lot can happen in a board rescue. The cans are so far away. <laughs> so far out. I'm so sorry, yeah, girls. It's a big, I would want to do that, that board rescue yeah. swim. No, it's cool. Cool conditions, and that's the thing. Um, definitely favouring those stronger swimmers because it's a lot of time in the water. And look at that water movement as well. Mm. Just going right to left, shifting a little. Got to do your work early. I feel like that sweep is actually starting to pick up a little bit as the day goes Tide on. Tide dropping. Yeah, you've probably been seeing it a little bit more um, from your time up here in the booth, but definitely looks to be uh, tricky out there at the moment just watching the girls move across the screen and the uh, white water just uh, showing us a little bit about that direction as we pan back out. Big swim, but the girls right down the middle there. You can see that darker water there, a bit of a rip starting to uh, form up. And just three, just three to go through. It's, it's tight. You want to be in an Aussie final, this is what it takes. If you want an Aussie medal, you've got to be there. So the girls doing a fantastic job making their way through. I'm still thinking about Cook's Hill from that previous race. Gee, that was fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. And now, almost the sweep now goes to the south mm. as they start to hit this back bank. So this group down the south starting to get pushed a little bit towards Malulaba. That's interesting. We'll see how that works out for them. On the pan out. Bondi there in the middle. But they're spread out all over the ocean right now. And consistency on that back bank with the tide dropping. Plenty of waves on offer on the way back. You can see that little group is really being swept down to the right-hand side of the screen, the southern end. Not too far off their cans, Sunshine Beach. Have to come back a little bit to the north. Looks like most of our uh, teams are going to have to readjust once they get out there. It nearly feels like they've formed up come a little bit us, of a Come back to us, Come back to us. Oh, oh, no. She's got her eye on something out there, but it's not the can that she's meant to be going to. Really, really tough conditions out there. Still uh, hasn't found it. No. Still doesn't know where it is. Got to look up. Got to get now. She's found it. So she's back now. So I'm trying to beach the top of the screen there. And 
Black had a lot more intuition and, and lined her can up a lot earlier. Wouldn't be surprised to see them in a good spot. Nice course correction now from Sunshine Beach and so too Kujin. Gosh, all of our swimmers really needing to uh, adjust as they get out and about. And I think that really shows just how tough the conditions are for the athletes. When you are down at water level, you don't get the lovely view that we get here. You can't easily say, oh, well, the course is right there and the can is right there. Why can't mm. you see it? These ladies are really having to rely on working with the ocean. And when they feel that they're at the top of a wave or the top of the swell, that's where you've got to take a break, look up, set your sights as well. And uh, often it's you're panicking a little bit. You're a little, you know, mm. it's Good course really correction, tough. though. Got back there. So Sunshine Beach in front. Kujin looks like in second spot. Mm -hmm. Tight, tight. Only three to go through. They send their board paddlers in. Look at this. It's on now. Blackhead. Does a good job. So to South Maroubra with a chance for Richie Dor. I think it might have been Sunshine Beach Team A just counting the cans across who uh, reached there, and then Sunshine Beach being Sunshine Beach Team B is there as well, and then Newport is on the very end. So we can see now as we pan back, our board paddlers making their way through. So it's definitely the left hand side maybe that and, and a reading across it was Avoca, South Marubra, Maruchidor and North Bondi. South Marubra just heading out there now, but I think that's actually Avoca in the lead. No, not Sunshine Beach. Sunshine Beach out here looking solid. Alright. Wrong. That is Sunshine Beach. We'll see. I could don't be think, Well, don't forget Blackhead is in the mix, and I often do get those caps mixed up as well. That is a red cap with the uh, black and white stripes down the middle. So we'll just have to keep an eye on them. And Blackhead has got a pretty quality team in here. That's Miley Cox and Bronte Kipak. So Miley and Bronte, we know that they can combine well together. So we're just going to pick up the caps as they start to come through. But for now, North Bondi, not out of this yet, just on screen there. Yeah, it's an interesting here set starting to come now. Oh, that Kujin had to roll. Mm -hmm. And now Steve oh, there's one more. Out. One more. Pops there over that one. It's got to feel good when you're up and over, knowing that uh, everyone behind you is going to have to deal with that white water. We've got two out now. One on the far left, one on the far right. So athletes all over the ocean dealing with these really tricky conditions down here at Maruchidor Beach, knowing that this is probably one of the last races that we'll do before we head into that finals package this afternoon. So we know it's been a big day already. We know yesterday was huge as well, but we are about to lift again for that final package program on the uh, last day of the Youth Championship. Great board leg by South Maroubra has thrown themselves straight back in it. So Sunshine Beach in front, but South Maroubra aren't far away in that I'm second alley. Quite excited by South Maroubra. That is Grace Madden and Willow Skeen really getting it done at the moment. Grace and Willow, what a team. Let's see how they combine yeah, together. Yeah, see the pan out. Here they are. South Maroubra on the way home in second spot, left of screen, Sunshine Beach. So we see the girls on the way through now. Yeah, so as we said just earlier, this is one of the last races before we head into the finals packages. Uh, South Maroubra is looking for a bit of a oh, wave South here. South Maroubra get down it. They can. South Maroubra are going to qualify. So too. Sunshine Beach looks like they're going to seal a spot in the final. Oh, almost come a collision with one of the paddlers going out there. And how 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 good is it to see uh, South Maroubra really working really really hard there just making sure they uh, keep that board speed going keep the arms and the legs moving as they come through so it looks to be one and two who's the third team where's number three that is the question that we have next so sunshine a little uh, tough on the distance out there but there you go they are clear oh the relief that these girls will be feeling right now so one two <laughs> where's the, three yep we'll pan out and see our third team who wants it it's a fair way back at the moment, it's that second Sunshine team. Looks is it like sunshine it. Sunshine or Blackhead? No, it's Sunshine. Yeah, it is Sunshine, but, but a wave out the back. But. <laughs> Look out. Oh, no. Who is it? Avoca, is it? I think it could be good racing. But I tell you what, we are going to bring you the results of these as soon as we know it because we're actually about to change arena. It is Avoca Beach. Avoca. So Avoca Beach is going to go through. They're going to come past that second Sunshine team. Hit the back straps. They look across. Oh, oh just lost, lost the board the paddler. 
before we go to the flags, we'll get them across the line. Screaming for the teammate. So, panning out, making sure no one else is yeah, coming nah, through. they've got it. So, Boca Beach will be the three, and unfortunately, Sunshine Beach is going to miss, and so too, Kujin. So, yeah, we'll be Sunshine Beach, South Maroubra. Beach into that final. Oh, fantastic work and great timing for the girls just there because we are about to head down to Malula Bar. We are going to Malula Bar because it is time for your favourite event, Kurt, Beach Flags. <laughs> beach Flags time. Here we go. Change of arena, wave the magic wand, reset the cameras. Here we are down at Malula Bar and ooh, it looks a little windy down there as well, just having a look at the flags. So, you need to brush up on your club caps. There's going to be a few extra teams in action here that we may not have seen too much of down in the water arena. And this is one of the best things about Aussies. We've been at Mar Maruchido, we've seen the incredible action here. I just spoke about the Open First Aid, which is an Alex for all the surf rescue competition. And now we're at Malula Bar, and this is the home of the beaches. I love the way that we've got the surf club right on the beach. It curves around. We've got that beautiful park, the grass area there. And I cannot wait to see, hopefully, a few of these events under lights, the Twilight Beach events for the, uh, the Opens and the Seniors will be wonderful later in the day. But for now, it looks like the uh, Beachies taking a break, getting ready, getting those fast twitch fibres ready to go. I feel like these are the race horses of our sport. Just staying in the shade, so staying cool. Yep. Yep, yep, we can see the uh, girls and the boys. I'd say they're down to maybe top eight or so. Top six even based on uh, what we're seeing so far. So yeah, it looks like eight. Final of eight. So a few nerves down there because uh, Australian Championships on the line. Aussie gold medals. We will be doing the presentations today as well. And you can see the boys and the girls just doing their last little run-throughs. Because flags, while it is incredibly, incredibly t uh, technical, a lot of speed, a lot of agility, the mental games, the mental toughness that is required to excel at flags is just, it, it really, really impressive. So again, lavpeats.com is where you want to go to uh, get the uh, draws for all of these events. And uh, I think the way we'll need to do it from here, Kurt, once we confirm the uh, age group and the gender down here, basically anyone who doesn't have a number, anyone who is still in the list here, that's who we're watching. And it looks like uh, the one that you're looking at the moment, they've already done quite a few rounds. They've had, especially when the uh, arena, when there's this many competitors registered to compete, you have to do so many flag turns. And that is so many opportunities to get knocked out, not to be through. We also think of, we always think about flags being you know so quick and it's a sprint. It's a marathon when you get to Aussies. Yeah, we'll see what we've got in action here. Now, that is Brighton. The cap in the middle of the field that used to be plain Couple red is now Brighton. Yeah, I can see two of them in the mix. The red togs, the red cap with the four white stripes. So 13s it looks like. 13s boys and girls. Thank you. The island of Sorrento. This is the screen. Wollongong City. Taylor Anderson. Yatras. Brighton in action. Hornish. Salia. Meninga of South Maroubra. And the idea of Talabudra as well. Top eight, is that what we're down to? There you go. I always feel like we need to be quiet in commentary here. <laughs> yeah, when they're ready for a flag start, I'm like, no, nah, Jen, they actually can't hear you all the way from <laughs> the booth in Maruchidor. Creating tension. And they go, first one around the turn. Oh, a little bit of Archie Barty. There's still one flag on offer. And picks it up. So, well done. In Wrong City survives. And it looks like it is Sorrento, little island that has been eliminated. I do love her uh, woman well, the city competitor there. She, she put her hand up straight away like I've got it and it's oh, clean. Sink. A little bit of oh, no, contact Sorrento. there. And so, for Sorrento, it has to bow out. But a huge congratulations uh, to Ella Ireland. She was the competitor just eliminated the bright uh, green cap of Sorrento. Ella, fantastic work. You are eighth in Australia. Solid. We've got nine boys in this uh, 13th final. Yep, you are correct. Bailey Leach of Port Elliot, seeing that black cap. Closest to us. Who do we have here? I think that's Fairhaven. I'm going to my little reference sheet here. Yeah, that could be Lewis Dandria. He will 
Robertson of Harvey Bay, There's Charles of Cronulla, Leach there of Port Elliot, Latham of Ballina Lighthouse, Lismore. Oh no, that's Ballina Lighthouse, Lismore, yep. closest to us on screen. My apologies, Brendan Latham from Ballina Lighthouse and Lismore. That is Andrea of Fairhaven, Joshua Clark, Manly. New of North Wollongong, Lady of Point Leon, Kate and Reiki of Moolabar, nine to become eight. Hat down there, Charles of Granola. Did you ever think you'd be a Point Leon cat from anywhere? That bright orange. In the surf. First round of the final here, nine to become eight, under 13. Who goes? I think it might be Harvey Bay. Is it down? Yes. Yeah, you're right. Will Robertson, is it there from Harvey Bay? Eliminated. The replay. He's kind of got boxed out a little bit. Fast, but just a little bit short in stature and just couldn't cut across in time. Will Robertson from Harvey Bay, that's the red cap with the white stripes. Will actually took out the Queensland Championships just a few weeks ago, so unfortunately our Queensland state champ does not progress into the final eight. Here we go, to the last seven, 13 girls. Two from Brighton, two from Wollongong City. Talabadra, South Maroubra and Kuji. I like this Brighton cap. I know, it's growing on me. I think they can keep I think they should keep it. Yeah. Kurt Henson endorsed. <laughs> also wonderful uh, to see the strength in the club here as well, two of the ladies in the uh, top seven. If we could get two in the top six, that is fantastic points from this club from South Australia. So here's seven to become six on the turn. Who will be eliminated? Oh, it's gonna be one of the Brighton eliminated. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's either Miller Sailor or Evelyn Cornish in LiveHates.com. Sailor Updates. looks like Sailor eliminated for Brighton, who's one of their competitors. Still alive through Evelyn Cornish. Again, just right at the end there. And a great, uh, great catch there by uh, Katara Boyle Reniga from South Maroubra. Just came in, snaked that flag. Protecting that one beautifully as we head back to the boys already. Wowee, the officials are moving this along. Yes. They know that there is a big flags program. They know that there are lots of finals in action at the moment. So down to eight, under 13. This beach flags. Okay, Ray Gear, Mulba, hometown hero. Oh, it's just a screen. Next door, that looks to be uh, Oscar Lady from Point Leo. Bailey Leach from Port Elliot, third from the bottom of the screen there. Sneak across. Checking out who's there. Do they turn left? Do they turn right? Where have I been before? What am I going to do? Everything I can to get a flag. that the crowd is building on each side of the barricades here. It's getting tense. You're on the turn now and trying to get another stay alive. Oh, it looks like Manly. Cronulla. Outside, no Cronulla. Bad. Cronulla has been exited. Thomas Giles. Ooh, I was nervous for the Lulabar here. there. The turn. So Giles through the far outside, got cut off fairly quickly by Harry Muir of North Wollongong. Look at Muir there. Oh, straight across him. Oh, oh. He's quick, Muir. I like that move. I love the strategy of flags. I love watching Sam Sustovich do flags as well. He is just so dominant. Got to travel with the team that went to the uh, last World Championships over in Italy. And just watching Sam make a decision every single round. Who are we getting out? Who am I protecting? How are we working together? Just to see someone at the top of their game controlling mm. a race like that in flags where there are so many variables and so many opportunities for things to go on, seeing people do it well is just incredible. So I uh, do hope that Sam and the rest of the Mullingwood crew are looking forward to a very big uh, week down here at the Aussie Championships. Only seven left in the ladies. Six well, now. Six? Yep, yeah. down to six. Do maths, Perry. <laughs> 
Six to become five. It's down. They get on the turn again. Who wants to get that tip? Beautiful turn from Cornish. Doesn't she look good for Brighton? The red cap, no worries. And it looks like we'll be one of the Wollongong City girls has been eliminated. Either Anderson or Yatras. Just keep your eye on Brighton here. Have a look at the girl in the red togs. Keeps down low really, really well. No dramas at all. Never headed. This is uh, this is exciting. So Yatras has been eliminated for Wollongong City, unfortunately. And a teammate didn't have a choice. Yes, and uh, when you're in the top six of an Australian Championship final, unfortunately, uh, friendships may take a back seat to gold medals. But uh, very, very, very confident that all of our athletes are displaying wonderful sportsmanship down there, getting ready for these finals. Geez, the boys look focused, don't they? Yep, seven remaining in the boys' 13 years. So closest to us on the bottom of your screen is Bailey Leach from Port Elliot. That is the uh, black cap with the red and yellow stripes. Where's Port Elliot, Jen? Please hold while <laughs> I uh, Google that one for you. Hey, James, even with uh, so, yeah, it's going to be seven here. South Australia, postcode 5212. There you go. Long way to come. Long way to come, but worth it when you're doing this well. So Got some height, some power. Down. Which does. Oh, it's just green to make the turn. And there you go. He's going to stay alive. Looks like oh, it will be. Come on. In red gear of Malulaba. So in there, just a second from the bottom of the street. Just stumbled a little bit and just couldn't get back. And at this level, it's just so quick now. I do love that he was scanning, scanning. Once he knew that he wasn't oh. going to get that can to hit that that flag to his right, he was looking for other opportunities. Unfortunately, in this instance, when you're in the top few at Aussies, very few yep. flags are, are left begging there. Lewis the Andrea says no. Fairhaven takes the flag in the next round. Starting to get serious now. Down final five. All the girls under 13s. And for those who are still here for the uh, geography lesson, uh, Port Elliot isn't too far from Kangaroo Island or the Victorian border. So I'm sure the uh, team of the state very proud of their uh, nice. Heading down to uh, Kangaroo Island later in the year. Yes, lovely part of the world. Looking forward to it. Yes, the, from all over the nation and beyond international visitors as well. The officials are confident that everyone is lined up well. No one is getting a few extra centimetres because we know every centimetre counts in flags. Mm, gee, Cornish has been impressive for Brighton in the middle. Red and white cap on the turn again. Another quick turn from Cornish. And oh, tight battle between the two maroon and whites. But Talabadra is going to get it. And Wollongong City eliminated. Taylor Anderson will finish in fifth place in the Australian Championships. You see two maroon and white caps here, bottom of the screen. Sit there. Not enough. And I know last run, we did talk about Brighton, the girl in the red togs there, a fantastic run there from Evelyn Cornish. I was watching uh, Kuchu, that's Edie Maguire, on the far right-hand oh, side of your screen. Oh, as we see someone get a face full of center there. <laughs> Adair Vitali just gets the arm in. It's in the final four. Sorry, you're saying, Jim? Uh, Edie Maguire from Kuchi. She's looking really good as well. I think yeah. as we get into this final four, Boys very six. excited. Was this the screen there? Joshua Clark of the Manly Club in Fairhaven. Andrea, here we go in. Helena Lighthouse, Ian Latham. Karen Miro of North Wollongong. Just a lady of Point Leo, Bailey Leach of Port Elliot. Six to become five. On the turn now, who can stay alive? Oh, a little bit of a stumble that's going to cost him as well. So Harry Muir of North Wollongong. Bit of a carbon copy from what we saw in that last round of the girls' competition. Yeah, uh, you're in the middle. A little bit of stumble there, and once those shoulders are behind, very hard to get back. But in super exciting news, uh, a fantastic run there for the uh, competitor just there. Oh, Harry Muir from North Wollongong still gets points on the board for his yep, club. Sixth place. Sixth place, one point. Love to see that, and uh, the boys getting it done. The girls, we are close to uh, a medal round here. This is where it gets exciting. Yeah, final four. Feet in the sand. So just confirming the final four here, we've got Abby Adair from Talibadra, Evelyn Cornish from uh, Brighton, South Australia, 
uh, Katara Bolwenega from South Maroubra and Edie Maguire from... You can see the crew getting ready, those little toes, the little piggies digging into the sand, getting the traction because they know they are one good flag to run away for a medal and a spot on the podium. Yeah, this is a nervous one, this one. Who's going to make the final three? Podium to straight championships under 13. They get the turn up here pretty good. Oh, look at the Archie Barty going on. Power. Too strong. Ooh, Katara from South Maroubra establishing some dominance yeah. there. The judge is going to have a few questions to say about this one. A lot of contact between the two in the top of the screen. Warninga and Adair. They come together a few times. It's boom, boom. Can't extend the arm. Look pretty solid to me. Can you speak more about that? Can't extend the arm? Well, you come together with the shoulder, but they can't. Uh, if you think of like a, a don't argue, you can't give it, you can't extend the arm oh, out of a don't you can't argue push. push. Away. There's no push away. Ah, thank you for clarifying that. That's really good Sorry. to know because I definitely watched uh, a few flags races in my time, and it's always really interesting to understand where is what is appropriate. And what is interference? So we can just see the uh, athletes just held at the edge there, remembering mm. it's Abby Adair from Talibadra, Evelyn Cornish from Brighton, and Katara Boyoniga from South Maroubra. And a medal on the line as well. With Edie Maguire from Kuchi so as well. They're going to have a talk about it. Oh my gosh, well, the nerves! The other two are fine. They'll be in the they'll be in the final three, but it's going to be obviously oh, yeah. between uh, Boyoniga there of South Maroubra and oh, yeah. Adair it of Talibadra. Evelyn and Edie can wander back. They're yeah. feeling good. They're like, hey, what coloured medal do you want? Congratulations on uh, doing so well at Aussies. Oh, but we see the team from Coogee yeah, there. Coogee. Oh. They're going to say she... Oh, heartbreak here. Oh, Katara Paul Reninga. They're going to say she extended the arm. And unfortunately, she's been eliminated, so she'll finish in fourth spot. And that is now official in a live pizza number four next door to... Uh, Katara, I, yeah, I think the first one was fine, and if we saw the replay again, the second one, you just saw the little bit of an extension of the arm and the fend off, and that was what the officials have ruled on. So, wow, heartbreak Abby. there. And uh, it reminds me again that I am not tough enough to do beach flags. The what they help? I must admit, they the older you get, the bigger they get. They oh. give you a little bit more leeway sometimes. But the amount of resilience that our athletes display down here, especially in the youth competition, it is just so impressive. So we can see here Bailey Leach from Port Elias is closest to us. Next door is Joshua Clark uh, from Manly. Next door there, Brendan Lathan from Ballina Lighthouse and Lismore. Then we've got Louis, uh, Louis Dandria from Fairhaven and Point Leo Oscar Leite, top off screen in the orange cat. Five. Five. Five, Kurt. Five to become four, under 13. There's Beach Flags Championship of Australia and Malulaba. On the turn, who's going to make the final four? They look pretty even at the moment. They come to get, oh, head class. But they get it and up and, whoa, steals it out of there. Bell in the White House, Lismore. Brendan Latham pulls it out of the fire, eliminates Bailey Lee support, Elliot. Got almost a head clash here. They wrap around, boom, come together. Just gets there. See this replay again. Look, sees he can't make that one. Makes a dive, a decision. Just gets the shoulder in front. Oh wow, that was impressive, and I love that he shows. I'm clear. I'm clear. I've got the flag. Yes. What a final run, and we do say goodbye there to Bailey Leach from Port Elliot. What a finish. Two points for you, champ. And we are down to the first of the medal runs of the beach flags. Bronze medal, silver medal. Woo! We're getting exciting. This is it. Run off here for the bronze medal. Grab yourself a flag. Get yourself into the final. So Evelyn Cornish from Brighton closest to us on screen. Edie Maguire from Coogee. Abby Adair. Oh! Yes! Oh, start. Who was it? Oh, she knows Tell immediately. Tell the Adair. You don't want to see that, but... So Adair will finish with the bronze medal, the girls hug, and they're going to get a wrestle. They're going to run them straight away. Yep. They're going to run them straight away here. Oh, my gosh. So that is crazy. So And Abby knew that immediately. She knew she broke. She took herself off the line. That is some maturity. She'll be disappointed with that, but a bronze medal for her. And uh, what was a bronze medal run? Take a look. So the, the call heads down. Oh, and the movement was pretty clear cut. It was. You can't argue that one. And what was a bronze medal run is now a gold medal 
Australian Championship run right now. And the two best uh, that we've seen through the rounds as well. No surprises here. Evelyn Alrighty. Cornish of Brighton closest to screen. Red and white cap. And then Edie McGuire of Coogee in the blue cap. The final. Under 13, the straight flag. Sun law up quick as well. Cornish in for it. And she gets it. The flag up. And the goal will go to Brighton Beach in South Australia. Evelyn Cornish takes it out ahead of Edie McGuire of Coogee. What a final. But what a talent. That is impressive. She was strong. She was safe in every single race so far, and there was no doubt in that at all. She stayed low. That was the key. Stayed low. Got her shoulder in front. Take a look at the replay. He looks. Gets the turn. Take a little, a little stumble there, but then stayed low. Just tucked in in front, and great body position to get the flag and the gold going back to Brighton. Can I tell you something even better? Tell me. She won the sprints yesterday as well. Does the double? Oh, the double! Evie Cornish, you're a superstar. Brighton takes the double gold in the under-13 girls. So the boys down to a final four. Who's going to make the medal rounds? On the turn, four to become three. They all can't make the podium. Oh, it's Margie Bargie up the water side. And now Latham pulls it out for Ballina Lighthouse Lismore. And the official's going to have a look at this as well because there was some contact there. Along with Oscar Lady of Point Leo. Take a look at the replay. All the action at top of screen. Might get a better angle at it head on. Just got his shoulder in front. See if there's any extension there. They come together. Oh, oh that looks like some extension. So you'll be lucky here if Latham can survive that. He went a bit high and a bit strong. So we'll see what the officials say. The flag's up. Kurt, my nerves are shot already. And <laughs> we've only done the 13 beach flags. I can't do with it. It's hard. It happens so quick. Obviously, don't do it on purpose. The official's talking now. <laughs> I don't think nervous. he's going to make it, unfortunately. <laughs> it was contact extension, and it was also high. So um, I think we might see Latham, unfortunately, exit here. And probably Lacey will get through to the bronze medal round. But I don't want to preempt it. And, uh, just see the replay game. You see, oh. look at his arm. Just, ex <laughs> just the arm extended out. <laughs> I don't. It wasn't um, on purpose. That's for sure. More accidental than anything. But still, contact was made and really impeded. Lady, a little, but see what the officials say. And uh, just hearing the uh, voice in the background there, that is Ralph Devlin. He is actually the life governor of Mooshadore Surf Life Saving Club. I've never Club. heard that title before. The life governor. Life governor. Big boss. All right. Big boss life governor, Ralph Devlin. But in the happy background. days for uh, Lewis the Andrea of Fairhaven. And oh, they're feeling great. <laughs> Josh Clark and Manley, two boys left of screen. They're in the. They're already thinking they're about the, the final. Yeah, well, they're in a podium start. <laughs> They're thinking about what colour metal they're about to be wearing. They're thinking, I need some shade, I need some water. These boys can sort their stuff out. I yep. am heading back up. <laughs> Let me know how you go. Yeah, this will be interesting. Well, they have a look at it. Mm, they're pausing it in there for a while. Yeah. Was it accidental? Was there something? I don't think there was much intent in it. Like and this myself. is the tough part about flags. Like, it is the heat of competition. It's like being, like, swimming at pace towards the red and yellow can. There's just not enough room for everyone. So we're all doing our best. We're trying to be kind. We're trying to be fair. But unfortunately, you do get punished. You do get penalised every once happens. in a while. Yeah, sometimes. But you're trying to create room for yourself as well at speed. Um, and yeah, it's got to be really careful. They don't mind when you come together. They don't mind, no, no, you know, no, that's they don't fine. mind contact. But it's when that arm extends out, that's when it starts to go. And the official's going to talk to him here. Oh, he's going to get away with it. So he's got it. So what? the intent wasn't there. And so it will be eliminated. Oscar Lady and Point Leo. So Brendan Latham there. He said just created room for himself. It didn't look like the contact had any intent. And so... Oscar Lady from Point Leo, still fantastic points, still an incredible uh, campaign for him down here at Malulaba. And now we need to reset, we need to get ready. Oh, we can see right here Ralph in the background <laughs> announcing the top three. There we go. There's your three on the podium. Should we see how Latham recovers from that? Mm. 
And uh, if you haven't watched a lot of beach flags back in the day and you're wondering uh, how do they draw on the line each time, because obviously we do want to keep the... Uh, Keep it equitable. You don't want to just line up in the same order each time next to the same competitors each time. I think it is still the paddle pop system that we are using. Not uh, not metric, not imperial, the paddle pop system. I still make paddle pops. <laughs> well, I've been eating more than my fair share in the preparation for the national championships because I am willing to do that for life-saving. And so uh, the boys do and the girls a random draw each time, and that is how we see our top three take to the field now. Brendan Lathan from Ballina Lighthouse, Lewis Dandria from Fairhaven, Josh Clark from Manly. One, two, three. And about to be one, two, and three in the podium. Here we go. This is it. He's going to take the Bronx. Who's going to make the final on the turn? Oh, Manly looks really sharp and he cuts him off. Oh, is it going to be tied there between yes. Manly and Fairhaven? No one is Andrea moving. Andrea and Clark. No, nah, there's no chance, surely. Andrea's got that. How did he get his hand on it? They're going to have a runoff. Well, all of a sudden, Latham, he's into a final for Bellman the Lighthouse. He's, oh my gosh. So, did he get a second? Did he get a hand on it? Oh. I'm seeing two hands on that. No one's moving. No one minds if they got a face full of sand. They're keeping an eye on it. Here's How? the view that we want. How did Andrea get a hand on this? He's a magician. See the orange and blue cap, he's so much work to do. Oof. Looks like Clark loses it under his body. And unfortunately, uh, we've got... <laughs> I love that Happy view there. Happy days for Latham. I was going to say, Latham from Ballard and Lighthouse and Lismore. He, he nearly gets a foot in the face there, but he knows he's clear. He knows he's free. The decision now is, will there be a runoff or will there be a decision made? I think runoff, but... But been we have wrong been before. wrong before, Kurt. <laughs> Breaking news. All the time. Parry and Hanson, not experts in the flags pit. You never know what the officials are going to come up with. Oh, I'll tell you what. We talk about having the, the best iPad. of the best uh, of our athletes. It. We've also got the best of the best officials. It looks like a decision has been made. No, won't get it. There you go, Lewis so, Dan. There we go. No runoff. I said, don't listen to us. Fairhaven with the bronze. And it looks like Josh Clark into a final against Brendan Latham. And then there were two. And then there were two and, well, a really what rocky road to get to the final drama. <laughs> Full of drama. And I love the uh, congratulations. Oh, it's a rock oh. off. I thought we were on the paddle pop system. We're now on the rock off system. The paper scissors rock system, if you will. The PSW, some call it. The Australian final. Under 13, Boys Beach Flags Championship for 2024. Who is it going to be? Brendan Latham, Ballina Lighthouse and Lismore. Joshua Clark of Manly. Gardening. Gardening, getting, done. getting ready. The most important in gardening that they will do all day. An Australian Championship on the line and for our athletes here in the under 13 category, the first time that they've actually been eligible to race at the Australian Championships, the youngest competitors in the field of all nine days of competition. And now we are here, the gold medal on offer, the first opportunity these boys have for a grow, an Australian Championship in the flags. So Latham pushes the screen, down on the lighthouse, Lismore. Clark, top of the screen, for Manly. Up on the turn for the goal for the under 13s. Oh, great turn there from Latham now. Fight back Clark. It's on. Oh, oh the lost it. He's got it. Clark. Clark takes it. Oh, the Australian title is in the balance. And the goal's going to go oh to Manly. Gosh. It was a juggling act. I thought Latham had it. And then he lost it. We're going to have to see the replay. What a wild finish to that boys under 13 beach flags championship of Australia. Oh, I don't think you can quite believe that that has just happened. He's an Australian champion in the craziest fashion. Go for it, Kurt. Halfway down, Latham has front and then Clark fights back. They come down. The flag's still in dispute. Oh, he doesn't have his hand to it. And lost it. Did he have it? But they both no, they're think fighting for it and they left it behind. Wow. What a bizarre fight for the flag. Oh, this is... This is exciting. So that was crazy. So Joshua Clark of Manly will be your under-13 male beach flags champion. Brendan Latham of Ballon Lighthouse in Lismore will take the silver. Saw so that. Lewis DeAndrea of Fairhaven. 
rounding out the podium play skaters for the under-13s. And we move along. More finals coming your way. Luke, tell Luke to turn his on and off. So under 14 female beach flags. And this is the uh, top eight on screen at the moment. Top eight. We head into a different age category now. We've we done both of the 13s. We're back into the 14s now. The ladies up first. Uh, bring the microphone oof. here. I don't have a receiver. There's a lot of nerves. A lot of nerves down there, Kurt. A lot. 13s are done. 14s up next. There they go. Eight to become seven. Turn. Oh, already a bit of fight there. Jeez. Matilda Keller, Morty Alec. Looks like she's been eliminated. And closest to the screen was where all the action was. We can't do it. I don't have a turn there. And it was, yeah, Matt Jack of Ocean Beach just getting there. And Morty Alec departs. Getting to the 14s boys in the final. They have eight as well. This is the screen there. Jacob Martin, Met Caloundra. Vincent of Wanda, Fisher of Corumban Vikings. And this is Southport, Queensland, Wilman, Tweedheads, Gatta, Yates of Trig Island, WA, Cotter of Point, Lookout. Pilk. Wings Mandiri. And I'm just confirming at the moment, we're just having a look through the form guide at the moment. I think, um, I know our Queensland champion has actually been uh, just, uh, eliminated already. That was uh, Jarvin Johnson of Surfers Paradise. He is out. And I also can't see the, the uh, New South Wales champ of Richard Nesta racing for Coogee. So here we go, two, four, six, eight to go for the boys. And Jacob Martin from Met Caloundra closest to us on the bottom of screen. So here we go, eight to become seven, beast flags here under 14s. And looks like oh, Roman Vikings eliminated Cal Fisher. Just got caught up a little. So the replay here, green and white cap of Corumban, third from bottom. Just missed it on the turn, tried to cut back and too little, too late. Everyone had a flag, except him. Oh, just out there as he uh, stumbles through as the girls. It's a different story here. Both our uh, Queensland and New South Wales champions are still in the mix here for the 14 girls. That's Suki Paley from Tugan and Jessica Mazjak from Ocean Beach. So Tugan, that is the yellow cap with the uh, white and green on there. Top of screen, the very far right, if you will. And then uh, our New South Wales champion is Jessica Mazjak from Ocean Beach. So that is uh, the pale blue with two darker blue and a red stripe down the middle. So seven here. Carol of Anglesey, Fonseca of Scarborough, Maine of South Maroubra, Hall of Maria, Haley of Tugan, Parsons of Glenelg, Mitchsack of Ocean Beach. I'm just thinking of uh, Anglesey, one of the Victorian clubs here. That is the white cap with the uh, green stripes over the years. Marley McCarroll still in the mix here. Anglesey, quite a famous beach club. Uh, they've had some incredible competitors over the year, including uh, Abby Lutus, who was uh, on the Australian team with us for quite a while, made the, tr made the uh, flip over to uh, bobsled racing as well. She uh, was on that international circuit for a while, but Anglesey, wonderful to see. And she's just getting her directions from the uh, officials oh, at the moment. Left, right, forward, back. What are we doing? And uh, a really tough job for our officials to uh, make sure that everyone is getting a fair start because uh, we know us sneaky competitors, we're always trying to get a little bit of an advantage on everyone else. Seven to become sick. Quick turn there from Ocean Beach in the middle. No worries there. And he cut across. Somehow pulled that one out. Looks like Linnell. Elsie Parsons eliminated. Green cap, second from the bottom. So it'll be tight there. Scarborough creates room. Nah, Scarborough looks like she's got it, so it looks like Linnell will be eliminated and is. So down to 
six now in the under 14 rules competition. Back to the boys in the under 14s. Seven remaining there. Simon Pelk, wins Mendari, closest to screen. So there, Connor, a point look out, Yates of Trig Island, Wellman of THC, and c Tweet Head School and Gatter. And this of Southport, Vincent of Wanda, Martin of Mecklandra. Yeah, great to see our point lookout in the mix here, the red cap with the uh, white and black stripes down the middle. Uh, one of our very few island clubs in the mix here, point lookout just off uh, the coast of, I want to say it's just off Brisbane actually, but one of our Sunshine Coast um, Getting introduced. Now we have to wait for uh, Ralph to pop it down before we can get going. So thanks, Ralph. Yep, you know you're in the beach arena where you are. You can hear Ralph's voice from the sky, but the boys doing a great job maintaining their composure. And that is uh, Queen Simondari, Simon Pelk on the far left hand side of your screen. Ooh, tough. Double whistles. This is really tough. This just means, um, this tells us that there's actually quite a few flags pit in, flags pits in action at the moment. So our competitors really needing to block out the noise, block out the distra distraction and focus on their arena only. Here we go. On the turn. No one to get through. Oh, <laughs> he's still got Pearl a flag. Mindari. Thanks for coming. Looks like Tweed Head's cool and Gatter has been eliminated. Jesse Wellman there. And all of a sudden, Simon Pelk thought he was gone, and there it was, sitting right up for him. Yeah, Jesse Very Pelk. lucky. Oh, so unfortunately, oh, Tweed Head's pull and gather. He had speed, he had everything, but just didn't have a flag. And unfortunately, uh, just next door to the competitor there, Trent Yates from Trig Island, just changing direction, coming across, too big, too strong, got there in the end. So here we go. To the girls under 14s, down to six. And uh, a cap that I had to look up closest to us here on the bottom of your screen that is uh, Maroya from New South Wales, the blue cap with the one white stripe. Uh, Maroya from yep. New South Wales. Sarah Hall Maroya, Marley Main of South Maroubra, Marley McCarroll of Anglesey. Jessica Maxack of Ocean Beach has looked brilliant in that blue cap. Suki Paleo Chugan still there. So to Coco Fonseca of Scarborough in the black top of screen. Six to become five on the turn. Again, very quick. Maxack. And the fight's on. Looks like it will be South Maroubra eliminated. Mali Main will finish in sixth spot. Point for her. Point for her, point for the club. As you can see, the girls make their way back. So, so many rounds completed already by all of our athletes down here in the Flags Arena at Malulabar Beach. And here we see the replay of the girls' Maria closest to us here, ankle seat clear. And unfortunately, the girls just cutting across there, not enough room, not enough beach left, and unfortunately, not enough flags either. Oh, they're quick. She nearly got there. She nearly got there, unfortunately for her. Quick, quick work. Up the all around. Yeah. So closest to us on the bottom of the screen is uh, Jacob Martin from Metropolitan Calandra. Actually placed second in the sprints yesterday, and that was won by Trent Yates from Trig Island. Trent is still in this race as well on the very top of the screen. The Christmas tree color, colours from Trig Island, the uh, red, the green, and the white. We saw what happened to Simon Pelk. Mm. Second from bottom of the screen here is Mindari. That last round. Doesn't want to leave it to chance again. On the turn, six to become five under 14. Beach flags final. Oh, little push there, but they both get the flag. And unfortunately, 
The luck runs out for Quinn's Amindari's Simon Pilk. He rode his luck in that last round, but this time just a level too quick. Uh, Freya Cotter just protecting his flag a little bit there against Wanda. And this is where it gets exciting, the girls. We are now down to five here. This is the under 14 men and women. We can see everyone just taking their positions. And again, the officials doing a great job of moving this through. We can hear a few little whistles in the background as well. Lots happening across a lot of different arenas. But for now, this is the 14 the ladies in action. Yes, McCarroll here of Anglesey, closest to screen. Okay. Oh, Maria. Sack of Ocean Beach, on Secker of Scarborough, and Haley of Chugan, top of screen, that yellow cap. Five to become four. If you're enjoying the coverage here, second and final day of our youth championships. Australian surf life saving titles from the Sunshine Coast, and our beach flags down at Boulevard. On the turn again, so quick. Oh no, oh, someone's one's missed court. it. Interesting, still a flag there, someone wants it. What's Angle C, jump on over, sweetheart, jump on over. Ooh, really intriguing. Now, four girls went, one girl stayed. This well, is where it gets interesting. Oh, the officials are oh, It's a false start. Was it a false start or a missed start, do you think? Pretty clean there. Interesting. Interesting that she didn't keep on going. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> Look at them angle seats like, oh, I'll take that one. Looks back, asks the question. She heard two whistles. She heard something, there you go. So she thought she heard something else. Are they going to do a rerun? Oh, do a rerun. Re so when you've you got go. a few air, multiple areas going, the sensors are really in tune to any sound and it's on the officials as well, coordination of those areas not to blow the whistle at the same time or close to it. It's going to be very off-putting, so we're going to get a rerun here. There you go. Coco Francesca from Scarborough, the identical cap of Burley Heads Mowbray Park. So if you thought it was a Queensland cap, no. That is from Fonseca from Scarborough. She's going to have to get her feet in line. I was going to say, um, maybe there we go. a little bit there, sweetheart. Pushing the boundaries. It's what it takes to be a good flagger. This is what we're doing. Clean this time. Five to become four. Another big turn there from Maxac. And through. And this time it will be McCarroll of Anglesey eliminated down the bottom. And wow. Jessica Mazjak from Ocean Beach. She's in the middle of the field here. Look at her speed. Oh, oh the turn is so quick. That is impressive. And stays low as well, but there we go. Angle C picks up a couple of points. Fifth spot. C will tussle there with Hall of Maruya. Yeah, Maruya definitely Maruya there. ahead there. Takes it. Oh, she's in the. At worst, fourth position at the moment as we head back to the boys. Five remaining here. Southport closest to us, the uh, fried eggs we call them. It's the navy cap with the uh, yellow dot on top. Point Lookout still in the mix. Trig Island still there. As the boys just make their uh, last preparations. And one and two from the sprints yesterday still in the flags here. Nice. Nice of Southport. On the screen, about his work nicely and through the rounds. Potter is quick, you know that. You can hear another uh, flags arena happening in the background. We'll try and grab all of these results for you. Unfortunately, we can't have multiple events on screen. Here we go. Here we go on the turn. So five to become four here in the under 14 boys. Oh, tight. They tussle on oh. there and they picked it up. And somehow, oh, no. it's going to be Ben Cloundra eliminated Jacob Martin. 
How did Vincent, so the two Jacobs come together, and it's going to be Vincent of Wanda that pulls it out. So the two Jacobs here, and the blue caps, it's sitting there, he's sitting on it. <laughs> just watch on the far right hand side of the screen. Come together here. Oh, it just brings the arm across. Crunches neck. Where is it? Look, the flag is just sitting on the sand. Oh. So unfortunately, Max Leandra eliminated. Fifth spot, two points. And second yesterday in the beach sprint, that's Jacob Martin from Met Calandra. Still a wonderful Aussies campaign for him. And uh, we always talk about the semifinals of sometimes being uh, more nerve-wracking than the finals. What about a flags run when you're going from four to three? Final four. Podium or no podium, medal or no medal. So Paley here of Tugan, closest to screen. Come on. All of Maria. Sack of Ocean Beach, Fonseca of Scarborough, top. So closest to us on screen, that is Suki Paley, the Queensland champ. There go, four to become three, who's going to make the podium? Oh, tight, the battle, and it will be Maroya that just pulls it out. Unfortunately, will be Tugan eliminated. Suki Paley will finish in four spot. So what we want to be doing is watching the ladies closest to us on screen. Oh, Hall of Maroya had some work to do. Here we go. Keep your eye left of screen. I actually thought Fonseca from Scarborough was going to be in trouble, but she had a beautifully clear run. Oh, must have been close. Went to pull it up and lost it. And unfortunately, in flags, you snooze, you lose. Also, if you don't have that tight grip on the flags, you can maybe rip out from underneath It's not over you. until, you, until yes. you pull it out. Until your live heat's wristband has been scanned. <laughs> Do not take anything from granted. And there we go, 4-3 to three now in the girls, 4-3 to three in the men's. The last preparations, our competitor from a wander there. Last minute gardening. That Jacob is Jacob Vincent, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, good. So Vincent of Wanda closest to screen. Then we go to Yates of Trigg Island. Water of Point Lookout. Southport's Anise. Screen. He's going to make the podium. Finish fourth. Here we go. Podium up for grabs in the under 14s. Tight. And it will be. Oh, come together. Oh, Two hands be a run off. Oh, not sure. Two hands. Top hands between Cotter here of Point Lookout and Vincent of Wanda. He, he's a fighter, Vincent, isn't he, from Wanda? Oh, you can see the pressure he's a scrapper. on that flag. He's a scrapper. No he one is away. letting go of that. How did he get to this? He had so much work to do. Look, cuts back inside. Ooh. I don't know. So it's Wanda, far left. Crosses over, gets a hand to it with Point Lookout. This is <laughs> Point Lookout says, I am not going anywhere. Did well to hang on to it. Didn't he just? I just want to get a run off here. What is about to happen? Chat. No worries for Yates and Anise, Big Island and Southport. They'll be uh, into the final. Yep, no dramas for them. Oh, in the final uh, three. Oh, and the decision has been made. Jacob Vincent from Wanda is in fourth. Didn't get it. Fortunately, two hands for Cotter. Made the difference. Made Jacob the difference. Vincent from Wanda is fourth. Two hands beats one. Wow. Two beats flags. Drama. Vincent, fourth place for Wanda. Down to final three. Medals on offer. We just need to determine who gets what colour. We are down to the final three, the top three for the girls. And so on the top of screen, we've got Zara Hall, Zara Hall for Maroya in New South Wales. In the middle of the screen, standing up at the moment, so fast on the turns, Jessica Majak, Majak, Majak. And then closest to us, Coco Fonseca from Scarborough. So it's Coco, Jessica, Zara across the field here. Who do you like? Who's looking quick? Yeah. Match sack's going to be very tough to beat in the middle. She's just a class above these two, but I just don't know. And the fatigue could really be starting to set in by now. Two big days of racing for the girls. We've been speaking about our water athletes, a lot of fatigue there. Big days of racing, but for our uh, sprinters and flags as well, they, a lot of them would have done relays. 
big two days and some really tough conditions in the full sun at Mooloola Bar. Ah, the young anaerobic system, they'll be fine. <laughs> it's all stood out. That speed. Spot the final up for grabs. Big turn once again from Mad Jack, and now the fight back gets in front. Had a bit of work to do there, but it will be. Scarborough eliminated. Coco Fonseca will finish with the bronze in the under 14. Girls Beach Flags here for 2024. A fantastic run comes to an end there. Coco Fonseca from Scarborough. There she goes. I nearly thought she was going to get herself back in here. She is so quick on the sand. I thought she might have done enough, but unfortunately, she will need to settle for a bronze medal. But she is on the on the on the podium. Always exciting. And Maroya, you can see when she realizes that she's in the gold medal race, the big smiles knowing it's gold or silver. There's only two left. Yep, final coming up next, and here we go. Let him run off here. So closest to us on the screen, that is Trent Yates of Trigg Island took out the sprints earlier in the competition. Logan Annis from Southport, middle of the field and on the top. Woof! We thought he may have had to do an extra run off more than once, actually, but Brea Cotto from Point Lookout living to fight another he day. He loves the drama. Living Cotto, he loves it. to get a medal. He's on the podium. It's going to take something special to get into that final on the turn. Cotto a little bit sluggish there and it's going to cost him. So... He rode his luck, he's happy, look, he's stuck to be on the podium. He's got his medal. I love yeah, celebrating every run here. He had a great, great run. A little stumble there, not as quick. <laughs> got a He's tumble. a character. He even tried to put his arm back in there as well to start, but he's happy and fans are happy as well. Look at this. Just couldn't get his shoulder in front and still trying to, look at him, still trying to fight to get in there. <laughs> oh. He's going to have a big future. Fantastic work. <laughs> oh, and knowing that you've got a medal to go home with, that is so special. Here we go. That's Jack in the mix here. The New South Wales champ lining up against Maria from... Oh, it's your say Sarah Hall. Sarah, <laughs> Sarah Hall, from, sorry. From so, yeah, Zara down early. Psychological battle. Mm, I do love played it. out here. Look. Jack's last run, probably a worst so far. A little bit stuck on the turn. How's this going to be here in this one? Under 14 gold on the turn was a lot better this time for Majak and gets in front and gets the gold. Well, she was most consistent throughout the day. And the state champ becomes the Australian champ here for Ocean Beach. Zara Hall of Maruya gave it everything she could. But no, just in front. Too good, too quick. So good. What a big win. And you can see they know where their uh, supporters are in the crowd. They know where the cheer squad is. And they immediately look to them and say, yes, look at her we eyes are up. the Australian champions. What a fantastic race. What a finish uh, for some of the last races on the beach program. Yep, yeah, well fought there. So, official results. Just got match sack of Ocean Beach, the gold in the under 14 female beach flags. Zara Hall of Maruya. With the silver and Coco Fonseca of Scarborough, Western Australia, with the bronze. Now we go. Work, and we're about to find Gold out. Time. Yeah, if Trent Yates, closest to us on screen from uh, Trig Island. That is the red, the green, and the white. Can he go the double? He's already won the sprint. Can he pick up the flags gold medal as well? Big chances right here. And uh, that under 14 age group, so strong for Trig Island across the water and beach events. Getting ready for a start. Head. And it's the Southport right there as well. Between these two. Where's the goal going to go to? For the under 14s. Big turn there from Yates. Oh, he's too strong. He's too good. He does the double. Sprint champion, flags champion. And the boy from the West. Oh, a little, little bit of a there. stubble. Ah, he'll be fine. <laughs> Walking off champ. You're a gold medalist once again. I think gold medals are really good uh, for that as well. That'll clear that right up. They just had a great turn of the get-go. Gets the shoulders in front really hard to come back from there. Well, Annis of Southport, really impressive. So throw it down onto the beach with our uh, two Beach Flags champions. We're starting with Trent from Trigg. Dominant in that one, mate. Gold medal, bright lights. Who do you want to thank? 
uh, all the coaches training me throughout the year. My parents are taking me to training and everyone that supported me. Legend, mate, got it done. And the under-14s, Nicole Mysack. Sorry, Jessica might say, I was talking about her sister because her sister was a elite competitor before. Your dad's put you through so much to be here. It's tears of joy. How much does this mean for you, the club and the family? Oh, a lot. It means a lot. I'm really happy for the win. I have a lot of people to thank. I have to thank my family. And, like, last year after I was I, like, went to a new gym, CCSC. They're really amazing. They do really good programming. It's really good. So, yeah. Jess, you're a legend. It's not Nicole, it's Jess. I'm so proud of you, mate. Good on you. Thank you. Getting the work done in the gym as well. So Jessica Maxak there of Ocean Beach. It's a good turn here. It's at the 15s. Girls about to get down to a final three. Wow, we, we are moving through this program. And uh, our apologies. It sounds uh, just listening, listening to Harold's pronunciation for Jessica Maisak there. Ocean Beach, Jessica Maisak, our apologies. We are learning every single race here. We want to make sure we're recognising all of our incredible athletes. And... Uh, 15 girls up next already. This is what we're doing. Finals time. Turn around quick. We are very quickly updating our livepeaks.com tabs at the moment just to make sure we're bringing you all the correct competitors here. It is the 15 flags for both the uh, men and women. The men up next. It looks like we are down to the final four. Hudson McNeil of Tacking Point and Cooper Bird from Cougin Headland eliminated most recently in fifth and sixth. So here we go. Four, Chubba Marichidor, Sears out of Durangong, Condilius of South Maribra, Brady of Serena. Here we go, who's going to make the podium? Who will finish fourth? Oh, stumbles there. Oh, tight. Yikes. Pulls it out. Chubba Marichidor. And it will be Nate Brady of Serena, unfortunately. Finishes in fourth spot. So see here, Brady had, he was in front. He had it, and then the fight back from Chubb. Oh, wow, wait, what a finish there. Look, I would at the work. Look at Chubb stumbles there, right of screen. Head down. Oh, and it was a decision. Took the wrong flag in the end, unfortunately, and opened the gate. On Delios in South Marubra. Couldn't believe his luck. <laughs> Loving that. But Nate Brady, one of the absolute superstars from Serena, an incredible club just south of Mackay. So Serena grabbing a fourth position there. Great points as well. That was ahead of Hudson McNeil and Cooper Bird. Top three decided. Top three here. Now 15 Woo! female beach flags closest to screen. Scarlet Hall of North Cronulla. Go into the middle. We'll see the McNabb of Merriweather. Charlie Duncan of Fitzroy. Top of screen. Yeah. So you get the turn here now. Who's going to get into that final? Oh, looks like boxed out. McNabb of Merriweather. And if uh, you're unfamiliar with that Fitzroy cap there, it's because she is from New Zealand, one of our international competitors. The blue cap with the three white stripes, you can see she is clear. In the middle of the field, North Cronulla is the yellow cap with the blue stripes. And uh, because Charlize Duncan from Fitzroy is one of our international competitors, they will race all the way through. But uh, the first finishing Australian will also receive a gold medal if Charlize Duncan also wins a gold medal. Ah, Just a little bit of trivia you know. for you there. All oh, the boys ready. Just getting those last instructions. Chubb from Maruchidor just getting a, a little bit of a nudge from the official. So that is Maruchidor closest to us on screen next door to Christopher Condilius from South Marubra and Melissiasat from Jericho, top of screen. Who's going to make the final? Who finishes with the bronze? Tight in the middle. Oh, the big boys come together. Oh, no, the power. What is it here? I don't think that's enough. Ooh. South Maruba, it looks like for mine. I don't I think Chubb Chub was lucky I last time. I just don't think he's going to get it this time. Well, they got it on the iPad anyway. So, see the replay here. No trouble at all for Oh, Condelius. Uh, look at the shoulder space that Condelius takes up. They come together. It's pretty good there. The dive. 
And arm is not the flag. He's got hold of his arm. He's got hold of his arm. Hang on for dear life. I would say points for trying. Yes. Regardless, I think, I think uh, any port in a storm, but it is now official. Jarvis Chubb from Maroochydore takes third position, yep. a bronze medal. You're on the podium. You get something to hold. You get something to take home. But for now, the ladies. Gold medal on the line here. Under 15, Girls Beach Flags Championship of Australia. This is the screen of North Cronulla alongside her. Charlize Duncan of Fitzroy, New Zealand. Then he said, if it is Duncan that takes it, we'll still get a gold medal as well as being the Australian champion. For uh, North Cronulla, and I think that means that uh, Lucinda McNabb and Leela Kelly also pick up their medals there, which is wonderful for uh, Leela. You want to win it, don't you? Yeah. Oh, you do. You want to win outright. Here we go, girls. Aussie champs. So Hall there, North Cronulla, and then Duncan from Fitzroy, New Zealand. And it's going to be the New Zealander that takes it. So it comes across, and Charlize Duncan makes the journey. And Fitzroy, New Zealand, the fist pump. Yeah, you're allowed to fist pump. I want to see more claims in life saving. Grabs the gold. And New Zealand. Great to see. And uh, North Cronulla continuing their strong history in beach flags and beach sprinting. Such an incredible club. Cannot wait to see more of their relays across the Open and Senior Championships. But Fitzroy, look at that focus coming in, nailing that flag. And we can see there as livepeaks.com updates as well. Number one next to Scarlett Hall from North Cronulla. Number one next to Shalise Duncan from Fitzroy. So here we go. The final of the under-15 boys. This is the screen. Christopher Condilios of South Maroubra. Melissa sat of Juringong. Top of screen. He sat with the speed. Condilios. With, with the, the shoulders. So who can do it? The speed against the size. And the speed's going to win this time. Melissa sat of Juringong. Too quick. The power quick. of Christopher Condilios of South Maroubra. Good final. His results official, That's, uh, Jarvis Chubb, missing out the top three. And a big congratulations, Miller from Garangong, taking the under-15 female, the under-15 men's beach flags win. Third yesterday in the sprint as well. Two medals, that is fantastic. Harold, you're down on the beach. What an afternoon of flags. Go for Harold. Charlie Duncan here from New Zealand. Let's give a big kia ora. What a win. Yeah, I'm so stoked. Thank you. Uh, come across the ditch, uh, big competition, talk us through it. Um, it's really good, it's just a good experience to come over here, especially because Aussies is much more high stakes over here, so just good to show um, us uh, Kiwis over here. And you show that you're the best, congratulations mate, congratulations, go and enjoy it with the crew. Millsy, done it again, congratulations. Uh, Jaren Gong's pride and joy, yeah. tough competition, uh, and the boys seem to be getting bigger and bigger each year. Yeah, it's uh, great to come back every year. Yeah, like you said, everyone's growing and everyone's uh, getting bigger. But yeah, it's great to great to take it out again. Uh, can we get a promise? Even though you've got rugby next year, you're going to be back to the try and try and defend it. Yeah, I, I hope so. Yeah, that's a promise. Heard it here. Miller Slice, the legend from Jerengong, taking home another gold medal. Thanks, Harold. Good stuff. Miller Slice of Jerengong, the winner of the under 15 males, and yeah, great effort there. Charlie's Duncan of Fitzroy, New Zealand. Oh, fantastic work as we get the shots immediately transported back down to the uh, Maruchido Water Arena here. And I can see some skis a little further in the distance. That could be uh, a little bit of training happening. I think I can actually see Matt Bevelacqua's board in the distance there. The, oh, the red, big guns are arriving. The red with the uh, gold trim on the back there. I love it when competitors have a really clearly branded craft. But I tell you what, it's been a big afternoon at Flags. I need to uh, get in the fetal position just for a moment to recover. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment. See sparkle. The sky's pastel. You'll find the sun shines from above and from within. Making laughs linger. Moments longer. Hearts beat fast. And time moves slow. Come find your sunshine moment. For real.
partners in PRP Fins, Sunshine Coast as well. Of course, our event sponsors in the Australian Sports Commission, Ukraine, TFH, and our major national partners, Ampol, DHL, Azuzu Utes, and Westpac. And what if we see the uh, Westpac rescue helicopter flying over over the uh, competition over the last few days? But it's been, can you believe we're nearly at the end of that? Two days of racing here across Maroochydore, Alex and Malula Bar. We were just down at the uh, Flags Arena. Wonderful to see uh, the fastest competitors on the sand get some wonderful recognition to showcase the best that we have down there. And it looks like we've uh, got the camera back down here at Maroochydore because we know there is action all across the beach. We'll keep our eye on the results as well and bring as many of them as possible to you. And this looks to be a Cameron relay in action at the moment. It was a board relay. Oh, you're right. Yes, Jenny. <laughs> they are two lots of boards on the screen at the moment. This is a board relay. Have a look at the speed across the sand. This is an Australian Championship final right now. Yes, yeah, so they're coming across here. We'll get it shortly. 13, 14 board relay, possibly. Making the tags. and Yeah, very quick. Cooks Hill looking good. That's Swansea in there as well. Trig. Manly. Just bringing up the uh, results at the moment. Livehates.com is where you can go. Oh, no, that's a board rescue. Uh, men's board so really. Look at these top four paddling out. It's like second or third leg here. Manly to the right-hand side of screen. Trying to have a big go. and See this tide dropping out. That back bank, very consistent. Cooks Hill looking good as well. Swansea Belmont, great history in board paddling. Trig Island on the chase looks like in fourth spot. Okay, it's definitely the 13-14 men's board relay based on the teams that you have called out so far. They've got Manly, they've got Trig, they've got Cooks Hill. This is the 13-14 men's board relay live at the moment. Definitely one leg completed, maybe two, maybe the third that we're on right now. We will pick that up for you as soon as possible. And the surf is looking really clean down here at Mochidor. Yeah, it's... It's definitely consistent with this low tide now. But the races are long, really long races. Got to pace yourself, get the work done through, through that impact zone and then get into your work. They're really spread out. It's really surprised me here. I thought they'd be a little bit more tightly bunched, but great uh, leg here from Manly. Has uh, seen them take the lead and pushing hard. And thinking back to the uh, semi-finals that were done earlier today, Manly Team A actually took out semi-final number two. That was the team of Jacob Chalmers, uh, Jacob Chalmers, Henry Whitehead, and Tom McMurtry. So definitely some form on the board, some runs on the board there as well, with a win in the semi-final potentially shaping up for the uh, win here in the in the big one. I'm giving it everything they can right now. Manly in front. We saw them win the beach flags. Back to the water We've area. Seen them win a lot. <laughs> Manly would. Uh, an incredibly proud club, club with some incredible history, but the boys really putting in the big effort out the back there. We can see one and two are clear, but a bit of a pack starting to form up. And as we know, in the conditions that we have down here at Maroochydore, it is not over until you cross that finish line. So excited to see how this plays out. One, two, three, and then four, five, yeah. actually, I would nearly say, on that red and yellow can here. away, haven't they, Manly here? And then it looks mm. like Cooks Hill in second. Cookshill still could be in this for a win, I think. If they get a nice little wave through here or manage to turn something, a little runner into something special, they are definitely still within striking distance. Yeah, solid team. Will Munro, Jacob Samakin and Harley Sleeman. And I think it was Will Munro who took out the uh, win in the individ individual under-14 board, but Manly could be a chance here. Is there enough oh, in she... this one? That could be... Oh, lovely wave. And... Looking very strong now, Manly. Wanda going okay out the back as well. And a couple of waves out there, but no doubting our leaders. So Manly in a fantastic position. Cooks Hill hopefully on a wave by themselves just behind here. He takes a little sneaky look back. You never want to celebrate too early, but he knows he's putting his team in an incredible position right here. The Manly sky blue cap there. As we pan back, there's a few uh, oh, boards board out the back. So that's interesting. Looks like... So Cooks Hill definitely on a wave by themselves, which is absolutely fantastic. But the uh, race is on for the podium behind oh, one, two, now. three. Looks like Chalmers coming up for Manly, hitting the beach. And a big gap back. Cooks Hill in second spot. And I think this is actually the final leg. I can see the uh, finishing tape being uh, held and up. They're and they're going to take it out. Manly, Manly break the champions. tape. 
And Cooks Hill are going to come through oh, the race, though. Third. Crazy. So there we go. Manly across the line. Your champions in this 13s, 14s. Male Board Relay Championship of Australia. Cooks Hill with the silver. And Wanda. They're going to get third. Tight there for fourth. North Burley North and Burley. Alex. And is that a second Wanda team coming through? Oh, looks like a teammate. No, a teammate coming up <laughs> to celebrate, Jen. Just uh, pump the brakes there. But wow, what a, re- a win for Manly. Coming in on a wave by yourself to claim an Australian championship, knowing that uh, your teammates, one and two, have done an incredible job to put you in that position, to be able to celebrate and savour that up the beach. That's a really special moment for Manly. Had some work to do in that final leg and delivered in spades for the anchor and big victory for Manly. They'll be loving that. 13s, 14s, male board relay. Looks like up next... Might get the 14s, 15s. We may well do that. Uh, Obviously, the uh, program a little bit uh, scatty wampus at the moment all over the shop. But that team there of Manly, Jacob Chalmers, Thomas McMurdy, Henry Whitehead. A lot of uh, Cooks Hill celebration starting as well because you should celebrate a silver medal in the board rescue fan and the board relay. Fantastic work down there. Hugs all round. Cooks Hill A there, Will Munro, Jacob Samakin, and Harley Sleeman, and Wander as well. With uh, looks like bronze for them in this one. Max Christensen, Reef Lewis has had a good weekend, and Riley Maskiel. Big final, plenty of numbers. Absolutely, as Mermaid Beach comes through, Sortel is in there as well. The officials just doing the counts, making sure that everyone is <laughs> accounted for. But what a finish, Manly. They'll be celebrating that one. There's something special about board relays, and uh, it's not just the juniors. Definitely, as you progress through 17s and 19s and opens, there's a lot on the line for those board relays. A very popular win, always hotly contested. And, yes, it looks like the uh, next race making their way down. It looks like we're staying here with the men as well. So if that was 13, 14s, we're pretty sure 14s, 15s up next. 14s, 15s. And got a few New Zealand clubs in the mix here uh, Papamoa, Surf Life Saving Club from New Zealand. Team A, first on the line. That is Lachlan Cairns and Luke Gilbanks with Oliver Peppers in there as well. So wonderful to see not only that uh, Fitzroy win just now in the beach flags, they are in the action here at the Water Arena. So we have Papamoa, Team A on the uh, far left-hand side of the field. Avoca, Grange, Sunshine Beach, North Burley, and confirming this is the 14 and 15 men's board relay. And we've also got Sunshine, North Burley, Ocean Grove, Swansea, Maruchidor, Burley Heads, Mowbray Park, Redhead, Northcliffe, North Burley, Warilla Barrack Point, Cudgeon, Alex, and Burley. Stacked Ooh. final. <laughs> Very stacked. Not that there's any easy finals, to be clear. But uh, I love that we've come back down in the perfect time to get these board relays here at Maruchidor Beach. 13, 14s, all done. And have a look at that uh, shot across the beach there. There's uh, two, three, four sets of waves out there looking really, really good. And again, long races, long break. And so <laughs> Such a long break. Just got to get it right. Like I said, do the work in that impact zone. And clear that. And then once you get into that deep water, look for some wash. Um, look to recover a little bit. And then once you turn that last can, you've got to give it everything you've got to bring it home. Get a bit of assistance from these consistent waves underway. Here we go. It's board relay time for the boys. 14s, 15 years. Huge field. And already wasting no time getting into their work as well. And looking back at those semi-finals, the teams to watch here, Burley Heads, Mowbray Park, Team A. That's Archie Harrison, Zach Moyer and Aaron McQuaid. Individually incredible combining for a great team there that won the semi-final just ahead of Warula Barrick Point. And then in semi-final number two, it was Grange just ahead of Redhead. So uh, keep an eye out for those. Oh, Grange is off to a great start. They're up to this right now. And this Grange team, very impressive. Robert Burfield, Jonah Kilpatrick. On a Stanton. Imagine if we could get a South Australian club on the podium for a board relay. Oh, a little bit of a uh, surf out the back. I think they're going to get some white water from this one. Or are they going to oh, get up and over? Oh, this all has to roll. So one roll, one pop. 
and they've got to get back on and moving really, really quickly because there is another wave coming. I think, though, that Grange is going to get over this one, as will our team from North Burley on the far right-hand side of yeah, the field. Well, Redhead as well. Pan out, and the, the ones to the right-hand side might have had a bitter run as well on the way out. And no, it still does look like a handy lead. Ocean Grove in there also. Some dangerous and Burley heads. Oh, has oh, to roll no. as well, so caught inside. So that's a tough one. And having a look at the board, I think that could be Archie. And unfortunately, he's still got more white water ahead of him right now. So uh, the team that took out one of the earlier semifinals could be in a little bit of trouble back in the white water. So he's still powering away out in front. Big first opening leg. Takes a look back. Keep your eye on Kingston Lowe. He's there for the Northcliffe team. He has had an incredible, incredible race so far or incredible championship so far, I should say, having a look at those caps here. Kingston Lowe with Noah Lynch and Lincoln Thielen. Keep an eye on them. Kingston Lowe, incredible in his individual oh, board. Grange just getting angry. They want to take this back. Have Don't look, look back. This, just tapping them right now. That's a statement right there to uh, do this in the opening legs. I'm really impressed by this, and that looks to be uh, redhead, I think, on the chase. But... Uh, Good races. Good racing already. This is what we want to see. And Grange, that's the way to start, leaving nothing out there, knowing that potentially this could be one of his last races of the day, last races of the championships, last race of the season. We knew they were good. We know they were this good. They're giving them every opportunity. Now first come, first served into this wave zone that we said has been consistent. And look at the stroke right now. He is powering home. And you can tell that we're in the blue and white arena because they are going around the blue and white cans there. Grange in control at the moment, but that is North Burley chasing hard. Redhead in the mix. A few clubs on the chase. Yeah, Burley heads trying to make a move as well. I think that's a Voca in the mix there, just trying to grab a cap, but oof. The waves are on, and I think we're about oh, to spoil Granger's coming. party. Grange was in front, but now from behind. North Burley coming down. Two North Burleys, is it? And they've lost the one behind. The sandwich, lost. Grange. It's a North Burley. It's a green wave. Sandwich coming down this first wave. And wow, so it's a lead wee. wave of three. And they're going to get this all the way to the beach. So the depth of this North Burley club to have two teams in this final. My gosh, Grange did all the work there. Look behind and here comes North Burley, North Burley the Green Wave at Marichidor. All three of Double them. Up. No. Can oh. they get down it? They can. Yes, he's through. He's through. He's in. He's in. He's fine. He's fine. He's up. <laughs> big first paddle here. And, and a big North run. Burley. Grange has done such a big job to maintain the lead. So Grange is still Early in the lead. second and third. A and B team there. And right there, just a second behind. And North Burley team B, that is Kobe Daniel, Byron McParland and Callum Padgett. And then uh, North Burley team A, that is Bede Cosgrove, Jake Mayle and Taj Murray. So team A looking good. Team B potentially the killer bees coming through as well. But uh, I think we'd love to see uh, Grange come mm. through as well. What a chase start. Kujin in four, redhead five. Sharp. Now the question here, Kurt, they've still got two legs to go and knowing the uh, the length, the distance that they still have to paddle and the, uh, the fact that the waves really could come into it from here, could this chase pack of Redhead, Avoca and Kujit, could they still get on the podium from here? Could Swansea, they, could they make the gap? Swansea oh, trying to close the gap. So of course they can. In these conditions, <laughs> anything's possible. Ah, uh, Swansea, yes, my apologies. But now North Burley takes up the running out in front. Messing around, Grange right on the tail, set starting to come here. So a couple little ones. And that's going to hold up Swansea and Redhead. And I tell you what, if our three crews out the back, the two North Burley and Grange, mm. get over that white water. Oh, North Burley just fell off out in front. That was bizarre. Oh. I think he was going from his knees to his stomach and just, just kind of got caught on the rail. And Grange with the speed just came around the outside. So Grange back in front for the moment. Recovery there from North Burley. Great work. And again, North Burley still two in the top three. 
range up on the knees. I love that he's really driving hard at the moment. He's really saying, I don't want to wait. I'm going to pick up. I'm going to go around you here. I'm happy to paddle in a little bit of clear water. I don't need your wash. Yeah, let me go back. Swansea in four, redhead five. Looks like uh, Kujin. Maybe Maruchidor in the mix. And then uh, Burleyheads, Mowbray Park and, and Sunshine. The uh, next chase pack that is shaping up. So this battle at the front is a beauty. Grant this is what we want. And North Burley, second leg of three here. 14, 15 years. Male board relay championship of Australia. Second and final day of our youth titles here from Maruchidor on the Sunshine Coast. Great to have you with us. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. Plenty more big finals coming your way this afternoon. Who've just tuned in. Perfect timing. The good stuff just keeps coming. It's all for medals now. It's all finals. And I love that North Burley is uh, working his way up the inside there, just pushing Grange a little bit wider. Really great just strategic decision there. He's going to get a little bit of uh, an advantage there. He's nearly half a body length in front, or half a board length, I should say, as they come through. And uh, North Burley making that move so that he gets the first shot at the waves, first shot at maybe getting a little runner that could turn into something special because we know we are at the halfway point of this race. And have a look at the rating. North Burley up, moving. He needs to put some distance on his uh, teammate in the uh, distance there, but Grange not oh, going anywhere. After burner time now. Burr. North Burley steps it up from the stomach to the knees on that last can. The rating's gone up. North Burley in third has uh, done exactly the same thing. He can feel the ocean underneath him right now, trying to get a little run off this one. It'll bring him closer to Grange, but it is still North Burley out in front. The boys know that they could be on the cusp of something special here, but a little bit of swell building behind. Will it make the difference? We've seen the depth over the years of this North Burley club in board paddling, and they've delivered once again here. In the age group is this second leg, and all of a sudden North Burley have gone into first and second here. These are the best board paddlers in Australia, and North Burley flexing right now in one and two position. Grange in three, no waves on offer though. Yeah, a little bit nervous that they are this. They've, they've paddled this far through. They haven't got anything just yet. They're looking around. They know that they can't stop because the rest of the field is there. North Burley out in front at the moment, trying to turn that into something special. Nothing. However, I think North Burley behind feels the ocean underneath his board. Grange knows that there's something close. If they can just get a bit of board speed happening, is this little wave right now? Is that the difference? Because oh, there's a big one behind. Pancaked out for all of them. Melita trying so hard to make something out of nothing. But they have literally had to paddle the entire way in, almost just a little wave here at the end. But full credit to North Burley team. They didn't wait for that wave out the back, pushed hard. And that's why they're so good. I am They so created impressed. something out of nothing. That is one of the best board legs I have ever seen. I tell you what, North Burley coming up, paddled the entire way, did not wait for the ocean, did not wait for his competitors. And that has been rewarded. He is a clear leader at the moment. North Burley in one, North Burley in two. Grange is actually now in fourth position. Swansea Belmont has come through. North Burley one, two. Can they hold on for something special in this final? A huge leg there from Swansea. And Grange now trying to hang on for a podium after that early lead in the first leg. Oh, I tell you what, when we talk about uh, board Relays Swansea have done uh, some incredible throwbacks over the past few weeks in the lead up to the Aussie titles. They've had some incredible paddlers over the past few years. Now, Grange, the blue cap on the chase, that is the purple board, not out of this just yet, but we have got a battle on our hands. North Burley, one, North Burley, two. It's about to get interesting because I think there is uh, some white water ahead of these boys now. And if that slows down our North Burley boys in one and two, it really starts to uh, open the gate a little bit, gives an opportunity to Swansea and to Grange. Oh, I see the lay down paddler Swansea in a straight away. I'm starting to think straight time. Oh, Chad Griffiths. <laughs> the memories are coming back. The deja vu the is deja strong. Vu's. What a victory that was. And here back we in the go. Day. And look at this. Advantage now, North Burley A go, and B. Go. They're both out, and the rest have had to have a roll and a pop. So here it is now. All of a sudden, the battle against Australia becomes the North Burley Club Championships. Oh, I love a club championships at an Australian championships, and they've really worked this well, and they're not working together at all. And again, a little bit of white water here. Unfortunately, Grange just gets pushed back a little bit. Swansea Belmont, though, on the far left-hand side, having a fantastic uh, go of it. But just behind that red redhead, 
Maruchi Dor, not out of it just yet. I mean, they're not going to be number one or number two. That looks to be uh, North Burley. We need to figure out if it's the A or the B teams out there. But podium, not decided just yet. Oh, A, B, it doesn't matter now. This is your club mates, your teammates, your best mates. And right now, your biggest rival. It's you versus them for the Australian gold medal. And There's no are, one else right now. They are neck and neck at the moment. No one wants to give some wash. No one wants to give an inch out there. They're paddling next to each other. This is probably how they train day in and day out at North Burley. The race is on. No love lost out there. They are going to give it their all because they want an Australian championship. Oh, they want that Aussie leaves. gold Crush medal. Oh. oh, we've lost. Looks like Burley Heads. Oh, Burley oh, Heads. Sunshine, Sunshine Beach as well come together there on the bank. How is this going to unfold? They look back. It's a bit deceptive. That lead is bigger than it looks as well. Yes, absolutely. And Could uh, it come down to a wave sprint finish? Well, they're still neck and neck. Burley to have six board paddlers of this magnitude is a testament to the depth of what they've created there. Mike Murray, Bruce Taylor, um, they've done a phenomenal job. They've brought them through, and this is what it's culminated in. Yeah, I had a quick little chat to uh, Brad Rogers. Uh, Big Bear too, yeah. yeah, he oversees the whole thing. I saw him earlier today. We might have both been lining up for a chicken burger at the uh, Maruchidor <laughs> kiosk there. I think that's Jake Mayle on the far outside. He had an incredible paddle, took out the Queensland Championships, and he has really chosen the moment. You could tell where it was like, I am going now. Yep. And Jake Mayle has bolted tell you what they're not out of this just yet but he looks so determined so confident looking around seeing if there's anything in the ocean his uh, teammate there up on the knees jake mail interesting to see where he makes the move there so we go advantage north burley a for the moment but mm -hmm. north burley b on the chase absolutely they're not out of this just yet it where could are the come waves? up to a sprint finish come on boys get those waves get that Aussie gold medal. He's saying Brad Rogers, uh, you know, it's such a huge part of facilitating this entire North Burley yeah, group. Yeah, he's been uh, El Presidente for the juniors for a few years now. I think he's about to hang up his cap there, but really, really proud, and we spoke so about proud. what it means to be part of North Burley and be part of something so, so special. Oh. Talking about special, this could Little be waves. it. Little waves, pushing, pushing, get over it. Oh, it's not, and not the wave behind the back, is so. huge. Oh. Luckily for North Burley, this. there is no one else on that look at wave. This. Not giving up. Not giving up on that wave in front. Looks behind now. Is his teammate going to be on this one? Has to be, surely. Has to be. And so he'll pick behind. it up. He'll pick it up broken. Jake Mayle knows how to catch a wave. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, we've got a race in for Jake Mayle. I am so sorry. Oh, we thought it was all North Burley, but oh, stop the clock. All of a sudden, Grange oh, going for a bit of a cutoff there as well. Sneaky. So here we go. North Burley A, North Burley B, Grange and Swansea Belmont for the Australian 1415 <gasps> border Stop. relay title. They're off too soon. Grange is off too soon. Advantage Swansea Belmont. Swansea's up there. North Burley comes for it. North Burley versus Swansea. Swansea in front. North Burley trips up. Can they get another turn at the flag? Swansea still in front. North Burley can't do it. Oh, stumbles again as Swansea Belmont is going to pull it out. And they go to the finish. Grange. Maybe Grange gets there. Oh, what a finish. It's not over till it's over. Swansea Belmont has pulled the gold out of nowhere in his 14, 15 years. Male board relay. North Burley A in second. And Grange fights back for third. What a finish. Oh, my Boy, gosh. We're singing the braces of North Burley. We just didn't see the pan out. Didn't think that that wave would pick up that many paddlers. Unbelievable finish here. Minor placings coming up now. I think we've got uh, a Voca, Warilla Barrack Point, oh. Kuchin, Burley Heads, Mowbray Park. But can we congratulate, if not yet official, we'll wait for it to be updated, Kai Cook, Will Peterson, Hamish Ray, Australian champions from, 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 from Swansea Belmont. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. The history, history repeats. Swansea, North Burley, how many times have we seen it over the years? <gasps> this big was relays. the moment. And have a look at uh, Grange. Yeah, look at this little cut off here from Grange. Oh, oh, oh. Careful there. No love lost between those two. Now, the bizarre thing here, all four of them, they all get off too early. Deep water, look, oh, pothole. 
Unfortunately there for the BT for Billy. The Grange is gone. Deep water as well. And then you think Swansea's got it. And then in front, fight back from North Billy. Little clip of the heels there. Thinks maybe he'll have another fight at him. And then North Billy stumbles again. And Swansea it is. That's going to take it. And look at this battle for the bronze. All the way to the finish. And maybe just Grange gets it over North Burley at the death. So, uh, Kurt, we have been talking about this training video that we're going to uh, watch. But, for, oh, what an angle. The drone coming through with the goods showing one, two, three on the wave there. And this is where they picked up Jake Mail as well. They pushed him on the inside as well. Grange just coming across. Jake Mail, no dramas there. And I love the focus of Swansea Belmont, not bothered by anyone else around, gets off at the right time. Hard as a lay down paddler as well at the finish to get off. And you'll see, keep your eye on him, he goes a little bit left here, dodges a pothole up and around, perfect line to the can, never headed by Jake Mal from here, but what a race in dramatic fashion. Look at how many people are on the beach right now celebrating this win. Swansea, Belmont, you absolute superstars. Big party at Swansea tonight after that performance. What year is it? Is it 2024? <laughs> is it 1994? What's old is new again. Oh, history, Swansea's back, baby. History doesn't repeat, but it definitely rhymes as we see the boys come through now. And while we enjoyed that, while my heart rate is through the roof right now, better get ready. There's another race on the line. Yeah, so more action coming your way here. Super Sunday, our second and last day of the youth competition. Australian Surf Life Saving Championships here at Maroochydore on the Sunshine Coast. Looks like the girls getting back in action. Mm -hmm. And Cameron Relay time coming your way shortly. Yep, that looks to be the Cameron Relays coming up next. We'll just confirm the age groups. We'll see uh, who is down there on the line. We will grab a few where we can. Oh, still thinking about Sonsi Belmont. Just waiting for liveheats.com to update because I want it to be official. I want to know who got there. I want to see if it was Grange who got there over the North Burley Bay team as they came up the line. And, uh, oh, great scenes down there on the beach. Lots of celebrations, as you would expect. Some incredible performances on the beach, on the sand. And I can see uh, <laughs> Grange and our cameraman heading down there. I think Harold's just uh, done a light job all the way down from Mooloolaba. He's seen something that he likes as well. The fist pump goes up. Maybe you might have got something special in one I of these I think he's races. heard his name. That's what he's... That's <laughs> his fist pump. Harold! Harold! <laughs> Alrighty. What have we got? Where are we at? As we can see, the shadows start to lengthen over Maruchino Another Beach. board relay, maybe? Maybe board relay. I think you could be right there. And again, the waves. Gee, that was impressive. Just when we saw... Here we go. Thank right, you. Camera. Thank you, team. Alrighty, Blackhead, Sorrento, Newport, Burleyhead, Mowbray Park, Alex, Cookshill, Maruchidor, Wanda, Trigg and Anglesey. A lot of clubs, a lot of states represented. That is what we want to see. Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and Western Australia all in the mix here, all with a chance, all in with a shot to take out the Australian Championship as the girls line up on the beach here. I love the cap of Sorrento, that bright green second across on the start line there. You can pick what it from anywhere. What a weekend from um, Blackhead as well. What a weekend! Been in just about everything. So, yeah, very impressive. And just confirming that 14-15 board relay that we saw earlier. Swansea Belmont officially Australian champions. Kai Cook, Will Peterson and Hamish Ray ahead of North Burley A and Grange Team A. What a race. What a finish. But now, reset, refocus. Ladies, Cameron Relay. Big ones. The big ones to finish off. Cameron Relay time. It's obviously, it's the youth version of the Taplin Relay with a twist. But one swimmer. Two runners, one board paddler. And just having a look back, the girls did have to do a semi-final for this earlier today. It was Wanda, Team A, Cooks Hill in semi-final number one, North Burley and Anglesey, one, two. And then in the final, Tremi, it was Avoca and Sunshine. So a lot of class, a lot of quality down here on the beach. And uh, getting shades of Mary Thompson winning that iron yesterday under the shade of Maruchidor Surf Club. And the girls know that... This is actually their last, last race. race. Last race for last everyone now. Last race. Off-season starts in about half an hour. Main competition arena. They've shut the rest down. It all comes down to this. In front of the surf club, big amphitheatre, big crowd, big atmosphere, and big pressure all on the line to finish off 
your uh, Aussies, hopefully with the best way possible. Absolutely, we can see, I love this black head closest to us on screen, a little bit back off the line. I'm pretty sure she's about to head right. Yeah, a little bit of sweep on the low tide, heading north. I'll try and counteract that a little bit. Some will, we'll go straight out. Yeah. So gun goes and underway here. This 14, 15 years, female Cameron Relay Championship of Australia. It's in no time getting into their work as well. Down this northern end, South know. Melbourne. Got South Maruba in there as well. Sunshine Beach, the red cap. Already getting amongst it and spread out also. So interesting there, but Sunshine Beach down this southern end. That could be Neve Arthur out there. She's uh, combining with Claire Cameron, Amelia Harmon, and Alia Jones from Sunshine Beach. That is the bright red cap with the black and gold stripes on there. Two distinct packs are starting to form up already. Sunshine Beach closest to us on screen. I'm just trying to check who is that on the top of screen because these girls are flying. Yeah, they're really flying out the top, that's for sure. Have a look at the stroke rate. Have a look at the kick. You wouldn't know that the course they're about to embark on is so long. It's a long break. While they do only need to go through the uh, first set of cans, they're going to turn sharp right on the uh, red and yellow can there. We'll bring up the... Oh, it's Newport. Newport. And Burley Heads. Newport, Burley Heads. Lead Wanda right there. North Burley. Cooks Hill. See the girls go through. So the team of Newport is Charlie Barber, Abigail Capel, Alana Paul, and Sarah Song. So I've spoken to both Charlie and Alana across the uh, weekend. Incredible swimmers. Burnley Heads Mowbray Park has Piper Anderson, Imogen Dowger, who actually took out the individual surf race earlier in the program, Dakota Fielding and Lola Maloney. So Newport, a nice clear lead at the moment. A blue cap in the mix there. I think that's Wanda, Charlotte Baumer, Poppy Colbert, Piper Phillips and Jane Siddell. Also in the mix at the moment, but have a look at Newport go to work. And Newport Sorrento having a good swim Sorrento. as well. The girls getting it done. Yeah. Letting them go. Just having a look, and I like that Sorrento's creating her own water here, especially if she's feeling strong and fast at the moment. I'd say she will rejoin that main pack in just a moment. Sorrento from Western Australia, that is the team of Where's Mark Sunshine Beach. Well, that is the question that we will see as we start to pan out. But Sorrento, Martha Chin, Talia Kroon, uh, Emma Pace, and Liliana Yuzhnovic coming through. Well, approaching the can now. Yeah, that is what we want. That money shot right there on the red and yellow can. Wanda doing a great job Wanda. in this opening swim leg as well. So it will be Newport turns just in front on the string. Wanda right there, Sorrento. Look I at the battle on now. Cooks Hill. In there, Burley Heads, Maruchidor. And I really North love Burley. the work up there of Wanda. She came up onto Newport decided to go a little bit wider around there. I'd say she's about to make her move around the back of the cans here as the uh, waves, waves come through. Yeah. Nearly taking out one. the cans, oh, nearly solid. taking out our competitors, but no Good drama. On the way back. If you could dial that up for our competitors, they would be so grateful, Kurt. We would really appreciate that for it's a strong finish. It's always a frustrating finish. time when you feel the waves coming when you're going around the cans. And you, you're like, is you, the lull coming yeah, now? The, Thanks a lot. Really rushing to get to that last can and hopefully pick up if it's a four or five wave set, maybe you can pick up the fifth wave of the last wave of the set. They turn for home here. This opening leg of the Cameron Relay. Wanda takes the lead. So Wanda, we set a brilliant semi-final by them. Coach Nathan Smith, they'd be ecstatic with this opening swim leg. He's had plenty of those in his time as well. Gee, full credit here. Sorrento having a brilliant swim as well in third spot. Newport there in second. Swell's coming push off there but enough for waves and as it flattens out a little bit opportunities maybe for some back markers this one's going to stand up Jen who's going to be on it oh how many will Can be on it get down and, oh down that northern end Cooks Hill five drop. so does Newport so does Wanda can anyone emerge from the white water is anyone in front of it one's been spat out the back Newport's been spat out the back Wanda as well Sorrento I don't think any of them have been able to hold it so it hasn't really changed the lead up too much. Newport still maintains it. Just ahead of Wanda Maruccio probably got the best out of it. From the back markers. More waves out the back. Body surfing skills now. Can anyone catch this broken? Oh, someone has caught it broken. Stick with the wave. Who's got it in front? Oh, Wanda. What about the skills? 
One that catches his broken wave. Still going. Streamlines out. It's going to get it all the way through the gutter. Kick. Six beat. Still. Still. Ah. Oh, makes the tag. World class wonder. Advantage wonder. Halfway mark. How good was that, Jen? I have two questions. How did she get it? How did she hold that? That is phenomenal. Wonder. Skills. Skills, skills, skills. Harold will throw it down to you in transition halfway, Mark. What about those skills from Wanda? Oh, insane. You could just hear the crowd holding their breath. And then there was just a, that sheer disbelief that she held on to herself. Wanda into a solid lead at the moment. And it looks like with people working through. But that back middle, uh, that bank is so hard at the moment. It's closing out a little bit harder. And the girls are having to work so hard through that gutter. But at the moment, it looks like I've got Maruchador working hard. So too, Newport. That's our top three. And there's a fair distance between Cooks Hill in fourth. So there we go, Wanda. These are the little things you lift for your club, you lift for your team. And Wanda, they had the advantage coming back. They had to do a lot of work when the rest of the field caught some waves as Newport goes in there in third spot, just behind. It looks like Richie Dorr, but now to body surf that wave broken and take it all the way to the beach. That's what it's made of. Sunshine, Sunshine Beach. Sunshine Beach and Burley having a battle. Sorrento had a great swim leg. Oh, Sorrento still in it. Uh, Sorrento was one of our ladies who went over that first big wave down the falls, unfortunately unable to hold it as a Voca trig. And I think that's one of our North Burley crews come through now. But wonder what an exhibition. So excited that we got to see that. So excited that we got to celebrate in one of the last big finals for the championships. But the race is on now. I think that was Alana Paul who was heading out there for Newport. Maruchidor in the mix. That's one, two, three. But as we have seen, anything could happen. It's not over yet. And oh, oh what a no! back shooter. You had to make it. A, that had to be a roll. You had to roll that wave. Too much power. Tried to punch through it. And just lost about 25 metres there and all his speed and momentum with a back shooter. But good recovery. Great recovery. Great wow. recovery. And she's, uh, this is the lead that they had from that incredible swim earlier. There is still no one else on shot. There is no one else in camera. Wanda still clearly in the lead. Oh. And I think that's the pressure. That's the pressure of leading an Australian final right there. She thought she had the room. She thought she could get there. Unfortunately, she should have probably no rolled. One there. Ah! Oh, don't look back. The cover is coming. And it's the home crew of Maruchidor. They want another one. They want to finish on top of the Black Swans. And that back shoot has brought the field right back. And this is far from over. This is far from over. Maruchidor in screen. Another club about to push in there as well. And Wanda, she would be feeling that pressure right now knowing that the field is coming and here you can see Maruchidor just tucking in and that is Newport Alana Paul a fantastic paddle one two and three the girls will go around the black and white can as Maruchidor just lies down now you can see Wanda she takes in the big one she's got the good stroke rate going she knows that if she can get around this final can if she could get away oh she's oh, caught she's on the can she's, she's got Maruchidor as well the girls now, are saying Maruchidor get out of the way well. oh she's giving up the inside running so Wanda now has handed the lead over and they come together again. Can't get their arms in the water. And Maruchido says, I'm not going anywhere. I'm getting around this red and yellow, this uh, green and gold can. I love that she's saying, no, nope, I've got enough room. There's enough for both of us. She is now clear. This race could not get more dramatic. Oh, my gosh. Maruchido in the box seat right now, first on the waves. And it looks as though still tight on the can. Just wander ahead of Newport as Maruchido take the lead, but still Cooks Hill is in the background. Cooks Hill is chasing hard. We've seen them do incredible things this weekend. They're not out of it just yet. One, two, three on screen. Wanda knows that she needs something really, really special right now because Maruchidor is opening up a lead if a wave comes through now. This could be oh, it. Oh, the wave coming and Maruchidor, well, they turned it on in the final events yesterday in the Iron Woman. And now can they do it here? Well, it's not going to have it all their own way. So the chasers get the wave. And okay. now Newport, Wanda, Maruchidor. It's going to be a sprint finish. And they've got their sprinters in. Who can finish this off? And Maruchidor says, I'm coming over. I'm giving my beachy the best possible opportunity. It is all about the finish. It is all about the tag. It is all about the strength oh. and the speed of your final this runner. Final Where round. are we, girls? Go, go, go. Wanda, Newport. Here. 14, 15 years, female Cameron Relay final. And a little still looks too good. It looks like Wanda's got the lead back. Wanda's going to pull it out of the fire, are they? Hanging on. Oh, the fist bumps. They will. Maruchidor and Seymour will be Wanda that takes it. 
Original oh, second, Newport my third. My gosh. Oh, Wanda, they had it. They lost it. They got it back again. And they are your Australian champions for 2024 in the most dramatic fashion. That is how we like our Cameron relays. Wanda, I thought they were out of it as Sunshine Beach on the inside line. Trig Island, though, have a look at the speed up the beach. Trig gets the shoulder in front. That looks to be another club in there, but this is it for the minor placings. Trig Island coming through just oh. maybe on the line from Sunshine, but Wanda, I hope Nathan Smith is okay oh down goodness. there on the beach. We might need to uh, just check on a few key people down there. Harold, the drama, tell us everything. Oh, insane. Absolutely insane. Charlotte Baumer set it up with that serve race, but you had the last minute to work through 20 seconds of effort. It had to be perfect. Attack to get out there. What was going through your mind? To be the fastest girl at the beach, to get to the finish line first. That's all. Do it for the team. Do it for the club. <sighs> Talking about the club, Smith, you'll be so pumped. Female president, Fiona Sutton, she'll be so excited. Driving this club at the moment, how special is this current stage of Wander at the moment? It's amazing, the club, the coaches, the parents that take us to training, everything. The club's amazing. Uh, would you say they're probably past the folklore era and more so into reputation, or what, what era are they in? Um, the winning era is where we are. Let's go, girls. They've done it. Wanda taking it out. Believable. And what a story. Everything went right for them in that swim leg. Everything went wrong for them in the board leg. And they still found a way, and that's what champions do. They find a way to get back and get to the top. Wanda does it. You can see what it means to the club. That is something special. Just waiting for live heats to update. Uh, Wanda. Oh, they really made us uh, work for that one. I think the, uh, <laughs> the team tent down there is just going to be an absolute mess. I tell you what, what an incredible race. And uh, I think we need to watch it again because this was where the difference was made. We can see Newport on the top of your screen there, the yellow board, Wanda in the middle, Maruchidor, the home club, just coming across, trying to uh, get the right position there. But the girls, enough room for each of them. It all came down to this final tag. And the girls were hitting the beach at speed. It was really tough for our... Uh, with our uh, runners here. Maruchidor just in the deep water. She went too far out when that wave was coming through and this is where Wanda won it. She came up, she came through, she knew she had the speed and this is where she just put her head down. She can see the tape, she knows she's a winner. Oh, she nearly celebrated too early but you're allowed to when you're an Australian champion. Maruchidor speed up the beach there, just getting the silver medal. Wanda in three. Woof, it was dramatic. So and boys here uh, now, here the we final go. event of the Carnival, 14, 15 years, Boys Cameron Relay Championship of Australia, swim leg coming in here, and the body surfing is sublime, and they all want to be a part of it, the big clubs, the big names, North Kill Kill, North Burley, Warilla, and North Cliff, it's a North Fest. It's a North Fest right now, remembering of course that they are looking for their runners on the beach, so they are going to tag, we're going to see some speed across the beach here, North Burley, North Cliff and Warilla Barrack Point. We've had a stumble a little further back and unfortunately that is going to cost them quite a bit of distance when you consider the speed that the boys are travelling at right now. Here we go, the arms go up, the final tag. That looks to be maybe Murray from North Burley. We'll grab those names as we start to come through. No, it's not. Uh, the North Burley B team, North Burley A, yeah, I think that is Taj Murray as they head out. Have a look at the speed. Kingston Low is in action from North Cliff. Incredible carnival already. Does he have what it takes? Can he get Northcliffe up to the pointy end here? The last race of the day, the last race of the championships. This is the, this is the 14 and 15 men's Cameron Relay Final of Australia. I don't know, I don't know, but has it ever been so close? All four of them, all four of them want to win it. All four of them think they can win it. No one's washed riding. They're all just picking their own line on the way out, just giving it everything they can. Last race of the carnival, last race of the season. And breaking news, Kurt, Maruchidor is actually off screen out in front at the moment. We haven't seen them just yet, but we're just going to see what happens there. So, oh no, we've had a stumble as well. Someone Marilla. is off. Marilla. Someone has fallen off. And we're just going to have to see what happens. We've got two on the screen at the moment. We did have uh, a little word in our ear that maybe there was another team out in front. We can't see them just there yet. There it is. 
Don't look back, Marucci. Don't, don't look, champ. Do not look because there is some speed behind you. This is where it gets interesting. Looks like he's just gone for a nice little Sunday paddle at the moment. I don't know. North Burley on the chase. North Cliff. Two very impressive paddlers. You don't want to look. I don't, if someone's looking behind so when they're in front and I'm on the chase, I'm getting excited. Yeah. That's for sure. You're allowed to. That's okay. That could be Jack Patel out the front. I know when we were watching some of the earlier qualifiers, it would have been Stanley Jarrett uh, who was in the swim. Jarvis Chubb, we saw him in the oh, flag. Only a four length lead. Oh. Only a four length lead. Balin Noy in the mix as well. So Stan Jarrett must have had an absolute blinder of a swim earlier off Cameron. Jack Patel needs to get his uh, skates on right now because the crew oh, is nice coming. Runner. That's the way you do it. Come on, champ. Push, Stay push. down low. Do not look around. Just go, go, go. So, Marucci, you don't want to finish on top here. Home Beach, the big one. The Cameron Relay final now starting to move here. Northcliffe, North Burley trying to close the gap. These swirls are coming, and surely Marucci has got to be close to getting on a lead one for the victory. He's going to need one of those waves as he's going to stay ahead there of the There he is. I'll oh, keep your nose up. up. He does. And that's it. That is an Australian gold medal winning wave for the Maroochydore Club. We said the Black Swan rises, the Black Swans landed. Big wave, pound down, out the back, and they hold one's off. One's off and Two lost his hell. board completely. Big clap there as well. So it looks like the top three settled. The gold definitely settled, and it's low. So Northcliffe looks like he's lost it. So the board champ from oh. yesterday. Unfortunately, Northcliffe can't get on the podium now. That is a but tough way this. to finish, but a great way to finish. The Black Swans on their home beach. The big, big cheer. He gets around the flags. He can see the finish tape in sight, and it is going to be a Maruchido Black Swan victory what? in the 14-15 Cameron Relay. What a way to finish off for Maruchido in front of the home crowd. Grange! What? Grange from the what? clouds! And Grange is going to come in for second. Looks like North Burley third. Where did wow. Grange come from? No I'm idea. sorry. Hugs all round. Grange has popped up. Shugan. North Kirkhill. North Kirkhill, sorry, coming in for fourth spot. <laughs> Too much speed around the flags. He drops a knee. Warilla Barrick point. Warilla, so unfortunately for Northcliffe. Oh, that is heartbreaking. That is really, really tough. For Maruchido to finish off the youth championships pew, pew, pew. with the victory. And that's up, uh, boys. 14, 15 years, Cameron Relay. What a result for them on home sand. What a start to the Aussies for 2024. As Ocean Grove comes through. And I love it when you can tell the specialist beaches coming through. It's worth the trip from Malula Bar. It's worth, worth the race back down if you've got some speed across the sand. And as we saw, a lot of sprint finishes, which is exactly what you want with the uh, quality of competitors that we have here. And it's not done just yet. Another of our North Burley crews in the mix here. The boys want this so badly. Four in a row there. I think someone... Uh, Mr. Can there, but that's all right. We are good. And how good does the uh, the bright yellow jerseys look down there? They are absolutely glowing in this late afternoon sun. What a big two days of racing. But Harold, what a way to finish. What a way to close day two. Tell you what, they finished the race fast. The Jizz are slow to get here. Unbelievable lead. It's pretty calm coming through, right? Yeah, it was awesome. Like, no, we had a big lead coming out of the swim. Um, like, our first runner did an awesome leg. Same with Stan. Stan brought us home. We knew as soon as Stan came in, we could hold that lead and maintain that. Speaking of which, mate, another strong swim. Big program yesterday, today. Finishing it off on the home beach. For three years ago, you guys would have been what, under 11s, under 12s, watching, not competing. To be here and win your Aussie goal, what does that mean? It means a lot to me and the boys. It's just great to be around each other in this moment in time and just soak it all in. Anything else? Stan said it all. said it awesome. <laughs> In the club, another goal for Black Swans. Let's give a big cheer. Where's the rest of the squad? Let's go, the Black Swans. Thank you. Oh, fitting way to finish off the youth championships here. The host club, Maruchidor, with a victory in the 14th, 15 years. Manuel Cameron Relay. We said the Black Swan rises. The Black Swan has landed. And one of the most powerhouse clubs of the 90s is born and rebirthed and back again, bigger and better than ever and ready to take on with the next generation of Sur Sports stars. Yeah, super exciting. Wonderful scenes down there. And I think there'd be a, a wonderful feeling of celebration across so many clubs down there on the beach. Two big days of competition for our youngest competitors here at the Australian Championships. The 13s, the 14s and the 15s have done an incredible job as uh, Phoebe jumps in for the good interviews there. 
and a huge thanks to our sponsors. A huge thank you to everyone in our village that makes an incredible event like this come together. Tourism and Events Queensland, so good to have their support. We've also got our BRP, Finn, Sunshine Coast Council and the Sunshine Coast, of course, is our event partners. The event supporters, the Australian Sports Commission, Nutrigrain, TFH and our major national partners of Ampol, DHL, Azuzu Ute and, of course, Westpac, the chopper in action today. So a huge thank you. If you can support these guys, please make sure that you do support the people that support us to make sure that the Australian life-saving championships are bigger and better every year. Kurt, it looks like you're just taking a moment now to reflect and uh, just to help you on that journey, I've put together a few little highlights that you might like to uh, relive the incredible action across today. Well, across the weekend, wasn't really, Jen. We got here yesterday morning and it was on from the get-go. Big waves, big challenges and our 13s, 14s, 15s um, age groupers really rose to the occasion and it didn't matter the size of the swirls, the sprint finishes, it was certainly a brilliant two days of competition. Just the skill level of these youngsters on display, body surfing, wave catching, wave riding, racing. It's certainly been something to behold and always one of my favourites of the season, seeing the best youth competitors in the business go head to head and put it all on the line for an Australian oh. Championship. Drills and spills in the white water as well. Oh, gosh, there were so many spills. Those board rescues earlier today were absolutely phenomenal. Uh, some high highs, some low lows as well. But uh, we got the uh, Manly crew. I think we're about to see, oh, no, it was Surfers Paradise who did a really great fist pump early in one of those qualifying rounds, which I think you're allowed to do. And, and this the was the drama earlier. And just to reassure everyone who was watching on live stream, number one, everyone's okay, everyone is safe. And, yes, we did redo that race. <laughs> Yeah, and then we went down to Malula Bar for our Beach Flags competition. And plenty going on there, head-to-head. -head. Manly taking a victory. Uh, saw there as well. Very tight between a few of them. Plenty of argy-bargy. That's uh, great to see as well. Oh, I'm really glad we did get to make the trip down to Malula Bar. And that was uh, and a lovely celebration. Yes, I'm, so I'm on the podium. Good. I'm on the podium. It's all worthwhile. And uh, some fantastic racing, racing here. It was my Jack from uh, uh, Ocean Beach. Ocean Beach with the big win there. And I love that we can hear the crowd in the background because this meant a lot to so many of our competitors. And uh, that was uh, Chubb uh, from Maruchidor. I don't think he he got that one. And you're like, I'm sorry, champ. You don't you don't get to keep it. He did get a medal though, which was super exciting. Fitzroy there from New Zealand with a victory, making uh, their way across the ditch. On the, the New beach Zealand flags. champ, the Australian champ, Jeringong. Too good. Too, too fast. Big, too fast. Too big. Too strong. And this is where we finish just now. These incredible Cameron relays. Wanda really put us through the ringer. And I love the recovery. Maruchidor here, third up the beach, second across the line. But it was all about Wanda, set up by that incredible first swim. Too big. Too strong. The girls loving the finish right now. It was so good to see. Yeah, Wanda. Had it lost and got it back again for a memorable <laughs> victory. And the icing on the cake for the host club of Maruchidor. Heartbreak there for Northcliff, but happy days for Grange and North Burley as well. But it was all Maruchidor, wasn't it? It was a wonderful way to finish for the club and uh, the boys know that they're part of something special here, part of uh, part of the history of Maruchidor Surf Life Saving Club. Wonderful to see them come through. And for all of our competitors who've had an incredible two days of competition, it has been wonderful spending it with you. Thank you so much for joining us on the beach or as part of the live stream. Kurt Hansen, you're a superstar. It's been wonderful having your... Uh, you with us here so i think that's where we'll sign off we will be back on the live stream on facebook on wednesday for the senior and open championships we'd love it if you could come back we'll do it all again soon